Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to the Wilton Mill International Kart Circuit up near Northamptonshire at the home of British Motorsport. We're only around 20 minutes from Silverstone, but Silverstone isn't where the action is going to be happening today. It's here at Wilton Mill. It's the finals for the British University's Karting Championship, and it's sure to be an exciting one. We're going to crown the champions for the premier category in uh, BUKC for 2024. And you have to stick around for the whole day to find out who takes that championship trophy. My name is John Ratcliffe. I'm going to be guiding you through the action today, but it's not just myself here at the mill at Wilton Mill who will be guiding you through the action. Joining me is Mr. Reeve Taylor. Good morning, Reeve. How are you? Good morning, John. I'm not sure I can extend a warm welcome, but I can certainly <laughs> extend a wet and windy welcome here at the infamous Wilton Mill. Recently renovated, if you will, new section towards the end of the track. That will be fun in the wet for what should be a pretty heated round all to play for. Plenty of teams in the mix for this uh, for this championship. Yes, it's going to be an exciting one. And as you can see from the pictures there, it's definitely pretty damp still out there on track. Now, we've got the length down as 1,200 metres. Now, of course, that was uh, prior to, uh, to the change in the circuit. I think we're now at about 1,054, 1,100 metres, something like that, of the circuit. The, uh, the little layout, though, you can see there, the new section of corners. Now, some of the drivers, the, the circuit's been open for a couple of weeks now with the new with the new addition. We've had the Wilton Mill Kart Club, and we've had British Kart Championships as well. So a couple of drivers potentially having already done this section, but I'd say the majority, this is going to be a, a new frontier for them. Yes, obviously, so many layouts available at Wilton Mill, and as you say, changes to this one as well. Some of the teams will be coming here, and it will be, half of it will be like a new track to them almost. And there is the weather that we are expecting today. Mm. It's not looking pleasant, really. Drivers are going to have to have their wits about them for this one. Exactly, yeah. I'm pretty glad I'm in the comms box today, to be honest, Reeve. I hope yeah. the drivers have got their wetsuits with them because it's looking to be pretty on and off today uh, in terms of rainfall. Uh, we can see there it's raining, not raining. I don't think we can even trust the forecast today because, especially in the last week or so, it's just been there's been nice moments and then sudden downpours. So we might see a couple of those today. And, of course, Club 100 carts, only slick tyres. Yeah, they will be lucky later on in the Enduros in the afternoon for round eight, of course, if we do get some drier running. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, of course. Yeah, to update you guys, uh, if you're watching the full season, sadly, I wasn't at uh, the first couple of rounds at, at PF where we've already had the endurance races um, at uh, Butmore and at Warden Law. Of course, it was two two sprint days, uh, both in the afternoon, uh, both in the morning and the afternoon. Today, we've got sprints in the morning, so six sprint races, 25 minutes in length, and then this afternoon uh, for round uh, round eight, we'll have three 60-minute endurance races, which is going to be something interesting, something different, at least to what I've been used to this season. And we'll see how the drivers can take to it because obviously they will have done it already this season at PF but it has been quite a while so maybe some team's going to be a little bit rusty with with, uh, with their tactics yes it's a good thing about the enduros is yes it's not out and out action it's a change of pace though the the afternoon is very much as you say it's a different game the teams are going to have to really think as a team as a unit they're going to have to strategize they're going to have to plan you know let's get our light driver in first so maybe the ledge change for the pit stops isn't quite as difficult and then you're gonna have to factor in elements like the fueling as well as all to play for in those enduros and it's yeah it's, i mean one or two seconds in the pit lane just like we have in higher rungs of motorsport can make or break the race exactly yeah especially with how close the action is at bukc those tactics can really really come into play so we'll see how the drivers deal with that and it's a bit of a positive for us as well because it means that we can try and work out the the spreadsheet of doom that we andrew has, has given us and to be fair i take no credit for this reeve has managed to work this thing out and hopefully it'll mean we can give you uh, some updates on the championship throughout the day Yes, that is the aim. Hopefully we won't break it. Hopefully the spreadsheet <laughs> gods will stay uh, on hand. Andrew did pop in before to, uh, to give us some last-minute advice and, and made sure it was working. So thank you, Andrew, for as ever being our god, pretty much, in terms of, <laughs> of BUKC information. It's just a, a never-ending stream of information. It's brilliant. He's fantastic. We, we do love Mr. Andrew Mather. And, and to update you, of course, it's uh, myself, John, and Reeve in the comms box today. You've had Andrew earlier this season. Andrew's actually working with Club 100 today. So he is out at the entrance to the boot. Uh, and he's going to be giving out penalties. So if you get a penalty, blame Mr. Andrew Mather and go down to the boot and give him lots of abuse, please. It will be, I imagine, just a penalty for ineligible driver. That'll be, that'll be the only reason he's there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, hey, we're enjoying looking at the new corner, but we want to hear what some of the drivers think as well ahead of the first race of the day. So joining us for the, for the live stream today, Mr. Piers Pryor will be down on the dummy grid talking to some of our drivers. 
<laughs> yes, we're here down, getting ready for round seven, the first race of the day for the BUKC. It all comes down to this. Two more rounds to go. Who's going to win it? Coventry have a good position in the championship at the moment. We'll see if they can win, but we've still got... Uh, no, no, Reading in the lead of the championship. Coventry are not too far behind. And then we've got Bath and Southampton with an outside chance. But looking ahead to the first race of the day, why don't we grab a word with some of our wonderful drivers who are going to be tackling the, uh, the newly laid out Wilton Mill Cart circuit with the new final sector. It's going to be damp for the first couple of races. We've got some, some brand new slick tyres for the drivers to spin out on. Um, why don't we grab a word with our pole sitter who we spoke to at Warden. Robbie, Robbie, remind everyone at home. I'm just going to dry that for my, so I don't get a wet bum. Um, remind everyone at home who you're racing for. I'm racing for Huddersfield A. Huddersfield A. Now, Huddersfield over the years have been one of the top teams in the BUKC. Years ago, they won the championship many times. I'd say that, you know, you're on the up again. You're on the up again. We're on the up again. Obviously, completely different people from what it was, say, five years ago uh, in 2019 when they were all in, in mains and such. And it's been a bit of a rebuilding process to get back to this point. Been in Inters the, the past few years. Uh, and then now we're in, in mains, in Clubmans. Uh, and it's, it's just been a really cool experience to be part of it. Absolutely, Robbie. And you're starting on pole. Were you starting on pole last? No, you weren't on pole last time. Well, second. Second, but you're on pole today. Um, first place for the first race of the day. Uh, sketchy conditions, brand new tyres. You led for a quite a few laps from second place last time out. I did, I did. Uh, unfortunately, the track started drying up and I played it a bit too safe. <laughs> um, I, every single um, race weekend, I've been learning something new. And uh, for Warden Law, it was... You know, the track went from 1 minute 12 to 1 minute 7 by the end of it. And I realised very quickly once X to A got past that, oh yeah, I'm not using as much as the track as I should be. Um, but maybe hopefully I'll be able to take those lessons into, into this round today. Life's a learning experience. Every day's a school day. Robbie, good luck in the race. We'll see how Huddersfield get on in the, uh, the Clubman team. And let's wander down further down the group. We've got Nottingham Trent. Alicia, I think you're coming, you're starting in the first race, aren't you? Yeah. Alicia, set, uh, what's that, third place? Yeah. Third. Third place. Um, must be a good starting position for yourself. Um, talk to us about what's going on. Yeah, not too much. I mean, I like Wilton, so it's nice to be back on the full track instead of the Zulu. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the last corner's like, but yeah. I was going to ask about that. Have you driven it yet? And if not, what do you think about it so far? Uh, no, I've not driven it. I've just seen everyone smashing the curb, which obviously we're not allowed to do, so it'll see which is the quickest way around without hitting that. Yeah. It's going to be interesting in the wet. I have actually driven it in the wet and the dry, not loads, but uh, it's got a lot of grit at the time. When I drove it, drove it, it did. Obviously, we had the Whitman Mill Club Championships two weeks ago, the British uh, Rotax I played last weekend, so there's a lot more rubber down now. Um, it shouldn't make too much difference to the rest of the track, though. Um, so what do you reckon Nottingham Trent can do today? Uh, aiming for the top, hopefully P1. We're starting P1 for the endurance later as well. So, yeah, hoping for some good results today. Well, Nottingham Trent, always entertaining on social media. Have, have a look at their social media as well on their Instagram. I think it's at NTU, isn't it? Something like that. At NTU Motorsport. They like taking the mickey out of me as well. So, you know, if you fancy seeing that, then drop on in. And let's we'll jump in here. Have a word with, who are you and who are you racing for? Isaac Swansea. Isaac Swansea. Um, Isaac, I'm just going to try that. Um, um, talk to us about the race. What, what are you thinking? You're starting uh, somewhere in the middle of the pack, so it should be good fun. Well, starting ninth. I haven't done the international layout before. Um, obviously, we've got the new last corner as well, so there's a lot to learn. But I had a good round last time at Warden Law, so I'm hoping to continue that. Hopefully, make my way forward from ninth. Work your way forward. And what have you been up to since the last round? It was, you know, it's been a few weeks. Uh, you know, student, have you had some time off? Have you been studying, partying? What have you been up to? Easter break, but unfortunately, there's still lots of work to do, so I haven't really had much time off. I don't miss that whatsoever. I, uh, that's the one thing is you don't have to do like exams anymore when you're a real adult. But yeah. although then again, you do also have to be a real adult. So, yeah. There's pros and cons. Very much pros and cons. But hey, I get to do this, don't I? I get to walk around and talk to people. We've got. A, 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 I'm not going to interview this driver because, I mean, they're not there yet, so hopefully that cart will be filled. Um, who are you and who are you racing for? What's your name? Uh, UEA. UEA. Um, I, I do enjoy a, a three-digit number, you know, a one, two, four. Shows that, you know, you've got some, some special talents. Um, talk to us. Are you experienced around this Wilton Mill circuit? Yeah. Just a bit ashamed about the last corner, really, with the chicane. I think they've ruined it. Have you driven it yet? No, not yet. So how do you know they've ruined it? It just looks bad. <laughs> it just looks yeah. bad. Um, is I think apparently it was put in for safety. It's actually not so bad. I have driven it. It's not terrible. I mean, the last corner wasn't really an overtaking opportunity anyway. Um, but you're still going to avoid those cones. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> don't want to get don't want to get uh, many penalties. Might get some places out of it. 
Definitely so. I think the track limits is definitely going to be uh, something to consider. Let's walk a bit further down the grid. We've matched chatted to all of the even, no, odd side of the grid. So we did pole and, and that a lot. Let's go on the outside of the, uh, uh, of the grid and grab a word with our driver starting in second place. And Ben Southgate, I can see that is your name from your helmet. Ben, um, remind us who you're racing for. Coventry, eh? Oh, big day for you guys. Uh, definitely within a shout of the championship. Uh, what, what do you reckon you can do in this one, starting from the front row? Well, the aim is to win. The aim is to win. Of course it is. Um, have you driven the uh, the new layout yet? Yeah, I've done the last two weekends. Uh. You have, so you've got plenty of experience. Be a bit different in one of these carts, though, I, I suppose. Yeah, especially on these slicks. <laughs> Brand new slicks in the wet. Right, good luck in the race. It's going to be interesting to see if Coventry can uh, some put it to Reading. It's very, very close to the top of the championship. Uh, we've also, I'm actually thinking that Southampton, they've got an outside chance at the championship, but they've basically either won or come nowhere and that's why they're in fourth place but they've had a lot of first places they won the qualifiers of their qualifier round here in when was it november time um and then they had a couple of wins they won last time out at warden law but then also had a terrible uh, result in the afternoon so they're a bit up and down let's grab a word with a driver from birmingham hello 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 remind everyone at home who you are and which team from birmingham you're uh, racing for I'm jack finch for birmingham a Jack, uh, long way down the grid here. Uh, so where are you starting? Uh, 30th. 30th. But it's going to be a good day. You're going to look forward to uh, some good racing. Um, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about? I, I'm just hoping that like everyone sort of above 29th just bins it on the first corner. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I think stranger things have happened at the BUKC, especially with these brand new tyres. Yeah. No, I, I think it's, it's probably more likely than, than a lot of other things. But no, I just need to not bin it. Every single first race I've had, I've just, I've just binned it on the first couple laps. So, yeah. Choked, you just don't do that. Yeah, choked under the pressure. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, anything else? What's been going on? What's been going on in your life? Are you, uh, you've been chilling? You've been working? Well, I've, I, you called my dissertation boring last time I spoke to you. You know what? That was pretty harsh, actually. It was actually really, it was actually very important. I did feel a bit bad after that. that yeah, that's all submitted now. Um, I don't know. I'm just Easter holiday, isn't it? Just drink it's pure it. <laughs> drinking, <laughs> drinking water to keep yeah. hydrated. Hydration, key. Hydration. Yeah. Uh, hydration is, of course, very important for a professional BUKC athlete. Exactly. And a Mackey's breakfast, which I've actually avoided today. So if I do well then I'm never going to have a Mackey's breakfast again. But then if I do bad, then it's like, I've got to have a Mackey's breakfast. So what was breakfast this morning? Uh, because I'm at home, because like, obviously it's Easter holidays. Did I, Mum give you a cooked breakfast? No, she, she's up here. They stayed overnight in a camper van. Oh, did they? I'll go, go, go grab them on later if they're about. Uh, well, they're, uh, I think they're somewhere over there. But yeah, no, I just had, I had a muffin because I had to wake up at like five in the morning. So it's a bit of a, I, did, I didn't really want to eat much. A muffin, brilliant. Anyway, good luck. We'll see how you get on. Um, I've got a very wet bum from sitting on these cars. But anyway, first race is coming up in just a few moments time. So uh, why don't we head into the first race of the day? It's the lightweight. Race, lightweight race one. Thank you very much, Piers. Great to hear from some of the drivers there and, of course, the continuing chatter uh, about Mackey's breakfast that we always have at BUKC Rounds, which, which we love to see. Let's get into the grid, though, for race number one, the first sprint race of the day. And as, uh, as Piers spoke to them, Huddersfield A line up on pole position alongside them. Coventry A, then it's uh, Not uh, Nottingham Trent A and Cardiff C on row number two, then Portsmouth A and Oxford Brooks B on row number three. Row 4, Lancaster B and Brighton B, then rounding out the top 10 are Swansea A and Sheffield C. Then it's Sheffield B and Imperial A there on row number 6. Row 7 has UWE A and Brunel A, then it's Leeds B and Liverpool B on row number 8, with Edinburgh A and Southampton A on row number 9. Rounding out the top 20 are Loughborough B and Liverpool C, then it's Leeds A, Warwick B, Loughborough A and Imperial B there, 23rd and 24th respectively. Bristol A and Loughborough D line up behind them with Southampton C, Oxford Brooks A, Cardiff B and Birmingham A rounding out the top 30, and then finally Finalising our 35 cart grid for this one is Bath A, Warwick A, Swansea B, Reading A, and UWE B. But of course, huge grids for BUKC, tough conditions. This could be quite interesting, Reef. It will indeed. Isn't it nice to have these practice laps so we can get the grids in just nice and comfortably? And we are going to need these practice laps as well. These cars need to get up to temperature. These drivers need to get familiar with the new layout because I imagine there's going to be a few drivers probably on autopilot still you know it's early in the morning it's still groggy maybe you haven't had your Mackey's breakfast <laughs> and you get towards the end of the lap and you realize oh this is different <laughs> so it is 
want to make sure it you is are very ready different. For that. There's our first look, though, as one driver goes very wide. You don't want to be going out there on the rumble strip. It is very, very slippery through those last couple of corners, though. I uh, did a little cheeky arrive and drive last night, which was very enjoyable here at Wilton Mill. That's great uh, research. That's great I, I commentary was exactly research. commentary research. That's why it's cheap. Expensive. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to Alpha Live, but it's in the post. It's in the post. Um, but. It was interesting. I quite enjoyed the last corner. Of course, I'm in a rental car, a little bit slower than these carts out there uh, at the moment. But that last corner was very tricky. When I was out there, the whole rest of the track was completely dry, but the last right-hander was absolutely sodden and wet, and it was just full sideways Tokyo drift around that section. So it'll be interesting to see how the drivers attack this early on. But like we were saying earlier, that most drivers likely wouldn't have been here before, Someone in this race who's been here plenty of times, Benjamin Southgate, Coventry A, lines up on the front row for this one. And as he said, he's been here the last two weekends. He's done the Wilton Mill Kart Cup round. He's then done British Kart Championships, and now he's here for BUKC. So I think if there's anyone to pick from this grid in race number one as, as a contender for the race win here, it's going to be Benjamin Southgate. And they're after that race win, of course, because they are in contention for the championship here. Let's have a quick look. Don't want to bore you too much with some championship permutations. So Coventry A, in order to win the championship, we just mentioned Benjamin Southgate. He, uh, Coventry A, will need to achieve a double round win with Reading A achieving no better than a double third in the rounds and or, sorry, Reading A achieve no better than second and a fourth and Southampton A achieve no better than a double second. So that's just the level of permutation we are My at. My goodness. <laughs> Coventry A is one of the more simple ones. As you can see our list here, Reading A's permutations <laughs> are about eight points oh long. My goodness. We've got half a page, courtesy. I'm not going to take credit for this, by the way. It's courtesy of Andrew. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, basically, all you need to know is that it's anyone's game, effectively, and there's so many different ways that anyone can take the championship win. We'll know a little bit more as we go on through the morning. Indeed. So who are the, f who are the four we're looking at then? So keep your eyes on these teams uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. So our championship leaders at the moment are Reading A, then it is uh, Bath A, then Coventry A, and then Southampton A, who we talked about just on the grid there. Southampton may have either done incredibly well or have been kind of nowhere really yeah. so they want to get a consistent round in because they've used their drop scores that, yeah. that effectively so yeah they know they've, they've they can't leave anything on the table today it's uh it's well <laughs> for lack of a better phrase it's win it or bin it really for Southampton isn't it today indeed and of course that is the Prems as you mentioned we have the Clubmans as well mm -hmm. Lancaster A currently leading that with a fairly substantial margin they have been unbelievable this season haven't they really consistent it's Warwick A in that fight there as well. But unless, uh, as well, I'm going to use this, uh, a term that Andrew Mather caught before, unless an asteroid hits the circuit and, and Warwick A are the only survivors, it's looking quite good for Lancaster A at the moment. <laughs> that is a good phrase to use. That doesn't surprise me that that came from Andrew Mather's mouth. <laughs> No, but very interesting stuff, of course, across both championships racing today. Of course, if you've not watched BUKC before, both championships are in the same race. They'll just be denoted by the colour boards on their carts. Now, I know it's supposed to be black boards for Prems and uh, red boards for Clubman, but it has been different at some rounds. Now, I can see the number eight there has a black has a black board, so it's definitely black boards for the Prems today, red boards for Clubman today. So no confusion here at Wilton Mill. That's what you're watching out for. Those are the teams you're watching out for in Prems to see who can win the championship. Clubman, as we said, a little bit more closed off, but still potential there for Warwick A. Uh, they've got to absolutely go for it. And I mean, luckily, they won't be getting any commentary curses because they, we, we've upgraded Reeve. Oh, it's yeah. been Jaffa Cakes all season to stop the commentary curses, but now, Warwick Motorsport have given us a 10-pack of Stella. Fantastic. <laughs> well done, Warwick, for winning the championship this year. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, we decide that. So yes. thank, thank you. Thank you, Warwick. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll they, make they sure. win at least the catering championship. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we're going to be battered by the end of the endurance. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, we have actually still got some Jaffa Cakes courtesy of Edinburgh. So thank you, Edinburgh. But I don't... Oh, they are in this race. So Edinburgh are starting 17th. They're not going to get cursed. Uh, and Warwick A, they were a bit further down. They're in 32nd place in this one. So those are two teams that are going to come through and come first and second in this race. <laughs> it's definitely going to happen, uh, but potentially not. But this is going to be a very interesting race nonetheless. As we say, Coventry A, Benjamin Southgate there on P2. I think we could, we could see him diving ahead at the front. They've got Nottingham Trent uh, close behind as well. Miss Barrett there for uh, for Nottingham Trent A. And then Max Watson for Cardiff C in fourth place. Let's see what he can do. We often enjoy. There is Andrew Mather. Look at the look at the aggression on him there from Andrew Mather. Fantastic to see into the boot, but that's where he is out on circuit if you want to find him. As I was saying, Max Watson for Cardiff C. 
give some of the best interviews. Sadly, Piers has missed him this morning. Um, but let's see if he could do just as well out on circuit. But we're coming round two by two. Reeve, do you want to take us into the finals for 2024? Here we go then. We got that run down towards the first left hander here. Down those tram lines. You don't want to fall foul of jumping out of there. You will receive a penalty. But we are away for what is the first round this morning. Three wide through the first corner there. The number 66 car in to the lead as we are actually about five wide now heading through the second corner here. All actually a relatively clean getaway. I don't know how anyone hasn't hit each other there. Might have spoke too soon, though. Look at the gaggle of carts coming up to Christmas Corner. There's four or five wide in the middle. You can see where drivers just getting pinced that there's nowhere to go. A bit of bumping and bashing left, right and centre there, but all just about making it through. A little bit of contact there on the exit of the boot. Through, uh, Sorry, the exit of the boot. That's way further down the lap. The exit of the Christmas Corner. But some, this is actually oh, very impressive. As just as I say that, one of the Liverpool drivers, that is, going spin, and everyone else joins them down at Ashby. Most of them able to keep it on the black star, so they can just immediately rejoin. But two drivers off on the grass there, and that's the thing about BUKC. You don't often see in other championships. If you if you uh, have a bit of a spin and incident out there, you're the one that's got to get up, pull the cart back on circuit, and carry on with your race. So those two drivers rejoining now, a little bit far behind, but we're already looking at a good little battle for the lead here. Indeed, a couple of penalties coming in for that incident there. That is a black flag actually for UWEB. Yeah, that is, I got that wrong first time. Not it's breaking formation. Breaking formation. Yeah, I got yes, that wrong course. as well. So, of course it is. so yeah, UWEB breaking formation before the start finish line. They've got a penalty for that. And then we have an ABC takeout as well for Lancaster B. I imagine for that big incident that week. Yeah. I think that's a fair assumption. Good exit there for the number 12. Tries to side down the inside. That's Loughborough A trying to pick up a couple more places there in the mid pack. It doesn't quite work out that time, but you can see the drivers using that inside line as another spin. I think we're going to see that a lot today. That slow spin yes. is it, just the most horrible spin when it's, it feels like you're doing about two miles an hour and you just cannot regain any sort of uh, any sort of grip and round you go. But I think we may have just seen a change at the front of the order. Order there, possibly a change for the lead. Number eight has gone through. So yes, Coventry A have moved to the front of the field now, closely followed by Huddersfield A. It's a good start to the day then for Coventry A, but as you say there, yeah, that slow kind of spin around we're getting. These cars, of course, breaking on one axle. Obviously, these go karts are going to get inherently unbalanced at the slicks and a slightly damp track. It's a recipe for, for disaster, really, isn't it? Indeed, yeah. Slicks on this on this surface, particularly the fact that they're brand new for today. It's going to be very, very difficult out there. We're already a couple of minutes into this race then. As you see, updated on your timing tower on the left. Commentary A take the lead, and not only that, they take the fastest lap of the race. We're down in the 1 minute 15 at the moment around this circuit. That is incredibly, incredibly slow as there's a spin. That's Nottingham Trent A round and there. It just shows you how easy it is to spin in these conditions. A slight tap there on the rear, on the, from the rear of the cart in front to the, to the front of the Nottingham Trent A cart. And round they went, so easy to do, and there you're stuck in such a difficult position, you're just watching as everyone drives past you. Yeah, in any other conditions, the mechanical grip would be so much better, that wouldn't even be noticed, really, that, that slight bit of contact, I don't suspect. I think that would have been absolutely fine, but as you say, it sends the cart around. We were far too early on the, lap, on the commentator's curse, weren't we, on lap one. It's a clean getaway, <laughs> <And then> ever <laughs> since. We were tempting fate a little bit there, I can't lie, and yes, it, it did end up happening. I was more surprised. I thought it was going to be chaos at the first corner. I've had plenty of BUKC races where people just dive in and just go, it'll work, and then just go straight on. <laughs> and we didn't see that, so drivers uh, playing it safe, which is good to see because, of course, your whole championship builds up to this. And as we were mentioning with Southampton, you need a consistent run through the championship. And if that's happened already, you need to be playing it about 90% early on today, just getting through the first couple of laps and pushing on towards a good result to uh, to get that momentum through the whole day. They are pushing 100% at the moment and taking track limit warnings for it as well, our Southampton, eh? They are, they, they they, they're out. trying, they're trying their yeah. best. Exactly, exactly. It's very easy to uh, to use too much of the, of the track uh, in conditions like this, trying to find that extra bit of grip and finding that you go over those white lines, denoting the edge of the circuit. Now, I will say, uh, one of the two teams who gave us things to try and stop commentary curses uh, has just got a cone penalty. Edinburgh no, A they have just got a cone penalty out there on circuit. So Edinburgh, uh, where, where are they? They're 15th at the moment, so they're getting a couple of positions off the start, but they're going to immediately lose those positions at the end of the race because they've got themselves a cone penalty. I'm sure it is. I think it might be that one that we just saw at the exit of Christmas yeah. Corner, which had been uh, slightly annihilated there, <laughs> uh, which doesn't surprise me. These poor cones these have a tough life. These poor cones, we, we saw them 
we, we saw them have a terrible time at, at, uh, at Warden, and now that carries on. <laughs> we felt so bad with them. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little Cohen's getting absolutely annihilated by these uh, university drivers. Currently, we're watching the 88. That's Max Watson of Cardiff C. And just behind him, the number 48 of Brighton B. So this is the battle for fourth place. And I think this is actually... This kind of shows shows the interestingness of these conditions, of how quickly the field spreads out under these conditions and how difficult it is to then make up positions. If you're in a top team starting near the back, these are the most challenging races uh, to have to do that because I don't think you'll mind saying... Max isn't typically a driver up in the top five. He's quick in his own right, but not up in the top five. In conditions like these, because he started in a good grid slot, he's kept out of trouble in the first couple of laps. He's on for a really good result, because if he can just keep it on the black stuff and keep pressing on, a top 10 is very much within, all, uh, within possibility here for Cardiff C, which is interesting. So that could cause some upsets here today. It could indeed, and there's going to be upset for the Southampton A squad. They have been pushing. They've been setting really quick laps as well. One minute, 12.3 fast the race so far, but they have received a track limit penalty for it as well. Ooh. So not so, yeah, an they, ideal they were getting start. those warnings, weren't they? And yeah. they, haven't, they haven't listened Heated. to the warnings, yeah. and they've uh, been told off. Seeing as well, Imperial A actually on a bit of a charge at the moment. They have quietly worked their way up into second position. Who is this off track here? Oh dear. Not an ideal position. You see, it, it's horrible. You see the rest of the grid just kind of tumble, pat, or just kind of barrel past you, and there's nothing that you can do really. You have to get the cart back on the track safely and able to get underway. He's getting help from a marshal now. It's, Warwick A received a cone penalty. It's the 54 of Imperial A who have oh, gone off there. No, I was on just the edge about to track. say how well they were doing as well. They yeah. seem to be really hooked into the track and were, fa were pushing well. Unfortunately, that comes to an end there. So, Imperial A. We need some snacks in the commentary box, clearly. <laughs> we do, we do. Yeah, unlucky there for Imperial. And a tough place to go off as well, of course. One of the fastest sections of the circuit, that is through the first couple of corners, uh, uh, Oblivion and Crook there, and then to the exit, especially in these slippery conditions. You find yourself getting to the edge of that of that rumble strip on the exit of the circuit very quickly, and you just misjudge it by one or two percent. Suddenly you're touching the grass on the outside, and as soon as a wheel goes on that grass, it hooks you left. Off you go out onto the, onto the green stuff. And especially with what you can see from that camera angle, how boggy it is out on that grass. Once you're on there, you're not getting back on the black stuff without getting your, your butt up and out of the car and pulling it back on circuit. I will say, and I think maybe the sunlight's helping me, but given we had rain just not uh, really over an hour ago, and as we have, I think, a repeat penalty there for Southampton 8, some parts of the track actually aren't looking too bad. Yeah. Yeah, these, uh, these cars obviously have a bit of a kind of a hoovering effect, if you will. They've got the heat. That will help things there. Southampton still flying along in the 111s now. So the tracks, yeah, as you say, definitely drying because we were in the sort of 115s to begin with. So already sort of four seconds or so found by the drivers. Should and we, Southampton, they are closing in. Should we play our game again that we're playing at Wardlaw? Where do we think the lap times are going to go? <laughs> I'm going to go long game now, and I'm going to think maybe into the afternoon or if we don't get any rain later on in the morning, would we see a sub-60 second with this new layout? Potentially. I mean, cart? I, I was in the 50s. Uh, okay. Yesterday in the corporate cart, so there we, go, we should definitely yeah, yeah, be. Absolutely. We should definitely full dry times be be down in the fifties, if not the high forties. Um, but I think the the issue there with trying to predict today is I think the weather's going to be so unpredictable. I don't think we're going to have a clue at the moment. As you say, drying out nicely, the sun is streaming down here in Northamptonshire, but it might not stay like that all day. Uh, and I think we might see a bit more uh, a bit more precipitation later on. That's a good word. Thank you, yeah. thank you. I, it just came straight off the dome. I listened in geography, uh, and it could be interesting. It could be interesting. 16 minutes left to go on the clock in this one. We're looking at Cardiff C once again. I think it's Portsmouth A uh, who are pounding the back of that car, but this is the battle for second place. We heard from the Huddersfield A driver on the grid, and they're putting a, in a good performance so far in this one. P2, they were taken by Coventry A in the first couple of laps in this one, and now Southampton A have closed them down. But this is the challenge as well. You can be very, very quick in these conditions, but there really is only one line out there. So you're following, but it's very difficult to go for an overtake because as soon as you get off of that drying line, there's absolutely no grip at all. And suddenly, you're flying off the circuit when you're trying to make an overtake. So it's one thing catching them. It's another thing actually getting past. Yeah, it's going to be a very fine balance in these conditions to get an overtake secured. Although there are plenty of overtaking opportunities here at Wilton Mill. It is a lovely circuit for that, so... No, great track for overtakes, great track for overtakes. It always produces good action. I mean, 
the two weekends that this new layout has been open has been some of the best racing I've ever I was seen. Say, I mean, yeah. Wilton Mill Kart Club, um, I think it was the X30 final, junior or senior, I can't remember. That was unbelievable. And then, of course, the clip that the everyone infamous. has seen uh, from the O-plate of British Kart Championships, Macaulay Bishop's move around the outside at Christmas Corner. Unbelievable stuff. Now, I don't think we'll be seeing um, moves quite that impressive in these conditions anyway. Don't attempt uh, them, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go for it. Attempt it. We'd love to see it in the comms box. But, yeah, Macaulay's move. Wow, unbelievable. If you haven't, somehow haven't seen that, head over to uh, to the Karting UK YouTube channel or the Alpha Live socials. It's pretty much everywhere. Go and give it a watch. Unbelievable race. Uh, yeah, all on the Karting UK YouTube channel. I think there's the, there's the highlights uh, now on the Karting UK YouTube channel. So if you just search that, it's a brand new YouTube channel go and have a watch there of uh, of the highlights but do that after today's action because BUKC this is the final round of the season you're going to be getting no more BUKC until qualifiers for next season later in November this year so you want to be soaking up all the action here from Wilton Mill today Bath A another championship contender coming into the mix in this race then fifth place for Bath at the moment and they've just set the fastest lap we're now already down in the 108s yeah, time's absolutely tumbling now. Coventry 8 with a nice lead out in the front, about 2.7 seconds. Southampton closing it as we speak. Yeah, so they've, they've, they've swapped, haven't they, while we were chatting. So Southampton have got to second past Huddersfield. Bath have just got past uh, Brighton to fourth as well. So Coventry were holding about a three or four second gap over Huddersfield for this whole race. But Southampton have finally cleared Huddersfield A, now have a bit of clean air. And on that last lap alone, they gained, what's that, 1.4, 1.5 seconds on Coventry A. We could have a battle for the lead on pretty soon here. At some corners, though, it does look to be drying out pretty nicely. So we could actually potentially see a battle rather than just catching up and then not being able to find a way through. I think we're also seeing here a great litmus test for the bribe that JV was running for a couple of rounds this season. Uh, yeah, the, is he doing it for this round or I, not? I haven't heard. Me neither. I'm not sure. We have been keeping track You've so got, far. Let us know in the live chat, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, if JV said at the briefing that, that we're still doing the... Uh, it looks like he hasn't, because I will say in race one, we've had a fairly <laughs> consistent stream of track limits penalties is kind of tumbling in for a few teams. Uh, the two Liverpool cars in this race have got a track limits penalty to boot. A few more as well. That's just in the past couple of laps there. So, yeah, I think we're going all out for the finals here. <laughs> uh, everyone from Liverpool's a bandit, to be fair, as you would know. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Just, <laughs> just for clarity, Reeve is, is, is from Liverpool University, so... That wasn't just me having a dig at Liverpool. Sorry, Liverpool drivers. I'm sure you're all absolutely lovely. Uh, but uh, it's not going well out there on circuit for the, no, for the, no. at the moment anyway. No, it was, it was, we had hope in round one and round two. And then didn't turn up for... <laughs> and then the hope died. Yeah. <laughs> Here we look, though. So there's Huddersfield A and Bath A coming through your shot. Now we're looking at the battle for fifth. So Portsmouth A have got through on Brighton B now for fifth place. So Prem's cart slowly making their way to the front of the order now. But as I was saying earlier, how quickly the, the gaps extend. We're looking at the top 10 already separated by nearly 15 seconds now. Uh, so it's all, it, it's once, once you get through a few drivers, all the other drivers have already scampered away. That makes it so much more difficult to gain these points in these opening races, such as Reading. They're, they're needing a good result, of course, leading the championship at the moment in P10 for now, which is not a bad, not a bad result there, P10. But some of their contenders, Bath A, fourth, Southampton A, second, Coventry A, first. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Let's see, where, where did Reading A start in this race? Uh, Reading A, they were... Oh, 34th place. So, still so they've had a good. pretty good race up to up to beat at the moment. they're being spurred on by your by your, your by your calls there for them to get a good result here. They've got a fastest lap now. 108.2. Okay, still in the 108s at the moment then, but time's still quickly dropping. A Reading A still have just over 10 minutes to go here to try and gain a few more places. And where they are on circuit, actually, everyone's relatively close. There's only about two or three seconds separating themselves in 10th and Cardiff C in 7th. Now, as these drivers come into the middle section of the circuit, there was a yellow flag out. That's and that's right. why uh, one driver facing the wrong way at the edge of the circuit and right on the racing line as well. So well done for the drivers for, for missing all of that. Oh, Birmingham A, penalty, track limits. Birmingham A, that is, uh, that's a tough one for them. That's going to be, uh, of course, Andrew Mather's not going to be too happy with that one. Uh, an ex-Birmingham A, maybe he was the one that gave it. Yeah, very Down possibly. Maybe, maybe it's just spite and jealousy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Ten minutes to go then. Another track limit warning for Liverpool B, as you were, as you were mentioning. They were still being banditry. Come on, guys, keep it in, keep it in the white lines. <laughs> 
It's a tough one. It's a tough one. More changes going on, though, as the track's dry. We're starting to have it all pick up now. Reading A have got through on Loughborough B and UWE A. They're now in eighth place. And also Bath A through on Huddersfield A. They move their way up into third place. So we've got three of the four championship contenders now up in the top three. We do. And there is a penalty that the Stewards do not like to hand out for the Liverpool B card. That is Jason Zhang. That is an overtaking on the yellows there. So in that middle section we've just headed through. Looks like there was an overtake performed and that is something that the Stewards don't like to see, shall we say. So imagine the week. Well, no need for re-education just yet. But if such behaviour were to continue on, maybe some re-education later on. So we've got a couple of new people in the chat as well, just learning about the series. So Tony Kart Racer, good to see you getting involved and, uh, and enjoying the, uh, the action here at, uh, at Wilton Mill. Hello, morning to James Smith as well. Alex in the chat as well. Lots of people enjoying BUKC racing for the final time uh, for this season. Less than 10 minutes on the clock now, and it's 0.3 of a second between the two leaders. There's two drivers going off and having a big spin. That was a big one across the line. Trying to see what drivers it was. Was it 66 and 48, Huddersfield and Brighton, potentially? This is all up near the sharp end of the order. I'm trying yeah, to spot that out... like a number 60. Oh. Yeah, no, no, there's the 66 yeah. of Huddersfield and the 48 of Brighton B. So potentially it was drivers maybe further to the back of the field um, who were just coming through. We'll try and spot the numbers because they just come across the line. That's the issue. Uh, we, can't, uh, we won't be able to tell until they come around to finish a whole other lap. But that was a, an interesting one. You saw the driver... Maybe just not 100% aware of their surroundings there. Pulling across to the right, which is where you want to go. You're entering a left-hander. You want to open the corner up as much as possible, but he didn't realise yeah. someone was on his outside, and, and off they both went. Yeah, it's not usually where you see, see such a big incident here. Indeed. It's not... Uh, not often you see it before you go, go into a corner on a straight, but we do have a change for the lead. It has uh, switched at the front then, Southampton, and here we see them. Southampton through on Coventry A. Now, Coventry A took the lead early on in this one to Benjamin Southgate. He's held it very nicely, held a good three or four seconds gap. He had uh, Huddersfield was his closest contender for a while, but through have come Southampton, and they now take the lead of the race. Now, can, can Benjamin Southgate for Coventry keep up? It doesn't seem so. Southampton quickly pressing on already. Benjamin just needs to keep that nose clean, though, of course. Southampton with some penalties already. So they are going to be... Oh, oh, oh. that's involving the Liverpool yes. car there. So there's, I think, I don't know what happened there. It almost looked as if Liverpool just got stuck in between the two of them and nearly, nearly spun around second place there. But that's actually given the opportunity for this battle to restart. We've got another driver off on the exit of, uh, of Oblivion and Crook there, trying to get the cart back on circuit. So as we saw earlier, a difficult place to get restarted. But yet yeah, nearly a bit of a calamity there for one of the Liverpool carts, almost getting a bit too involved in the lead battle. Yes, luckily no one seemed to be too majorly affected by that. The time, not too much time lost in the end for those front runners. Of course, no such thing as a blue flag here at the, uh, in the BUKC, so. I'm pretty sure I've just seen on the gantry a lot of penalties. There was like a double penalty for Southampton A. Yeah, so they've bump got a track pass. limits penalty and now a bump and pass penalty. I thought so, because it said penalty three and three. I was like, how can, how can there be that twice? They have got two separate penalties. So lots of penalties coming through uh, today. Southampton C with the track limits, Sheffield B with the contact, Liverpool B with the track limits, Lancaster B with the track limits, Edinburgh A with the track limits. Lots of track limits penalties. I'd be interested to know where that is all happening on circuit, if it's all in a particular area or whether it's spread across the whole circuit. In a situation like this, you'd probably lean towards it just being in one particular area, wouldn't you? And maybe, Maybe there will be a quick briefing to say, come on, guys, here's, here's how this corner should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've seen a couple of times this season uh, some in-between race chats from JB, yeah, shall we say? Quick just catch-up. Re-education, I think, is yes. the word we often enjoy using, isn't it? So uh, we'll uh, hopefully not have any of those today, but with the amount of penalties coming through in this first race, I don't think it's out of the question. Given that uh, we've just got more as well. Yeah, we have, we have. We'll, we'll try and ignore it for a little minute. Uh, the the lap time's still dropping, though. First time in the 104s, then. Reading A in fourth place. So they, they've scampered up the top ten while we've been looking away there. Last time I saw them, they were in eighth all the way up into fourth now. They've got a good few seconds, a good four or five seconds between themselves and the leaders. But we were, we were speaking about that little issue that happened with Liverpool getting involved with Southampton and Coventry. And we were saying about how they didn't lose too much time. That gap back to Bath was over five seconds before that happened. So they've lost a good four or five seconds from that incident. And Bath A now only just over a second behind this lead battle. 
So they are still closing in. Here we see them closing in. Now, is that the Bath car? I think it is. Right on the rear end of the number eight of Coventry A. And there we switch to the camera angle uh, from the boot section. And you can see the Coventry A just slipping down ever so slightly here. Benjamin Southgate, a very quick driver, very well known amongst British karting but just can't quite seem to hook it up here against Southampton A and Bath A. I don't think it's going to be too long until we see the number 13 of Reading A starting to get involved with this as well. Less than five minutes to go, Reef. This is what we like to see, isn't it? The top four in the championship fighting top four on the road as well. Black flag coming First in for Black open flag. pass for Lancaster B. Penalties for Brooks A as well there. First black flag of the day, and not great to see in the opening race of the day. But yeah, Lancaster B going to get a big telling off. Oh my goodness, the the um, scroll that we've got at the top of the screen that tells you about the warnings and penalties cannot keep up here. That will, still, that will still be there while Pierce is, is, <laughs> it is back be, up yeah, the well, grid. It will be, yeah, we're still going to be getting the penalties coming through. Sheffield A have now got a track limit, so have Edinburgh A. And I saw them get a cone penalty earlier, so the draft kicks haven't worked, sadly, uh, for Edinburgh A. It's not been going well so far, but of course, uh, to remind you, if you want to see the full results, go to results.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash BUKC. Here's a move for second place, though. Bath A trying it down the inside, then round the outside as we head into the boot section. They take second place, and that was sort of assisted here by the 58 as they're almost going for a spin there, the 58. Uh, who is it in that? That's Swansea B and the 58. Uh, they sort of just... I mean, they were on their usual line, but it just meant that, that uh, Coventry had to break a little bit earlier there and through snuck Bath. But hey, Benjamin Southgate is fighting back, trying to get a good exit out of the first couple of corners. But this this uh, line that the drivers are generally taking up into uh, Christmas Corner here is the inside line. That's where most of the grip is anyway. So uh, Bath A able to defend and take the grippiest line, and they do still hold on to second place. But with all this happening, of course, we're coming through the back markers now, and this is what's creating some issues for the drivers at the front as not only is it just difficult in and of itself, as number three, Southampton A, is going very slowly. Through goes Bath A, up and under goes Southampton A. Okay, I thought potentially they had an issue there, but that was really quickly closed in. When they went over the line last lap, it was 1.2 seconds. So Southampton A have slowed up on this lap. We've now got a three-way battle for the lead going into the last three minutes here, Reeve. This is going to be very interesting. This is, of course, exactly how it is for Championship as well. Who is that? That is Ooh. the Bath A side by side there with Coventry A. Oh, Coventry, the back end getting a little bit unhappy there. He's able to carry on, though. We head back into that first corner once again. It just looked like Bathe went really deep into the corner really fast. Uh, that, was, uh, that meant that the overtake was up. Oh, I'm going to try talking again now. <laughs> Very exciting indeed. No, exactly. I mean, moves going on left, right and centre and these back markers as well, as you mentioned, no blue flags in BUKC, so they've really got no idea if the person coming up behind them to overtake them is for position or is a driver uh, at the front of the field. Luckily, no one getting too in the way for the moment. Here's Reading A. Reading A have just gone through on Coventry A, so they've closed that gap so fast here. We've now got a four-cart uh, four uh, battle here for the lead going into the last couple of minutes. Southampton A still lead the race. Bath A now in second, Reading A now in third, and Coventry A now in fourth. Our four championship contenders are battling out on track in the first race of the day. Just need to see this five more times now, and it makes the spread to do pretty much irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, true. That would make our jobs a little bit easier in the comms box. But uh, it's been it's been uh, a good run so far from Southampton A. Fastest They've lap now. They've just had another track limit They've penalty. Had penalty had another one, have Southampton they? A. Yeah, they have another track limit penalty. 103.8 for Southampton on the last lap. So time's still getting faster and faster, but. The results that you're going to see on stream here at the end of the race are going to be very different from the actual results on results.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash BUKC. So make sure you go and have a look at that because yeah, these results are going to be very provisional. Is this, you reckon, just a bit of a glory run for Southampton? They've realised, you know what, it's an outside chance. Let's really impress it <laughs> in that final round. Maybe not impress the stewards, but impress us on stream at least. Yeah, I mean, they have been very impressive with their quick driving, but... Uh, they've not been keeping out of the stewards book which is kind of what you need to do to get a good result here because um they're applied the the, the penalties are applied from uh, from the back so it means that effectively the guys at the front are affected the worst by the penalties uh, to make it a little bit fairer so it's going to be a tough one for Southampton A. They could even drop out of like the top 10 here uh, when, when the penalties are applied. They've got quite a few on their name. But they could actually be helped 
by the fact of how scrappy this race has been in terms of penalties, that so many other people are going to be getting penalties, that maybe it'll mean it's not so bad. Side by side for the lead, though, up to Christmas Corner, trying it round the outside of Barthay. The 13 of Reddinger gets involved, though. They go down the inside. Very opportunistic there from Mr. Flashman, and he takes second place in this race then. Only 15 seconds to go on the clock. When they come through, side by side once again down at Ashby. Back down the inside goes Bath A. Brilliant battles going on in the final couple of minutes of this race. Reading A have come through from the back of the grid. So has another one of the drivers in this battle that I saw in the comments. Bath A have come from 31st in this race. Bath A currently 31st to second. Reading A currently 34th to third. This is an incredible battle. The time hits zero. When Southampton A come through to end this lap, they will see the final lap board, and it's three battling for second place at the moment, but can they close it on Southampton A? Yeah, they're number, number four there. Oh, it's finished. Oh, yeah, we, do we don't get plus a lap. Doesn't look to be oh, the case. No, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I could have sworn we had plus a lap, one lap in BUKC. I've been commentating on so many other championships that I just forget <laughs> these things. Well, that was the final lap, if, ladies and gentlemen. If it's any Apologies. consolation, the other championship I've been commentating on a lot recently is also plus one yeah. lap. So. OK, <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. Uh, I forgot that uh, BUKC, as soon as the time hit zero, that was it. We're very Southampton professional. A, yeah, it was super professional. Sorry, guys. Southampton, they take the win of the race then. Brilliant race from them, but as we mentioned many times in that, a lot of penalties. So these results very provisional. Bath A, Reading A, Coventry A, those are your top four, and of course the top of the top four in the championship as well. So can they continue this throughout the day, getting good results? And coming from the back of the pack as well, that was Bath A and Reading A, one of their worst starts for this uh, for this morning round. So if they can do that from the back. What can they do when they're starting a bit further That's up? They've got to be pretty confident and aspiring. Exactly, And exactly. it just means that this championship battle is just looking a little bit more exciting. It, it, it carries on. It, did. it does, it does. It's going to be really exciting. I will say, though, I, w I want to say that I didn't see Reading A too much on the penalty list. So uh, potentially yes. they're setting themselves up for a, a good result. And they are the ones that came through from right at the back. So to be able to do that in tough conditions, as oh dear, some drivers have carried on, I think, Potentially, they were meant to stop there. Anyway, they've all been told Maybe to Maybe we through. need to lay off the Stella. <laughs> I think we've been having a bit too much, mate. <laughs> I think we, uh, yeah, we need a break in the comms box after that one. Started off a little bit more subdued with the conditions, of course, uh, making it slightly challenging, not only just to keep it on track, but to go for any sort of moves. As it started to dry up now, I mean, what did we get to at the end of the session there? Fastest lap of a 102.7. We started up in the 111s to begin with, so it's dried out a lot already in that race, and it should continue to do so in, into, uh, into the next race. But you can see there the drivers all hopping up and out of their carts and uh, soon we'll be on for the second race of the day. Of course, another sprint race. We started off uh, with the lightweights there for the first race of the day. It'll be heavyweights uh, coming up next. Now, I'm trying to find on my notes whereabouts I've noted the, w the waiting for that. There we go. It's lightweight, so they were 75 kg minimum weight. The heavyweights we're going to see next are 82 kg minimum weight. But here's the results then, as we say, the very provisional results for race number one. Reeve, do you want to take us through it? Cool. So Southampton A, Bath A and Renegade are podium. Then coverage A, Huddersfield, Brighton B, Cardiff C, Love for B and A, and then Porting Bay for the top 10. Lead to be Oxford, Brooks A, Warwick A and Liverpool B on top 14. Then it will be Love for D, Swansea. A, Imperial B, Leeds A, Birmingham A and Nottingham Trent A on top 20. Oxford Brooks B, Southampton C, Bruno A, Edinburgh A with the Jaffa Cakes in here, thank you very much. Sheffield B, Warwick B and Sheffield C. And then we have UWE B, Cardiff B, Bristol A, UWE A, Liverpool C, Lancaster B, Imperial A and Swansea B rounding out the field. As we say, all provisional as we get ready for round two in just a moment. Indeed, yeah, very, very, very professional. If you want to keep up with the with the timing of what's going on, of course, we'll keep you updated as much as we can on the stream. But if you want to head over to the timing, that's live.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash BUKC, and you just change that live bit to results to see all the final results after the race. Now, a lot of people are on the grid uh, getting everything sorted. I can't see too many drivers, though, which makes you think potentially uh, they are doing, um, are weighing the drivers uh, post race of that one potentially, which can sometimes happen. It's basically just up to BUKC and Club 100 whether they decide to do so or not. But that's why you've got to make sure if you're under the weight limit on yourself, which sadly I am no longer. Uh, but if you do happen to be uh, a more skinnier person than myself, you need to make sure that you're uh, getting the correct weight onto the car to offset that difference. Indeed. I'm just looking there. You can see the wind. Our BUKC flag's getting flown about. 
That is going to be left an ideal in the cart, but we are ready now to go down to a Mr. Pierce Pryor on the grid for, to have a chat with some more drivers. Yes, why not I grab with some word with some of the drivers who had that epic race. I'm hoping to grab a word with our Southampton driver in just a moment. Um, Southampton, we can grab a word because um, it was a, a great race throughout the field and uh, a good drive from yourself, uh, winning on the road. But unfortunately, just a couple of penalties uh, means that you won't be having the win on the results. Yeah, um, I mean, I came through sort of easily, um, got a bit stuck at the start. But when everyone's bumping around, you can't do too much. And I think I picked up a cone pen at the last corner from getting scored squeezed and then getting pushed through, getting on the track limits, that's obviously my fault. So I've got quite a few pens for track limits, so I'm not, not best pleased with that, but hopefully the others can pull through and get a half decent result. It was good to watch the race regardless. Anyway, well done on the win on the road. Uh, still uh, not too bad. It'll be inside the top 10, so you can still do well from there. I was hoping to grab a word with Oliver Flashman, who is, uh, I think, our eventual race winner, but he's run away. Let me see if I can find him. Uh, for our reading. Let's grab uh, Oliver. I'll uh, see if I can wave him down. Where's the Reading team there? Come on, guys. No, OK, we'll get them later. It's fine. Uh, anyway, let's uh, look ahead to race number two now, a heavyweight race. Uh, we've got full good of drivers. We saw some good fun. Actually, why don't we grab... Actually, before before you run away, uh, chat to you before the race. Um, ben, uh, a very close fight for the lead. Um, I think, actually, yeah, you should put that down. It's probably it's quite heavy. Um, it was a, that was a good race. It was really good to watch. It was just... It was way at the start, so I was then going to the lead. I just sort of maintained the pace. I was driving at like 70%. And then my team told me Southampton had a penalty, so I just sort of stayed behind them. And then we sort of caught some back markers, and then Reading and, Southamp Reading and someone else caught us as well. Both, yeah. yeah, but I think one of them got a penalty ahead, so I think P2. So it's not awful. but P2 is pretty good, and especially considering you guys are fighting for the championship. Well, yeah, so it's OK. We would have liked the win, though. We always like the win. But anyway, well done, Ben. It's a good result for you. Uh, uh, a championship, potentially a championship winning driver. Now, it's, it's a little bit wet down here in the curb, so I will allow our camera operator to negotiate that while we then... Oh, oh my goodness, I've gone. Oh, sorry about that, everyone. That'll make the blooper real. Um, makes my life easier. Let's start at the back of the grid. Why not? There's someone with a flash lid at the back. Lewis. Lewis Jones. Uh, outside, last place. Um, who are you racing for? Uh, Lancaster Road. Lancaster. Um, just talk to me what you, about your day. What you, what you think of the race ahead? Observations uh, from the first race? Last or first challenge? Or we'll, we'll give it a try. What's your wager? What do you mean? Do you want to put a wager on it? Uh, no, thanks. I, I'm not too hopeful about that, really, but uh, we'll give it a go, see we'll what give, we can do. Uh, I also quite enjoy the uh, the footwear that's going on from one of your teammates just down there on the grid. If you want to swing round there, brilliant. I've never seen anyone in a race suit, socks and sliders, it's, only uh, at the BUKC. Weight reduction. Weight reduction. I don't think that goes underneath the, uh, underneath the rules you're allowed to wear in the cart, but um, you know what? You do you. Um, Lancaster. Talk to us, you know, what's the hope for today? What are you trying to get out of today? Hopefully win Clubman's. Well, you're well in with the shout, aren't you? We are, yeah. We're first by, what, four points? So hopefully we can keep that by the end of the day. I well, so. well, if you can go last to first, that'll be uh, one step towards it. So good luck, Lancaster. Lancaster always good uh, good for chatting very well in the Clubman's. Next year, maybe they'll uh, make it up to the mains. We shall see. It all depends on how they do in the qualifiers, which is coming up in November next year. Let's jump on in here. Is this Paul? It is, yes. Paul, who, who gives you your full name? Who are you racing for? Barthé. Paul, um, Paul Barthé, that first race was uh, was tasty. Yeah, it was a good one. Good it was a good one to watch. Um, did you guys get a penalty in that one? No, I don't think we did. You won it. You won it. Yeah. I thought Reading won. They had a, they had a penalty. Uh, Oh, OK. Oh, in which case, what a, what a day. What a, come on in. I, everyone ran away. Everyone ran away. I didn't, couldn't see you. Oh, I've got a really muddy bum now. Oh, anyway, um, talk to us about that race. That was good. Yeah, it was a really good race. Um, I always like it when it's drying up in like, these drying conditions. So I just knew from the back I just had to have a good start, good race. And it went better than what I thought. It went very, very well. And also, it's, um, it's, uh, it's interesting when it's drying out because every lap is, is different, isn't it? Yeah, every lap you've got to adjust to the track. Some laps it's grippier. Obviously, sometimes you get a bit wetter if someone goes in a puddle. So... It's just all about adapting out there. Any tips for any drivers watching the stream about to go out? I've given tips to my drivers, no one else. <laughs> Fair enough. What did you talk to Paul about then? Just some of the dry lines, wet lines, where the grip is, where it isn't. So hopefully he can use it to have a good race and get some more points. Brilliant. Of course, uh, you guys are in with an outside chance of the championship. Well, I suppose I say outside, you're in with a chance of the championship. So, Paul, what can you do in this race to help you guys get you know, one step closer? 
I mean, I think it's good that we got a good result in the first race as well, so it's a bit less pressure on me. Uh, we have some good drivers. I think just keep looking ahead, keep it clean. I think penalties are going to be the main the main game changer in this championship fight. So look ahead, keep it clean, and see where I can end up. Absolutely. And uh, you know, is there any? Um, have you got any experience around this circuit in these carts? Yeah, but yeah, not, not the, actually not the international layout, only the Zulu. But I mean, I like the the international layout better. So we'll see how it feels on the brakes going through through that hairpin as well. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. Uh, let's see if we can grab a word with someone at the starting at the front of the grid before we uh, go racing once again. Uh, Oxford Brooks in this race here. We've got uh, many, many experienced drivers in this grid. And who is starting on pole? It's a Liverpool driver on pole. Liverpool always have a fun day out. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've seen many races where Liverpool have had a boring race. Um, remind us who you are and which Liverpool team you're racing for. Uh, Johnny from Liverpool B. Johnny, uh, Liverpool's day so far. First race, how did it go for him? Uh, I think there was quite a few penalties, I'm not going to lie. I don't think it went particularly well. <laughs> so you're not going to emulate that? Hopefully not, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't plan on. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, good luck in that one. I think we're pretty much ready to go for race two. So, race two, first heavyweight race of the day, sprint race once again. Reeve, John, over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Piers. You've joined us in the Comstock. It's an interesting time. I've, I've made a comment which we're not going to repeat on the stream, but a very uh, a big good luck to the to the Liverpool B driver uh, starting on pole uh, for this one. But why don't you take us through the grid, Reeve, if you're if you're feeling able to do so? So it is my close friend Johnny Pinder there on pole, and then it's Sheffield C, and then we have the second row: Imperial A, Coventry F, then row three is Leeds B and Leicester A. Moving on to the fourth row: GWE A and Sheffield B. Row five is Oxford Brooks B and Cardiff C. Row six being Coventry E and Nottingham Trent A. And then the next row, it is Sheffield A and Surrey A. Row 8, Manchester A, Cambridge A. Row 9 being Bath C and Cardiff B. Row 10, it is Warwick A and Oxford Brooks A. Row 11, Swansea B and Birmingham B. Row 12, Euclid A and Cardiff A. Moving on then to row 13, Liverpool A and Bath A. Row 14 is Liverpool C and Exeter A. Row 15 is Southampton B and Coventry B. Moving on to row 16, it is Bristol Lake Loughborough D, and then rounding out the field is Oxford Brooks D, and then Lancaster A. Lots more big hitters in this one. And Reeve, of course, back for the practice laps for all of these. Oh, as there's a spin out of the last corner. They were helped around a little bit there by another driver. Yeah, it looked um, rather progressive, that it, one. It, it did, it did, it definitely did. A lot of drivers getting right out to that exit curb as well, which is absolutely solid, as you can see, as some of the drivers hit it, it's kicking up loads of water, so you don't want to get out there, especially on these slick tyres. Very, very slippery, as that driver does uh, actually rejoin the race. But yeah, practice laps once again. All these sprint races in the morning uh, will be the drivers' first races of the day, so they get three laps of practice before we get underway uh, with green flag action. Uh, I will say as well, I think we need to see Piers Pryor in socks and sliders for the next few interviews out there on track. Oh yeah, I mean the conditions pertain to it, don't they? He's already he's he's already complaining about his, he's having a fashion nightmare there with his jeans and his and his mud and, and all. He's just complaining, isn't he? So I imagine if we give him some sliders, it'll be it'll be even worse. I think he should be loving life with the sliders on. Very freeing. Yes. Airflow, especially with the wind out there on Turkey, you'd be getting lots of airflow. Yeah, through, just look uh, at that flag at the left hand it's side going of the crazy. screen there. You can see it even in the grass, the poor cameramen and women out there uh, for, with the Alpha Live team who are getting this coverage for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, uh, are braving out there in the conditions at the moment. Luckily for them, not raining yet. <laughs> and luckily for us, inside. Yes, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't mind what's going on outside. We're, we're nice and warm and toasty in here, but not, not to rub it in. There's all big spin there through the first couple of corners, so it is still pretty slippery as the drivers just try to find where that grip is out on circuit. Now, of course, uh, the timing oh, the, the timing is counting these laps. Okay, interesting. What are we looking at then? Drivers in sort of the 104s, 5s, 6s, around there, I would say. Uh, what do we see? A 102? A lonely camera. A lonely camera. Where's the cameraman or woman? Where are they gone? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's the a static. static. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're looking at the static now. That actually, this so is that why we're sense. talking about it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, at, I was down at that exact camera point, but I was manning it for, for British Car Champs last week. 
bit of a scary place to be. So I think it's probably best that there is a static here, especially for BUKC drivers. Yes. And especially today where it's super wet on the grass. And I feel like if you're coming off onto the grass, you're only going to be speeding up today uh, towards that uh, towards that barrier and towards that camera. So luckily, it's a bit of a lonely camera there today. But I'm sure the Alpha Live team definitely don't want you guys to hit it out there. So keep, keep avoiding it, please. You saw there a number of drivers going very wide onto the rumble strips. So much water being held in those rumble strips. And it's causing all that steam to then come off the engine as, uh, as they get peppered by the water. But practice laps over. Checkered flags come out for the practice laps. The driver's going to be getting back in two by two formation for this one. And we're going to kick off another 25 minute sprint race for you. Here we are then, getting behind the pace cart now. So, yeah. what big hitters have we got in this race then? We've got X to A starting in 28th place. Uh, Liverpool have been pretty quick there in 25th. Liverpool A, you've got Cardiff A in 24th. I think I saw it was Jensen Davis who jumped in the cart, who's won a couple of races already this season as Jensen, so don't count him out uh, from 24th place. You can have definitely won a race or two as well there in 23rd. Oxford Brooks A as well in 20th. Uh, Warwick A, of course, have given on the, us the Stellars. They're there in 19th place. Manchester A, another very t quick team in 15th. They just haven't quite been able to put it together yet uh, uh, this season so maybe uh, improvements coming today I don't think we saw them out in the last race so I think this is their first race of the day but the top 10 a little sparse of big hitters I will say most drivers coming through from the back here uh, of our sort of top teams in the series so this could be interesting with how this plays out and how the drivers take to this one are we ready for a start or are we going around again it looks like we're still going around again for one more warm-up lap we did actually see some pictures from some of the marshals down there of what these lovely pristine carts look oh like goodness. after that first race. And they it, they look like they've been through a rally cross. Genuinely. Gen I, when I came for the arrival drive yesterday, I saw the couple hundred carts out in the uh, in the dummy grid, and they were pristine. They were beautiful. Someone had done a really good job with the pressure washer, but these drivers have sort of uh, yeah. undone all that hard work. Oh, yeah, they weren't looking quite so good, were they? Super duper muddy, uh, but it is very boggy out there. If you get in the off circuit, it's just going to be caking both yourself and the cart with lots and lots of mud. So keeping it on the black stuff is, is definitely uh, the main objective for this race. I think if you just keep out of trouble, keep yourself in the race, you can be on for a good result. As shown in the last one with drivers coming through right from the back of the grid, I think we're probably going to be seeing more of that here in race number two with as i say uh, lots of drivers starting near the back of the pack who are maybe our more heavy hitters we're going around again though for another warm-up lap so uh something that maybe the uh, the shooting team just not so happy with i think everyone's pretty much in formation they're doing that they're doing that fine as that we've got a driver exiting the pit so that'll be the reason why so a driver has either had their car totally conk out or they've decided it's not up to scratch for some reason or, or, or another so they've been given a, an extra car and the lovely people at Club 100 have held the race for a couple of laps so that they're able to get back out on circuit and rejoin the pack. So it's the number 10 uh, who has rejoined. Trent so that's a. Nottingham Trent A, yeah, starting 12th place. So they're going to have to go around uh, and refine their, their starting position in this one. But as you can see, driver's not really weaving at all. It doesn't do a huge amount. Uh, with the slips yeah. on these, they're, they're very difficult to get any sort of temperature into. Um, but these few laps, these extra laps going around not at full race speed will just be cooling those tyres down, cooling those tyres down, cooling those tyres down. Uh, so yeah, it makes it a little bit more challenging for the race start. I think we're still going around again for another warm-up lap. We are indeed. Yeah, so one, one more warm-up lap. But let's see how this one goes then. Second race of the day for round number seven of the British University Starting Championship in 2023 and 2024. Of course, after today, that's it really for BUKC Racing, at least on Alpha Live. We see lots of people there. Great to see so many people at the side of the circuit, the full lead squad there. Do uh, a Mexican the... wave. <laughs> we, we did that. I, I don't know if you were watching at the British Car Champs Oplay. We, um, Henry managed to get most people up there to do a Mexican wave. Some weren't quite as interested. Uh, but great to see all the drivers cheering on uh, their fellow team members. I see Adam Kernis there uh, for Leeds uh, just up in the gantry, having a look at what's going on. Hopefully, we're not too far away from a race start this time around, though. And we can get on with race number two. Like I was saying, this is the last of uh, 
of action for the main championship. We've got the Inters here tomorrow, which sadly isn't streamed. No drivers' champs uh, for this year, sadly, uh, on Sunday. Uh, but then BUKC 24 to look forward to. But hey, we've got race two to look forward to. Here we go then, Liverpool B and Sheffield C lead us to the lights and away we go for race number two. Great start from the inside of the grid. Liverpool B have slipped through and held on to that lead and all the rest of the drivers following through. Super close there, two, three, even four wide out of the first two corners. Up to Christmas we go then. A couple of drivers late down to the inside there for the number five. That was a bold move from Oxford Brooks B, but it seems to have worked as no one's faced in the wrong direction. So that is a positive. But look at this. Already the front three or four drivers trying to break away here as they're not involved in the ridiculous gaggle that's going on behind them. If they could just work together, start to press on forward early in this race, they can get a nice little gap between themselves and the rest of the field pressing on behind them. But halfway through lap number one, and I've managed to not commentate as curse it yet. Everyone looking pretty good. Yeah, so far we saw through the first corner, the back ends on a few cars to start to look a little bit unsettled, but as you say, we've worked our way through it and worked our way well. Imperial A, of course, this is gonna be a race of redemption for them. They started off strong, they started high up and tumbled back down the order. They're currently in P2, trying to put that pressure on the Liverpool B cards in the lead here. And we're gonna be fighting onto the next lap now. A few changes for position, someone tumbling down the order here. I think that is Cardiff C potentially. Oh dear, yeah, Cardiff C down 14 on that lap. Not ideal for them. Not sure if I can check the list uh, who is in the cart for Cardiff C. It's Nathan Fletcher who's in that cart at the moment. So it's not been a great first lap for him. Down 14, another driver down 10. Sheffield B, they've not had a great start to this race. And already, after one lap of racing, we've got a couple of warnings coming through already, a couple of track limit warnings. So. I think maybe the drivers haven't passed on the message from the first race to watch out for those track limits. No, potentially there is that Liverpool B driver out and lead Mr. Johnny Pinder there. There's a fairly infamous quote within Liverpool's gone about my thoughts on his ability to pick up penalties. So hopefully that doesn't carry on ringing true. He is under pressure though, and it is Imperial A putting that pressure on. We just saw then we were on board with the Nottingham Trent A cart also under pressure. We're back with this lead battle though as we head through the new Herpin, the new part of the lap, getting back onto the start finish straight now. A line of cars heading down into that first corner, a 104.5 from the race leader. Well, we're into 103s in the mid pack, wow. so the time's looking strong already early on into this race. Drivers getting into that good rhythm now. Coventry, that is that fastest lap there. A few more track limit warnings coming in, but no penalties so far. So a good start to this race. Not just yet, late, very late move down the inside there from Coventry E, Sheffield C. I think that is though fighting back and retake the place. But yeah, as you say, time's already tumbling in this race. And you can just see how different this race is already. Look how close the whole field is here. And we're a good few minutes into the race. Already, there was a good maybe eight, nine, 10 seconds between the top 10 uh, by this time in the race. So definitely drawing out, time's tumbling and battles forming as well. Top three line of stern, as we said, they wanted to work together early on. Side it hasn't worked side. though, down the inside. Two drivers trying it down the inside. It's not gonna work for one of them, but through go Imperial A to the lead of the race, just about around the outside Lee goes B. Lead Hello. B. What a move. Brilliant driving there to seize an opportunity that you wouldn't really think was going to work. What is it with over overtakes around the outside here at Wilton Mill recently? Impressive stuff, yeah. Leeds B getting a place and they're looking feisty as well. They're in second place. They've got a good exit out the first couple of corners, trying to just squeeze through there. Not quite able to do so, but the move might still be on up at Christmas corner. Lay down the inside, they make contact. The Ooh. leader goes well, collected by Liverpool. Four drivers collecting into them. Saw so just squeezing through the middle. There was one driver. That was a big one up at Christmas corner. And we've lost a good three or four drivers from that lead battle. We have indeed Imperial A spinning around and of course about three cars behind, nowhere for them to go. It was so close quarters and that is a great shame there. Lead B of course, I imagine ecstatic with that one probably. <laughs> It's just got a little bit easier behind them. It has, it has. Yeah, they'll be counting their lucky stars. They're very happy with what's happened there. We look forward. There's Oxford Brooks uh, B, that is. The, who's the number behind them? Is that the number six or is that the number nine who's just behind them? It is the number nine. So that's Sheffield A. They've got past Nottingham Trent A That's and a gained six. a few more positions. Is it? I'm pretty sure it's the number nine, no? Well, we'll see. They're about to cross the line. We'll see who's in what position. It's all very much changed on this last lap. Leeds B at the front of the field. Coventry F and... It was the number nine of Sheffield A, but six of Manchester are very close behind. So those four all 
very close together, but this is the lead battle still. Leeds B versus Coventry F at the front of the field. Probably two teams we didn't expect to be the ones fighting at the front, but hey, they're producing some great battling. Thinking about the move down the inside is Coventry F, and they do make it work. Nice and easy. He was just brave to go for that inside line that perhaps wouldn't have been the ideal one to go for in race one, but the door was wide open for them, and they were able just get that move in and it was fairly textbook it looked quite easy for them we have a black flag for Leeds B though oh black flag for Leeds B in second place it just says multiple I'm going to assume that's potentially uh, multiple, multiple contact or maybe multiple track multiple limits offenses of same. something multiple Either way, offenses of many things they've been rather naughty so they're going to come, they're gonna come around this final corner and they're going to see it up on the board what's their reaction going to be there to this are. one I think just a bit of a head tilt there. <laughs> they know they're going to have to come into the pits now. It's a 74. So Brooks B now coming up behind them and looking to take the position. But they've got nothing to worry about. They're going to get it at the end of the lap anyway because the 74 of Leeds B is going to have to go back into the pits down the inside. Thinks about it as Oxford Brooks, uh, Oxford Brooks B but thinks better of it this time around then. Battle still going on further down though. We're so focused on this lead battle. There's still lots going in behind. This is just outside of the top 10, I think. Brooks trying to come through. So that'll be Brooks A in 12th place, trying to gain a few more positions. They thought about it down the inside, but the driver ahead of them then went for a move. I think that was Coventry E trying it down the inside of UWE A there in the background. It's all going off. Here's the move for second place though. Oxford Brooks B put it down the inside and nearly sent Leeds B off into the curves on the outside. They're going to lose four positions from that alone but it doesn't matter too much of them. They're coming straight in the pits, or they should be if they've seen the black flag. Uh, we'll see as they come around the corner. Do they exit the corner? No, into the pits they go. So well done from Leeds B, respecting the black flag, but maybe could have avoided that uh, if they had uh, maybe come into this race uh, with a little bit of a different mindset. But either way, great racing from Leeds B to get to the front of the order. Hasn't quite worked out by the end of it, though. But look at this. As mentioned, the driver's from the top teams near the back of the pack are coming through as we thought they are. Brooks B now find themselves in second place. Sheffield A in third, Nottingham Trent A fourth, Manchester A in fifth, Surrey A sixth, and Cardiff A in seventh. And Cardiff A have just set the fastest lap of the race. I told you not to count out Jensen Davis of, Car of Cardiff A. He's won at least one race, if not two, already this season. And he's flying through the order. Four and a half seconds back from the lead when they crossed the line last time around. But Coventry F still have a nice little gap here. And last lap anyway, they set their personal best of a 101.8. Fastest lap of the race at the moment, a 101.4. So they're still very close on pace at Coventry F. I think it still, still will take a lap or two for these drivers to close in. And they're going to need to work together as well. We've got a good amount of time left for them to close in that gap. But if they start scrapping heavily, Coventry F could just build a nice gap here. Coventry F just go fastest. A one minute point, a one minute dead, 0 0.805. Wow, they've actually extended that gap. So, fair play. Coventry F still on with a shout of winning this race. Yeah, they've looked good from earlier on. They're pushing along nicely. The top 10 separated or covering just nine seconds in this race so far. As you were saying, the difference now we've got some slightly improved conditions compared to race one. It's night and day, really. I would just, I think maybe a bit of Warden Law PTSD when we had freezing temperatures pretty much and the track just refused to dry up but it seems to have dried up rather nicely here so far. Yeah, we've got some lovely sunshine beaming down on the circuit at the moment. There's a lovely move, though, to the inside. Is that Trent trying to get it done there? Maybe even three wide off the exit of the corner. No, that's 23 of Surrey. So Surrey have got through on Manchester. Now they're trying it on Trent. No, it's the nine of Sheffield. So Trent are through on Sheffield. Now Surrey are trying it on Trent, but they're going to get forced out to the outside here. Slipping back through potentially other six. Late move down the inside. Surrey trying to hold on to the place. They just about do so, but they lose so much time that Cardiff A trying to get involved with the battle as well. Four drivers now battling over the same piece of tarmac. Sheffield A, Surrey A, Manchester A and Cardiff A. Liverpool A having a good race as well. They're up to eighth place now. They're battling up in the top ten. So lots of big teams getting involved now. Here's a move down the inside for the six of Manchester A though. Gets the place back on Surrey A. But this is the issue I was talking about. These three not working together, battling well. It means that the drivers ahead starting to scamper off and build a bit of a gap. But I was saying Coventry F, I'm, they're like, I'm like, oh, they've just got a penalty. They've just got a penalty. As I mentioned, the Coventry F curse. track limit penalty. So Coventry F can no longer win this race. They do have a penalty to their name. So that will mean, of course, by when the uh, penalties are added at the end, they're not able to win. The first driver with no penalties wins the race in this one. Now, trying to keep up to date with the penalties is a bit of a challenge. Uh, 15 minutes left to go on this one. 
speaking of the penalties, from race one, it's Bathe, Coventry and Reading A as your podium. That OK. Is, that, that seems to be what the official order is. Oh, Southampton dropped to 13. They did indeed. I'm just, I'm, I'm, if I go missing and completely disappear, never to be seen again on the face of the earth, I am in the spreadsheet of doom, that is why. Yes, yes, Reeve has been working away tirelessly while I'm talking with you this race. Manchester A making a move was that we got the six versus the nine it's very difficult in terms of numbers for us up in the comms box it was the six who made it through so manchester putting the move and through goes surrey a as well so sheffield a trickling down from fourth to sixth place there and surrey looking very very fast here back to uh, back to fifth place they've gone on this lap and Surrey A, they started down in 14th. It's Tom Law who's in the car for Surrey at the moment, at least according to my notes. So if teams have changed drivers after they submitted uh, their driver list, then we're not going to know that. But at least consider it, at least uh, going off the driver list that was submitted by the teams, that's who is in the cart at the moment. We've still got so many penalties coming through. Sheffield C with a cone penalty, more track limits as well. One for Sheffield B, one for Birmingham B. I think it's track limits is the main thing today the drivers really need to be careful of if you're watching the stream you're here at the circuit you're racing today that's why you need to be really careful today is those track limits clearly the uh, the uh, the people out on circuit for a couple of hundred who monitor those penalties and, and, and hand them out really really uh, being on it today in terms of track limits but look at that first lap sub one minute comes courtesy of Lancaster A they're having a decent day so far at the moment 13th place for Lancaster A they were starting right near the back they made a good, they, a good way up the up the circuit so far, making some good positions. And as we said earlier, they really need to have a proper stinker today to to not secure the club and championship. And hey, 13th place, that's a that's a good spot to be taken. Of course, Warwick A, their closest challengers, uh, they were out in race number one, but I don't think. Oh, they are in this race. They're down in 31st place, so not this going is too much. well. It's looking like Lancaster A have it sorted, but we don't want a commentator's curse them, so we won't say anything well, just no, yet. Well, no, we seem to be boosting them up in, 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 in our rankings. They don't seem to think they're doing quite as well as I think they are. They think they're about four points ahead, don't they? Yeah, they do. And uh, do you, Can you recall from the spreadsheet of Jim how many points they actually are? It, it was 20-something, yeah, wasn't it? it was a, it's, well, the official timing says seven points. The spreadsheet of Doom... 15 points. 15, yes, yeah, see, it's quite a few to be gained in the last round. So, yeah, they maybe think they're in a bit more of a precarious position than we do uh, with the spreadsheet of doom. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how that continues through the day. But as we say, they're doing a good, good job out there in 12th place. But uh, racing still going on at the top positions here. 12 and a half minutes left to go on the clock. Surrey A have moved past both Manchester and Sheffield now into fourth place. They've gone, but no one has been able to touch Coventry F. They've held that lead very nicely. They now go sub one minute at 59.7 for Coventry F. And now a couple more drivers finding the 59th, a lot more. 59s for Nottingham Trent A, uh, Surrey A, Manchester A, Sheffield A, Liverpool A, Exeter A, UWE A. They're all dropping and dropping and dropping. And look at that, Lancaster A with another fastest lap. Yep, absolutely flying along now. And more importantly, I think, for Coventry F, they got into the 59s, but Oxford Brooks B didn't. So they're in a really nice phase of this race now where they can start to break away from those cars trying to put the pressure on behind and I'm not going to say completely relax out there but maybe start thinking about other things like you know towards the end of the race maybe making sure that you keep that gap keep that consistent gap as you can see that we've gained three positions for Coventry F Surrey A and Manchester A as we mentioned on a bit of a charge at the moment they've gained plenty of positions you look at that Cardiff A and Liverpool A both up 17 places pretty Extra much A up 19 Lancaster up 22, some huge movies in yeah. this one. That uh, earlier race instance, of course, basically meant that you didn't want to start anywhere high up the order at all. No, if you started true. in the high up in the order, you were pretty much out of the running. So, yeah, those in the mid-pack and lower down the field are, are having a great time out there. Indeed, yeah, there were lots of uh, big teams at the back of the order starting for this one. And they've made their way up through nicely, as proven by the graphic on the left-hand side of the screen. So thank you to Alpha Live for bringing us those updates and changes of positions. A couple of drivers not quite having such a good day. Cardiff C down 21, Sheffield C down 31, Leeds B down 29. Of course, we saw them get a black flag earlier. They'll be back out on circuit and circulating now, but definitely at least a lap or two down on the rest of the field. So as we close in to 10 minutes left to go in this one, closest battle up near the front. I mean, I, I do believe the drivers in behind are starting to close in now, that being led.
by, uh, sorry, A, that we've just seen in your shot, who are following around the boot section. They're sort of dragging along with them, Manchester A and Sheffield A. Cardiff A, there and thereabouts in behind as well, but they're definitely closing in on those drivers in front, that being Nottingham Trent A, Oxford Brooks B there in third and second, and then the 74 is the one just in front of them. Now, that is Leeds B, who have had that black flag, so let's see how they deal with this they've already had a black flag in this race they're totally out of the running in this one but we knew from earlier on in this race that they had the pace to be batting up with these uh, ladies and gentlemen near the front of the field so do they move over and let them out uh, let, let the drivers through do they get involved we'll have to wait and see there's the move for second place though down the inside go nottingham trent a through they go on oxford brook b next to a still threatening the 58 no one's quite managed it just yet but we've got a 59 0.06 cone penalty coming in for Bath C there. We seem to have uh, uh, we've reduced the penalties down to a trickle now instead yes. of a stream, which is good. Which is good. Still got plenty of warnings coming in though. Yes, also yes. Yeah, it's it's been better in this race, but I mean, could it have been much worse than race number one? Probably not. Uh, yes, yeah, you saw there on the gantry that cone penalty coming through for Bath C. Bit of change up in the top five though. Sheffield A have finally got back past Manchester A. There are your leaders of Coventry F. They are doing a fantastic job out there on circuit at the moment in the number 64. Here we look back though to, I believe, second and third place. Yeah, the number 10 with the number five just in behind. So Nottingham Trent A still keeping themselves ahead of Oxford Brooks B after that making, well, after making that move a lap or so ago. As we were saying, closest challenges Ooh, towards the 50. Oh, that is a 32. Off. That is Liverpool the A. Of Liverpool A, yes. Ninth place. So that's from a big top 10 position there for Liverpool A. They've gone wide down at Ashby, found the grass. But to be fair, managed to keep it facing in the right direction and got back on circuit. So good cart control there uh, from that the driver is, of yeah, Liverpool perhaps A. That's surprising. We, it was a rather late night for Liverpool squad, shall we say. <laughs> a rather late night, a bit of a. Uh, just couldn't get to sleep. Any particular reason? No, no. Get sleep. Uh, tough one. You know how it is. Yeah. The BUKC. I get you. But maybe there, there was a lot of hydration involved. Perhaps. <laughs> hey, we love BUKC and we love BUKC finals as well because, of course, uh, we've got the mainstay today, interstay tomorrow. We've got a nice little BUKC party tonight as well for everyone at the circuit. We do, yes. Uh, so I, I think you'll be attending that, right? Are you going? Undecided. Oh. Had I been able to drive myself, I would have been attending. I get you. But. Uh, to the car gods decided that ah. Reef shouldn't, Reef shouldn't yes, be Yes, yeah, your cars don't like you at the moment, so understandable. I myself will be attending the event this evening, so I hope to see you all there if you're watching uh, at the circuit. What doesn't help as well is that everyone else has decided to all bring my type of car. There's like five fellow Alpha Meter owners in the car park, so congratulations for your taste and thank you for rubbing it in and making it here. <laughs> the Mito Owners Club out in force at Wilton Mill today, clearly. A very popular car, uh, but not falling apart, uh, unlike yours. Yes. Uh, back to the racing on circuit, though. Cardiff A have now closed into this battle between Manchester A and Sheffield A. Jensen Davis, pace slightly dropping off in the middle part of the race there, but he's closed back in, and he thinks about a late move to the inside, so a double overtake there on Manchester A. Through go Sheffield and through go Cardiff. They both make that move work. And up they go into fifth and sixth place, respectively, then shuffling Sheffield back. But these three have been pretty much nose to tail for the last five or ten minutes, to be honest. So I think that could just continue uh, through to the end of the race here. They're still not too far behind Surrey A, eh? but they're going to have the work cut out for them to, to not only stop fighting, but catch Surrey A eh, in that fourth place. My, one of my fears has been confirmed. I said you know, the penalties had reduced to a trickle, but then we stole the warnings pile in. We're, we're ebbing and flowing at the moment with the penalties we had. Just a load of warnings, and now the penalties after those warnings are coming in. We have penalties. I've actually got to scroll. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. We yes. have penalties for Liverpool B, Leicester A, Cardiff B, Coventry F, Nottingham Trent A, Leicester A, all for track limits. Wow. Okay, yeah. Really watch out for those track limits, ladies and gentlemen, if you're here. That's a big one for Trent A, though. They're in second place at the moment in this race, and they've just secured themselves a penalty, so they definitely can't win the race. Um, and Coventry F as well on the same screen. I didn't even notice that. So Coventry F in the lead. Nottingham Trent A in second place. Uh, I think another one is just... Yeah, another track limits penalty has just come through for Nottingham Trent A. So the top two definitely cannot win this race here. Brooks B 
depending on penalties, I, I cannot remember whether they've got one or not, to be honest. We'll see who is able to win at the end of this one. There's a big move down the inside, though. Is that, is that, uh, no, that's a 74, so that's a crack mark of Leeds B, uh, who's getting overtaken here by our fifth, sixth, and seventh place carts. Cardiff A, right on the back of the number nine of Sheffield A. Not quite able to go for a move just yet, though, is Jensen Davis. Who is it in the car for Sheffield A in this race? It's Callum Barnett who's in the number nine. And the number six uh, just behind for Manchester A, that's William Wren who's in the car for them. So three drivers from three top teams going at it in this second race of the day. Just over five minutes left to go. And Lancaster once again have the fastest lap of the race. Now down in the 58, 58.899 fastest lap. Uh, from Lancaster. I've just remembered as well, I've been very silly because I said earlier about how the fact of I was in the low 50s in the rentals. I've just remembered that was on the Zulu track. So I was, <laughs> I saw very different track. I, did, I just assumed as is. Uh, you just safe assumed I'm rapid. No, I, yes, yes. That, <laughs> what I was about to say, it's quite a safe assumption to assume that I was wrong and I thought my 60 second estimate would have been completely off. No, but I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, rental cars probably around the, yeah, sort of. 62, 63, well, Unless they're really mark. fast rental cars. Unless, yeah. <laughs> unless they've got massive to be, engines. To be fair, yeah, something like D-Max. Uh, yes. They're quite similar to these couple of hundred cars, and they can get those at rentals at, at Daytona tracks. So, potentially, there is uh, number five going through on the back mark of Cardiff C. That is Oxford Brooks B continuing their charge, and we think uh, the driver, the first driver on circuit without a penalty. Uh, but we'll have to wait until after the race uh, to learn what those actual results are and pop them in the spreadsheet of doom so we can keep you updated throughout today's racing on how the championship is playing out. Those two carts are very close to each other as they head up to Christmas Corner. 77 and 56, neither willing to give the room out there. They're still side by side. The 56 just about slipping through those. That was Coventry E making the move on bar C for uh, 17th place, that was. And they have just picked up a contact penalty. Oh dear. That may have been probably if something a little bit before that. They were sub us up for quite a long shooting. time. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's just changed uh, in the top uh, five, six, and seven places. Cardiff A have got through, so have Manchester A, so Sheffield A have now been shoved back to the back of that gaggle, and here we look to it, Exeter A getting involved now as well, so down the inside goes the 30 of Lancaster A, shovels Manchester, uh, sorry, Sheffield A wide there, and through slips Exeter as well, so this whole gaggle has now closed in massively, the number two now down the inside, Sheffield A are getting absolutely hung out to dry here in the last couple of minutes, through go Oxford Brooks A, so a couple of big teams here who we have hadn't really seen so far in this race. Now starting to get involved as well. Exeter A piling on the pressure here, shoving that driver out, and Exeter A not happy with the earlier block uh, from Lancaster A. And Lancaster A falling all the way to the back of this group. Leeds B, the back marker now getting right back involved as well. They're like, I'm not getting hold up here. But through go uh, Lancaster. And this is now almost all for position. The 88 at the front of Cardiff C are not in this battle. So hopefully they're not going to put up too much of a fight and these drivers will get through. But we've got Exeter in seventh, Oxford Brooks Ooh. A in uh, in eighth. That's just the cart tester. I think that's Nicky Richardson in the cart so there coming, actually, out, yes. coming out from the pit lane. Uh, but understandably, uh, understandably the camera camera's following that, thinking someone's exiting the pits. But no, no, no board, no number on the cart denoting it's a car tester but two minutes left on this one i'm not gonna forget that we don't have plus one lap here as soon as it gets to zero that's the end of the race down the inside though goes oxford brooks a Ooh, squeezing that's... extra onto the money bits and an interesting hand gesture to uh, add on to that one as well from extra they're not very happy oh they're on circuit and into the barriers they go they're gonna be even less happy now they've got shoveled out wide there usually we try and aim for the tarmac <laughs> not the tires or the or the mud or the mud bogs that we have at the side of the track at the moment that is chaos there in this battle here. Exeter A, last year's champions, of course. Not feeling, I imagine, the same feeling they've got in this final round here today at Wilton Mill. Still a couple more track limit, uh, track limit pantics coming in. Cardiff B, multiple occasions, commentary E, Sheffield B, and Swansea B as well here. Yeah, Cardiff B have got loads. Oh, it's, it's Mr. Will Abraham, Funk Up Racer, BMW Racer, Tim for Cardiff B, getting loads of penalties. 
he, he actually had a really good race, to be fair, at Warden Law, did, did well. Uh, that hasn't continued, clearly, uh, uh, here to Wilton Mill, because yeah, I've, I think I've seen about five penalties recorded me so far in this race, so not going well uh, for Will Abraham. I did want to say, to be fair to Exeter, they've come from 28th place at the start of this one. Lancaster Ray, as we said, have come from 34th up into the top 10, so they're having a great race. But yeah, it's Sam Hampshire who's behind the wheel of Exeter A, the one who is not very happy with the drivers around him. 40 seconds left to go on the clock then. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the live timing. Indeed, yeah, Coventry F see the last lap board as they come under the gantry. They've still got a lovely three and a half second gap, but of course, we've definitely seen penalties for both Coventry F and Nottingham Trent A, so they definitely can't win this race. Uh, we'll try and find out who else doesn't have a penalty, but I think it's more people that do than don't, to be honest, in this race. On to the last lap we go, though. And it's been a good one this race, especially in that middle part of the top 10. It's been battles galore. It has. It has been absolute chaos. No one has been safe, as it turns out. Of course, those <laughs> front runners at the start, Liverpool B, Leeds B, now find themselves either in the mid-pack or completely out of the running for all intents and purposes. It is, it's, it's been typical BEKC chaos, but in a more fun way than what we had in race one. As Spencer comes in now for Cambridge A there as well. Oh dear, still some penalties coming through on the last couple of laps, though. Here is Coventry F. What a race it's been for them. Absolutely dominant at the front of the field. They're going to come round to see the chequered flag first, but sadly, they won't win the race uh, once penalties have been applied. Neither will Nottingham Trent A in second place. Potentially, Oxford Brooks B crossing the line in third are the ones that are going to be taking maximum points on that one, but Surrey A have got them on the last lap. They've just snuck through into third place there. So, of course, to remind you, head over to results.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash BUKC to find out what the proper result was from that race. But definitely a good one. And as we said earlier, with these track conditions drying up a little bit, it's creating some really good racing. Yes, the track's still not 100% in all areas, though. I think now in these sorts of things, you can really see the contrast between that brand new tarmac that is still a little bit slick, still a little bit greasy, perhaps. And the older stuff that everyone's familiar with that is all gripped up and ready to go. I think it's also struggling to dry out as well. As I was mentioning uh, to you earlier, to be fair, Club 100 have been really nice. They put a barrier all the way around what's basically like an infield pool uh, there at the last corner. So many people have gone off. They've got it, gone too late on the brakes into the left of the last corner, lost it and gone into, there it is on the right-hand side of your screen, into that bog. Very kindly, though, there's been a barrier place Are there they for being the BBC the drivers or to their carts? Probably not kind to their carts, I think. But either way, keeping both the carts and the drivers nice and dry, keeping out of that, what is basically, yeah, an infield pool section now here at Wilton Mill, which I think they're planning on filling in, but people keep going in it so often that it just keeps getting worse and worse. Here are your very provisional results then from race number two of round seven of the BUKC. Coventry F took the win on the road with Nottingham Trent almost five seconds behind. A good dominant performance there from the number 64. Surrey A round out the top three with a move on Oxford Brooks B on the last lap of the race. Then it's Cardiff A who round out the top five. A good race there from Jensen Davis. Manchester A were in sixth with Oxford Brooks A seventh and Lancaster A Great result from Lancaster Ray. They are pretty much there putting the nail in the coffin in terms of the clubman results here. We'll keep you updated throughout the day, but I think you can really realistically assume Lancaster Ray, 34 to 8. They have this championship wrapped up in clubman. Sheffield A and Exeter A round out the top 10 with a very unhappy Sam Hampshire in the seat for Exeter A there. I think he might be having some words with some of the drivers he was battling within that one. UWEA in 11th, Liverpool A, Imperial A, and Sheffield B rounding out the top 14 on your first screen there. We move down Bath A, 15th place. Not ideal for them. One of our championship contenders there on the number four. Liverpool D, Coventry B, Coventry E, Birmingham B and Liverpool B round out the top 20. And it was Cambridge A, Warwick A, Bath C, Liverpool C, Cardiff B, Leicester A, Oxford Brooks D there, your top 27. And then finalising the, uh, the finishers in the 34 car race on that one was Swansea B, UCLan A, Southampton B, Bristol A, Sheffield C, Leeds B and Cardiff C. But as you said, Reeve, a, a, a very different race to the first race. So we're definitely getting some, some drier conditions. You can even see there how quickly the track is actually drying out. So, barring any showers, which to be fair, what a beautiful camera shot. It's looking lovely out there on circuit at the moment. Hopefully, at least for us anyway, to watch some exciting racing in the BUKC. No more rain, please. Yes, although it would get quite exciting. All of a sudden, there was followed by lots of rain. True. That would, that would, that would really spice things up, wouldn't it? 
I think for 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 JB's sake, if you don't know, JB John Bygold runs the series uh, Club 100 BUKC, everything to do with the Club 100 cards. I think he wouldn't be too happy with that because I think we'll be seeing cards going off left, right, and centre if there's a sudden yeah, downpour in the middle of the bigger. race. Yeah, yeah, that pool will be getting. Yeah. But I, I think someone should... will go straight through that barrier we and should... end up in the pool. We should make Piers put his wellies on and <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, jump into the pool there. And speaking of yeah, Piers, he is of... not in the pool. He is he is on the grid though, ready to speak to some more drivers. I will not be jumping in the pool at the last corner. Thank you, Reeve. It's uh, not my kind of swimming, I don't think. Anyway, um, next time I'll bring my armbands in, maybe. We'll see. Well, anyway, what a race. Uh, the second race of the day was pretty good, wasn't it? It was, uh, again, penalties galore. Our win on the road got a penalty, and then second place got a penalty. I think it was Oxford Brooks B in the end that won the race. But, hey, shows that to finish first, first you've... Got to not get a penalty. Anyway, looking ahead, race three, uh, lightweight race. Let's start at the back of the grid and have a word with some of our drivers that are probably going to be cutting through the field, potentially. And I think uh, we've got a Birmingham driver. Are you jumping in, Ben? No. Oh, no? You're not jumping in? Okay. Sorry? Oh, no, it's not. It's not Ben. Sorry, I thought you were Ben Bryce. It's not. It's, uh, it's our resident sim racing expert. Remind everyone at home who you are and who you're racing for. Uh, Joshua Cardiff A. Cardiff A. So, um, this car has looked cleaner so either the carts either the driver's been bad or the cart's been bad and someone's trying to be pushing extra hard hopefully it's the the driver well hopefully but you know it doesn't look the cleanest but we think it's got four inflated tires which would be an upgrade from blockmore so oh you only had three did you i only had three yeah it did a quick pit stop for the rear left <laughs> came back out with a cold rear left <laughs> that would be that was fun it was it was really enjoyable six spins but Anyway, Cardiff, uh, talk to us about your day so far. What's, what's been going on? Great day for Cardiff C, actually. Wow. Seven in, the race, in race one. Yeah. Um, possibly higher with penalties, because there's quite a few penalties not for him. Uh, what, and uh, what, about, what can you do from 33rd on the grid? Well, anywhere between 34th and 1st. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, say again. That would be an accurate statement, I think. But hopefully you get to like a top 10, no penalties. I yeah. think that'll be... Pretty, pretty good aim. What's Cardiff's aim for the day? Well, we're kind of locked into fifth, so maybe cause some upsets for the championship leaders, make their life a bit difficult. We'll see if you can cause that. Josh, good luck in the race for Cardiff, eh? Cardiff, uh, often having quite a few wins with this man right here, Fraser Brunson, but he's not uh, He's not in this race. He'll be jumping out again later. Go on, get, go on, I'll take one. Go on, get in, get in, I'll get one. So the uh, Reading A team are uh, getting their photo. It'd be rude not to get a selfie, wouldn't it? Hello. Uh, anyway, let's get their photo. Oh, oh. anyway, uh, Reading A have had a really good day so far. Um, Oliver Flashman was a very flash man in the first race of the day. Why don't you come over? I tried to grab you earlier on and, uh, and you ran away. I got so um, yeah. uh, First race of the day, did yeah. you, was it first or second? I can't remember with the penalties, but anyway, you went from basically last to yeah, nearly... To third in the end, yeah. Third, was it? Third, yeah, after penalties. Yeah, but I don't think the penalty was right, to be fair, you know? Oh, I didn't even see you got a penalty. No, well, I didn't. Well, I did, but... It's <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't have been, but it doesn't matter. We did, Still a good result. We did really well. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, it puts a lot of, like, takes a lot of pressure off the other team because we've already got a good result. So, yeah, I was really, really pleased. I didn't really expect it from myself. Well, you did very well. Yeah. You did very well. Now, who's in the car right now? That's Peter Knight. That is uh, one of the finest drivers in England. Right, let's chat to one of the finest drivers in England. Oh, no, <laughs> Tom, come on, mate. <laughs> So no, anyone did it. Anyway, um, one of the finest drivers in England from your team, mate. Uh, talk to us. Um, well, starting 25th, just hoping to go forwards, really. Um, Ollie got a 34th to a third in the first race. Crazy, mate. And that was probably the one that we were less likely to be have a good result. So um, hopefully just go forwards, maybe top five. Um, I mean, it would be good to just get a top five in case that the heavyweights don't get a really good result in the, in the afternoon, even with their good grid slots. So, yeah, just go forward, mate. <laughs> just go forward. You've got a lot of drivers uh, to, to get fast, to get to the front of the grid, but you've seen uh, Oliver do it earlier on so that you can do it in this one. Um, yeah, good luck in the race. It, do you reckon today is a championship day? I believe so. I mean, the first race was incredible, so I think that's 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 um, an omen for our races to come. So, yeah. And the endurance race later on as well? 100%. We're, we're always good in endurances, so I, I have faith in us. I have faith in us. There you go. Reading think they've got a fighting chance of taking the win here. Um, the last round, um, 
we saw that the, uh, well not the last round, we didn't have any endurances, but the last endurance rounds, we saw that some drivers uh, taking a couple more pit stops than they needed to, of course, two pit stops in the afternoon. Let's grab a word with our Exeter team. Why don't you come over, Exeter? We can chat. We've got a whole team. Let's come in. Uh, so that was a good result in the last one. Um, Exeter, as much as this hasn't been the season that you potentially you'd hope for being champions from last year, you've actually kind of crept your way back up the order and we, it's looking like a decent, potentially a decent result at the end of the season. Oh, this is my first one back. You're going to have to ask these guys. I have no idea what's happened. So as soon as you left, it's all gone downhill. Yeah, I've come back for the last one and, well, we'll see what the results say. But... Right, quick word from you guys because you need to get off the grid in a second. Yeah, um, what, what do you reckon you can achieve today? I think, well, I think if we if we manage to get at least one more round win today, like, well, not like one more, season, our first one yeah. all season, <laughs> then uh, then we'll be, uh, we can be happy with that. But just, yeah, put this season behind us, I think. <laughs> and then come back again next year? Hopefully, yeah, I'll be a graduate, so if I'm allowed... I'll, uh, I'll come back. We'll see. Anyway, I better let you get in the cart so you can go racing. I think we've got time for one more interview. Let's run to the front of the grid and grab a word with uh, Mr. Irvine, our pole sitter. Sorry, Amy, I'm running. You don't need to run. I'll just catch up. Uh, Mr. Irvine, back once again for the Renegade Master. Um, pole position. Indeed. Uh, can you win? Oh, no, probably not. But I'll, <laughs> I'll give it a shot. You'll give it a shot. What, where do you reckon you can finish if it goes well? Uh, not getting hit off the track. That's, that's always my big problem. Getting hit off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you drive faster, they can't hit you. I, I, I've always had a big problem with driving faster. Well, we'll see how you get on. Um, good luck. I think it's about time we went racing for race number three. John, Reef, back over to you. Well, good to see uh, lots of positivity and optimism there from the Brunel A driver starting on pole position for this one. We'll see if he can, uh, against his own thoughts, win this race. We'll wait and see. Not too long to wait, though. They're coming up next. Southampton A are a second on the grid for this one, with Edinburgh A and Manchester A there on row number two. Coventry E and Bath C are just behind them on row three. Row four has Surrey A and Sheffield A, and it's Cambridge A and Coventry F who round out the top ten. Huddersfield A and Coventry A are just behind them on row number six. Row seven. We'll see Portsmouth A and Swansea A, and it's Brighton B and Leicester A there on row number eight. Lancaster B and Exeter A are on row nine, with Coventry B and UWE B rounding out the top 20. And it's Birmingham A and Southampton C on row number 11, Lancaster A and Southampton B on row 12. Reading A and Oxford Brooks D there on row 13. Unlucky for some, will it be unlucky for them? We'll have to wait and see as Reading A try to side through the pack. Leeds A, UCLan A, Birmingham B and Liverpool A round out the top 30, with Imperial B and Loughborough A on row 16. Then it's Cardiff A, Warwick B and Loughborough B there, rounding out the 35 carts on the grid for race number three. Of course, we're back to the lightweights this time around. They'll be they'll be going back and forth, race on race, throughout this morning's action. And uh, as I mentioned, so we've got uh, lightweights are races one, three and five, heavyweights two, four and six. Uh, and to remind you, the uh, minimum driver weight for, for this race, one of the lightweights, 75 kilos for the drivers. For the heavyweights, 82 kilos. But in the Enduros this afternoon, there's no split between heavyweights or lightweights. So every driver has a minimum weight of 78 kilos uh, for those Enduros later on this afternoon. But once again, practice laps. Uh, these will be the first time that these drivers have get, got out on circuit so far today. And there are some heavy hitters in this race. I won't lie, of course, a couple of our championship contenders trying to get involved as well. R uh, Reading A starting in 25th for this one. So it's going to be a challenge for them to come up through the order. But we've seen them do that many times already this season. In an, uh, an opposite vein, Southampton A is starting second. So a really good starting position for them in this one. We'll see if uh, William Taylor, who's in the cart for them for this one, can convert a good starting position to a good finishing position and get some good points for his team moving through the round. But as I've been chatting utter rubbish, uh, the smarter man alongside me, Reeve, has been looking through the Sweaty of, Do uh, Sweaty of Doom and all the finishing positions from race number two. What have you got to update us on, Reeve? Smarter Man isn't perhaps the word that I would use, but uh, race number two in the end, it was Oxford Brooks B who came out uh, with the victory. The then Cardiff A, Manchester A, our top three, Oxford Brooks A and Coventry F. And what that means in terms of how round seven is looking so far, bear in mind we're only two races in, all teams haven't had an opportunity really to drive twice so far, but of the teams that have done two races so far, it's Nottingham Trent A who have the most points so far, and then it's Bath A, Brooks B and Brooks A. That's our friends and our, our top team in the Clubmans is Warwick A at the 
moment. Interesting. Because they've been able to get a couple of races under their belt. Okay, okay. We'll see how that all continues to play out through uh, this round. But yeah, interesting there you were saying Nottingham Trent A um, with, the, with the most points in this round so far. Just imagine how far ahead they would be if they hadn't have got those penalties there in race number two. Of course, they finished the second, uh, second place on the road, uh, but they dropped down to, I think it was P8 uh, after, after penalties were applied. So, yeah, Nottingham Trent A having a good day nonetheless, but could have been even better. Uh, they hadn't gained those penalties, but it's crazy how much that result changed there in race number Indeed. two with those penalties. Indeed, we have a spin there Ooh. just through the new section. <laughs> yeah, a bit scary there with the rejoin. Just yeah. got to make sure you do it in a safe a safe way. You can't be getting involved uh, in another incident caused by yourself rejoining the circuit. You'll get yourself a big penalty for that one. Indeed. So, yeah, those are our top point scorers at the moment. But as I say, not all teams have had an opportunity to get to have two runs out on track yet. So not at all fully representative. Once we kind of get... That's race three, race four. We're going to have a better idea of how the round is shaping up. Of course, as we've mentioned, it all changes up. So for the afternoon, we have our Enduros, when all those races mean just a little bit more in, in terms of points because you've got fewer opportunities to get race wins under your belt. Indeed, of course, four drivers in a team. Across these sprint races, you've got six sprint races. Every team competing in four of them. In the Enduros, uh, each... each uh, team will have two drivers in each race uh, so they'll obviously have four drivers in the team split across two of the three races uh, and as you would know we call them sprints in the morning they're 25 minutes long to most kart races that is not a sprint race what we see at sort of club club events of owner driving is sort of eight minutes plus a lap 10 minutes plus a lap that's sort of the 12 minutes plus a lap is maybe the longest you get for a final 25 minutes is a long long sprint race however the enduros this afternoon one hour in length so this compared to other UKC races a 25 minutes race is indeed a sprint and we're about to get another one under Away relatively shortly. Once this one's done with us, it will already be halfway through the sprint races for today. Now, a couple of drivers to watch out for in this one. Of course, you had the optimistic Mr. Irvin in pole position. And uh, what's going on in the live chat? Where are you doing the commentary from? I have Jaffa Cakes. Okay, we are doing the commentary from the mill at Wilton Mill. I'm making that reference Alpha because Live Cardiff, HQ. Yeah, Cardiff loved me doing that quote for some reason. But yeah, Alpha Live HQ is down. On the other side of Dan Holland Racing, if you know where that is, it's a bit difficult to describe. It's right down near the, near the edge of the circuit, near the river, but less of that. You can come and give us Jaffers later on. We're about to get race three underway. The drivers see the green lights, and off we go then. Can Urban hold it through the first couple of corners? Yes, he can. He should have been a bit more optimistic there. Holds on to the lead of the race then through the first two corners, and up to Christmas they go then. You can see how much it's dried out already, and drivers now using the dry line. Big swapper there in the middle of the pack. How did the number 64 hold on to it there? But we do have a couple of drivers finding the green stuff on the outside. Yeah, as we say, not everyone's had the opportunity to drive twice so far. So it's still kind of, we're still learning what's going on with the track. Drivers might have only raced in race one and now they're jumping back in, in race three. The track is very different to how it was just a short 45 minutes ago, shall we say. So yet yeah, still learning about what's going on there at the moment. Having a look Change here at the, the front. front change at the front number three of Southampton A have gone through they started second place on the grid already getting through into the lead now trying to follow them through that's the number six of Manchester A trying it around the outside there with a 22 of Edinburgh A couldn't quite get it done and just about fended off the drivers in behind but already some contact, contact warnings. warnings coming through Liverpool A Cardiff A and Manchester A all getting contact warnings on that first lap first lap in the 102 is impressive given obviously the first lap is a little bit slower than all the others. Yeah, we're going to be on for some high 50s in Ooh, terms of lap time. Very late moved on the inside. Jeez. That was close. That was so close. They got it fully sideways there to the 33 of Cambridge A as they gave it to the braking zone, but just about held on to it. Lost a bit of time though, and now it's the number eight of Coventry A trying it down there inside. I think that's the nine of. Uh, it is indeed Sheffield A. Amy Jurga in the cart there for the number nine. She'll be trying to make her way up through the order early on in this one. Oh, is that a move at the front? Almost a move. That was opportunistic. Fair play. Very. Very opportunistic from the 23 there. They're still side by side, though, with the 22. That was Surrey A trying that opportunistic move. Doesn't quite work out this time, and now they find themselves under a bit of pressure. No, Surrey just kind of hoping that the gap would open up, and it did, to be fair. So very smart thinking from Surrey A-Cart for that one there. The lap time's now into the 
one minute range here. The field is still very close indeed. These good conditions allowing for some good racing here. As we're seeing some good racing, that was the number 56, Coventry E, up the inside there now, ahead and into P5. Here's Asarie making a good move, then having a good move done on themselves as another move from, from, uh, from Cambridge. They love that move. Later, oh, oh, it's all gone yeah. wrong down at the bottom of the circuit. That's what you were reacting to. Saw the start of an instant <laughs> happen there, thought, good catch. Didn't suspect that it was ah. going to cause something further down. It all went wrong, and it looked like one driver went a, sort of parallel with the circuit there as they nearly came out of the seat of their Club 100 cart. Luckily, all staying within the confines of the cart and continuing on with the race. But, yeah, a bit of a big a big incident down there in Ashby to start off this one. These Less cars. Than 10, 22 minutes to go. Are so difficult to catch, aren't they? Once so they've difficult. got a swap up, there's effectively no wheelbase. They're tiny, and they've got no steering lock as well. So. And for carts, they're quite heavy, aren't they? Very quite true, heavy. yes. So when the back end starts on. to go, yeah. it, it's almost gone already. It's very difficult to catch, as you say, and that's why we get incidents like that. There's a move from the 22, though. Edinburgh A through on Brunelle for third place, that is. The Southampton and Manchester already scampering away. They've got a good three or four second lead already over the rest of the field. Yes, finding that few tenths a lap early on, it will build a substantial lead here. We hoping, of course, last time we saw Southampton A out in a leading position. They were picking up penalties while they were doing so, so they don't want to repeat that. They want to come home and actually take victory on the road this time. 59.5, as I say, flying along at the moment. It's only those two front runners currently in the sub 60 second range. We've still got plenty of track limits warnings coming in. Hopefully, they don't convert into real penalties, but I suspect that could be the case. Southampton A then. That gap building up to 1.5 seconds of change in position there. That is, is that Brighton B tumbling down. No, it doesn't look like anyone is actually tumbling down. And A then, of course, Jaffa Cakes in the comms box, and it's working well for them at the moment. Currently running in P3, about five seconds down on the leaders from this race. A couple of seconds to the cars behind, so in a relatively comfortable position at the moment. We're currently focused on this mid-pack battle. Oh, it's Coventry E leading that battle under pressure, changing position just further behind them with the Huddersfield A, Sheffield A gang there as well. Yeah, we saw Amin Jürgen for Sheffield go up the inside down at Christmas, but they're still battling through the middle section of the circuit. It did change in this little gaggle as well. The Coventry A made the move through on Brunel. Brunel trying now to fend off from Surrey A and Coventry A as they find them all over their rear bumper. Maybe the lack of optimism from the number 42 of Brunel was justified as they find themselves being hounded since the green light in this one. They're doing a good job of it. Still up in the top five for the moment of Brunel A. Keeping Surrey, Coventry and Bath in behind them at the moment. And that is, a, to be fair, I like that race suit quite a lot. That yellow and blue race suit there for yes. the uh, Bath C team. I like that one. It makes it easy to spot as well. I was a little bit worried that in race one, actually. We saw a mix of wetsuits and no wetsuits, and mm. I thought those without the wetsuits might be kind of the, struggling. The problem it. is when you cut to the Enduros and have to get back in the soaking wet race suit. That's the worst. Yes. Yeah, absolutely great. But to be honest, it's looking quite warm towards the end, so you'd be kind of thinking maybe you get a bit hot in the wetsuit. So, yeah, definitely. We get to see some lovely suits instead, which is nice. Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see. Uh, you can see the difference between some drivers who, who race in owner karting, race as part of a team. You can see uh, Hami Jurgo uh, racing with a Birrell, uh, Birrell ART uh, race suit. And then other drivers just in full bandit race suits. It's great to see the differing levels of uh, experience and abilities that we find in the BUKC but all being put on a level playing field with these identical Club 100 carts. And it's like, hey, it's not like an owner karting where you might have um, uh, some extra parts you've got on your cart, which other drivers can't afford. All these carts identical, and it's just down to the drivers. Here's a move down the inside, the number 13 late on the brakes. There's a couple of drivers ahead go wide. Gets two positions for that. Impressive move there. Through they go up into higher positions. Was that Reading A who got through? I think it was. Uh, the number number 13 of Reading A, they've got through on commentary. They are pressing on lovely. So two for one up at Christmas Corner for Reading A, and now they're all over the back of Surrey and Brunel as they head down into Ogers. Some more track limits, warnings, uh, penalties, sorry, coming in, not just warnings as well. Oh Bath C, Exeter A adding to that list there. Exeter A. Actually, no, that looks like to be a repeat. I was going to say, adding to that list again, potentially. Not ideal. 
indeed far from ideal and they're not having a very ideal race for starters anyway 22nd place at the moment for extra a we had a nice little chat with them did peers out on the grid but yeah as they said a bit of a season to forget for for extra yeah, a rebuilding year a rebuilding year. exactly exactly yeah they won won the season last year but then lost quite a lot of their top drivers and yeah as you say a bit of a rebuilding year just uh, trying to get things sorted and uh, and yeah next season i think they're already looking ahead to it uh, to be honest and we haven't even come to the end of this one there's a late move down the inside nearly going three wide there down at ashby is josh ladd for cardiff a but he's picking up the spots and he's picked his way through the order nicely to be fair from last on the grid in this one for josh he's now up in i believe the top 15 so uh it's so a fair play to him he's been telling me I, I need to give him another voice kit though because so josh ladd is uh, a very well-known eye racer uh, races in, as I know Andrew want me to mention this, the Cobble 100 and BUKC iRacing Championship, which if you want to watch, head over to the Double Dash Motorsport Media YouTube channel. That's where that's all streamed. If you want to get involved as well, uh, you can do so. Just drop a DDMM a little message, and I'm sure they can let you know how exactly to get involved. But yeah, Josh Ladd, very well known in the sim racing scene, and apparently now on their little soundboard, they've got one of me uh, talking about him spinning round and out at Buckmore Park, and they just use that now. Uh, on all their live streams uh, with Williams Esports. So I need to give him another voice clip at some point today, which I said, well, you just need to do something stupid then. Uh, <laughs> but he hasn't, to be fair, in this race. Josh has been pressing on really well. Uh, so there's still 16 minutes though for him to do something stupid. So we'll wait and see. Indeed, Reading A pressing on as well, of course, starting this lap 18 positions up on their starting place. They've gained another as well. Great move off the inside there for Reading A. Still looking strong, but threatening to go four cars wide, which isn't going to work in this part uh, of the track as we head through the boot. Fast lap coming in for Manchester A there, still low 59. Saw actually a YouTube comment saying, well, it doesn't look very ideal, just look at the wind, but what I don't think, in the context of the BUKC weather, this is pristine this this is yeah this is as good as BUKC weather this gets is lovely. this, this is, is lovely yeah. yeah go back and watch the warden law at the start of the stream there there you'll see what BUKC weather's or like or Lockmore true or the start of PF true <laughs> true very true the fun yeah. of a winter series it, yeah it really is the BUKC sadly it's a winter series that only uses slick tyres <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a recipe for disaster but it's gone fantastically well this season and uh, we've had some really really good racing as Josh Ladd now gets the fastest lap of the race but Josh is really pressing on in this one he's the he's uh, dropped down into 59 seconds how many is it? I think five carts yeah five carts so you've got the top four in the 59s and then josh ladd there in 15th place also in the 59s but we're still looking here brunel still keeping uh sorry behind them so fair play they were very different though on the last couple of laps brunel in fifth and sorry were in eighth so i think brunel potentially indeed there you go update on the left hand side of your screen reading and commentary have both gone through side by side though for brunel and sorry and it might be opportunistic through from the driver behind is that commentary f Sneaking through, so is Lancaster A as well. So two positions with the price of one for those two. Thinking about a cheeky move down the inside, there was Lancaster A to take three positions through only two corners. Doesn't quite pay off though, but Surrey did make the move work, but in gaining one position, they've lost two as well. Saw in that mix as well. Extra A on an absolute fly. They have got wow. a penalty, of course, but it's a 59 flat for Exeter A. I think that just eclipses our previous fastest time by two hundredths of a second as well. So look at that on the timing screen though, all the flashing. Track limit warning, 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 penalty, penalty, track limit warning, contact warning, track limit warning, contact warning. Oh my goodness. Tough to keep going. Strobe lighting is going on here. A little rave in the comms box. Well we got our Stella. Very true, yes, Stella and the penalty splashing. This is uh, definitely All we need is that day. BUKC intro theme music <laughs> for, for the start of the stream. Indeed, yeah, get it on the big speaker out, out the front of uh, out the front of the Wilton Mill. Someone meme that in, in the downtime before 24. Definitely, definitely should. Down the inside of Christmas Corner, through goes Lancaster A. They're having another great race here at the leaders of Clubman. Up to seventh place they go on commentary F. But this bit of battling has allowed for lots of drivers here to close in. We've got a huge pack in the mid-pack now, uh, governed by the 30 of Lancaster A in seventh place. And then I think that's going all the way down to around 14th with Josh Ladd in, Car in Cardiff A. So it's all closed up here. An opportunity for some of the faster drivers who got stuck in the mid-pack to now gain some extra positions. But this is actually a bit more of a hindrance to drivers wanting to get up right near the sharp end because as these drivers battle, the ones ahead just continue to press on and press on in this race. However, 
new fastest lap, I was about to say, for Manchester A. Ooh, it wow. then went to Reading. It's now gone to Coventry, 58.7, that last Very lap from impressive. Coventry. Very impressive indeed. More penalties. Lancaster B, Loughborough B with the good old track limiter. ABC take out that extra A penalty ended up being there. Nice to get a bit of variety, at least, on the penalties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks for that, guys. <laughs> uh, every time I look down, there's new penalties. There's more coming up and more and more and more and more. I think there might be a bit of re-education going on, uh, at least after this race from JB, as the drivers are, yeah, not being quite as respectful as we've seen in previous rounds, but hey-ho. You know, this is what, what happens when the bribe goes away, isn't it? <laughs> this is the, the, the infamous get a seat in a Club 100 has, has vanished and now look well I suspect anyway maybe we don't know we, we don't know either either it has been taken away and the drivers are doing it out of spite or it hasn't <laughs> been taken away and they're all just like well it's the end of the season anyway so it's I'm going to send it it's the BUK equivalent of the FISA Folk Award from the 80s this, this is what we've got now That was that's too high level for me I have no idea what you're talking about no most people <laughs> Coventry A now get the fastest lap of the race, 58.5 now at that time set. It is all changing in this mid pack, still being led by Lancaster A, but they are now a good four seconds back uh, from Coventry A in sixth place. We still have over 10 minutes left to go in this one. And there's the little pack further behind, Sheffield A trying to gain a few more positions. Hound in the back of Bath C and Brunel A at the moment as they head through down the middle section of the circuit. Through Ashby they go, maybe a bit of a loose helmet there for number 77 as he grabs it, heading down into the left-hander. Bath C with a, an easily spottable yellow suit there, but maybe a bit of a loose helmet as he chases down Mr. Urban in uh, the Brunel A cart. Which, to be fair, still up in the top 15 is the number 42, so it's not all gone wrong from that pole position. Still some decent points from this race, but the 64 of Coventry F looking quick once again. Coventry F have been really quick so far today. And their teammates going even faster once say, more. The Coventry squad really flying along now. That Coventry squad, of course, in the mix for this championship here. I am double checking what the permutation is looking like. I'm not going to try and look into it too deep because otherwise my brain will fry. And it won't <laughs> out. We're only three races into the sprints, so. Good move down the inside there at Christmas Corner from Josh Ladd. He puts himself through. Uh, past Surrey A and then does the usual Carter's point forward. I've just overtaken you, but let's let's end that end that battle now. You should just follow me. It's a better idea for both of us. Which, to be fair, in this case, Josh Ladd probably is. Josh has been very fast so far in this race, but you see it every single time. Someone goes through a move and then says, "No, I'll, no, I actually want to work together." Now that I'm ahead of you, let's work together. No one ever, no one ever listens. Let's be honest. No one ever listens to the work together. Uh, when you get up to uh, some owner driver racing, there can be a bit of working together if they're pressing towards a leader or something. But in BUKC, it's every man or woman for themselves. Let's be honest. Well, maybe they should. Maybe it would be good practice to think about it. The endurers are the last time that these guys are going to work together as a team before the 24-hour race coming up. True. Later into the year, so this is the ta this is a chance maybe to test some tactics out to test you know to test who who's going to be a good driver pairing. That type of thing, thinking about your stints. Indeed, no, that is true. They've got some things to think about before uh, the 24 uh, up at Teesside in Middlesbrough in a few months' time. It should be lots of fun. Sadly, no stream for that one uh, for Alpha Live. Uh, oh, but that's I know. A shame. I know that they'll be doing uh, a sort of basic stream. I know they're trying to do it like they did last year. Jacob and Andrew on it last year, but I know neither of them could do it for this year. Um, Why don't we hope... just try and sneak on them? <laughs> well, it, we could we could do that. We could do that if if you're if you're there. Reeve. Sadly, I can't make it that weekend. I, uh, so if you're there, mate, get I'm on the planning screen. on being there. I was hoping to drive in it as well. Uh, it's looking like Just I won't do be it now. But, uh, why yeah, not? Yeah, drive and commentate at the same Perfect. time. That'll be Perfect. what could possibly go wrong. Nothing. No, I can't think of anything that could, could go wrong there. What a race it's been though for Coventry A so far, as you mentioned, they've been so fast. They're one of the championship contenders. They're closing in on these two, but it's Reading who go for the move first, trying to follow it's them through. It's been a favourite overtaking spot of Reading so far. Indeed it has, yeah, Christmas Corner gets pointed through though. Ah, because they're teammates, that makes a lot of sense. So Coventry E allow Coventry A through to continue chasing Reading A. And that's a nice bit of teamwork there, actually, of course. As we started this lap, Coventry were out in front, but they've decided for the greater good for the benefit of the squad. Let's let the A gang through and uh, continue on the fight. Yeah, impressive to have uh, have your eyes open enough to be able to see, like, oh, that's my teammate, right, you come through. and worked together nicely. I did it at a point where it lost neither of them very much time either. So it was, yeah, really nicely done there for the Coventry squad. They switch up to fifth place, goes Coventry A, Reading into fourth then. I think it may be a little bit too little too late for these two to catch uh, Edinburgh A there in third place. 
and that gap between Southampton and Manchester at the front, we haven't really seen them since the start of the race, and it's remained around a second, just under a second, this whole race. They've been sort of trading times throughout this one. A 58-2, the best time for Manchester. 58-3 for Southampton. Just covering the circuit's all of a sudden. Ominous. Oh dear. Uh, my, uh, I might have commentators cursed the weather here with my mention of how beautiful it was before this race. More penalties through. Oxenbrook's D, ABC bump and pass, Loughborough A, track limits, UCLan A, track limits, Loughborough B, track limits, Warwick B, track limits, Brunel A, track limits. Co-penalties from uh, Bath C and Cardiff A. It has been ridiculous in this race, I think is probably the word to use, the amount of penalties. Even for BUKC standards, it's been pretty bad in this one. Indeed. Hey, hey. Look, we're finally looking at the front runners. Here's the number three of Southampton and number six of Manchester A. We've not had any reason to look at them. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a diss on the Alpha Live crew there. We've had no reason to. The They've just been stayed about the same. Yeah. Uh, and I always say, if we don't talk about a driver in a race very much, you've either had an awful race or a fantastic race. And from Southampton to Manchester, it's been the latter. It has indeed. Next to A, 57.8, flying along there wow. into the 57s now. We've got a penalty there. Oh, so we have an overtake by the number 14. Loughborough B through on Brunel, that is. And then we have penalties coming in for Brooks D, bump and pass. Uplan A, track limits. More and more and more penalties. Once again, to remind you, result not out for time in the UK forward slash BUKC for the final results there. Emi Jurger makes the move on the 32 of Liverpool. Liverpool thinking about the up and under now into Ogers, but can't quite make it work this time around anyway. So that is indeed the two A teams going side by side through that lap. So actually, potentially, Liverpool trying to think about the re-overtake. It was a bit of an early break there into the boot there from Emi Jurger. And uh, the Liverpool A was a bit blindsided by that early breaking point and went straight into the back of her. Luckily, not too hard, no whiplash there for Ami, and they continue on to another lap. Just over five minutes left to go in this race. The penalties that are coming through are actually ridiculous, so there's no even point of trying to keep up because there are so many. 81 down the inside of 64, Southampton C through on commentary F there for eighth place, and X to A continuing to press on. 57.5 now the fastest lap of the race themselves. The only carts, uh, oh no, there are two carts down in the 57, Reading A in fourth place, also in the 57s as well, so track's still getting faster, and here is now a very close battle near the bottom of the top ten. Manchester A into the 57s now as well, putting that pressure on the lead of the race. X to a, I was just so confused. How have X to A got there? They've made up more positions on that lap. They're now in eighth place, I think, yep. of X to A after making three overtakes, I want to say there. Potentially nine. They were seven tenths of a second uh, seven tenths of a second faster on the previous lap and the gap wow. only about a second for, for two cars. So in a really really good rhythm at the moment are Exeter A and as I say Manchester A beginning to put that pressure on now half a second faster on the previous lap are still on board with the Exeter A squad who are oh, having a fantastic race a few cars really now showing up but they understand this circuit they seem to be dialed in and uh, enjoying a bit of a battle here as we go I thought for a second we'd end up into that muddy bog on the outside of the Ooh. track we were able to avoid it though yellow flag Who's off at someone, someone on the yeah. exit? Yeah, exit of Ozier, someone's off on the grass on the outside. Uh, yeah, but we were talking about, yeah, Ethan Brooks had a little interview before the, before the race started, I think. It was, I believe it was Ethan, uh, part of the extra squad, who Piers chatted to at the end there, who said that he's not been part of the team for the whole season. He's come back uh, for the final race. And maybe that's why we saw a little bit of rustiness at the start of the race. Started 18th on the grid, didn't really do much for the first five or ten minutes, but then the pace started to come. Since then, Ethan has been absolutely flying in that number one cart, pressing on towards the sharp end of the top ten, so he's doing a good job. But it looks like that car at Osher's was very stuck, because the driver's up and out of the car and not trying to get it back on. So either it's really stuck or something has gone wrong with that with that Club 100 car. Yeah, either way, couldn't quite and make out who it was. Pusher cart's there, so definitely that engine yeah. or something on it has gone, and the pusher cart will be uh, assisting them back to the pit lane. And given the amount of time left in the race, that was an unfortunate end to the race pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty gutting there for Coventry B. So, sadly for them, not making it to the chequered flag in this one as the pusher cart tries to get them back. Hold on a second. The battle for the lead might just be hotting up here, ladies and gentlemen, as we head into the last three minutes of the race. Manchester A have somehow yep. found a little it's bit of extra pace here. It's been here. threatened for a little while. Manchester A have been pushing on just that extra couple of tenths, lap by lap, chiseling down that gap. And now the fight, as we say, is about to happen. 
that they're in a nice spot as well. They've got nearly six seconds over Edinburgh A in third place, who are relatively soon going to be caught by Reading A. They're only about three seconds behind as well. So they're in a nice spot here where even if they start battling, they don't need to worry about anyone else. It's just between the two of them for the lead of the race through these last couple of minutes here. But as we've said many times already, it's one thing catching someone, it's another thing actually getting past them. And if Manchester A have just been slowly chiseling away a tenth or two a lap, do they have that extra pace to be able to put themselves in a position to make that move work? At this stage, it is about make sure you've got that confidence to try some alternative lines because the track will allow it now. It is possible. It's just making sure that you pick your moment and pick it wisely because there are places, as we say at Wilson Hill, there are plenty of places, plenty of opportunities yeah. to get the overtake done. Here could be one having a look around the outside. Maybe no great defence there from the Southampton A cart, making that car just a little bit wider on entry into the corner. Indeed, already feeling the need to defend there, that's Southampton A. This, is, this should be a really good race for them as well. One of our championship contenders looking to secure 60 points here from race number three for Manchester A. They're not in the championship hunt, but they still want that lead down the inside very late. Luckily, held those brakes, gets out of the side there of the number three of Southampton A. No contact made, and Southampton stay ahead in the lead of the race then. A minute and a half on the clock. I don't think they'll see the last lap board this time. I think we'll get two more laps here of the Wilton Mill International Circuit, but potentially Manchester A grabbed at that one a little bit. The first opportunity presented itself, they went for it, and they've actually lost a bit of time because of it, now finding themselves yes. about four tenths behind. I was about to say, Sam and A are, are demonstrating a really strong defence here, because not only are they keeping Manchester a very fast car behind, but they are not losing time doing it either. We're talking maybe a tenth, two tenths compared to their absolute yeah. best. They are still keeping the pace up with that defence. Reading A, 57.2. Where has that come from? That's yeah, wow. a fast lap. Really, really quick. All those drivers in behind in the 57s now. Um, but as I say, even though the two drivers behind of Edinburgh and Reading were a good second faster on that last lap, they've, they've left enough time here where Southampton and Manchester shouldn't get caught. But look how close they are now. And now here's a, a situation where if you thought there wasn't enough pressure already for this battle for the lead as Manchester has a lock up the inside, we're going to head through the boot. Now what could be done from here? Still got the last part of the lap to go, but just in case there wasn't enough pressure for this battle for the lead already, you've got Nicky Richardson behind you as well. Indeed, he's just in, he's in the perfect place to watch this, isn't he? He, yeah. he knows these are the two leaders. anything more ominous. He, he let them through, to, and he's just going to watch this race. Yeah. He's sat behind, he's enjoying himself. But if you're Southampton today, you look over one shoulder, <laughs> you see Manchester A barreling down for the lead of the race, still going to do so. He has the inside, Ooh. is it open for him? No, <laughs> still can't get past. But then you look over your other shoulder, and it's Nicky Richardson. <laughs> I think I think the Manchester A car, who's in that? Michael Greaves is in the car. I think Michael's just going to be thinking, Nicky, just give me a push. Give me a push, please, Nicky. <laughs> Try and get him around the outside, but it's not quite worked on that first time of asking up at Christmas Corner. And look at that. Bit of time lost then for Manchester A. Southampton, I think, should have this one wrapped up. They've got just enough of a gap as we head into the last part of the circuit. And of course, as we, we've known from the start, no plus one laps here. We've known that from the start. And we head through the boot now. It's still Southampton A in the lead. We've one more corner to go. Who's going to get the better on it? Looks like it's going to be the Southampton A car. Hands up in celebration. Congratulations there. The number three in first, Manchester A in second. And it'll be Edinburgh A rounding out the podium. Uh, Reading, Reading A after that P4, Coventry A, P5. The two Coventry cars coming home in succession there. Once again, championship, uh, yeah, very professional. But once again, championship big hitters up in the top part of the order. Southampton A winning that race on the road, Reading A fourth on the road, Coventry A fifth on the road. So really consistent from the top team so far today. They they have had their Mackey's breakfast, and that is fueling them onto a fantastic day of racing. We haven't seen consistency like this across multiple teams, really. I'd say all season so far. So this has been impressive, and I'm interested to see how that shapes up the championship. Um, as we go into the Enduro later on this afternoon, of course, we'll try and work out uh, what's going on in terms of the championship over the lunch break, and we can keep you updated then throughout the afternoon in the Enduros. But another really good race as it continues to be dry here at Wilton Mill. The sheep up on the hill are loving the action here, as you can see uh, behind the front straight. They, they've all, they could be on the other side of the hill, but they know there's some great racing going on the BEKC. I'm going to be there at the side of the circuit. But Reeve, take us through the final results then for race number three. So provisionally, it is Southampton A, Manchester a, Edinburgh A and Reading A and Coventry A are top five. All 18 minutes, Coventry E, Exeter A, Lancaster A, Coventry F, 
Cardiff A, our top 10. Southampton C, Loughborough B, Liverpool A, Surrey A, and then we have we have Sheffield A, our top 15. Swansea A, Leeds A, Bruno A, Brighton B, Cambridge A, the top 20. Bath C, Lancaster B, Portsmouth A, UWE B, Southampton B, top 25. And then it's Oxford Brooks D, Huddersfield A, Birmingham B, Birmingham A, top 30 there. Uclan A, Imperial B, Leicester A, Warwick B, and Coventry B rounding out the field there. Another good race. That was a really enjoyable one. Indeed. Really close throughout the order. Uh, that, uh, that one only lacked the front battle uh, that we had in previous races until we then got to like, the last three minutes and suddenly it was all to play for. However, they weren't able to get it done, were they, Manchester? A couple of opportunities. I just don't think they quite had enough additional pace over Southampton to make the moves work. And Southampton were placing their cart beautifully. They were. It was a beautiful defence there, but it was also nice to see. It was very refreshing, very fair racing. They looked like they were giving each other the due respect there and it was very nice racing to watch exactly yeah loads of really good kart races uh, in the BUKC and probably quite, uh, some drivers where it's not uh, where it's their last season of racing which is sad to see but good to see drivers finishing their year and possibly their BUKC racing career with some good action but Piers is down in the dummy grid to speak to some more of our drivers Oh, the championship's hotting up, as, as is the weather. We've got our big hitters at the front of the field, including Coventry taking a win. Come on in. Southampton, actually. Southampton. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? That's where I watched the race. It was Coventry. Southampton. Southampton. Anyway, you're in the fight for the, front, the, fight for the championship. Outside chance, Southampton. Mm -hmm. Okay, All you need to do is win races, and that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, I started P2, so I knew I had a good chance of winning. Um, once I got into the lead, I had quite a big gap, and then they started closing so much of me, and um, defending it was quite difficult, but I managed to hold on in the end. And it was a good race, and when we bring our Birmingham driver in, that he's Birmingham, right, not like Manchester. <laughs> I promised I was watching the race. It, I knew it was Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, it's a good race. Honestly, I I should pay more attention. Um, it was a really good race. You, uh, it was looked like the gap stayed at about eight tenths of a second, and you couldn't quite close it until the last few laps. Yeah, no, that's about right. I mean, it was really quick out there. I think I only got him because of traffic, to be honest, at some point. So uh, it was a fun race, yeah. It was a really good race. Um, what about the teams? Uh, Manchester, you've had an up and down ish season. Yeah, so we had a really bad round last last race at Warden Law. We came in six, and then we finished tenth overall. So, uh, I mean, I think we have a good chance of finishing in the top ten. That's our goal for now. It's going to be our last year as a team, unfortunately. We're all graduating. It's going to be my last year of BUKC after, what, eight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm submitting my PhD thesis on Monday, so... Uh, that's, <laughs> going to be a, that's going to be a good feeling. Yeah, it's going to be a good feeling. I mean, not as good as today, but close enough. Close enough. Right, guys, congratulations on a good result. Southampton clocking in more results. If only the consistency was there this season, then you'd have been... Warden Law didn't quite go to a plan. The no. second round of Warden Law was yeah. pretty bad. Wait, well, you won the round the morning and then the afternoon... afternoon P17, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, didn't go well. Anyway, yeah. we'll see how the rest of your team get on. We're just waiting to, uh, for the drivers to wait. But let's head over, if we can. I'll try not to fall over the cart, the cart this time. Amber, wait, there you go. They managed to. Let's chat to some of the drivers who are in the, um, in the, uh, the queue for the scales. And why don't we chat to our extra driver, Ethan. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Uh, Ethan, we chatted to you before the race. That was a good race, wasn't it? You made your way pretty close to the front. It wasn't a great race, I'll be real. Uh, well, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, the slowish start, but then you just started chomping so through at the end. On lap one, I got went off at Christmas. I got hit off. I was last. And I came back through. I was driving well, but I'm going to have to say the standard of officiating was pretty poor in that one. I got about 15 places of penalties for driving around by myself, bump and passes. I think the, I don't know, the number one target has a tag against my name or something, but honestly, I don't know what's gone on with that with the stewarding, but it was fun. It was good fun. It looked good fun out there. But the result's going to be catastrophic because every lap I came round, penalty, and I'm just on my own, so I don't know what's going on. Unlucky. Um, so you win some, you lose some. Yeah, it's good fun. It's, I guess it's part of racing. Hopefully uh, it spreads out evenly with other teams throughout the day, but uh, I had fun. And we've got the endurance this afternoon, so that's going to be something to look forward to. Uh, we're nearly done with the weighing up, so um, we'll be having the, uh, the race four drivers coming on the grid in just a moment. So let's head over towards them and, and catch them as they walk onto the grid. Of course, the lightweight race is 75 kilograms with driver and lead and then the heavyweight race is, I think it's 82 I think it's 82 don't quote me on that might be 83 um, but making sure that all the drivers are
are coming in. Wait, has everyone uh, has everyone come uh, uh, on wait uh, so far? Almost. Almost. We have some that didn't. No. Oh dear. Well, we won't name and shame those quite yet. Um, but yeah, everyone watching who's at the circuit, make sure you keep your weight on board. And you can see the the teams raring to go just behind the fence there. All the heavyweight drivers. Julia Peroni for Loughborough. He's glad that the circuit's dried out <laughs> and he's got all his lead. The, um, the Loughborough B team not having a great season so far. They're sort of, you know, inside the top 10. Uh, my, my former team, we've had success in the past recently. You know, it's, they're in a rebuilding phase. Uh, and here we are, the heavyweight drivers. Let's uh, grab a word with anyone we can get our hands on, I suppose. Uh, why don't we grab Julio? Julio Peroni. Julio, Julio. Oh, he's weighing first, making sure that he's not going to come in underweight because that would be a disaster. Julio always it's likes so driving when it's mm, dry, fire. not so much in the wet. Why don't we grab a word with you know, this driver here? Remind us who you are and who you're racing for. Johnny Wilkinson, Cardiff A. Cardiff. We spoke chat to one of your teammates earlier on. Um, how's it been going since then? Uh, well, he did very well. Came from pretty much last to, I think, 10th without penalties. Don't know what it is after penalties. Um, but yeah, it's been a good day so far. So hopefully get a top five in the championship. If all goes well, all goes well. All right. But yeah. And you're out now? Yep, out now. <laughs> Starting from? The second row, somewhere on the second row. It's third or fourth? Yep, third or fourth. Um, so hopefully it goes well. Um, I woke up this morning, pissed a bit of excellence, so hopefully there's some still inside of me. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed. It's just the best there is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, uh, they could all be in the toilet. Could be all be in the Northamptonshire sewer system, but yeah. Brilliant. Right, Perfect. Johnny, good luck in the race. We'll see how uh, kind of go. And I'm going to go and... Uh, gonna, also, it looks like uh, Mr Pozo for Coventry is out in this one. He's won a lot of races this season, so we'll be keeping an eye for the, uh, the orange suit, orange helmet out on track. But I want to grab a word with Julia Peroni if we can. Oh, I did say I was going to grab aware with him but he uh we were obviously just chatting to johnny just then for cardiff a oh wow look at this julio peroni julio are you still captain these days i am yes i am so you gave yourself a pole position then i did yeah <laughs> to finish off the uh, the season on the high i guess uh, brilliant right um so it's the circuit has as as you requested dried out so that means that surely it's an easy win I would hope so, I would hope so. Let's see how it goes, but yeah, feeling Let's, quite good about this one. Let's see how it goes. Uh, how has the rest of the team got on today? It's been a bit mixed. Yeah, not too good. We were having a good race one, but unfortunately uh, we crashed into a back marker. Oh dear. After one lap from the end, I think we were on for P4, so that was a bit unfortunate. Yeah. And uh, last race we got, I think, six track limit warnings, so... Uh, yeah. You need to have a word with your teammates, tell them not to get any more penalties, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think it's because uh, T2, because it used to be four and now it's two wheels, so I think that's what was catching them out. Well, Julia, you know what to do. Don't get any penalties, we'll see how you get on. Let's wander further down the grid, uh, try and get a, a, a selection of drivers. Let's see if we can chat some people we haven't spoken to this year. We've managed to catch up with quite a lot of the drivers over the season, and I do forget who I haven't haven't spoken to, um, but it'd be good to chat to someone new. Uh, oh, actually, why don't we grab a word with our extra driver from the previous race? Come on over. We, we did chat to you before the race. You said you could have a good result. I'd say that was a good result. It wasn't bad. Uh, apparently, I got a fast lap. So nice. Nice. We'll take that. No points for that, though. No. Um, <laughs> I was I was unfortunate because the front three just spaced out too far. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't catch them in time. And I couldn't get the last corner right because it was still slightly wet. Um, and I just wasn't able to get on the throttle quick enough. But it was a good race, and I'll take 21 places up. Absolutely. And also, it's looking decent for Reading as well. Are you, are you pretty happy with that result? Yeah. So we've got a third from 34th and a fourth from 25th. Um, we've got uh, Dan starting 11th now. Um, and then Mr. Fleming at, on second uh, in race six. So I think we're in a good position for uh, the morning um, and we'll just see what we can do in the afternoon then. I spoke to Andrew Mather this morning, who is our resident spreadsheet man. And he said that uh, today a second and a first would seal the championship for you guys, regardless of what happens. Do you reckon that's still on the cards? I believe so in the round. I don't know what other teams are doing. Um, I don't know what, what results they have, but we seem to be focusing on ourselves and we seem to be doing well. So that's all we can ask for. I wouldn't change it then if it's going well for you. Good luck, well done in that one. And we'll see how uh, Mr. Daniel Booth goes from, I think he said 11th, didn't he? Uh, let's grab someone new. We've chatted to Jensen later on, number one for, for extras out in this one. Uh, let's, uh, let's just wander on here. And guys, what are you, uh, what are you chatting about? Well, we're just uh, sort of talking about it, whether it's dry or wet. Uh, it seems to have mostly dried up around now. Um, I think only the last corner is slightly wet on the exit, but that's about it. Brilliant. And who are you and who are you racing for? So I'm Callum Howes and I race for Leicester A. 
Callum, have we chatted on the stream this year yet? We have not. You chatted to George. I have a couple of times. George, George, uh, how's your day going? Um, started well and then it went a bit downhill, but I'm still positive this time. So we've got Callum in now. That's good. Callum, talk to us, you know, the, your race going ahead. Talk to us about the season. How's your season gone? Because we haven't spoken to you. I'm trying to catch up with as many new people as possible. Um, personally, not great. Uh, did terribly at Warden. Um, done about mid the rest of the races. Hoping to do better, end on a high this time. Yeah. What do you reckon you can do in this race from what must be about 20th position? I'll try and keep in the top 20, maybe top 15. That's what I'm hoping for. Just not get any penalties and then I'll be good, I think. Callum, we'll catch up with you after the race, hopefully. Good luck. And uh, got time for maybe one or two more interviews. I don't think I've chatted to... Have we chatted this season yet? I don't think we have. No, I don't think we have. Right, in which case, who, who are you? Who's, what's your name? Henry Mackenzie Friedman. I'm only here to race in the iRacing Championship. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's You're my... literally here just to get yourself an entry to the sim racing. Exactly, exactly. It's coming up, guys. Coming I don't up. think I've ever heard of uh, real to sim. You know, there's always those, those sim to real competitions. Yeah, yeah, I'm going the other way. Hey, well, what do you need to do in this race? Do you just want to just drive, have a good time? Are you going to go for the win? Are you going to just try not to finish last? I'm just going to try and have fun, really. Just have a fun day. It's sunny now. There's lots of grip. Let's do it. Let's do it indeed. And have you got much karting experience in the real life? Uh, a little bit. I did Inters last year. This is my second mains race, so we're just going to see how everyone else does and try and follow them. Uh, which team are you racing for again? Surrey A. Surrey A. Well, we'll keep an eye on our Surrey A team. I think we've got just about... Uh, no, that's it. We've got, that's all the time we've got. So uh, here we go. Race number four. We'll see how our real-to-sim drivers get on. And also the, uh, the battle for the championship is still going strong. So it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Reef, John, back to you. <laughs> That is definitely a new one. I think Andrew Mather will be very happy about that, though. One of the drivers, uh, driver of Surrey A, uh, looking to get involved with the uh, first bit of BUKC racing just to get involved uh, with the BUKC Cup 100 i Racing Championship. It is a fantastic championship with some great racing, so you should definitely go and check it out. And you'll see uh, Henry Mackenzie Freeman out in that very soon after he's given his entry for being in this race. Race number four is just about to kick off. It's Loughborough B and Warwick B who will lead us down the tram lines to the green lights very soon. Cardiff A and Loughborough A follow them on row number two. Just behind them on row three is Imperial B and Liverpool A. Row four sees Birmingham B and UCLan A, then Leeds A and Oxford D round out the top ten with Reading A and Southampton B there on row number six. Reading definitely one to watch there. Another one to watch, Lancaster A. They've been so impressive so far today, giving it everything Thing to make sure that that Clubman uh, win for the year is secured. Alongside them, though, a Southampton C. Then it's row eight, Birmingham A and UWE B. Row nine sees Coventry B and Exeter A. Then running up the top 20, a Lancaster B and Leicester A. Then it's Brighton B and Swansea A running up on row 11 with Portsmouth A and Coventry A just behind them. Row number 13 sees Huddersfield A and Coventry F. Then it's Cambridge A, Sheffield A, Surrey A and Bath C who round out the top 30. And then finalising the 35 cart grid once again for this one, Coventry E, Manchester A, Edinburgh A, Southampton A and Brunel A. So look at that then, right at the back of the grid uh, for this one are a lot of our heavy hitters and pretty much our top three from the last race. I think on circuit uh, it finished Southampton in first, Manchester Manchester in second, Edinburgh in third I want to say, if I'm, my memory serves me correctly. Uh, oh yeah, Edinburgh and Manchester were the other way around in the finishing, the uh -huh, final yes, result. Manchester, with the penalty. Manchester got the penalty. So I was right. Yes, I've done Sorry. something positive today. It's okay, Reem, I'll let you off. But interesting that they're now all at the back for this one. You've got Manchester A in 32nd, Edinburgh A in 33rd, and Southampton A in 34th. Of course, Southampton continuing to press on towards a good, uh, a good day's running here at Wilton Mill, one of the championship contenders. So we'll keep an eye on them uh, from near the back of the order. It does give the opportunity for some of the other teams up near the front, though, to get involved. Highest uh, highest uh, team battling for the championship anyway is Reading A, 11th place. So a decent start for them in this one. Not incredible, uh, but still right on the on the cusp of the top 10. So they could definitely put something together here in race number four. You've got a couple of hard-hitting teams who maybe haven't quite been able to string together a championship this year, but still have some very quick drivers uh, amongst, uh, amongst their members. Cardiff A and uh, Loughborough A, both there on row number two. 
They're some very, very quick teams. We've seen Yukon A there in eighth place. They've definitely won a race this season. Leeds A, we've seen some great standout performances uh, from a couple of their drivers. Lancaster A, as I mentioned, running through the grids there in 13th place. They've had a really, really good day so far. Very, very impressive. So we'll see if they can continue that into this next race. But as you can see there, the uh, pusher car heads out on circuit to collect the drivers, get them in two by two formation, ready for the start of the race as their three practice laps that are given before all of these sprint races in the morning. They come to a close, and thus the drivers will come round to get race number four underway. We've had very changeable conditions so far today. It's dried out very nicely uh, throughout the day. And that means that we've had some super close racing across race two and race three. Race one was a little bit more subdued uh, because of the very slippery conditions, but the lap times have been tumbling throughout today so far. And there you can see a very lonely tent out in the paddock. Uh, some, at least one driver there braving it in, in the tent, not bothering with the hotel costs. I mean, to be fair, university students not exactly known uh, to have money uh, uh, coming out of their ears. So fair enough, get the tent up. Hopefully, uh, hopefully a little a little heater that you can power from your car. I say, yeah, the rain, been, the rain. The rain last quite, night. It would have been quite windy and wet and horrible in that tent last night. So hopefully they've not had too much of a bad sleep uh, and they can uh, get on with the racing today. But it looks like we're almost ready uh, to get on with the racing here in race number four. I think we, we're going to have to just wait until we get this one underway before we start going through uh, the action and how it's going across the board here in round number seven. But here we go then. Race number four, looking up to the green lights, and away we go for 25 minutes of racing. The number 14, the Loughborough B, has a great start. Immediately switches over to the outside, is able to open up that corner, maximize the speed that they take through, and already try to gain a bit of a gap. Look at this pushing up towards Christmas corner. The 12 holds the inside line there, trying to fend off a number of drivers. Can't see where the number 12 has come from. Ah, Loughborough A from fourth place. They're doing a nice job there. Ooh, Holding on as one driver off in the back, off onto the grass. They go. They manage to regain. Uh, they had some time and get back on the track, but a lot of time lost there. And I believe that was the number six of Manchester A, so it hasn't uh, gone well at the start of this one. That's a shame. They had a brilliant day so far. Currently, uh, P2 in terms of points scored. Today's uh, well, race four, not going to be good for them. Not ideal at all for this start. There's still a lot of time left to go. And as we've seen, the, uh, the gaps between drivers not extending quite as much as they did in the rain earlier on today. So still opportunities to gain more as the cone gets absolutely clobbered there through the boot. The poor cone getting abused by our BUKC drivers as we head on to lap number two. But having a look though, that's the number 32. One of the Liverpool carts, Liverpool A, already finding themselves up in second place and now pushing on towards the lead. The 12 there of Loughborough A thinks about a move but can't quite get it done on Warwick B this time around. But already a couple of minutes into this race and it's starting to shape out. Liverpool B, of course, another very, very fast team. As oh dear, Manchester A's day goes a bit worse. Breaking formation penalty already for Manchester A off that race start. So not only have they had a bit of an off, they've also got a penalty that means they'll definitely be losing some positions when the race results are finalised after this one. There's the move for third place, though a little bit too late on the brakes, though, and can't quite get it done. Can Loughborough A, they're going to try the up and under, but don't think there's quite going to be enough space. No, it is a shame for Manchester A, that penalty there, because two podiums in the bag so far. Yeah, they've had a really impressive yeah. day, haven't they? Yeah, Brunel A, ABC take out penalty as well, advanced by contact there. Reading A carrying on that great form from race three, though, straight into the 59s Ooh. early on. It is number 14 against number 32 of Liverpool A here. Liverpool have to go for the outside, but for B on the defence at the moment. That was a heavy, heavy coverage of the inside there from Loughborough B. They do not want to go up this race lead. And they are defending really, really hard already in this one. They don't want to let Liverpool through, but that's just allowing for all the drivers in behind to close in once again. Loughborough had started to build a nice lead, but already now starting to pile on the pressure at Liverpool. A at Studio Peroni in the car for Loughborough B at the moment. And Julio's under a bit of pressure down the inside into the boot. Go Loughborough A, and they take the lead of the race. They do. Liverpool A in to the lead, and that is Callum Pedder, a man who I actually shared a hotel room with last night, and he's very, very unwell. So this and is, he's now leading the race. Yes, this is a great drive from him so far. Hopefully, he doesn't need to pit stop for some Lemsi. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see if he can carry on. Great move there. And we've got plenty of action here in the mid-back. A hand goes up to say what happened there. 
Exeter A a 58.8 on that last lap. It's all happening in the mid-pack now. Yeah, look at that one little tap to the outside for Mr. White there in the Warwick B squad. Loses him a good three, if not four positions now. As another driver sides down the inside. But all this is really kicking off in the mid-pack. And right in there is Exeter A, the number one plated car, also at the fastest lap of the race so far in this one. Getting involved and making some moves. And I think I want to say, is it Jensen Brown who's in the car for, for X to A at the moment? I do believe so. And he is a very good car Ooh. racer as he squeezes someone else onto the curb there I on the edge of the motors. And we did definitely have another annihilation of a cone. That poor, poor cone. That one's completely in the middle of the, <laughs> the grass that there. That so far. retreated in fear, I think, <laughs> is, is what that cone has done. And I'm not shocked. I mean, I'm, in the previous race, and they're going to remain unnamed because I just don't know the name, it's probably for the best. Someone had 14 track limit penalties oh my goodness. and lost 28 places as a result. That's unbelievable. Oh my goodness, right, okay. Well, I, I've, I've inquired about because I think Julio I've mentioned. Check, I've asked as well. Okay, Julio mentioned in that interview that potentially there may be a new rule coming out of Oblivion and Crook. I think you, you should know, if you've been to Ultimate before, there's a big runoff there, which everyone uses all of in any championship I've ever seen. But there was a mention there in the interview that made me think that there may be a ruling that you could only put two tyres on that runoff. Now, we've got to wait and see when they come through that section whether drivers are doing that, because that would make sense if that was the reason why we were getting so many track limit penalties, because that's definitely very new here. I can understand it. It is a bit of a dangerous corner. You come through there very fast and blind as well. But equally, it makes that first couple of corners really difficult if you have it because you will have to break to not go four wheels off there yeah so let's see, let's see as they come through as well if we get a good camera shot here and watch as they come through do they all keep two wheels inside of the circuit yeah yeah i yeah. think they are i think they are so i think that is a new ruling and potentially the reason why there have been so you many can, you can see why it's so easy to do though can't you the amount of so momentum easy. you carry into that tighter right hander liverpool there though certainly got momentum in this race on that last lap of 58.2 building that gap to the driver in P2 there. It's currently looking good. Yeah, wow. 2.2 seconds already. Fair play if it's not feeling very well. I thought we might get like a, a Mark that Webber moment. might be a lot of caffeine. In <laughs> okay. A lot of caffeine. I wasn't sure what you were going to say then. <laughs> <laughs> what has he fueled himself up with? Well, there may or may not have literally been that discussion last night in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, whatever he's had, it is working <laughs> out there on circuit. Less than 20 minutes left to go in this way. We have five or six minutes already, and yeah, that gap already being built to over two seconds. What is it now as he crosses the line? I think it's even longer. It is even longer. Over four seconds now as Lufra A and Lufra B switch for second place. Potentially a good bit of team orders there. Maybe not, well, not even team orders, just good teamwork. Both drivers are siding out on track. Well, it was at the start of the season where we were like, well, Loughborough B are effectively the, the A team. team yes. But then that's all seemed to have changed because they're both black plates now. So I don't know what's happened there. So I, I'm now blind as to whether which team is actually the A team, which team is the B team. But hey, the A team's overtaking the B team this time around. And they're the ones pressing on near the front of the field. Another driver pressing on is the number one of extra A. They've just made up another place, this time on Cardiff A as well as the 17 of UCLAN A. So now they find themselves up in fifth place to Exeter. They're having a great run through the field at the moment. And they started down in 18th to Jensen Brown. So, I mean, he's he's not shy of, uh, of, of a win in the BUKC, let alone uh, the sharp end of the order. And he's trying to do that again in this one. He's, he's making a good job of it so far. Hearing from the paddock as well, another potential track limit point is uh, seemingly so. I mean, haven't heard it myself, so this is all just conjecture. They're asking for no wheels past the white line for the last corner. Right, okay, on the rumble strip on the yep. outside. Yeah, gotcha. Obviously, no wheels at all. I just no yeah, wheels that's, that's tough. Yeah, that's that'll tough. be very tough. Especially so. with it being quite slippery down there. Still. Yes. That I presume will be to protect the cart because that rumble strip is fairly nasty it's horrible, on the, yeah. the cart. Got chains and axles to worry about. Yeah, so. it is horrible. It's understandable that as well. But yeah, that's that's not even because you're coming through that right hander at quite a slow speed. So if it was totally dry, that wouldn't be an issue at all. But because it's so slidey, the drivers are trying to put the power down and it's just pushing them towards that exit curve. So yeah, that's a really difficult one. But now I can see why we've got so many penalties. Thought about a move there, did the 34 Birmingham B. Thinking about the move on Loughborough B, but can't 
quite get it done. So yeah, it must be because it's um, it's Giulio Peroni who is the team captain there and he's in the B team. So the B team must still effectively be the A team. But Giulio just not quite finding the pace in this race, but overtaken by his teammate, now under a lot of pressure from the two drivers behind. But here comes Jensen Brown down the inside at Christmas corner, picking up yet another place. This is the exact situation you don't want to be in when you're trying to fight for that race lead because at this stage with a seven second gap to the 32 cars out in front, you can't really be thinking about the race lead. You've got to think about protecting your position on the podium more so. So not ideal, but still plenty of distance to go in this race. Not even anywhere near halfway just yet. No, exactly. I have a feeling as though Giulio Peroni may have been a bit stuffed up here with the car. He's just been overtaken twice into the boot there, and you saw Jensen Brown come out of the uh, come out of Osha's, pull alongside, go down the inside before they even started braking. So I feel like Giulio, his car may just be a little bit underpowered in this one. Of course, Club 100 do a fantastic job of trying to make sure that the carts are as identical as possible, but sometimes there can be a little hiccup, and one just maybe isn't quite on the pace of the rest of them. They've Giulio had a tough is morning. Falling. They have had a really tough morning, to be fair to them as well. Uh, so maybe, yeah, some damage incurred on them during the day, which is then causing this issue. But Giulio, yeah, still dropping down the order, has lost third to X to A, now loses four to Birmingham B as well well and now has Yukon A, Cardiff A, Oxford Brooks D and Reading A all for company <laughs> here in the top 10. We got Andrew Mather of Double Dash Media of course very happy with that iRacing shout out <laughs> round five Wednesday night on the Double Dash Media YouTube channel. Lovely. But he'd also like to add that uh, he's quite he's very very simple he's, he's always very clear as well. Students leave my cones alone. <laughs> Stay away from his cones there at the final section of the corners Andrew Mather is the one stood down there watching uh, I've got a watchful eye over his cones, so don't go anywhere near them, or he will be giving you a penalty. Change to second place, though. Through goes Exeter A. So it's been a sublime race from your friend in Liverpool A for this it one has. so far. Nearly an eight-second gap as they come across the timing line. But now it's Jensen Brown in second place. He's gained 16 spots. On We're only charge. 10 minutes into this race. I think that that gap could start to close quite quickly, sadly, for the Liverpool team. Yeah, I think in the final few minutes we're going to be on for a bit of a battle here, so stay tuned for that one. Number 34, meanwhile, Birmingham B, who's at the front of a massive train of carts here in the upper midfield. This is the battle for P4, the best of the rest, if you will. And it is, he's being followed close behind by that Loughborough B cart of Julio Broni, and then it is Uclan A, Cardiff A as well. Side by side, after it looks to be, no, that is Uclan past the Loughborough car as we head through the final corner here. Birmingham B will be feeling the pressure now in this battle for P4. A 59.2 on that last lap, matched near enough identically by Uclan A. We have, we have still got lots of penalties coming through, though, in this one, haven't we? We do. We have track limits. We have an RUY, something under yellows, I'm presuming. Uh, rejoining, Re maybe? I don't know. Oh, that's that's I haven't one. seen that one. Something under yellows. No, I don't know. It's definitely not reversing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think these carts have a reverse gear, so I think we can definitely uh, nullify that one. But anyway... Lots of penalties coming through as it is, and uh, yeah, lots of positions going to be added at the end of the race. Wow, oh, we've been given gifts. We've got the monster drop. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Just, we, it, thank you. They, clearly, they think we're getting a little bit tired in the comms box. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I will take one of those. Thank you, nice. sir. We have some zesty caffeinated some beverage. Chemicals. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, big shout out to the to the monster. I assume it's probably the, the monster senders club. All the caffeinated beverages are available. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But they have kindly turned up at the circuit in today. A massive Ford pickup. A huge pickup truck. Sorry, Mr. Polar Bear. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't think that's usually uh, monster energy. Oh of, of no, things. we've been distracted oh, by no. the caffeinated beverages. It is Callum Pedder who needs some caffeinated beverage right now. Oh dear. Cone penalty. Oh dear. Oh he dear. cannot win this race. Indeed, yeah, code penalty for Liverpool A means they're no longer in the running for this one, despite them still being eight seconds ahead of X to A. So we didn't get the reaction, but I'm sure it would have been a pretty frustrated one uh, from the Liverpool A driver. 
leading this race by a huge margin, but just making a silly mistake, getting a cone penalty, and thus, as you say, putting themselves out of the running. But yeah, big shout out to Monster Senders Club. You might even be able to see them on the cameras, as you say, a huge, absolutely massive truck they've got. Uh, giving out lots of different drinks to, to students and, and fueling the action here. Yeah, fueling the action here. Yeah, but it looks the drivers and the commentators uh, for the final round of BUKC in 2024. But yes, wow, what an upset. Liverpool A look to be on for a fantastic race win here, but they've chucked it all away by themselves. This is, I've, I've come to expect it, really. <laughs> you didn't get your hopes up. No, I, I wasn't actually hopeful. I knew, <laughs> I knew something was going to go wrong. It's always the case. That's fine, because extra eight are having a brilliant drive anyway, and it'll be good to see them coming. I mean, the, the times at the top end of the field have been oh so close. Like, we're talking within yeah, hundreds wow. or thousands in both P1 and P2, and the gap between Loughborough A and Birmingham B as well. They've been driving very close in terms of pace. New fastest lap, though, for Liverpool A. Oh, that's just dead now. rubbing salt into the wound, really, that isn't is. it? Because they were they're matching pace with Exeter, if not going faster every lap. So... The, the race win was there for the taking for Liverpool A, but they've shot themselves in the foot. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, we're just over 10 minutes to go then. What's the running order looking like? I think our closest battle high up the order is Loughborough A, Birmingham B and Ukran A. Loughborough B getting involved in that as well. Cardiff A not far back at either. Neither are Oxford Brooks D. So I believe this is the battle we're looking at at the moment as they come down through Ashby. We've got the 51 and the 8 there. This is Oxford Brooks D and Coventry A. Coventry A, another one of our um, championship contenders in the Premier class. And they have a, they've had a good run. A very so far good in this morning, race. Uh, so far this morning, yeah, according to the spreadsheet of doom. <laughs> 116 points scored so far today. Match by Manchester A, of course, having a great run up until this race. Then it's Coventry F and the Clubmans. They've scored a decent number of points. Reading A, Cardiff A and Lancaster all scoring 110 points or more. In fact, everyone seems to have had a fairly consistently good morning so far. No one's had any standout P1, P2, P1, P2, but it's been good. Yeah, the consistency has been really good, to be fair, throughout the day. These two have been having a brilliant battle while you were talking about that, Reeve. They were side by side, nearly from the entrance to the boot, all the way through up to Christmas Corner there. But finally, Coventry A are able to get the move done and uh, send Oxford Brooks D back to ninth place. I saw as they were coming across the line as well, Oxford Brooks D were looking up to see their um, track limits warning as well. So just needed to be a little bit careful there. It's the, uh, the driver the number 51. We've headed into the last 10 minutes then. Look at this. Drivers really going at it. Four drivers into one corner. Birmingham B has been in this position for a little while yeah, now, haven't they? They in have. In front of this train. They have, yeah. They're, they're, they're laying down the gauntlet here. They're uh, fending off the rest of the drivers from the top three positions. As we've got more penalties still coming through. Birmingham A, I've seen them get loads of track limits in this one. Same with Lancaster A. They've been coming through a lot in this race. Uh, so, although Lancaster have been having a, a decently good race there, it's not uh, it's not going to work. Actually, Lancaster, I think, have dropped down massively. Yes, they have. They're in 33rd now. So, something's gone Ooh. wrong. They're down in the 58s, just like the leaders are. But, yeah, something's gone really wrong for Lancaster. And they're getting a lot of track limit warnings, trying to get back up to good positions. New fastest up of the race for Exeter A, though, down in the 57s. 57.9. That's Ooh. an off. That's an off from a top position, that is. Now, I remember seeing that driver in yes. amongst that battle, but I can't remember which team it is. But they have had a big off down there. I saw there were drivers funneling outwards, going for positions there, but something's happened. And that driver finds himself off on the grass. It's the number eight, yep. Coventry A. So we've just seen them go for that move on Oxford Brooks D. And again, another driver has been cursed. They jump back in and rejoin the circuit. But losing a heap of that time. Is, that is the worst, possibly one of the worst places on track you want to find yourself stuck facing the wrong direction because that is pretty much exactly on the racing line, if not a little bit off it if someone goes wide. They've just got a penalty as well for spinning under yellows. Ah. So that happened under yellow flag conditions, according are you, are to the stewards. racing under yellows, won't it? Sorry? Are you, are, are you, will be racing under yellows. It will be, yes. yes, there you go. I told you you were a smarter man than me, Reeve, and you figured that one out. So yeah, racing under yellows, you can't be doing that. Even if you're diving in and out, it, bit of a grey area though, that one, I will say, of what is denoted as racing. But hey ho, we look back to the action, that's not our jobs. We just shout about it and we're enjoying it very much. Here is more battling going on. We look back to this battle for is it fifth place or have UCAN A managed to get through? They have. So UCAN A up into fourth then. Birmingham B now there in fifth with Loughborough B in sixth. And then just in behind is Johnny Wilkinson for Cardiff A, I believe it is, on the number seven. 
And then Oxford Brooks D as well, after they've been released by Coventry A having that spin. They're now in this battle once more. It seems like the pace, uh, Lopra B have found the pace in that car, to be fair. Julio Peroni now pressing on very nicely in this group, but he is under a bit of pressure there from Johnny Wilkinson in Cardiff A. But Johnny just trying to communicate. I'm not sure what though, as he nearly gets it all locked up and goes into the side of the driver in front. He got it very sideways on the brakes there, but well held from Johnny Wilkinson, showing his expertise in the car. Very late move down the inside for Julio Peroni. That was never on. And Julio, I think, potentially just outbroke himself there and felt he had to go for the move, but luckily doesn't go into the side of the driver in front. Stays where he is for now. Of course, a cone penalty is just one position, so this fight that Loughborough is involved in is for the lead, or oh, sorry, is for the leaders' battle. At least they're not going to find themselves in P2. It will still be for P3. It's just going to be a swap for the top end runners there. Although, track Exeter limits A. for Exeter A. Oh, oh dear. That spices things up, Blimey. doesn't it? They're making our job so difficult. This I can't remember who's got penalties. This is ridiculous. So, top two definitely have penalties now. We need to try and work out out of Loughborough A, UCLAN, Birmingham, Cardiff, Loughborough B, Oxford D, which of these drivers already have penalties and who's clean as we head into the last five minutes. But now, the number 12 of Loughborough A are sitting in a very nice spot. They've got about three seconds to UCLAN A who head up this battle. So uh, we just need to find out whether Loughborough have already got a penalty for themselves or whether it then goes back into this battle for fourth place. But all still kicking off. UCLAN now starting to build that little bit of a gap as they managed to clear Birmingham B a couple of laps ago. And now it's the turn of the seven of Cardiff A to try and find a way through as they've already got past Loughborough B as we looked away there for a little, a few seconds. But we're heading into the final five minutes now. And once again, new fastest up of the race for Liverpool A. Really strong times at the top end of the field. Everyone in the 58s or the mid 57s now, which is quite speedy indeed. This They've been a few seconds apart for most of this race, but you just get the sense that Exeter in play are just kind of spurring each other on. As you can see, just how much John in the corner box has to zoom out on the webpage to see the number of penalties. I can't zoom out you enough. Actually, yeah, you actually can't read the number of penalties. But I do think we've got a couple of repeats uh, as another penalty comes in there for Lancaster 8 with track limits. We've actually got, given how good that the racing has been. We've actually got quite a field spread going on here. The top 10 covered by 20 seconds now. We're on board with a mid-pack back here involving Cardiff A. Well, I can see a penalty for Loughborough B, but I can't see one for Loughborough A uh, for the moment anyway. So we'll try and keep you updated. But as I say, I literally cannot zoom out enough on my browser to be able to see the full penalty list. So it's impossible. Again, to remind you, results not half the time at UK forward slash BUKC for those finalised post-penalty results. Four minutes left to go then, and we believe Loughborough A are in the lead of this race. Indeed. So it's been... It's, been, it's actually been a tough battle for the lead. You'd think maybe they were going to be focusing on this mid-pack battle, this, this fight to, to stay in third position, but they've been rewarded with, with their patience, if you will. Those, those two out at the front have has had great pace, but unfortunately just haven't been able to keep the nose clean and have found themselves out of the running for a race victory. Indeed. Well, I mean, your friend at Liverpool Lane has been so impressive. That gap hasn't changed. It's seven and a half seconds. Four now. He's now a 57 four. Well, whatever illness he's got, it's not affecting him because he is absolutely flying out there on circuit and pretty much now, I think, guaranteed a P2, isn't it? Pretty much, unless we'll, there's still three minutes to go. Let's, <laughs> the rest, we've had penalties coming in, let's yes. not. Yes, no, that is true. Definitely, I shouldn't be speaking too early. That's, uh, the commentator's curse today has proven particularly it, powerful. It has been a little, uh, yeah, sizable, some of these uh, commentator's curses that have been going on. But uh, we still give a big thank you to, uh, to all the drivers who have given us stuff. Of course, Warwick. Uh, gave us all these all of these stellars now they wrote on the box Dan White starts P2 in race four no commentators curse please now where is Dan White of Warwick A um, where's, he is where's he found himself uh, not in race four <laughs> is he not are you sure or was it for Warwick A yeah I can't find Dan Warwick White A starts here. P2 in race four I could have sworn I saw them on the on the starting grid there's definitely it was Warwick, Warwick B. B. Uh, so potentially it was for Warwick B then for Dan White. 
Uh, so where is where is well, Warwick B cart? So they're in 19th at the moment. Let's just check on my. I think I've got it open on my WhatsApp. Uh, yes, so it was a Warwick B that Dan White was starting. Right. Um, I don't know what his expectations for this race were, but P2 to P18. Uh, P19 now, sadly for Dan. It's not to say don't bring us beer in the future. Bring by us the way. more beer. What I suspect has probably happened is last night wasn't quite the outrageous party they were expecting, and that left us. Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, we've got the outrageous party tonight, so they could have kept yes. it. They've been yeah. very nice. Yes. They've been very lovely there to give us a couple of sellers. But hey, let's let's about the party this evening. We've still got lots of racing to come. A minute and a half left to go here in race number four. What a race it's been for Liverpool A, but of course, all these penalties are very much coming into play now. And I will say, if we think that Loughborough A are in the hot seat here to take the win of the race, you Clan A are closing them down. They are really closing them down. Only about a second yeah, between half, them now, so we've got to keep an eye on that as we head into the last couple of laps. They've been half a second faster for a good few laps, now, and their ultimate best lap is about a tenth of a second faster. So, you Clan A cart looking a little bit happier out there at this moment in time. So, as you say, the fight is on. We've got just under 60 seconds to go on the timer penalty coming in there for UWE B. Yeah, I will say our, our heavy hitters in this one just not not having as good of a race as we've seen earlier. Reading A, they're in 12th place. I've just seen, I think it was Coventry A, and yeah, they've just got a track limits penalty as well. So I think this is the first race where we've seen our top teams who are trying to battle for the championship having a bit of an off race. It's not quite gone their way. Mm. We've just started another lap with the leader here which means this will be the last lap of this race now 20 seconds left on the clock something i think has happened to coventry a because they're they're dropping down the order like a stone they're not coming across the line so i think they may be off somewhere on circuit or uh, potentially have come into the pits but that's not great for coventry a that's going to be a really low result for them uh, in in race number four here so they're going to have to hope that uh, they get a, another good race either later on today. I imagine they, that this will probably be their second or third race of the day for Coventry. Will be their third. The yeah, first this will have two to be their really strong. Yeah, this will have to be their drop then, and hopefully their their fourth race is a little bit better. But we are on the last lap of the race. Here is Liverpool. A what a race it's been for them as they are about to overtake the muddiest cart I think I've ever seen. Here come Liverpool A to cross the line. They take the win on the road, but we know they've got a cone penalty. Exit A are going to come through. They close that gap to just under six seconds by the flag, but we know they also have a track limits penalty. So Lumber A and Yukon A were very close going on to the last lap of the race. Who's going to see the checkered flag first between two of them? Because we think that potentially they might be the first finishers that don't have a penalty, and it's Loughborough A who come across the line in third place. So we'll have to wait and see on results on Alpha Timing as to who does and doesn't have penalties, because I don't think even if we had four or six eyes, we could have kept up with the amount of penalties coming through during no. that one. No, not at all. But still, nonetheless, a very good race. Some good battlings up in the middle of the top ten. It definitely wasn't without its, its excitement. And I think some teams are going to be very happy with that one. But as I said, near the end of that one, a lot of the top teams having not such a great race in yeah. that one. So maybe opening up the opportunity for some other teams to get involved, at least in this round. Yeah, that, that decent consistency that we were referring to uh, before this race starts actually seems to have vanished somewhat here in race four it, it was in it was impressive consistency it was too impressive and it had to go yes, wrong at some point indeed. and it was race four so here are the provisional results for race four we know those top two on the road liverpool a and x day both brilliant drives but unfortunately penalties to boot there then it's loughborough a rounding out the podium uclan a cardiff a sheffield a birmingham b oxford brooks d and loughborough b southampton c the top 10 lancaster b birmingham a reading a manchester a and then we move on to surrey a for our top 15 edinburgh a portsmouth a coventry e warwick b and leeds a the top 20 coventry f brighton b southampton a and b coming home in succession with leicester a in the top 25 then it's huddersfield a imperial b moving on to lancaster a coventry b and bath c for the 30th and then it's Cambridge A, Brunel A, Coventry A, UWE B and Swansea A rounding out the field there. Indeed, 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 Mr. Reeve. Another good race. Four yep. races done and dusted then are the sprints. We've got two left to go. I'm still going to say this all this morning's action. I know it's post midday now. Which but is, the day's flown by. It's <laughs> flying by because time flies when you're having bum, Reeve. 
what a good uh, racing has been so far. As I say, two more sprint races left to go. And this is where the drivers have got to tie up their result here for round number seven before we then head into the Enduros later on this afternoon. It's going to be a very different style of racing this afternoon, but make sure you stick around post lunch break and enjoy all of the action with us here at the Wilton Mill International Kart Circuit. I definitely want to head out of the comments box during lunch as well. I want to hear what these drivers think of the new last corner because there have been some drivers doing a really good job through there, gaining a lot of time, and some drivers finding it a little bit more challenging. We'll try and catch up with them, and hopefully one person that can catch up with them already is Piers Pryor, who's down on the grid. Yep, we're down here. A lot of the drivers just going over to get weighed. Um, I did have a little chuckle to myself because the driver that came in uh, <laughs> first on the grid uh, was absolutely, and I mean absolutely, covered in mud. So, yeah, very, very wet if you leave the circuit out there. Um, I'm hoping to grab a word with our race winning driver from the Loughborough A, but I think I've lost them. So... Let's go find them. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good fun race. It was good to see the, a lot of action up and down the field. But it seemed like no one wanted to win that one, wasn't it? It was just uh, Liverpool A got a 10-second lead. P penalty. Then X to A, all there in second place. Good, good gap there. There's Jensen Brown, who was driving. He got into the what would have been the lead. Penalty. Um, and then it was Loughborough A in the end, who finished third on the road. It's, it's kind of been the... the uh, the theme of today, basically try and get into the lead, get into the lead, get a penalty and don't win the race. So anyone watching uh, coming up in the races, uh, just don't get a penalty, should be all right. Right, I'm looking for my Loughborough A, where's my Loughborough A driver? Where's my Loughborough A driver? Loughborough, anyway, Julio. Julio, it seemed like uh, you had a bit of a, a, a tough straight line effort there. Yeah, that was quite slow today. It looked like you didn't have much pace in a straight line between, um, especially into the boot. Not even the straight line, it was uh, coming off the corners. So coming off the horseshoe and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult because I just kept getting done into there. I w or I'd have to defend and the guys would get away. So I just, yeah, I was struggling to be honest. Still got a top 10, I think, after penalties. So uh, yeah, still a decent yeah. result. I think I got a pen as well for uh, track limits. I don't oh, know. unlucky. Is it because it's, uh, it's very tough on the last corner now, right? It's like right on the white line. Uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, it is. But I think I got it in turn two. Ah, of course, yeah. yeah. Track limits always being a, a feature in the race. There's a lot of drivers getting track limit penalties today. Why don't we grab a word with our driver who's, uh, who was in for uh, just to get into the sim racing. Yeah. How was that for you? Did you enjoy yourself out there? Oh, it was amazing. It's so good. Yeah, loved it. It's, uh, it's a, an added level of uh, immersion out there compared to sim racing, right? Yeah, it doesn't quite beat you up the same. I'll, I'll admit that, but it was really, really fun, except for the last corner. It was awesome. Yeah, because the last corner is it's still a bit wet, isn't it, on the line? It's a little wet. You, you feel like there's loads of grip until you get to the apex and then suddenly it goes away so had a lot of trouble there but i think we move forward i don't know where we are now but happy i'm glad you're enjoying yourself that's good for, that's all good i'm also going to grab a word with uh, our driver that nearly won the race jensen brown for Exeter. we chatted to him earlier uh, jensen jensen let's grab a quick word jensen uh, a great drive right through the field um you were leading even though you were second and then and the penalty unfortunately it's just not really enjoyable anymore with the way they're officiating it to be honest i'm i'm literally like half a centimeter over one of them i didn't even touch it, or as far as I'm aware, it's uh, I don't know. It's frustrating. Frustrating indeed. But you still, you drove a good race. You drove a good race. You came up from where to second or third when, after the penalties? Uh, 18th. Still good. Yeah. It's just yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, back next year. Back next year. Oh no, of course Jensen's not because he's graduating. But he'll be back. Uh, well, Axel probably looking to be back. And we now look ahead to race number. Whatever race it is, heavyweight race I think now. So. Uh, Race five, so that it makes it a lightweight race, actually. Uh, why don't we grab a word with our number one, two, four? Come on in. Who are you? Who are you racing for? Matteo Palmer, UEA. Matteo, um, talk to us about UEA's day so far. Um, could have gone better. A bit of bad luck, but um, can only go forward. Starting at the back, so see what happens. Going to see you carve your way through the field. Yeah, exactly. P1 into Christmas corner, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from 28th. 28th to first. That would be very impressive. Amazing, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Tell you what, if, if, if you manage to get into first by the end of of Christmas Corner, yeah. I'll, I'll buy your day's racing. Oh, perfect. There you, you go. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think that's a safe bet, boys and girls. I think that's a safe bet. As well, Matteo, you never know. You might be an absolute whiz on first lap. Let's grab a word with Fraser. Fraser Brunson, Cardiff A. Fraser, I um, haven't chatted to you for since uh, Warden, Warden Law. Um, it's Will Mill, we're here again. What a day. Yeah, yeah, it is. Nice and sunny, uh, dry, starting 11th. Yeah, should be good. Sorry, I just got blown over by the wind there. The wind is really picking up. Um, did you clean your helmet between Warden and here? 
I didn't, I didn't know. It's very dirty. I thought my dad would have done it, but no. <laughs> yeah, is that, you leave dad to do that sort of thing? <laughs> no, I'm joking, <laughs> obviously, definitely. Um, where are you starting in this one? 11th. Yeah. 11th, so a good opportunity for a good result. Yeah, hopefully. My, um, my friends at home wanted a shout out. Go on then. They always watch it, so shout out to the slugs and the uh, geoscience lot. The what now? Geoscience. Like my Geo oh, the, the rock boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the Rock Boys. <laughs> Shout out to the Rock Boys. There we go. Well, uh, I'm glad you're, I hope you're enjoying the stream. If you are and, you, and you're supporting Fraser, drop a message in the chat, which I think is there or there. Like and subscribe. You said like and subscribe. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed to Alpha Live. That's, that's definitely something you should do because we've got a lot of racing coming up. Fraser, thanks for the plug. Oh. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of racing coming up this season. We've got a, a lot of exciting things, some of which are announced, some of which are not. If you want to watch the racing this weekend, Super One from GYG uh, in, in, uh, in Wales, one of the best circuits in the UK, no doubt. Uh, that will be good fun to watch. Uh, let's wander up to our driver, who is starting on pole, pole position. Pole position. Oh, this is shiny. This is new. Yeah, it's actually my brother's. Oh, it's your brother's. Yeah, it looks sexy as fuck, doesn't it? It's really cool. It's very, very cool. Yeah. Um, also, right, I've got a proposition for you. Go on. Obviously, there was the bet about the stash. Yeah, I think we've just kind of... That, yeah, that, no, that no, went... no, yeah, no, that's that's under the water now. However, starting on pole, if I win from pole, yeah. shave your beard into a stash. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, I will. I will. If, I, I've got, I haven't got any razors. I haven't got any razors on me, so let's find some. But if if you win this race, I will on stream get rid of it and then keep keep the look. I actually nearly shaved last night and I decided not to. So maybe this is an omen. This is the moment. This is the moment. But we're here to cook now. We're cooking. What are we cooking on? Sorry. What are we cooking on? What did I on the stove? I guess <laughs> the stove. If you were, if you were, oh, he's clearly you're a betting man. We've made a lot of wages now. <laughs> if you were a betting man, uh, what do you reckon your odds of winning this race would be? What are my odds in keeping I, this, I'd, I'd keeping go, this beard? I'd go three to one. Three to one. That, yeah, you know, that's a thirty-three percent chance. Well, that's that's encouragement if I've ever heard it. Good luck. Um, hopefully, I'll keep my beard. I've got to do. So I'm going out tonight. I said out, not out, out. I'm going out tonight, so people are going to just think, going to think that I've decided to go for a moustache, which is fine. Which is fine. I don't mind that. And let's grab a word with our driver in second place, who's currently fighting with some mud. Um, you, I will get you to I'll get some help with that in a moment. Let's let's have a quick chat for the stream. Uh, who are you? Who are you racing for? I'm racing for Oxford Brooks D. And your name is Victor Pardo. Victor. Um, this car. <laughs> Looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get, let's just uh, absorb this car in all its glory. And um, clearly, the driver before you had a little trouble out there. Yeah. I assume you're going to try and avoid any muddy incidents. Of course, of course. Especially in this bright white suit, yeah. very shiny helmet. Yeah, don't go off track, mate. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, what do you reckon you can do? I've just made a wager with our driver in first position. If he wins, I have to shave my beard off. So. Uh, Do you reckon I'm going to... Can you help me keep my beard on? Yeah, of course. I'm going to win. <laughs> right, Victor's going to help me keep my beard. Victor, good luck in the race. Thanks for chatting to us. Um, <clears throat> third place on the grid. Remind us who you are and who you're racing for. Uh, Gracie Holdsworth for Loughborough Day. Grace. Uh, Gracie or Grace? Gracie. Gracie. Gracie in your accent. Um, <laughs> Gracie, um, what can you do in this race? Can you can you take the win? Uh, I'm going to try, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. And how has Loughborough Day's day gone so far? Uh, we've had our two worst starts and we finished like near the top 10 so hopefully if I can convert this we should be in a good spot. Grace are you going to be joining everyone in the party this evening? <laughs> I wish but no we missed out on tickets. You missed out? I know. You'll have to have your own party in back in Loughborough. Yeah I think we'll have a team meal so. Oh that's nice where are you going to go? Amber Rooms? Uh, oh <laughs> You know, Loughborough then. <laughs> yeah, I was at Loughborough. All oh, right, okay, yeah, Amber Rooms probably. Amber Rooms it is, or, you know, maybe, well, what day is it today? It's a Friday, so that'll be Union? Uh, Union's Wednesday, I think. In fact, no, we're on holiday. Oh, of course, I forget. I forget these, I forget students have part-timers, aren't they? Part-time students. Good luck, Gracie. Hopefully it goes well for you. Let's wander further down the grid. We've got an extra uh, jumping out again. Of course, they're a bit disappointed after that fire, previous race. Uh, it looks like a strong grid in this one. Alfie, let's grab a word with Alfie for Oxford Brooks, eh? Alfie Prince, um, how's it going, mate? Not bad, not bad. Last race of the season, I'm quite excited. I'm not excited for Enduros, though. I've got Enduros here. Have you got your abacus out so you can make sure that you... I'm going last. I'm not doing any pit stops. <laughs> it's probably for the best, no, mate. Me, no, me, I'll probably still end up pitting. Yeah, do not pit uh, if you're going last. Uh, just a reminder for those who don't know what we're talking about. Uh, was it PFI, wasn't it? Yeah. We joked on the grid that... Um, that previously Oxford Brooks A uh, made three pit stops in a two pit stop race um, and then in that very race you made three pit stops so that was entertaining not this afternoon but anyway sprint race ahead what are you up to what are you going to do uh, no brakes 
No brakes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He's I'm, not joking. I've got a bit of a shift on my hands, though. There's a few, few fast drivers in this one, so see what we can do. Yeah, but you're one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Keep it on the track, that's what I've got to do. Nice yeah, cars. it's very muddy out there. There's a couple of carts that are heavier than when they started. Alfie, good luck. Uh, Oxford Brooks A, we'll see how they get on in this one. I think we're done and ready to go for race number five. Let's do it. Thank you very much, Pierce. The grid is used as colourful as ever. We are ready though for race five here of round seven, getting towards the closing stages. And here is our grid. It is Lancaster A and Oxford Brooks D on the front row, Loughborough D and Bristol A on the second, Coventry B and Southampton B on the third. Moving on to row four, it's Exeter A and Liverpool C. The fifth row with Bath A and Liverpool A, row six with Cardiff A and U Plan A. Moving on to row seven, it's Birmingham B and Swansea B. Uh, row 8 is Oxford Brooks A and Warwick A. Row 9, Cardiff B and Bath C. Moving on to row 10, then it's Cambridge A, Manchester A, with row 11 having Surrey A and Sheffield A. Row 12, it's Nottingham, Trent A and Coventry E. And then we move on to row 13, it's Cardiff C and Oxford Brooks B. Row 14, Sheffield B and UWE A. Row 15, Leicester A and Leeds B. Row 16, it's Coventry F and Imperial A, with our final row being Sheffield C and Liverpool B for race five here. So, practice lap, look at that wind at the back of the, uh, at the, back of the track. It's still very windy, isn't it? Yeah, tree's going a bit crazy. I'm interested to see, I can't really tell from, from those which direction the wind is blowing. It seems to be sort of sidewards, so I, I feel like, uh, for this camera angle anyway, I feel like maybe they're getting a, a nice push up towards yeah. Christmas Corner. They'll feel it though heading down where we are now as we head back down towards the boot, that sort of direction. It mm -hmm. will be pushing against the car and you might have to get a bit of a gust. Exactly, exactly. Meaning maybe into uh, like down here into Ashby, maybe you can break a la little bit later because you've got that, that nice uh, that head on wind. Uh, Hold on a second, I've just seen Will Abraham go past. He was he was down as being in a previous race, and I took the absolute mick out of him for it. <laughs> Sorry, Will, if you're down in this race, I, I might have got that a bit wrong. But that's not my fault, because that's your team's fault, putting your name down in the wrong race. Uh, so I'm not going to take any any uh, any fall for that one. But of course, drivers, once again, doing three laps of practice before we get into another 25-minute sprint race, as Reeve is updating the spreadsheet of doom before he's able to give off give us some updates on the championship and, and how the round is uh, is forming at the moment. Of course, it was all looking uh, uh, a little bit more obvious and, and understandable of what, of what was happening before as teams were being very consistent and we sort of knew who was up near the front of the order. That last race, I think, has, has changed a lot of things it around has. this round. Has it? Has yes. it been, uh, give us some updates. Uh, well, what I was about to say is, let me get back to you on this because we currently have four Clubman's winners. Well, what? <laughs> What? I'm going to presume there's still some missing data that I need to fill in. Okay. Currently, we have four club uh, Interesting. Uh, and some of those winners have scored 136 points, and some of those winners have scored 78 points. So I don't know what you've done there, I've Mr. I've broken Reeve. Andrew's <laughs> spreadsheets, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think the numbers right. are still good. It's just... We're just okay. Interesting. Yeah. Right, well, we'll try and keep an eye on the numbers then. Yeah. We'll let you try and delve into that and find where something has gone wrong there, because yeah, I think we can safely assume that Lancaster A are on for the round win here. They've had some fantastic results. I think one not so great finishing result, but a couple that were that were very, very good up up right near the sharp end of the order, as Lancaster A have been doing throughout this season. They've been super, super impressive. I hope they can carry that one into the last couple of races. Of course, some teams, this will be their last race of the day. And then we've got one more sprint race, race number six, coming up directly after this, and that will have to be everyone's last race of the day because that is the last, oh sorry, the last race of the sprint uh, because that is uh, that is the last one. So if you still haven't raced, something's gone very, very wrong this morning. Uh, but anyway, off we go then. Nearly ready to get race number five underway. We've got some big hitters in this one. We're going round again, so a bit of time, a bit of time to talk about them. I can see a few. Uh, Oh, I'm going to mention a few helmets I recognise. Uh, I know 
uh, Reeve and I were, were giggling like school children when, when, uh, no, Piers, when Piers was chatting about uh, uh, helmets being polished and, uh, and things like that. But some lids that I very much recognise in this one. I mean, we were talking about Lancaster Ray doing a great job. They're on pole position uh, for this race. I think you can probably assume that they'll likely be putting their best driver in for that to uh, secure a result. They've already got some good ones. So I think Lancaster Ray very much on for a clubman win here. Uh, for round number seven, but I don't want to commentate this curse and never say never. You don't know what could happen. Uh, let's have a look further down the list as well. Exeter A starting in seventh place. They're definitely uh, one to watch there. Have I got the right number up? Yes, I have. Exeter A, it's Owen Tolly who's in the car for Exeter A. And we've got Jesse Dorgeist who's in for Bath A. We know Jesse is very fast there. They're starting from ninth place. Then Fraser Brunton starting 11th for Cardiff as well. So I want to say we've got potentially three wet races winners there. I know Jesse Dorgis is a race winner. I would tell him I'm not 100% sure, but being part of Exeter A, it wouldn't be the, the most far-fetched thing in the world. So, potentially a few different race winners in this one. Also, UCLan A, just behind Cardiff A. I know that they're as a team, they have won a race this season. Oxford Brooks A as well. Alfie Prince in for them, starting 15th in this one. Warwick A, uh, Jean Samu. Jean Samu is quite fast as well. We've seen him up near the sharp end many times for Warwick A. Lots of heavy hitters in this one. We'll see how it goes. But two by two, leading around the final corner, you can see how horrifically muddy the Oxford Brooks D-car is of Victor Pardo. But it's Lewis Jones alongside him. He's the one that leads us to the green lights here to go race number five of round seven underway. And already around the outside, taking the lead is Oxford Brooks D. Victor Pardo immediately takes it away before we've even got through the first couple of corners, but immediately trying the re-overtake is the 30 of Lancaster A, and they do retake the lead up at Christmas Corner. Everything getting super close there as they head to the apex of that cone, gets annihilated. I couldn't quite see who that was. I'll be impressed if the uh, if the Club 100 star members at the Southern Circuit could tell who that was, because it was just a huge gang of about five or six all dying for the same piece of tarmac there. But all drivers for the moment anyway, making it round the track, all still facing in the right direction. But scraps going on up and down the order. That is definitely Will Abraham there uh, on the on the Cardiff B cart. Ah, so that's why I would have changed because Aaron, Aaron Farmer's down for them. So it's all it's all switched up between those drivers. But we make it to the end of lap number one. No incidents on lap one here in race five. Wow. Impressive stuff. We do already have a penalty, though. Let's switch back to the live timing. Who's that? That's Oxford Brooks D. I was about to say. Second place. They need a good result in this race because it hasn't been so good for them so far. And it was looking good. But no, we still well, have a conversation. We saw yes. him go around the outside of the first corner. Got a great start. Too good of a start. Jump start penalty. Indeed. Other teams as well looking to recover in this race. Coventry, they've had a great showing so far this morning. Then in the last race, they just all went wrong. They need to treat that race as their drop race pretty much and, and need to be back on form in this one here. Ooh, late move down the inside there. Trying to steal away. We've got two Tony Kart suits up in the top gaggle here. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. And quite similar helmets as well, actually. A lot more red from the driver in behind. I want to say, is that Jesse Dorgeist on the number four? We'll see as they come through the camera shot through the last corner. Then Lancaster Ray still leading us through. And it is indeed the number four of Jesse Dorgeist in the Tony Kart suit. I think Bath A potentially losing a position or two on that last time. Yeah, two down from six to eight. Cardiff A take away those spots. So Fraser Brunton already pushing on ahead, but we've got a lovely, lovely battle here. How many cards involved in this one? Well, we'll look, a, we'll look at it a little bit later. Down the inside for the lead, potentially go Bristol A, but not quite committed enough, and possibly are going to lose out the place to Oxford Brooks D. No, they get blocked, and now they get shuffled back down the order. One, two, three, maybe even four places lost there for the number 51. Cardiff A slipping down the inside, so the Coventry B and Loughborough D then. The 41 holding the inside, that is Loughborough D who have managed to make it through and up into second place. Fraser Brunton now down the inside of Coventry B to take fourth place. So sorry, um, Loughborough D are in third. Cardiff A now in fourth place. So it is still Bristol and Lancaster going at it for those top two positions. There is Jesse Dorgies down the inside for Bath A, takes away the place from Exeter A. So not only do we have a huge battle here, there are some championship contenders involved in this. There are some heavy hitters, some very good drivers. Ladies and gentlemen, do not switch off your television set, your phone, whatever you're watching this on, your, your Samsung smart fridge. Don't turn it off. You're going to enjoy this race. Here's another move down the inside. Can Bristol A finally make it work this time? Yes, they can. 
great move there and a strong early race start for Bristol A. This is what they need to kind of carry this momentum forward into the rest of the race now. They've shown that they mean business here. Yeah, they truly are. They truly are. What a gaggle this is. 16 and 32 still going at it. One of the Liverpool carts trying to get involved. Liverpool A holding it round the outside. I think just about holding on to the position, but they'll still be two by two as they head down into the boot. It's the 17 who's trying to get down the inside. You can A, but no, well held from Liverpool. They hold on to the spot for now anyway. But I think and that's commentary B who has slipped back. So yeah, Liverpool hold on to eighth place. Still, it's all going on in this race, but Bristol A have now been released. They've got a good seven, eight tenths of a second ahead of Lancaster, but look at Cardiff go. 58.2 from Fraser Brunson. He heads up to Christmas Corner. Can he get the move done? He's down the inside already. They're still side by side on the exit, but can't do it this time around. Not even Fraser can get the move done up at Christmas Corner. It's been a challenge all day for a lot of drivers. Now he tries it down at Ashby, down the inside once again from Fraser Brunton, and this time gets it done. Points ahead, says to Lancaster A, let's work together here to close in on Bristol A but there's still 20 minutes left to go in this race it's still lots of time for everything to change here not only at the sharp end of the order but up and down the order look at this 10 seconds separate the top 18 we had that as the gap wow. between like the top three in race number one after this many laps so not really any gaps forming battles galore and here we look back to um, D under a lot of pressure from exit A and through they go on the exit and it's, what's even more impressive is it's four seconds only for the top ten as well. It's very close in that mid pack there. That is really where that is, that's where the tight fight is. Exactly, yeah. And the fact that they're battling is just allowing for the drivers in behind, even if they've not quite got the pace to keep up naturally, because of the battling that's going on, they're still able to latch onto the back. And that just creates a bigger and bigger and bigger pack of carts that then makes it even more exciting for us to watch. Liverpool A there, I think, being overtaken potentially uh, by the 50. No, no, no. It was, uh, it was an attack from Liverpool there. Unsuccessful attack, though, sadly, for them. Here is the number two of Oxford Brooks A now getting involved in this as well. They go down the inside of the Lodges. Wide moment for you, Clan A, and now puts them under a bit of pressure. Then from the driver in behind as well, the other of our Tony Kart suits. I think that was our front row sitter of Oxford Brooks D, now finding themselves in 12th place. Thought about that move on the exit, but wasn't able to get it done. 15 there, getting shoveled out wide by Liverpool. Liverpool finally getting through on Warwick A for eighth place as they now come up to the line to start a new lap of the race. Cardiff A after getting released from Lancaster A, set a new fastest lap of the race of a 57.7, and Cardiff A are only a tenth for two behind Bristol A. Let alone that, they're through on Bristol A up at Christmas Corner, and Fraser Brunton takes the lead of the race. Cardiff A have had great momentum so far this morning. A huge amount of points for them scored. In fact, they are currently out on top in terms of points. Uh, this is going to only, only going to be adding to it. Cardiff A? Yeah. No way! Yeah, we've had wow. a P2, a P10, a P4, which you see after the inconsistencies we had in race four, sees them very much on top in terms wow. of points at the moment. Impressive stuff. And yeah, if, if Fraser can secure this win here, they are on for a lovely round win at Cardiff A. They've been very impressive. Flying a little bit under the radar today, I will say, just getting involved in those top 10 battles, staying there, and I think keeping out of a few penalties as well, which has really, really helped through today. And speaking of which, it's been so exciting on track, I've not even really had a time to look. We've got track limit penalties uh, for Manchester A and Swansea B, a cone penalty for Cardiff C, an ABC takeout for Cambridge A, track limits for Loughborough D as well, and I'm sure more that I can't see because I can't scroll down fast enough. But here we look back then to the battle for third. We saw um, Jesse Dorgie's going to get down the inside of Lancaster A at the boot end of last lap. It clearly hasn't worked though because Lancaster are back ahead, but here he's going to try it again down at Ashby. Jesse Dorgie's down the inside. Jesse Dorgie's in third place. But here comes the number one then of Exeter A. They're now trying to find their way through on the Lancaster cart. How long will it take them? They need to try and hook onto the back of that Bath A cart and continue pressing on ahead and not get held up too much. Owen Tolley pulls out from the slipstream, goes for it down the inside into the boot, but can he get alongside enough? No, he cannot. The up and under now on the cars, tries to get in there, but can't quite squeeze the door open far enough and thus has to sit behind once more. But look at that. One attempt to the move that doesn't work, two or three cart lengths lost there for Exeter A and now Bath A are starting to press on by themselves towards Bristol A in that second place. Here trying it again now is Owen Tolley down the inside but again not quite committed enough nearly makes contact I think almost I think does actually make contact with the side of the Lancaster A car and look how much time that's cost them again. 
And not only are they losing time then to the Bath A cart in third, the carts in behind of Coventry B, Liverpool A, Loughborough D, and the rest of them are all now catching up. And here we look back to that battle. This is Liverpool A trying to steal away sixth place. So Coventry B, they weren't able to do it that time around, but we've still got a lot of time left in this race for them to get the move sorted. This could all still change here up at the sharp end of the order. Lots of time for this to play out, but Fraser Brunton is in that commanding role in the lead of the race, still with the fastest lap. He sets a new fastest lap of the race, a 57.1 now the time to beat from Fraser Brunton. That gap back to Bristol, a, time. almost two seconds now. Could be seen 56s by the end of the sprints. I think you're right. Let's hope the weather holds out. I mean, the Thankfully, yeah, thankfully the forecast has been completely wrong completely so far. Completely wrong. Yeah, never trust the weather forecast. As all Exeter A, cone penalty, they're battling up in this top group. They're in fourth at the moment. That'll mean they'll lose, uh, yeah, one position at the end of the race for Exeter A. Here's the 15, though. Warwick A getting a position. So that's Oxford Brooks A, I think, just behind them. Late move. Oxford Brooks D make the move on Oxford Brooks A. And now they're side by side heading out towards the boot. Oxford Brooks A get a nice little push down into the boot from the 11th place cart. That's Euclid A, who then follow through. So in an attempt to take a move away from their teammate, which I'm not sure that the, the, the rest of the teammates off track would be too happy with, uh, the D team trying to get past the A team actually ends up losing a place to Euclid A. And Euclid A move their way into the top 10. It's another fastest lap for Fraser Brunton. 56.9. We are already in the, in 56s. the 56s. Impressive stuff. This Impressive is a, stuff. This is a very you, typical Fraser Brunton drive, it is, isn't oh, it? Yeah, Fraser Brunton is uh, very used to being up in up in the lead of races. Now, uh, you're hearing my voice a lot in this race. I'm afraid it's because uh, Reeve is trying to sort no, out this spreadsheet, I have of Doom this spreadsheet of Doom and work out what is going on. So he'll be back very soon once he has uh, got that sorted. I've, I've nearly escaped from this report. <laughs> <laughs> nearly, and uh, we can get the uh, spreadsheet of Doom back under control. But yeah, less than 15 minutes left to go in this race now. That's changed up near the uh, the sharper end of the order. Or is that Lancaster? Yeah, so Lancaster A still behind Exeter A then, fourth and fifth respectively. Then there's a 16 of Coventry B, and then at the 32 of Liverpool A. So Liverpool A cleared Warwick A, and now already on the back of, uh, of Coventry B. So this could be a pretty good round result for Liverpool A with their, with their second place earlier on because of the code penalty when they won by over seven seconds. And now pressing on even more down the inside goes the 32 on the number 16 but again just not quite committed enough how many times have we seen that today where a driver thinks about a move but can't quite get it done and speaking of liverpool one of the liverpool members has finally got his head up the spreadsheet of oh there's a race is there? yeah. this is yeah, very yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. isn't it what's happening here so yes so we've got a few more championship permutations going on it is cardiff a as i say having a great morning manchester a as well despite that that poor showing in race four, still looking good. Reading A, of course, in the mix for this championship. It's looking good for Reading, it must be said at the moment. Southampton A have done their best, but are still around about, well, they've, they've scored about 20 points less than, than Reading. So it's looking good for Reading. Okay, okay. So I want to keep an eye on then as we head into the final race after this one. But we've still got 13 minutes left to go of race number five here. And there's still a battle on the cards, trying to squeeze through that gap is Liverpool A, but have they got enough of a run to go down the inside here? I Second time of asking on Comet GP, and this time they get it done. Yeah, looked a little bit easier that time for Lewis Jackson in the Liverpool A car there. I do remember that name to be fair, Lewis Jackson. He he often fights at the front, doesn't he, Lewis? He does. He's a, he's he's fairly quick and. Well, he was, I think he was most known at Warden for, for his sliding about. He, he was drifting his way through the uh, through the last corner, or one of the final corners. The Tokyo Drift then, he's about to be re-overtaken though. Fight back from the number 16 of Coventry B, back down the inside into the boot, and gets it done. So all that effort, they're going to try and go side by side though. That's a close one into the final couple of corners. The 32 Liverpool A were lucky there, they didn't get nerfed out wide onto the grass, and now they've got a poor exit, which means that they're under pressure from Warwick A, who are dragging with them Oxford Brooks A, Yukon A, and Oxford Brooks D. But here we look back to the battle for second place. Jesse Dorgeast in the Bath A cart, all over the rear axle, with the number 40 of Bristol A. There, you just about saw Fraser Brunton dart through shot as we, uh, as we cut through to there. How long is it going to be until this move for second place gets done and dusted? Bristol A have been very quick in this one, but Jesse Dorgeeks has been just that little bit faster. 
57.2 fastest lap for uh, for Bath and a 57.3 fastest lap for, Brist uh, for Bristol. So they're very close in time. They're very close in situation on the map. But uh, which one's going to come out on top? Another fast slap there for Fraser Brunson in the number seven car. The only driver in the 56s. It's, just, it, it's mighty impressive. We were struggling a couple of races ago, but the pace had picked up and the grip was looking good. But we were ha hanging around the high 58s, 59s. Um, we found another few seconds here. Uh, we said this at warning. Surely it can't get faster. Still, as we see the number 15 of Warwick A trying to see if he can make it stick around the outside. An alternative move for the right hand that didn't quite work out. So that's changed on the last lap again. Liverpool have got back through, but there's the move again down at Ashby. Back through, go Warwick A. And that's changed as well. Second place has changed. Bath A finally through on Bristol A. So it is all still changing here. Over halfway through the race then, just over 10 minutes to go. And all still up for grabs then. It seems everything except the lead of the race. But of course, we've seen it many times. Uh, just given Liverpool's example, in the lead of the race, of gets course, a code yep. penalty, it's done and dusted. Yep. So keep there's still me. opportunity here for Fraser Runton to lose the race. We'll keep an eye on those penalties for you. The Bath A car, possibly the only other car, maybe Exeter as well, obviously, could be the only other car threatening for those 56s. I doubt, with 10 minutes to go, we're going to be seeing a battle between Bathe and Cardiff A, but as we've said, don't These two are having a brilliant battle. They are. This is the battle at the top end of P6 at this point. It's changing around so much yeah. as we start the uh, Yes, I think it is, yes. And, uh, yeah, as we say, changing around constantly, but not losing too much pace in that battle. They're still in the, in the mid-57s. I feel like it's one of those ones where you get so enthralled in the battle, you actually go faster. Yes. Uh, it's you one of those ones. You pushing each other well enough. Exactly, yeah. You're not actually losing enough time when the moves are being made, but you're pushing each other on because neither of you want to lose the place. So you actually end up going faster. And they are closing in on Lancaster A in fifth, to be fair. That could change the dynamic. We're adding a third element into this battle. Oh, and Liverpool A potentially losing out here to the number 16 of Coventry B. The Clubman car, as we now head further having a look at the inside perhaps no Coventry should be deciding there's nowhere to stick a cart Coventry a little bit faster in the mid corner there you saw a little push as they got to the apex we've got Bath A in the 56s now it looks like we're doing a little bit better on penalties this time around I think so it's yeah. definitely been a bit slower um, definitely a bit slower so Maybe the drivers just coming into their stride. Because to remind you, this will still be the drivers involved. Still will still be their first race of the day. You don't uh, compete in in more than one sprint race unless you race for another team as an ineligible. But I don't. I think there's been a change in the rules of that. That's ridiculous. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I just I'm being, bring up the penalty I'm list. I'm being for shown race the four. penalty list for race four. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Again, results for half a time in UK UK four slash BUKC. If you want to have a look at that, go to race four and have a look at the penalties. That's ridiculous. Here's a move though. Up at Christmas corner, Lancaster A under a bit of pressure. Then Warwick A trying to find a way through. They're going to be very close on the exit. Make a bit of contact at the apex there through Boxing Day, but end up getting the move done to the 15 of Warwick A. So Lancaster A just shuffle down a position and look at that. Liverpool A sitting there ready to pick up the scraps. Now in a three-way train, we've got three-way train, then another three-way train. With the uh, Oxenbrooks D car now getting involved at the back of this one. Headed up by the Oxenbrooks A car on the number two. It was, oh, I thought they were going to go for a move there. Super late. Lancaster A. So Liverpool A have got that move done. Then they're through on Lancaster A for sixth place. Tried to follow through there very late to Oxenbrooks A. Luckily, it didn't work and they've sat back once again. But we finally have a fast stop of the race that isn't Fraser Brunton. 56.6 for Exeter A. Absolutely flying along the cart in P4 at the moment. Kind of in a little bit of no man's land in all of this going on. He's second half down on the podium and a good few seconds ahead of those in the midst of this battle here. So he's in a good position actually, is the Exeter A cart. Could find, could find well, I imagine we're gonna have a battle for the podium. 
towards yeah, the end of the race. Only two seconds off of, off of Bath and Bristol, so definitely still on for a three-way battle there for second place. I have just seen, though, Oxford Brooks A, who's very much involved in this battle, the number two plate, has just got themselves a track limit penalty, so they're going to be dropping a few positions uh, at the end of this race, and thus, I should make them want to get to the front of this battle as quickly as they can to try and nullify that penalty as much as possible. Into the, lo into, get into the wow. lower half of the 56s now. I'm going to temper it. It's just like water. Maybe 55? <laughs> Maybe? Possible? <laughs> Who knows? Let's see. Just see, looking over the shoulder there, the Warwick A versus Liverpool A battle continues on. Now seeing another phase of this battle between Lancaster and Oxford Brooks A, as well as we mentioned, the penalty for Oxford Brooks A. Liverpool C picking up a code penalty, Trent A picking up a code penalty as well. Move down the inside from Oxford Brooks A. They can't get it done. That's going to open themselves up to U Clan A going down the inside, and they do. So U Clan A taking eighth place away then. Not quite committed enough. Down into Ashby from Oxford Brooks A, and they're going to pay the price. They now get a bad exit off Vosges of as well. So under even more pressure now. And it's all kicking off. Just under six minutes left to go then in race number five. And this has been a really, really good race. Really enjoyable battle here, up near the sharp end of the order. Now, I was going to say, Liverpool and Warwick actually might be working together here a little bit. No point in terms of getting more positions. They're now, what, seven seconds almost behind uh, Exeter in fourth place. But just to push ahead of these drivers who are battling in behind. There's a move down the inside, a little bit too late there from the Oxford Brooks D driver, and again, can't get the move done. How many times have we seen that so far today? As a code, code is yes. resurrected there, down at Ashby. <laughs> Probably against its will to be put Please back on that apex. Back. <laughs> 56.3 coming in for X today. There, that is a very impressive lap time. Especially with the new layout, we've got some strict track limit warnings in place as well. You can't push too much into some of these corners. It's a little bit closer come for there with you, Clan, making a bit of contact, heading through the boot section and getting up on two wheels there. We've seen that happen a couple of times in the uh, Wilt Mill Kart Club and the O play of drivers just getting on two wheels through that final section and it being a little bit nervy. I think these carts are so heavy we don't need to worry about potential car flips. Uh, but look at this. This is the battle for second place then, still headed up by far. Bristol following close behind, but Exeter A with all of those, uh, all of those fantastic quick laps have been able to press on to this battle, and they've got four minutes to not only try and get third from Bristol A, but Bath A are right there for the taking as well. Only about half a second in front, so this battle for second still all playing out between Bath, Bristol, and Exeter. But Fraser Brunton out in the lead of the race, nearly six seconds now that lead from Fraser, really helping to put together a good round result for Cardiff A and potentially being on for that round win. Of course, we probably had some teams who may be challenging, who have who aren't in this race or have only done three races up until now, will still have race six to go. So we're going to have to wait until midway through race six to see how it all plays out. But three and a half minutes left to go then in race number five, and there's still a battle going on between UCLan and Oxford Brooks A. UCLan not able to make the move work that time, though. A few more penalties coming in. Manchester A track limits, of course, Manchester. Right there for a in the mix for a round win. We've got Coventry B as well. Yeah, actually the time's normally down for everyone. It was just a case of it was those two front runners earlier on in the 56s. Now we're in the 57s, 56s throughout the field. 56.3 being the fastest lap of the race so far. And if you have just joined us or you're new to the BUKC, perhaps you know or perhaps you follow other karting. It is, it's not too often that we use the international layout on the BUKC. It can't, oh well, certainly didn't last time, if my memory serves me correctly, but with the new layout, and uh, obviously running into the international variant of the track as well, the last time is a little bit longer. That's why, if you're confused, you might be seeing, hey, these cars used to do high 40s or, or, or low 50s. Uh, were well. you asking what circuit layout they used to qualify as? I'm just saying we're on the international yes. layout with the new layout as yes, well. Yes, so yes. If, you, if, you're, if you're not entirely sure why the time seemed a little bit off, yeah, that's why. Exactly, yeah. Of course, we were here already once this season for the qualifiers, but that would have been on the Zulu layout because the Zulu layout is the only one with uh, full uh, lighting. So, yes. obviously, in November, get started pretty early. They're still racing into the darkness, uh, and that means you need to go on a layout that has active lighting.
penalty is coming in for Oxford Brooks. A track limit for starting to fall foul of it again, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting to let those warnings turn into penalties. It was looking good so far, but it seems to be falling by the wayside ever so slightly. Another cone penalty for the full seats, not their first this race. Who's that? Name and shape. Them. Yeah, the power's gone to your head, Reeve. Tom Roberts. <laughs> naughty, 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 Tom Roberts. Just over a minute to go then on the timer. Reminder, no plus one lap. Try and remember that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We need to make sure that we remember that. We're not going to get caught out again. One minute left to go then. Fraser Brunson has, has crossed, crossed the line a little while ago. Um, and that will mean that we get two more laps then of this Wilton Mill International Circuit. Yeah, that's weird. The, it definitely, when I was here for Wilton Mill Car Club, it definitely had a different track length on the um, on the live timing. It's now at 1,128 metres. It was 1,054. I guess that was potentially what it was before the new yeah, I assume that's what it will be. Must be. Must Although be. you think the new edition would actually add Length. Yeah, that's what I mean. So potentially yeah. it was 1,054 before, and now it's 1,128. Why don't we in the look for it? Why don't we go out and we'll just have a quick walk? We'll go and measure just, it. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll go and one. You just kind of <laughs> it step might take up. us a while. Yeah. Sorry, we're late back at comms. We were measuring the circuit <laughs> with our feet. Yeah, nice. Also, I did want to say as well, uh, watching the, if you're watching this stream, enjoy the racing today. I know that this last corner, I'm pretty sure anyway, doesn't have a new name. So I want to hear right. in the live chat as well your suggestions for what the name should That's be. What I was kind of shying the away last from a couple of corners. Yeah. I want to I want to hear what people are thinking. I remember when they did it on the British Car Trap Social. Some of the uh, some of the results were hilarious that people put in. So I want to hear what you guys at the UKC think that the new final section of corners should be called. Maybe Brunton Corner because what a race it's been for Fraser Brunton on the number seven of Cardiff A. So, uh, sadly for him, Oxford Brooks A have just stolen away his fastest lap of 56-2. For themselves, actually, that was stolen away from Exeter. To be fair, who also have Ooh, a 56 to as well. Spin. Lancaster oh, Ray, Lancaster Ray have been spun there up at Christmas Corner. I don't think actually losing any positions. They've just got two track limits penalties, so I mean it wasn't going too well post race anyway. But on track, up in 11th, I think they might have just got slipped down to 12th. And what's that? Was that Cardiff A who were close to them? Yes, it was. I think that was Cardiff, uh, sorry, not Cardiff A, Cardiff B who spun them around there and went up into 11th place. So we'll wait and see. But Fraser Brunton is going to come across the line and take the win. He's already crossed the line, I think. Yes, he has. What a win then for the number seven of, uh, of Cardiff A. Bath A finish in second place, but a change on the last lap. Bristol A get back past Exeter. So despite Exeter's pace throughout that race, they got through on Bristol. Bristol re overtook on the last lap to take third place and a Warwick A. Good race from them to round out the top five. Of course, we've been speaking about how dominant Lancaster Ray had been today. Not such a great, great race for them outside the top ten with lots of penalties. Warwick A, fifth place there in that one. Yeah, they're still clawing at it. What we're seeing now with later into this morning is this consistency starting to drop off and it's just it adding a little bit more coal to the fire for this championship fight. Here it is really making it hot up here. We're I getting towards the end then of, uh, of round number seven. I should point out as well that Daniel White from the Warwick team, who didn't hasn't heard us earlier on, thanking them immensely for the beers. We did receive the beers. Thank you. They, Thank have, you. they haven't been stolen. Actually, have we checked there are beers in there? Yes, there are. Yes, okay, yes. I've opened them now. Yes, it wasn't, oh it wasn't just lead <laughs> weight. Put them in the fridge. So we'd like to yeah, no, no, I have not opened one. I can. I've opened open the box. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our provisional result before we get the stream taken down. <laughs> it's Cardiff A, Bath A and Bristol A, the top three. Exeter A, Warwick A, Liverpool A, Brooks A, Uclan A, many A teams, Coventry B and Oxford Brooks D, the top ten. Cardiff B, Lancaster A, Liverpool C and Surrey A. And then we move on to Liverpool B, Oxford Brooks B, Loughborough D, Sheffield A, Coventry E, Swansea B, UWE A, Coventry F, Leicester B, Leeds B, Leicester A, Sheffield B, Nottingham Trent A and Bath C. Moving on then to Cambridge A, Southampton B, Birmingham B, Imperial A, Cardiff C, Sheffield C. Rounding out the field, it is Manchester A. Well then, well, a couple of big hitters to be fair, particularly, as you just said there, Manchester A, yes. last place. They had a really strong start, it's the strongest out of anyone to the morning, and it has not looked good since then. I should point out, we say that, even after a 14th in race four, they are still P2 in terms of points scored. So Fair play. Fair are play. They, they are running again this round, so the, the, the spreadsheet to do 
in a few minutes will confirm how they're looking for the round win, but it's not looking quite as good now. So why don't you go and find out, Pierce? You're on the grid, ready to chat some more drivers. So dry. Here we are. Yes, well, I thought it would be a good idea to grab a web with our dominant race winner, Fraser. Um, one of the only drivers not to get a penalty, so uh, drove through the field, drive away, no penalties, lovely job. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, exactly what you said. I think Cardiff have kept it clean um, today, apart from one Josh Ladd. But Josh. I know, it's always him, it's always him. <laughs> hey, it's a good result for Cardiff today. You should be in with the shout of the, the round victory, I think, is it? A first, second, yeah. or fourth? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I, should, I think I should be yeah. a win. Um, yeah, I think first one in a very long time. Bet it feels good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Fraser, congratulations. We're going to grab a word with some of the dri outgoing drivers, I think, while we got the chance, because I think we're all, yeah, we're weighing up, so we're going to have some time to kill. Hello. Alfie, we chatted to you before the race. It didn't go yeah, completely to plan. Yeah. It was all right. The penalties didn't, didn't help. No, they did not help. And it was, it was uh, yeah, track limits, I think. It's, it's harsh at the last corner, isn't it? Oh, was it that is not where I got it? I believe so. Uh, that's not where I thought I got it. So I think it's you have to stay your wheels on the white line. You're not allowed to go on the kerb. Rough. Oh, must have not listened to the briefing. <laughs> <laughs> OK. But anyway, um, have you got anyone out in the race six? Um, yeah, we do. Team leader, Charlie. Charlie's out. Hopefully save some points for you. Although we've not done too bad. It's not been terrible. It's not been terrible. It's not been our best year, though, to be fair. So... You'll come back. Are you back next year? Yeah, I'll be back next year. You'll be back. Brilliant. Alfie, thank you so much for chatting to us. Uh, let's go and uh, wander down the queue and uh, talk to some people. Maybe let's talk to some people that we haven't spoken to before or not for a while. Uh, we'll shout out to one of these, uh, one of our uh, Lee, no, Liverpool drivers. Yes. Liverpool, who are you? I'm Tom Roberts. Tom, which team were you racing Liverpool for? C. Liverpool C. Bottom one. How was that race for you? Um, awful. <laughs> awful. <laughs> um, it's fun, though. Um, I just kind of just dropped back. I had a good pace at the start. But I just kind of, I was kind of like breaking a bit too early, so people were just sending it. Uh, so, but middle of the race was good, so it's good fun. I don't like the track though. <laughs> You've got a smile on your face though. Yeah, it was a, it's good fun. Very hot. Very hot. Yeah, it's actually really quite nice. It's the first. It's the first round this year that I haven't worn two coats. Yeah. This is my second dry race ever in BUKC. Wow. Yeah, my first one was PFI round the se second round. That was it. Everything else has been wet. <laughs> uh, so not much practice. But it's good, good, fun. good. Good fun. Thanks for chatting to us. Great to her. I want to chat to Exeter because they had a great drive through the field. Um, Owen, Owen for Exeter. Just to, sorry, I'm going to pull you out of the queue for have a quick chat. Um, that was a good drive up to third place in the end. You had second for a, a brief moment, but a good race uh, on the last couple of laps. Yeah, me and Jesse from Bath, I think, I had a really good fight at the end. But I had to back out, like, otherwise we were going to have a crash. Uh, <laughs> so I lost a place, like, on the last couple of corners. But, yeah, it was really good fun. Uh, yeah, couldn't have asked for much better. Still a good drive, though. Remind us where you started. Uh, so only seventh, so I was probably pretty high up, but um, I got some good pace. So hopefully we can go through to the endurance and pick up some good points there. Yeah, I think you. Uh, I don't know if you actually got fast slap, but for the, the last ten minutes you were get you were getting fast slap after yeah. fastest lap. I don't know whether you got pipped at the end. Uh, you're, those at home probably seen better because I have to walk down on the last couple of laps. But looked like good fun. Oh no, someone's dropped all their lead in the background. But um, looking ahead to this afternoon, yep. it's been a tough morning for Exeter, but. Yeah. You guys are always good at pit stops. You guys always good, work well together. You've got some great pace. We saw Jensen come through yourself as well in that one. Could we have a cheeky P1 to win the year? I think that would that would be good. Yeah, I think we need it. Uh, we've had a pretty tough season, and I think it would be a really nice way to round it off into next year. Um, I think we can definitely do something. Maybe a top three. We're starting fourth, actually. So Not bad. It could be a, it was first or second, but yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully pit stops go well, and then we'll see what happens. Owen, thanks for chatting to us. I'll let you go and get Wade now. I've taken you out of the queue. Um, uh, let's chat to this uh, young man here. We'll, we'll work, and work and walk and talk. I've seen you having a bit of a nightmare with your lead there. It's too... Oh. I'll, I'll grab it, I'll grab it. So I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. But let's walk and talk. Uh, you've got a lot of lead there. Yeah, i got to put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> get hit the gym. Yeah. Or the pies. I'm just too light. <laughs> i got, like, 15, 16 kg here. You need a bag of some kind. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this uh, on you so you don't miss out, because I don't want you to come in underweight just because I've stolen your lead. Got all uh, grubby fingers now. Right, one more race to come this afternoon. This is going to be the heavyweight, heavyweight race, yes, of course. Final race of the morning. It's going to be the deciding race. We've had some strong rounds from Cardiff A already. Uh, Reading have been right up there too. Tom Fleming is starting in this one, I think, and he's we know how quick he can be, so that could 
could uh, potentially be the difference. So we might grab a word with him if we can. But we've also got some other people I'd like to chat to in the head of this race. Always going to be a, a good end to the morning when you've got a, a, a strong grid of heavyweights coming out. Drivers now coming out onto the grid. Circuit's drying out. The only corner that's damp, as you can probably see on the stream, is that last uh, that last corner. Every uh, every other corner is pretty much dry, and it's great to see a dry race at the BUKC. And why don't we grab a word with our most keen driver on the grid? Who, who are you, and who are you racing for? Ron and on from Warwick B. Warwick B. Talk to us about Warwick B's day. It's been okay. Our last race, we came seventh. Loads of pens. I think it was a uh, Birmingham and Lancaster, getting loads of pens. So that helped us. And then we have the A's as well in this one, so hopefully we can help like help the A's win club men's as well. So yeah, because we're fighting with Lancaster for club men's. Great, I will uh, see how you get on in that one. So let's have a wander down the grid and chat to some of uh, the other drivers in this one. I think Tom Fleming in for Reading is starting in second place. So uh, good chance of a good result. Tom, before you uh, start putting your stuff on your cart, um, second place, uh, Good opportunity for a good result, I suppose. Yeah, I think so. It's going to be a pretty stacked grid, I think, though. Um, there's a decent amount of really good teams, and all the good teams at the front are really good drivers. So I think it should be a pretty good uh, race for you to, well, for the people in the commentary box to be commentating on. Not so much for me. I want <laughs> a less of a stress free race, yeah, but yeah. Um, no, we just need like a, um, a position in the top five. I think Bath, if they secure another decent position, they've won, the, won this round. But um, as long as we can come like within the top three in the overall round this time, uh, we can sort of like maintain our and manage our, our, our lead. And also uh, Cardiff having a good round as well. They've had a first, a second and a fourth now, so. I was not aware of that. Damn, they're doing good. Oh, fair enough. Um, okay, well, yeah. That's we'll see how you get on. We will see how we get on. We will see how you get on. Let's uh, wander further down the grid. Oh, there's someone looking very, very professional. Uh, who, who, who uh, yeah, wait, I mean, you're in a T-Sports uh, suit, you've got your helmet. It's always a giveaway when you've got the big twirly whirly cable on the helmet. Um, tell us about who you are and what you've raced before. I'm Patrick Kibble. I've been, I've raced in British GT, but now I'm in the ultimate thing, which is BUKC. Now, Patrick, I haven't, I haven't seen much of you this year. Um, where have you been? Uh, this is my first round this year, so... Why? I don't know. I've been letting the boys... I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing the word cop-out come from the team over there. What did they say? They said cop-out. It might be that. It could be that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What have you been doing? You've been racing GT cars or you've just been sitting at home? Yeah, I've been out for the past couple of years, so... I should get back into it, but this is this is good enough. This is the peak of motorsport, as we know. Let's just make sure that clip goes on correctly, and then uh, we'll see you get on in this run. Patrick, good luck. We'll see if the uh, we'll see if the if he goes. What's the what's the what's the phrase? All the gear. Yeah, yeah. We'll go anyway. Um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, we, uh, who else have we got on the grid here? Number two there, of course. Uh, that's the I'm pretty sure it's the Oxford Brooks team. Oh, I've got yeah, good grid. Axel Slipsovich as well, and number six, and number four for Bath. Axel, good luck in the race. We'll chat to you later on probably. Uh, number 39, 81, 40, 87. A lot of good drivers in this grid. Looking forward to a good race. And why don't we jump over and grab a word with one of our Liverpool drivers? Hello, uh, who are you? Hi, um, I'm Sahib. I'm Sahib, we oh of course, I Sahib. I, I I do know you. Sahib, um, we caught up with you a couple of rounds ago. What have you been up to since since then? Sleeping and uh, worrying about this. Worrying? Don't need to worry, mate. Scared as chips, as always. Scared as chips. Why, why, why are you worried, mate? Just because that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, this race, what's, what's going on through your head? You know, you're starting in what must be a 12th, 14th position? Um, well, my con main concern is I've spent too much on this helmet and it's fogging up here, so it'd be brilliant if it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, otherwise, I think mow as much of the track as possible. Yep, absolutely. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to let's talk about on the stream right now? Yeah, um, mum's birthday's tomorrow. I hope she's watching. Oh. Um, but yeah, she'll be, I think, 54. I should know her age. She'll be one year older than she was in the last yeah, one. Yeah. But yeah. 23. <laughs> Actually, that would make it a bit weird because I imagine you're probably 20. We'll skip over that. Anyway, who's your mum? Uh, Kawant. Kawant. <laughs> Happy birthday for tomorrow, Kawant. Hopefully you enjoy watching Sahib go around the track at a lightning speed. Yeah, and 
Hopefully you don't see me in the wall. Hopefully not. Well, no one's hit the wall today, but there's been a lot of muddy go-karts out there. Oh, I mean, well, I'll just create a new livery for the carts. The, we, need a bit to, yeah. we need a bit. The new lid does look very shiny. Uh, just keep it a little cracked. If it's steaming up, just a little crack. Also, they're expensive, but the two-layer visors, which are like 100 quid, excellent. I know it's a lot pink of money. On it. Sorry? I need to get pink on it. You do need to get pink on it. If, yeah, pink is a great, a great colour. Uh, why don't we grab a quick word with, with uh, Seb Algieri. Seb, uh, racing for? Brune LA. Brune LA. Seb, what's, uh, what's going down? Talk to me about what's, what's in your head. I'm uh, mostly thinking about the new last corner. Uh, I don't know, it's be the first time out on it. We were here with uh, BPEC a couple of weeks ago, so we had the last race on the old layout, which was kind of nice. The last one's ever out on it. Yeah. But, yeah. I better let you get ready, actually. Yeah, you're still not suited and booted. I think we're about to go. Do you want me to hold your gloves for a second? Yeah, that would probably be quite helpful. I don't want to make anyone uh, late for their race. Um, Seb, of course, you've done the BKC for quite a few years now, haven't you? Yeah, third year. Last race ever. I've got race two for the endurance, so that'll be it. That'll be it. Well, good luck, Seb. I think, uh, I think everyone is, is waiting on us now, so um, we better get out of the way move out of the way of the go-karts and then we're going to go racing for the final time this morning race six this is going to be a good one to watch reeve john over to you Thank you, Piers. Yes, this is going to be an exciting race, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. This is where it's all going to be decided, at least for uh, round number seven, as to who takes the win here at Wilton Mill. And then, of course, we'll move on to the Enduro later on this afternoon, where we work out the entire championship for 2023 and 2024. But this is a serious grid here for race number six. UWEB and Reading A line up on the front row of the grid. Let's see what Thomas Fleming can do from there. Swansea B and Warwick A line up behind them with Bath A and Birmingham A there on row number three. Row four has Cardiff B and Oxford Brooks A. Then Southampton C and Loughborough D round out the top ten with Bristol A and Imperial B there on row number six. Row seven sees Loughborough A and Warwick B. Then it's Leeds A and Liverpool C there on row number eight with Loughborough B and Southampton A on row nine. Rounding out the top 20 are Edinburgh A and Liverpool B. Then it's Leeds B and Bruno A on row 11 with UWE A and Imperial A on row number 12. Row 13, a Sheffield B and Sheffield C. It's an all Sheffield row 13 with Swansea A, Brighton B, Lancaster B and Oxford Brooks B rounding out the top 30. And it's Portsmouth A and Cardiff C on row 16, Nottingham Trent A, Coventry A and Huddersfield A round out the 35 carts on the grid here for race six of round number seven. But as we look at the, the drivers beginning their practice laps, once again, Reed has his head in this red seat of doom as we do have the results from round uh, sorry, from race number five. Is it all going to plan, Reed? It is indeed, and cool. the big story from race number five really is just how well Cardiff A have performed this morning. The, the, the effectively what will be the drop round, obviously Cardiff A on here in race six will be a P10. Wow! <laughs> it's wow! A, it's a, a P1. Result. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. It, and then the other results are a, P, a P2 in, in round in race two, P4 in race four, and then a P1 in race five. Obviously, wow. it has been a great day out for them. Still waiting for. A few more teams obviously here in race six to have their fourth race of the morning. Then we'll have a much clearer idea of how the championship is looking. But yeah, as I say, there's a few standout teams who have done really quite well here so far. Bath A as well, they have performed fairly strongly. So yeah, so it should be very interesting indeed. Coventry A, Coventry in fact in general haven't had a great continuation yeah. of What's the morning. What's gone wrong today for Coventry? So they'll be looking to, hopefully, if they can, try and uh, pick up the pieces here in the final race of the morning. It was it's, a second, a fourth, and then a 31st for Coventry A, who are in that fight for the championship. It's going to be a tough one. They're starting 34th in this race. So they basically just need to get one position better than what they're starting, and it's a better result than what they've got uh, in the previous race. But yeah, they, they really need a top 10, don't they, to put together a good result. They do. Reading A looking very strong indeed yeah starting p2 in this one as well so looking really strong thomas fleming as well the one behind the wheel he is no slow coach uh when it comes to not only the ukc but wider racing as well thomas fleming very very fast in the down holland racing uh, suit if i'm not mistaken who obviously are based here uh, at wilton mill so he's not far from home at all uh, lots of big hitters. I think all four of our championship contenders are in this race, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we've got Reading A in second place on the grid. Uh, Southampton A, 18th place on the grid. Uh, and then Coventry A, 34th on the grid. Now, who is it that I'm missing? 
uh, from that. Bath A, I think, are the only ones who are... Oh, Bath A, ignore me, I'm being blind. They're in fifth place on the grid. So, indeed, all four championship contenders, uh, the work of championship contenders going into the round anyway, um, are all in this race. I was about to say, yeah, this race six is our championship race in effect. Wow. Okay. Yeah, as we said, this is going to be an exciting one, not only for who's in the race, but that adds even more to it. All championship contenders in this one. Two of them starting up in the top ten, two of them further down the order. But we're going round again oh. for another warm-up lap. In which case, Jaffa Cake update. The Jaffa Cakes have been opened. I but tried to resist. Mr. Reeve, uh, hey, you've been so good resisting. Five of the six races. I know. Yeah. And then you gave in to temptation. Indeed. Understandably so, Jaffa Cakes are lovely. Yes, thank you, Edinburgh. Yes, thank you, Adam. We appreciate the triple pack as well. The most that you can get. Like, that, that's just proving uh, a dedication to uh, the anti comswox curse. They, they clearly know that it's me that the Jaffa Cakes are going to be near. Because in, war, in Warden, I think you, you, couldn't get a, you couldn't get your nose in, could you? They were gone. They were a little. They were a little. I think I did actually manage to nick a packet at the yeah, end yeah, while you were yeah, looking I away. Felt, yeah. uh, <laughs> managed to steal one. But yeah, how if you've got like... 10 extra seconds. How are Edinburgh actually doing today if you're able to, to spot that from your spreadsheet of doom? Have the Jaffa Cakes worked is the question. Well, they had a P2 in race 3. Yeah, they did have a very good race. I think they've just not been quite That's able to carry that consistency. No, have race they? 1 was a P28 and then a race, race 4 was P17. Right, okay. So, it's been, it's if been they right. have a it's been... really strong race now, yeah. they, can, they can pull back it's been decent for Edinburgh. Yeah. We'll see what they can do in this one, but I was going to say we looked at lights, but the safety car has continued. Yeah, we are definitely going round again. I think lots of confusion there. The lights were yeah, on, was a fairly quick. but the safety car was still going round, so that was very confusing. Uh, but we are going round again, so another warm-up lap. That was uh, yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there. I think a lot of drivers thought we were going for the race start there, but uh, nope, continuing on. Uh, for another warm-up lap. Speaking of which, Edinburgh, where are they in this one? 19th place start in this one, so a potential for, for a better result in this one uh, for Edinburgh. We see how they can do. Now, Warwick as well, of course, gifting us uh, gifting us the Beveraginis. Um, so thank you very much for that, uh, for that Warwick. We'll be enjoying those post-stream uh, at the event this evening. Um, but yeah, they seem to be having a decent day as well. I think again, oh, that's why we're going round again. There's a cart stopped up in the boot, so clearly it was ah. quite a late aborted start, that one. Um, and we are indeed going round once more. So, uh, yeah, one driver up and out of the car. And I think actually what they're doing is Nicky Richardson has jumped out of the car that he's testing and has now given that to the driver who's, who's conked out the last corner. Well, it's clearly passed the test, because, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, they're so close to the pit lane entrance that they can just push the cart back in uh, freehand. So I think that's what they're going to try and do. And there you go. Nicky hops up and out of the cart, gives it to the driver who was stricken there on the entrance to the boot. Don't forget your number plate, though. Don't want to be missing any of that. And look at that. Nicky Richardson getting down and helping out out on circuit and making sure that like driver... He's, gi he's giving the car to pep talk. <laughs> he does a bit. Maybe he is, just offering <laughs> some words of support, of course. Please go. Nicky, Nicky uh, offers lots of lots of packages that you can purchase to, to help you become a faster racing driver and circuit guide and all things like that. So uh, definitely check out Nicky. He's an extremely fast carter. Uh, but now just trying to get this driver underway and have them rejoin the pack. Hopefully they can rejoin... There he goes, telling them to go back up to speed and rejoin the pack. And hopefully this time around, I'll come through the boot. And uh, last time of asking is there's Mr. Andrew Mather strutting around the final corner as well. I think we're going around again, sadly. So a good few warm-up laps here. But actually, it's probably not helping too much because you're just really stuck in formation. You're yeah, not you need really to be getting at full any tire pace with a track like this. You want to be at full pace, really. Exactly. There exactly. is Andrew Mather, who is being oh so thoughtful as ever. I was just about to think, I wonder how this spreadsheet of doom of his is going to work for the Enduros when we only have three races instead of six. Oh, yeah. But he's already thought of that, and he's blocked it off and made the calculations work. And how... It's so smart. I wouldn't have thought of that. What a smart man. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what a smart man. Sadly, he's out in the... Windy. Out, yeah, yeah. Yeah, poor, poor Andrew is out uh, out there braving the elements. Although, to be fair, yeah, it's very windy, but at least it's lovely and sunny out there today. I'm definitely commentating because I was definitely going to chuck it down with the Enduros, isn't it? Uh, we'll wait and see. It looks as though, there we go, Pace Cart gives the thumbs up. So, we've got UWEB and Reading A on the front row for this one. Of course, Thomas Fleming behind the wheel then of the number 13 car of Reading A but of course 
We've seen previously, drivers get a very good start from the outside of the grid, go around the outside, but you don't want to get too good of a start. No jump start penalty, because that no, puts we've you... seen that go wrong. That puts you on a poor trajectory for the rest of the race, then. Looking for those red lights. We're going to get the final sprint race of the season underway, then. And UWEB lead us into the first couple of corners. Thomas Fleming trying to fight down the inside. Does get down the inside. There'll be two by two by two by two as we head up to Christmas Corner. But who's going to have the lead of the race? It should be Thomas Fleming on the inside. But look at this. Drivers diving in and out of the slipstream as they head up to Christmas. Spin in the mid-pack. Just about holds it. Not too happy with that one driver is trying to go to the inside, nearly takes out the cone there, and nearly takes out Adam Curtis from Leeds B, as round Ooh. goes your leader, round goes your leader, UWEB off and onto the grass, they're going to have to be up and out of the car to get that one restarted, so immediately from first to last then for UWB, gutting for them. Absolutely, I was about to say, he's done a mighty impressive job to get back ahead of Reading for those couple of corners there, but the position has just been gifted back now under pressure from the black plated car there as we head around the booth. That is the number four of Bath A, yep. Reading A versus Bath A, a fight we have seen plenty of times in the past. Yeah, already, I was going to say, we're not even at the end of lap one, and we've already got the two champion, two of the championship contenders uh, nose to tail. Oh, look at that. We get a little extra cam in the top right corner. Alpha Live did an amazing job of the coverage I, I once again. I think we're going to dub that one spin cam, because spin. That's, that's where we've seen quite a few little incidents, shall we say. First contact warning coming in, but only only one contact warning with actually a relatively clean lap one, all things considered, apart from that little skirmish with some mowing of the grass. Indeed, yeah. I think uh, UWEB totally binned it by themselves, to be honest, on that first lap. That was just uh, getting it locked it's, under brakes. It's hold a the lot slide. of pressure. It's around they went. Yeah, you have I have 34 angry cars. Pole, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. And particularly if yeah, you're not that experienced, that's a scary, uh, a scary thing to do. But here, already, the battle from uh, between Reading A and Bath A. I think, to be honest, I think that they're smart enough here to just work together. First 10, 15 minutes, let's just work together. Let's just push on ahead. We're both quick carters. Let's push on. You've got Warwick A, who are trying to hold with them. And look at that. Uh, Swansea B driver has just managed to get past Birmingham A. So Swansea B flying then. But there, he was pointing the Swansea B driver saying, no, 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 let's work together. Look, Warwick A, Bath A, Reading A, already pushing on ahead here. We need to work together. Here's a move up at Christmas Corner, though, down the inside of Cardiff B. Go Oxford Brooks A, and they take away the uh, fifth place. Yeah, no, sixth place. Sorry, misreading the timing there. So Ben Heaney Smith gets shuffled back into seventh place. Look at that, though, the gaggle in behind them. There's lots and lots of drivers. The 81 of Southampton Cena are up behind, and the 40 of Bristol A they've got through on Lapidi then earlier on in this lap. But this is the biggest gaggle, highest up the order. We're looking from around seventh place back. But here again, there's Swansea trying to work together with Birmingham A and press on ahead. Warwick A up in the top three here. We At the start of the morning, we were talking about how Lancaster A were looking good in the clubman's class there and but Warwick A have clearly responded and while we're not saying it's the out and out domination that Warwick A needed really to take any chance at the trophy away from Lancaster A they've certainly put in a good fight at least they've certainly made it a little bit more difficult for Lancaster exactly yeah they've really brought it to them in the sort of second half of the season haven't they mm. Warwick, Warwick, Warwick A have been nice close sorry what were you saying Loughborough B yeah can't number 14 there well, they're nose to tail with their sister team, aren't they, of Loughborough A? So we've seen that already today. And, I mean, they're only two or three positions then away from Loughborough D. So it's an all Loughborough uh, just outside yeah. the top ten, isn't it? A couple of penalties streaming in. Cardiff B, Southampton A, cone penalty as well. That's a big one for Southampton, isn't it? A cone penalty. They, they were the outside shot for the title, weren't they, coming into today? And a cone penalty early on isn't going to yeah. help. Unfortunately, that outside shot has pretty much I think so. missed at this point. Oh, wide moment there. I think it was potentially I'm trying to see who that was at the front of that battle coming across the line. It all got a little bit too close on corner exit there, a bit too close to comfort. Luckily, all drivers making it out of that final corner. Look at that camera shot, it's awesome. I always love seeing up at Christmas corner. All the carts by now. Spin cam! We've got another spinner on spin cam down at Ashby. Can't quite see who it is, you can't see the number plates. Hampton? No, no, it's just a similar suit, I think. We'll see. We'll see uh, when they come through to finish uh, finish another lap. I imagine it would be someone further down the order who hasn't come through. Um, oh, it is, but I think they've got a T... Ah, oh, no, it's Brighton B, I ah. think. I believe it's Brighton B, as they've not come through the timing. 
uh, last time around. So I'm, I'm going to say it is Brighton B on the 48 plated. Uh, and yes, it is as they rejoin. Good observation. Bath A taking the lead of this race then ahead of Reading A. It was a great battle. It was a battle that actually ended a little bit earlier than perhaps I expected. It's Although true. I say ended. Yeah. Still three tenths. Yes, still, still very thing. close. Still yeah. very close. But yeah, impressive stuff for Bath A. Uh, to slip their way through into the lead of the race already with three wide up towards Christmas corner though. I just have to look up from my laptop, nearly taking off there with the number three. Oh my goodness, Southampton A nearly became a Ryanair flight. That was unbelievable. They just got sandwiched there up into Christmas corner. And, uh, and yeah, wow, that was a close one. Luckily, landing back on all four wheels and continuing, but a bit of a scary moment there when you find that the two wheels which are controlled by the steering wheel are no longer touching the ground. And thank you for jump scaring all. Yeah, that was terrifying. Yeah, you've, killed, you've killed the producer in this game. <laughs> oh, Adam Curtis just took out all the cones at Ozers there. Oh, that's many out penalties. Onto the curve. That was like three cones. Adam, you're you're going to get the book thrown at you, I think, after that one. Or a cone. But yeah. Bath A, 57.3 on that last lap. That is a strong, fastest lap, of course. We're waiting for those 56s. We saw those 56s earlier on. Will we get them back? Our final sprint race of the day. Final sprint race of the BUKC season for 2024. Indeed, yeah, the last of the 25-minute races to cap off what's been a great season of BUKC racing. Still got three Enduros left to go in the afternoon, though, so don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll rejoin you after the lunch break after this race. As there's more battling going on down into Ashby. A couple of drivers taking a couple of cheeky moves. There's a number eight in the background. So that's Coventry A going for a move. They've done well. They've come up from 34th place, then up into P20 already. I think I've seen them get a penalty or two already. That can happen when you're coming from such a low down uh, position. Trying to get through, but trying to get through cleanly is another question altogether. As, oh, we had spin cam, but that's Nicky Richardson who's on the cam. So uh, he's just uh, keeping it nice and slow and rejoining the circuit. Nicky Richardson, the kart tester, a man of many talents, has helped out a driver already in this race and now continues uh, to press on on the circuit. But we look back to the drivers actually involved in the race. Here's the number 40 of Bristol Lay leading Loughborough B and Southampton C. This is the battle for P8. And Loughborough B take it down the inside of Christmas Corner. I'm liking what we're seeing in the live comments here. I was talking earlier on about Pierce jumping into that muddy puddle towards the end of the lap, and it's been likened to, well, they say Monaco has a swimming pool, we have the stagnant pond. <laughs> and more, and, and a few other people are saying, yeah, let's let's go for the stagnant pond. So Reading A, <laughs> with your championship, let's, let's, come on, let's, let's, you're going to have to get into the stagnant pond. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. Yeah, like the Red Bull, uh, uh, the Red Bull pool uh, at Monaco, yeah. Oh, I don't, want to, I don't think I want to dive into that. <laughs> I don't think any of Red Gale will want to either. Look at it. Ugh. Scary. There's also a gap in the tyres now, which makes me a bit nervous that someone has gone we've, through that. We've prepped it. Yeah. <laughs> it's ready. It's ready for you. You saw that again, as you've seen previously uh, in today's racing, a double penalty on the board, two 87s, uh, both with track limits there for Imperial B, so not ideal, a cone penalty as well for Leeds B, so I think the penalties have picked up a little bit again in this race, uh, a little bit more than they were in race number five. It's also, would, would you agree it's looking distinctly greyer? The, the, the sky, camera yeah. angle, the sun's definitely behind clouds. It is. Yeah, it's not quite as bright I as suspect, it was earlier. Well, JV isn't here today by, by all accounts, so I was going to say, I suspect if it is looking a bit great, we're going to have a JV style forget the lunch break. Let's get racing again before, before things get a little bit too. Potentially. Yeah. I'm very peckish, so I hope it doesn't. I'm very, very hungry. We've got we've Jeff got Case and Stella. True, I should just, yeah. <laughs> Well, we are well, well cased for. <laughs> healthy, balanced lunch is available. In. Oh, and if you want healthier options, Stella, we've got our lovely tap water. Oh, <laughs> our, our white tap water. Yeah, if you want to see a video of that, it's on my story at Raptors Media. Uh, go and have a watch that, because, oh my goodness, I'm not, I'm not drinking the water that's coming out of that tap. Maybe that'll be a forfeit if we mess up again <laughs> in the stream. Have to drink you have the to drink the milk water. water, yeah. Oh, grim. No, thank you. Well, here's Warwick A. That can be the champagne. On them. They can jump into the stagnant pond and then that's the and champagne. And spray the milk water. Yeah, lovely. That's... <laughs> It'll be like NASCAR, actually, what a wouldn't treat. it? I guess, that, yeah. Indy 500. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah, Indy 500. Yeah. Sorry to all the NASCAR fans that I've just insulted. I think they do it as well, don't they? It's just at Indianapolis. 
Is it ending that, up? Yeah. Yeah, that's, then, why, yeah. that's where the confusion was coming Anyway, in. Yeah. Anyway, 15 minutes left to go. 50, first 56 before I insult any more yes. racing fan communities. 56.9 from Bathe on that last lap. We're into the 56. It's an impressive lap time there. A few more penalties coming in as well. What did we get to? It was 56.2, I think, in the last race, wasn't it? The fastest lap. I think so, I yes. say, yeah, something around that. So still a few tenths of a second to find them from Barthé, but they're pressing on ahead in the lead nicely. Once uh, once they made that move on Reading A for the lead of the race, they haven't really looked back, and you just saw Reading A go through the shot there uh, through Ashby. So they're still there in second, but a good one and a half seconds off the lead now. So last lap, yeah, 56.9 from Bar, 57.2 from Reading. So not a huge amount of time difference, but just enough where Bar have been able to just continuously extend that gap, extend that gap, extend that gap. And they built a, a nice little lead out there, but we're still watching this battle for third. And where's this pace from Swansea B come from? This driver absolutely flying on the number 58 plated car all over the back of Warwick A now. Not such a good uh, line through the last couple of corners, just means they're not really close as I head up to Christmas Corner. Been a good race for Morake so far, of course, because they gifted us beers, that's why they're doing so well. Absolutely. They are under a bit of pressure now from Swansea. Yeah, Sheffield be in with that cone penalty there. Bathe still improving those lap times. Not quite at the halfway stage. This the final race of the morning. A few more contact warnings coming in Huddersfield, they commentary in the midst of that battle. Here we are at spin corner, nothing happening yet, don't want to double the cursing with the com commentator's curse, which was at one point very powerful. What about instead of Ashby, it's Ashbin. <laughs> Perfect. The Ashbin corner, spin cam. We're going to trademark that. Here. Speaking of names, keep those name ideas yes. coming in for the final Keep corner. them coming, keep them coming. You know, we're enjoying, we're enjoying it in the in the live chat. We were enjoying uh, reading through an interesting debate, weren't we, earlier? I think we'll probably just leave it at that. Yes, but yes, interesting debate leave, in the live chat. I mean, if you want to hear what we're talking about, you've got to know what we're talking about. Go and have a look for yourself. Uh, but yeah, an interesting, uh, interesting chatter in the uh, in the live chat. Lots of support for different teams, though. One of those being Warwick. Jonathan Boscott saying, come on, lads, to Warwick. Having to see them do well. And uh, some lovely chatter about uh, why did they do that with the finger, uh, says Andrew Hudson. It, talking about the uh, ah. spinning their finger to say that we're going round again. The race will not be started this time around. And indeed, he's been asked by people in the chat. So great to see lots of motorsport chatter going on in there. But again, yeah, let us know what better you think. Better our jobs than we are. You are. You're much better. Beating us should, to it. You should, you should come and, uh, come and uh, be in the comms box instead. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. So let us, know, let us know your thoughts on the name of the final corner. The new name that we should uh, that we should give it, and we should we'll, we'll, we'll pass them on uh, to Wilton Miller. Whether they'll take us up on any of the ideas, probably not, but uh, we can still pass them on nonetheless. Very good point being raised here by commenter. Perhaps the tap is connected to the stagnant pond. Maybe. That, yes. Well, they've just got one pipe going from there all the way under the circuit to this house. Well, uh, we, yeah, that's what we call as our producer has, has just. I can't believe we missed it. The last turn is now known as Stagnant Pond. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, that was, the, I think, the best suggestion so far. Yes, the, the stagnant calling pond. it time. I'm going with Stagnant I, I do pond. like it. I do like it. If anyone can think of anything better, it will get a bit confusing chat. on some last lap that we have to say. And into the pond, and then there actually is someone going <laughs> into the pond, not just going into the corner. <laughs> we do still have a race on our hands, though. The Stagnant Pond's out there, but look at this. Two Liverpool drivers working together. I think that's the B and the C Ooh. team, if I'm not mistaken. Tyres going flying oh, there. Down the inside, two, three drivers trying to side their way through. Squeezes out the Liverpool drop onto the curb and he nearly spins around that driver that snuck through there on the exit. Really close battle between these three and four drivers. As another battle there going down into the boot. Bit too close to comfort between those two. Where are we looking then? 61 right at the front of this battle. So yeah, that's Liverpool C in 14th place. Now with Coventry A just behind them. Coventry A getting a couple of contact warnings though, so they need to be a little bit careful there. But they've had a great run through the field here from what was effectively, or, or I think actually, last place on the grid. Yeah, 34th out of 35 for Coventry. And they're already up in 15th place with over 10 minutes to go. Mighty impressive drive. 10 minutes, as you say. To go 10 finals of the racing this morning. I think it looks like we're about to avoid some bad weather, I would say. 
Indeed, I, I hope so. Hopefully it rains over lunch and then we don't have any for the afternoon, but we'll see how it goes. But as I'm mentioning there, yeah, another move down the inside to Coventry. Yeah, you take another position, another one to mention as well. Nottingham Trent A up 23 places in this final so far. Yeah, they started just one spot ahead of Coventry in 33rd. So Coventry having a brilliant race, don't get me wrong, now in 14th place, but up in the top 10 already at Nottingham Trent A and they're continuing to press on here. Really, really impressive stuff. And as I say that, they've already got the move done on Ben Healy Smith in Cardiff A. They've relegated him down into P10. Penalty is coming in, perhaps unsurprising. We're seeing some, some slightly too close to come for elbows out mid pack battles. Southampton A bump and pass penalty coming in there. Track limits Imperial B, Swansea B. The usual track limits, I think, it's probably going to be burned into the screen by the end of the day. That's the TL yeah. symbol that we get. Yeah, so Swansea be having a great race in fourth place. They've been continuously hounding Warwick A for third, but yeah, getting themselves a couple of penalties as well. Let's have a quick look at I know we have some penalties, but let's have a quick look at some provisional round results. Okay, I'm going to okay. put some data into the spreadsheet to do and see kind of as the race stands in this final 10 minutes. How are things looking? So Reading A, we know are on for a fairly good finish, unless, I mean, they're, they're four seconds back from Bath and they're a further eight seconds ahead of Warwick A. So I think P2 is, is pretty on the cards. Uh, they are pending the no penalties. They are the championship favourites as well, let's not forget. Yeah, another impressive day from Reading. I think I feel like the consistency has come back a little bit, at least for a couple of teams. Bath A and Reading A out in the top two at the moment. Here's your battle for third, though. Swansea B thinking about it down the inside, late on the brakes of the inside into the boot. They're going to have to try the up and under, but they have hit the back of the car at the number 15 ahead. And look at this, Oxford Brooks A are now getting involved as well. They've already passed the 11 of Birmingham A earlier on in this lap to get up to fifth place. And now all the way over the back of Swansea, uh, Swansea B sorry, as well. He saw Swansea B there, just gesturing, pointing forward, saying, no, 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 let, let's work together. We can both get past uh, Warwick A here, but it's taken a lot of laps. Swansea haven't been able to get past. And I think Colts and are going to say, ah, you're right, mate. I'm, I'm just doing my own race, thank you. I'm just going to go past you and Warwick A. We'll wait and see if that happens across the last eight minutes then of this one. Defending, though, is the 15 to Warwick A. It's pretty early to be defending. However, as we said, Warwick do have, what's that now? Nine seconds, yeah, nine seconds between themselves and Reading A in second place. So this is the highest position that they can get. So it's understandable that they're going to start defending. They're still defending as we head down into the boot section. And that's putting Swansea B in a difficult place because obviously they're trying to get past. They're being held up by these defensive moves from the 15 of Warwick A. And that's just pushing them straight into the path of the number two of Oxford Brooks A. This has turned out to be a very, very important race for Bath A here. Mm. Look at our championship permutations. Bath A needed to achieve a double round win, and Reading would achieve no better than third fourth. That's not, well, that's potentially on the cards here because, wow. as it stands, Bath A are going to take the round win. Wow, okay. Penalties notwithstanding. Obviously, yes, yeah, we have to wait penalties, yeah. Let's wait for all the results to come in before we say anything official, but at least as it stands at this moment, it will be Bath A's round, which means that Reading can't achieve anything better than a third and a fourth. Obviously, round eight is still very much open. Mm -hmm. And as it stands, Reading looks to be on for a second. Ah. But if they achieve a fifth in the round eight and Southampton A don't achieve anything better than a double third, they are still in the mix for the championship here. So basically, that's okay. effectively what the spreadsheet of Doom has revealed to us is that the championship is not completely over yet. Okay, okay, interesting. It's, there, there is still a very... Reading, Reading are still in the driver's seat, but you've still yep. got a couple of teams there and thereabouts ready to get involved. This battle is ridiculous, though. What defending this has been from Warwick A as we head into the last six minutes of this race, still holding on to third place here. You saw them heading up to Christmas Corner, how much they're all darting out uh, from behind each other, but there's the move down the inside from Oxford Brooks A. They're going to try and force Swansea out wide onto the dust. Here comes the number 11 as well of Birmingham A getting involved. Great 
attempt to the move there. Back down the inside goes the two of Oxford Brooks. Of Oxford Brooks, A, forcing Swansea out onto the curb. Look at those sparks from the bottom of the Swansea cart. That looked awesome as he rode over the curb there, but does lose the position to Oxford Brooks, A. Through they go into fourth place then. And now they don't have any block between themselves and Warwick, and they're free to challenge and attack. A little bit wide, but Swansea could put them on a not great exit and allow uh, for the driver in behind of the number 11 of Birmingham A to get involved as well. Now I'm trying to see where did Birmingham A... Oh, they did start in sixth place uh, in this one with Patrick Kibble, so he has dropped a couple of spots. But now he's closing in, closing in. But interesting, we've just been told in, uh, uh, in, our, in our earpieces from our producer that potentially there's a bit of rain starting out there on circuit. Andrew Mather has all swans. He get nerfed out wide pretty oh. heavily there. He's not happy with that. And indeed, he did get a bit of a, a bit of Spanish archer, the old elbow there from Birmingham A. He forces him out onto the grass and he loses a number of places from that. But yeah, as I was saying, Andrew Mather is down at the boot right now and says that there's a little bit of rain. There's a move down the inside though. There's clearly enough grip for Oxford Brooks A. They try it down the inside. But again, no one can seem to get past Warwick A here. What a race as has been from Warwick A. You don't need to give us beers in the comms box. You just need to drive Ooh, like this. Cap. That is a bit of an off there. That's on the exit of the first couple of yeah. corners. Luckily rejoining quickly, but yeah, scary place to be sat. I've just received two separate messages from the Liverpool team angry at us because we've tempted fate and caused rain. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Apologies. Not really. Ooh. That was the rejoining car just getting a little bit too involved there. Very close between these two drivers. You can see the rain down at the last corner now. Rain is starting to come. There's going to be less grip. Look at this. Oxford Brooks A really pressuring here. This is an incredible defensive battle going on from Warwick A. This has been so impressive, but then they've still got four minutes to try and hold on to here, though. Yep, still plenty of racing still to go. We're expecting about a 26 lap race, maybe 25. The time starts to tumble as it starts to rain, which it now is. So. Yep, still a few racing laps to go here. Bathe, as we say, very impressive out there in front. Reading A still bringing the fight for this championship. I'm glad the championship is still very much open. Yeah, good to go into the final round, but it's still all to play for. It all still could go wrong for Reading. You never, you never, never know. Here we go. Look at Oxford Brooks A. Best run yet up towards Christmas Corner, but of course, Warwick A are going to defend the inside. Don't give any room for Oxford Brooks to go for a move there. And once again, Warwick A hold on to third place, but look at this. More carts scrapping in behind, going at the heels of the drivers in front, down the inside goes the 11 of Birmingham A, tries to force Oxford Brooks out onto the grass, just as they did with the Swansea cart a couple of laps ago. Doesn't force them out, but does take the place. This is going to be a damp track soon enough, I think. It's going to just have that little bit of a little bit of anticipation towards the end of the race because these drivers are going to be used to full grip, full pelt condition, so they're going to be heading into these final crucial laps. It's going to be a tough one when you, you're coming up to a corner and you know, okay, I broke here last lap, you break there again, and suddenly I should have broke yep. five, ten metres earlier this time. It's a bit of a scary one. Penalty come through as well for number three. That's a that's a that's a, a high number, of course. The numbers denoting the championship finishing position of last year. So that's Southampton A. I've seen them get a couple of penalties already in this race. So yeah, yeah the outside that. shot, as we mentioned, is, is very much gone. There's the move though. Finally, someone gets past Warwick A, and it's Birmingham A who managed to do it. They get up into third place. Great move there. So last minute as well. Yeah, that that just a pure bravery, I think. That was what. But well, he's been uh, the, the driver of the... Oh, weak wide oh, moment for Oxford Brooks A. Off, off from they Brooks. go. So they nearly got forced out wide there from the number 11 last lap. This time someone else uh, puts them onto the grass. There they are, just rejoining on the second cam there. Bit of a train now behind the number... El it's not the number 11. It's the 11, yeah. It, it, yeah, it is no, the 11. I'm myself. <laughs> Yep, Birmingham A now at the front of this train, finally through on Warwick. They've been sat back in that gaggle for so many laps. They've seen so many carts trying to get past Warwick and unable to do so. And Birmingham A just sent it up into third place they go. And it looks as though they're just starting to build a gap here on Warwick. Warwick were, were re-attacking over those last lap or two, but now they've broken that gap. Now I think Warwick are going to have to start defending on the drivers behind, but they're not going to. And That's down great. the inside goes the 12, really late on the brakes from the 10 in behind as well, nearly goes into both of them. This scrap is fantastic. Yep, it's anyone's game in this pack. Birmingham using this to their advantage, though, just starting to break away up in third at the moment, starting to use the squabble going on behind them to slow themselves down 
and he can just have a nice clear run to the finish line, or oh, as clear as it can be really. This battle has certainly slowed them down. We have a 22 second margin from P1 Mental. to P3, and about 14 seconds between P2 and P3, so... Late down the inside there at the boot. That was a really opportunistic move from the 14. Loughborough B stealing away the place from their sister team of Loughborough A. That was a bold move to do they, in your they team, They found mate. each other on track quite a few they times have, today. haven't they, today? They've got very similar teams in terms of, like, weighting of skill level. They're very, very similar. They keep finding each other out on circuit and having good battles. That was a good move, though. I was going to say, as we were looking at that battle, that Bath A, because they're so far ahead, they'd already crossed the line, so we were definitely getting two laps uh, left of this race. They're about to come up to the line again. I think they're coming through the boot section now. Uh, we've obviously got less than 30 seconds left to go on the clock, so it will need the Bath A are going to start the last lap of the last sprint race of the season. And here they are now, just crossing that timing line. Still comfortably in the 56, so it looks like the rain has just about held off. Only just, though. Maybe there's just a little bit of a sprinkling down yeah. there. Uh, we've tempted fate a little bit, but it's held off for now anyway. But Bath A... On to the last lap they go. What a race it's been for them. Like I mentioned in previous races, if we don't talk about you, it's either been a shock of a race or an unbelievable race. And what a race it's been for Bath. It has indeed. And as we say, exactly what they needed for the championship battle here. At least according provisionally to the spreadsheet to do. <laughs> that was a little bit of a scary one. Bath tried to go down the inside of a fat marker there. And they nearly closed the door a little bit too much. They were able to back out of it. But, uh, yeah, that was a close one. You don't want to be getting any penalties this late on in the race and changing up potentially the whole round. But here come Bath Bay through the last couple of corners. They're going to take the win in race number six, and we think potentially that will mean that they take the round as well for round number seven. What a race from Bath A. A very, very impressive drive from Bath. They started in P5, and of course it was Axel Stepcevic who was in the cart there for Bath A, a driver we've seen far too many times getting many race wins, and he's done it again here in race number six. Here's the battle we've been watching all race, and just about holds on to Birmingham A to third place. What a race through the pack from Nottingham Trent A. They got involved late on then in that battle. They started in 33rd for that race, and they've come across the line P4. Unbelievable race from Nottingham Trent A. Uh, in a similar vein, Coventry A as well from 34th place up to P10. So some great runs through the field there from a few different drivers. But what a race to uh, to cap off the uh, the sprint season, I guess you could say. We've had a lot of sprints around across the season. And that's all done and dusted. We've still got three more endurance races left to go, though, before we finish out the 2023-2024 season. Race number six, so here is your result for the race. Of course, nothing finalised just yet. Potentially some penalties, penalties still to come through. Good for the, for the, for the, the top, top Yeah, runners. the top can't seem to not have too many penalties, or not have any penalties, I should say. Potentially, though, getting down the bottom end of the top ten and further down, maybe some. So remember, results for uh, result Alpha Timing, .uk, forward slash for UKC, that's where you want to go to find out the full results. But Bath A took the win on the road, 9.3 seconds the lead when they crossed the line there, impressive stuff. Then a further 14 seconds back to Birmingham A in third, but they had a great run through, a good battle to finish there in the top three. Nottingham Trent A were in fourth place with Loughborough B fifth and Loughborough A in sixth, so a nice little Loughborough battle there between fifth and sixth. Then Swansea B, Warwick A, Oxford Brooks A and Coventry A rounded out the top ten. Good races through from both uh, Warwick, Oxford and Coventry and a great bit of defensive moves from Warwick there. Has to finish eighth, though. A P3 looks on the cards for a while. Warwick B, their sister team, finishing 11th with Edinburgh A, Liverpool C and Liverpool B there. Your top 14 in race number six. Behind them were Cardiff B, Southampton A, Imperial A, Oxenbrooks B, a Loughborough D, then a TX number, so I can't tell you what team that is, I'm afraid, or it's covering another another team name, I'm afraid. Uh, Southampton C a 21st with Imperial B, Bruno A, Bristol A, Swansea A, Sheffield B and Lancaster B there, your top 27. Still less than a minute off the leader, though. A very close race, that one. Uh, 28th was Portsmouth A, then UWEA, Leeds B, Cardiff C, Sheffield C, Huddersfield A, Brighton B and UWE B. Your 35 runners in that race, but... Reeve has been looking at the spreadsheet of I Doom. Have. It looks rather close at the top, Reeve. And the round win, I am going to say, I'm not a steward, I'm not on the timing yeah, This is pre-penalties for race six, yeah. But those three didn't have penalties. The round win goes to Bath A with Cardiff A incredibly close behind and then Renegade in third. Takeaway drop scores. 
it is Bath A on top. Yeah, so as a, as a total, Cardiff A were uh, just a teensy bit better across the round, but uh, because of that drop round, you drop one score, and that means that Bath A just about take it. So congratulations, Bath there. So with Reading in third in the round, Reading need to achieve no better than a third. The championship is still on it's, as we head into the afternoon. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, well, as Reeves says, it's still all to play for out there on circuit. And I will say, I just saw rain on this camera that we're looking at. I just saw that. It was very light, but there's definitely a bit of precipitation coming down here at the Wilton Mill International Kart Circuit. So we've still got three endurance races left to go this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So don't go anywhere uh, after these interviews and done and, du uh, done and dusted. But speaking of which, Piers Pryor is down on the dummy grid for the final time for the sprint. What a final race of the morning, and it was led and driven away by our Bath driver, Axel. Axel, uh, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, I think we got two firsts and a second in the round, um, so very happy with that. Um, no penalties, which has been a change um, for the rest, the rest of the season. has been riddled with penalties, so um, yeah, glad we could win this one. Yeah, and you've won the round, and you're probably that close in the, in the championship now, so it's going to be uh, all down to the the endurance races this afternoon how do you think you guys can get on i reckon we're still two or three points behind reading um we were really good at the endurance at pfi we just had a um a sixth place penalty which cost us six championship points which was was really really costly um otherwise we would have won it if we didn't have that but we came sick um so hopefully we can avoid penalties this afternoon and I mean, give ourselves the best chance of winning the championship. Yep, that would be good. I'm sure you're gunning for that. And literally, as we're talking, I'm having a couple of spots of rain fall on my head. And actually, that looked pretty ominous over there. So would you prefer it to have a little sprinkle or would you like it to just be nice and dry as it has been for the second part of this morning? I mean, actually, while I was out there, I could see spots on my visor and I was getting a bit nervous, like <laughs> just playing it a bit safe. Um, I prefer it to be dry because uh, there's sort of less variables. And I think our pace in the dry is really good. Um, but we can still do well in the wet. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a very, very close championship battle. Uh, Axel, thank you very much for chatting to us. It's uh, good to good to hear from you after a good win. It's a, a bath win this morning. You can catch all of the final results from this morning's racing on results.alphatiming. .co.uk forward slash BUKC. Uh, you can go on the, BU, uh, the result alpha timing website as well and have a look there and just click on BUKC and you'll see exactly how it all fell out from this morning. We have three endurance races coming up this afternoon where the drivers pair up and each team will do two of the three endurances and uh, that's going to decide our championship both in the, uh, in the Prems and the Clubman division. So we're going to take a very short lunch break now. Uh, don't go anywhere because we're back in just over 15, 20 minutes, about five past one for the first race of this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll see you then.
Welcome back to round eight, the final round of the BUKC this season. We have endurances up this afternoon, three one hour or 55 minute endurance races coming up where the drivers this morning, each driver did one race uh, and each team did four of the six this afternoon. Drivers pair up, each drivers pair up and do one race with each team doing two of the three races. Now, we saw Bath taking the win this morning. Bath were very, very close in the championship at the start of the day, bringing it even closer, closing the gap to Reading A. I haven't got all the perms and comms, but our trusty commentators, Reeve and John, will be running you through all of the different situations that need to arise for certain drivers and teams to get in the championship and win the championship and all the positions. And we've also got Clubman battle to fight for as well, but the overall battle is looking very, very close. So, We've just had our afternoon briefing. You can see over there just all the drivers getting ready to about to go out on circuit. Uh, the pit stops are going to be playing a factor in the results this afternoon. No doubt each team must make two pit stops per race where they fuel and they can change drivers. They must change driver at least once as well. There are pit stop windows. Again, the, uh, the commentators will talk you through all that wonderful stuff. But that's enough of me waffling about this afternoon's racing. The rain is definitely falling harder and harder. I don't know if you can catch it on the carts, maybe, uh, um, but you can see that there's uh, drops falling on the circuit, so that's literally just starting as we're about to get going for the first race of the afternoon. But let's wander into the crowd and have a chat to some of the guys and girls who are about to go out on circuit. As I, I, I'm now having to pull a rain face. It really is starting to rain quite heavily uh, with the, while the sun is still out because, you know, that's, that's British weather for you, isn't it? Um, of course, all uh, teams must wait at the end of the race as well to make sure they're on the wait on the wait limit. Let's just uh, jump on in here. Hi there, team. Who are we? Who are you racing for? Uh, I'm Brooksby. No, I'm not Brooksby. I'm Alex. But we're. Hi, nice to meet you, uh, Brooksby. Uh, racing for the team, Alex. Yeah, hello. My name is Brooksby. So yeah. <laughs> Alex, uh, how did the morning go for you? Uh, not too bad, honestly. Um, my race, I was starting P30. Um, so I was kind of looking forward to it being wet to be honest but yeah. um but we managed to to do okay uh, i managed to not get any penalties which honestly is half the battle i would, I would like to think an achievement um with the track limits being so so strict um but yeah we we finished well i finished p15 and ed got uh, got a win uh, earlier on so yeah we did we did okay so is, is this the rest of your brooks b team over here is this brooks b as well uh, no, I'm not no, brooks b. No, no. you're not brooks b uh, we're just helping <laughs> just helping just helping yeah we're Helping in a race suit. Yeah, we're staying in race suit. I'm uh, race two, so. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, um, you would be our team, Brooksby, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, um, what's the tactic for this afternoon in the endurance races? Are you looking at it differently? What's the plan? Just uh, minimise penalties as much as possible, because uh, first couple of races you can see you can get a lot of positions. So, um, yeah, and just stay out, stay out of trouble. Yep. Remind us who you are. Uh, Alex Jennings for Brooks D. Well, I've just uh, just been. Oh, get a, get, get a bit, get a bit flustered here. Um, anyway, um, what can you do? Do you reckon you can win? Yeah, there's more. <laughs> I love the way you said yeah. yeah. You went there's yeah. Loads of chance to win. Loads of chance to win. So yeah, we'll brilliant. We can do. Brilliant. Well, Brooks beat. We'll keep an eye out for those guys later on. Let's wander into the crowd and grab some people I haven't chatted to before. All right, there, team. How are we going on? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Who are you? Who are you racing for? Uh, Sid Burton for Cardiff C. Sorry. Uh, Cardiff C. Cardiff C and uh, Cardiff C's chances of a good result this afternoon in the in Juros? Uh, well, maybe. I don't know, maybe. Well, based on the first round, no, but... <laughs> OK. <laughs> you never know. Maybe. You enjoying it, though? Yeah, no, it's been great, yeah. And who are you? Uh, Morgan Weston, uh, Cardiff C. Excellent. Uh, Cardiff, of course... The, you said the morning didn't go the best. Did you help towards the good results or help towards the not so good results? I wasn't good. <laughs> At least I didn't spin, so I'm happy with that. Great, that's good. Positives. Positives, take positives forward. Uh, and also, penalties are a big part of this morning. Did, did you guys manage to avoid them or? No, I didn't get it. So. Star pupil right here. Uh, yeah, I mean, might, might, have got, might have got a couple, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> couple of penalties. Anyway, good luck this afternoon. Cardiff, uh, of course, having a strong result in the, the A team, the C team, not so much. Let's uh, let's let's waltz on in here and chat to these guys. How? We, oh yeah, we actually. We better, why don't we cut back a little bit actually? Because people are starting to make their way towards the grid. Um, some drivers getting ready. It looks like Sam Sam Hampshire. Sam, for uh, remind us which team? Uh, extra. Uh, extra. Extra. Fun, fun fact for you. It's my Go on. Last ever BUKC race. Oh, so, uh, it's sad. I know. It's been four years, so it's going to be a bit odd. But you're going to try not to get any penalties. 
Yeah, try, I have to watch it on TV next year. It's not going to be the same, but... Oh, I know, I'll I know. Whole, I'll be there the whole day through, don't oh, worry. Oh, I'm sure you will with our, you know, of course, the wonderful Alpha live stream. And also, those who are watching at home, thank you very much for sticking with us. Hopefully, you're enjoying the stream. Um, what would you do if you were watching the stream? What would you do? Oh, I'd be in the comments constantly. Exactly. Uh, and what else would you do? Uh, be just chanting Exeter probably all, yeah, all the way and, through. And it might be like, you know, liking and subscribing. Liking and subscri I'm already subscribed, so... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Well, if, you're, if you're watching right now and you're not subscribed, I mean, first of all, what are you doing? And secondly, just, you know, going... You know, it's uh, we have a great wealth of racing and other live stream content, plus some more videos that go in between live streams to help, you know, keep you entertained, informed about the motorsport world. And also, of course, we've got the BKC back again in November for the qualifiers, which you'll be watching from home I'll probably, or work. I'll probably be here, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> just buying <laughs> buying seats. Yeah, I'll just be, I'll just, I'll be doing the lead fall and I'll be cheering them on. I'm anyway, I, it's a quite a lot. Is it uh, two or three of you guys are next to a, uh, it's their last round, correct? Uh, well, no, no, it's just, just me because Jensen's he's graduating this year, but he's, he's going to do another season. Okay? Oh, of course, the grad, the grad rule, yes, I forget about that. Um, can't keep him away. Can't keep him away. You can't keep him away. I did an year of grad as well. It's great. Um, anything you'd like to say? What's been on your mind? What have you been up to since the last round? Um, not much, working, but, you know, it's been good. Um, so just, I'm just hoping that I make it through, to be honest, at this point. Just want to have a clean race so I can go send it with a bang, you know? Send it with a bang. Um, and also, where are you starting in this one? Oh, 32nd, so... Oh, we are literally in yeah, the midst. Oh, yeah. oh, nothing to lose, so... Nothing to lose. And then you must have a good, pre pretty good starting position for your other um, endurance race later on, then. Yeah, fourth, I think. Yeah, so. I think I spoke to Owen, actually. Yeah, he did yeah. say fourth, so that's... Uh, Definitely a, a chance of a good result. Yeah, definitely, hopefully. Well, we'll see how we get on. Extra good luck. Uh, always do well in pit stops. Of course, last year's champions, resounding champions. This year, not quite having the season that they would have would have liked. You can see the drivers just getting themselves weighed up, ready to go, so that everyone is on the correct way. Why don't we get um, Coventry in here? Remind us who you are and which Coventry team you're racing for. I'm Ewan for Coventry E. Coventry E or A? E. E. Um, how was Coventry E's morning? Shocking. It's all my Shock. fault. It was all your fault. Got caught in a pile up at Christmas, went off at the last corner and then binned it at turn two. You could do better this afternoon. Can't go any worse. I probably had the pace for like top three in the morning, so hopefully similar again now. And where are you starting in this race? Fifth. So you're right up there, good chance of a good result. Yeah, just want to get to the lead at the start and go from there. Uh, what do you feel about these drops of rain that we've been experiencing in the last couple of minutes? Are you uh, doing a bit of a rain dance or are you trying to keep it away? I want a little bit, but not too much, just because it helps with the weight. You're not fussy? <laughs> I'm not fussy. I like it when it's in between and it's just low grip. Excellent. Well, we'll see how we get on with that. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, the rain falls. Good luck for Coventry E, of course, Coventry A gunning for the title as well. Um, they're fight in the fight with Bath and, uh, and Reading. Yeah, yeah, getting a come on Bath in the background. One of you guys jump on in, we'll have a quick word with you. Um, remind everyone at home who you are and who you're racing for. I'm Joshua Taylor for Nottingham Trent A. Nottingham Trent A. Right, so Nottingham Trent had a... Not a terrible, but not, not a great. I mean, Alyssa didn't do the best purely because she got taken out, but yeah. I got P2 on race but then I got penalties from the uh, turn two. Yeah, just keep it in those white lines. Yeah, it's just one of those you've got to push hard, don't you? It's hard. It's very hard because the track kind of falls away. Oh, oh, I better move out of the way. Yeah, thanks very much. I had no idea that was coming. It's just uh, not get run over by the bin lorry. Uh, anyway, sorry, we were chatting. Um, Nottingham Trent this afternoon, which races are you, uh, are you guys competing in? Uh, one and two now for the endurance. So. Starting where? Uh, th th fifth, I think it is, on the very last, and then first in the next one. Nice. That'd be very good. I can't wait for it. Looking forward to it. And are you starting the race or are you going to be ending? I'll be starting and ending at the same time. Oh, so you're doing this, you're top and tailing? Yeah, basically. We've got two, two pit stops, don't we? So we'll do a start and then I'll do last. Where do you reckon you can get in this one from 35th? Luckily, hope 10. It's a top 10, I think. Hopefully, anyway. It's a long race. Yeah, it is. It's an hour race, ain't it? So anything could happen, can't it? Anything could happen. You could make it happen. Good luck. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Nottingham Trent, of course, one of the again, a good entertaining team. Um, we're going to wander onto the grid now as a lot of the uh, drivers start to make their way to the grid. Uh, we can see it also, actually. Why don't you cut around here, uh, Amber? And you can see that a lot of the drivers in the endurance races, they uh, utilise radio technology. Uh, although we're hearing that... <laughs> 
Spartha can't get it to work. Um, but guys, just, just tell us, you know, what, what, what do you use the radios for in the endurance races? It's mainly just for pit stops, so when to call the driver in. Oh, it's not. We just chat. chat. Apparently, they chat um, waffle, uh, waffle when they're when they're bored out on circuit. When they're bored, ten seconds in the lead. Um, I'll let I'll let uh, the Jesse uh, Dorgeese and, and the Axel sort that out, and we'll chat to, uh, of course, one of our winning drivers from this morning, and a and a win overall as well. That must you guys feel must must feel pretty pumped. Yeah, we're feeling pretty good, and it's exactly what we need for potential title charge. I don't. We've, we'll see, obviously, how this goes now in the endurance, but we're still in it. We've got a chance. There's a lot of there's a lot of different like perms and comms and how it can all work. And uh, uh, Reeve and, and John are going to run you through at home all of that sort of stuff. Um, basically, you know, what, what's your outlook to the afternoon? Are you guys just going to concentrate on yourselves? You're going to be trying to like, be a bit of tactics, or no? We're going flat out. Just focus on ourselves, get the win, and then then just hope everyone everything else goes into place. The others maybe have a bad day and maybe we can win the championship. If not, we've got, had a good run, so that's all we need. Yeah, we'll be hopefully three places better than last year. Of course, uh, Bath running under number four, I believe. Um, and we've got Oliver Flashman. Hello. Flashman, how are you doing? I'm good, a bit nervous. Are you, are you in this one or are you in... Uh, Tom's in this one, Tom and Dan. Tom and Dan, so you're at, which, which one are you in? We're in the, what, the one after this. So race two, where are you starting? Uh, sixth. Sixth, a good, uh, good, good opportunity for a good result. Absolutely, yeah, no, we're, me and Peter are looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, good results this morning. You had great pace, so did Peter. Tom yeah. was not too far off as well, so uh, he had a bit of a tricky cart by the looks of it. Yeah, looks. Yeah, I, I think if you had a better car, maybe a little bit of a different result. But who knows? Who knows? And also, uh, you know, Bath are looking good this morning. We just yeah. chatted to them. Uh, you guys are right there in the championship. You still got the advantage, but it's going to be basically who does best this afternoon. Yeah, really, really tight. It's going to be tight. Bath have been amazing this weekend. So, yeah, all credit to them. This week. This yeah. This week. it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> I always do this. Yeah, it's not the F1, is it? Well, to be honest, I was I was at Alton Park on Monday, and I kept saying, and we raced on Saturday and Monday, and I kept saying yesterday, which was Sunday, and I was in bed on Sunday, so. Yeah, exactly. you know, anyway, we'll skip over that. Good luck. Cheers. We'll see how Redding get on. Of course, uh, currently championship leaders in the overall class. And let's start chatting to some of the drivers on the grid. Number 22, who are you and who are you racing for? Uh, Matthew Collings for Edinburgh A. Edinburgh A. Edinburgh, you, are you part, yeah, you are part of the team that have been bribing our commentators. I mean, uh, providing uh, Jaffa Cake services for non-commentators' curses. Yeah, we are. Are indeed. Of course, it's, uh, it's important to uh, steer clear of those commentators' curses. Uh, you've got a good, pretty decent starting position for the first endurance race. What's that? One, three, five, seventh position. Who's, uh, who's in the race with you this time? Uh, we've got Mr. Dougal McGregor. Dougal McGregor, the man himself. And, you know, from... It's a pretty... I mean, the endurance races are always very competitive because all you've got two drivers. There's always a good uh, standard. Where do you reckon you guys can, can come in this one? What, what, what do you think you can do? Well, hopefully not backwards. Uh, that, hopefully. That, that's a good start. It was a bit of a rough morning, so... Uh, Hopefully just nice and easy for the first couple of laps and hopefully move up a few places if we can. Podium possible? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. We'll see how Dougal gets on in the second half. Thank you very much for chatting to us, Matthew. Um, they're coming a long way. A very committed team, of course. Edinburgh University. We don't go to Scotland in the BUK. See, the closest we got to was Sunderland. I'm pretty sure that's still about four hours away. Wilton here to, to Edinburgh is a good six, seven hours or something like that. So great to see the commitment from the team. Oh, I love the seat with the carpet. There's an armchair in there. Who's, who's, who's sitting in that armchair? Is it you? Yeah, it's me. Uh, Remind us who you are and who you're racing for. Uh, I'm James. I'm starting for Sheffield B. Sheffield B. Uh, how was Sheffield B's morning? It wasn't great, to be honest. It was probably our worst round so far. Yikes. Uh, wh where did you finish? Uh, I finished 24th, uh, and I think overall... We finished 44, so really not very good. Not the best, but you can still build from that. You're you're right in the thick of the action over here. Like exactly. you're pretty much slap bang in the middle of the grid. That's going to make the race interesting. Yeah, exactly. We'll uh, try and make some good places in the start, but and try not to get uh, crashed by the back. <laughs> We'll see. Anyway, Sheffield B, good luck. We'll see how you get on. Uh, I want to chat to some more people that I haven't spoken to, seeing as it's the last round of the year. Have we spoken this year? Uh, I think... So. Oh, I'll jump in then. Why not? Why not? Uh, it's just... Oh, I'll get a muddy bum. It's too late. Um, who are you? Who are you racing for? Matthew Roberts, Lancaster A. Lancaster A. Right, guys, your morning um, in the uh, Clubmans. How did it go? Not good enough. So Warwick are now ahead slightly. So we've got to, got to get the hammer down. Hammer down indeed. Who's joining you in this race, the first endurance of the afternoon? My beautiful co-captain, Ash Candola. 
Brilliant, and uh, you know, you're starting in the thick of the action here as well, like what, about two thirds of the way down. What's, what would a good result look like to you in this race? I mean, we've had a lot of good results from the back this season, so hopefully do the same. Excellent, well, we'll see how you get on. Thanks. Lancaster in the hunt for the Clubman's Championship. We'll see how they get on. Let's uh, grab some more people I haven't spoken to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide on in here, guys. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, hello again. Have we spoken this year? We haven't, no, it's my first mains race. So. Oh, amazing, brilliant. Well, I've been trying to look for some people I haven't spoken to yet. Remind us, well, remind us, who are you? Uh, I'm Harry, I'm from Leicester A. Uh, Harry, what's your full name? Uh, Harry Charman. Harry, uh, Leicester A. Um, talk to me, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking I'm glad I got in this car because I didn't think I was racing, so I had to run back to my motorhome and get my stuff. So oh, you got a motorhome? I'm sweating right now. <laughs> well, it's a good warm-up. You know, you see all the Formula One drivers doing their pre-race pre, pre -race rituals. <laughs> Turns out yours is just being late. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad I got here in time, otherwise, you know. I can see I can see your boots are a little bit muddy this morning. Is that evidence of going off? Yeah, I was in a pond earlier. Oh no, that's not Marshall ideal. Marshall on turn three, four. Yeah. Help me out. So thank you, because I saw a couple other people really struggling to get out there. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty boggy once you leave the circuit, so try not to do that. Yeah. Um, what would a good result look like to you in this one? Um, Mid-table, happy mid first mains race. Um, not go backwards. Have you ever done a pit stop before in a race? No. OK, <laughs> OK. Uh, we've got time for one more, I think. I reckon we'll head right to the back of the grid. Oh, wait, we chatted to you already. Yeah, we did. No, we'll chat to someone else. Sorry, mate. Um, right, second last row of the grid. What can you do? Hopefully not bin it. Hopefully not. Remind us who you are and who you're racing for. I'm Josh, I'm racing for Sheffield C. Right, we'll see how Sheffield C do or do not bin it. I think it's about time we headed upstairs, downstairs, across the way, to our commentators, John and Reeve, who are going to be running you through this afternoon's racing. And then if there's any little bits and pieces that go on in the pit lane, I'll, uh, I'll try and fill you in as well. Nice uh, extended chatter with uh, with the drivers as we head into the Enduros. Of course, as I mentioned previously, I wasn't at PFI, so this is my first endurance race of the whole season. I'm very excited for it. To remind you again, 60 minutes in total, these races with two driver changes for each team. Or oh, sorry, two pit stops, one driver change. A couple of teams have, have messed that up in the past, so they're going to make sure they don't <laughs> do it again. Do you want to run us through the grid, Reef? Most certainly. So on the front row of the grid, it's Luffra B and Swansea A, with Oxford Brooks A and Batsley on the second. Second row, row three, Coventry E and Loughborough D. Row four, moving on to Edinburgh A and Leeds A. Row five is UWE A and Southampton B. Row six is Lancaster B and Manchester A. The seventh row is Sheffield A and Birmingham A, with row eight having Swansea B and Cardiff C filling the rank. And then row nine is Bristol A and Brighton B. Moving on to row ten, it's Loughborough A, Birmingham B, with row 11 having Lancaster A and Sheffield B. Row 12 is Coventry B and Southampton C, with some other rows there. Then it's row 16 with... Oh, <laughs> Row 13 is Euclid A and Warwick B. Very professional. Uh, didn't we say that we have to drink the dirty water if anything goes wrong on stream? Row 14 is Bath A and Leicester A. Row 15, UWB and Reading A. Row 16 is Leeds B, Exeter A, Sheffield C, Oxford Brooks B and Nottingham Trent A on row 18, I think. Yeah, no, that is the grids. <laughs> well, I wasn't involved there, so I'm not drinking any dirty water. Yeah. Not for me, thank you. Oh, the drivers are already out on circuit. Well, they are. They are. Already all in the carts, all ready to go. We might even be ready for a start for the time of asking here. We're going to yeah, be getting the... the uh, <laughs> we're going to be uh, getting the first endurance race uh, underway very shortly. As I say, yeah, 60 minutes in total this, of course, we were saying about the sprints. You don't often think of a sprint in karting 25 minutes, but compared to these enduros, that is that is a fast race. It but is. We're almost getting started then. 60 minutes of action for the first endurance race of this afternoon. Let's get it underway then. Lucra B and Swansea A lead us to the lights and look at the carts all oiling up, getting nice and smoky as they head through the first couple of corners. It's a good start from Oxford Brooks A. Third place on the grid already up to second. You can see Thomas Fleming there right in the back trying to make a couple of moves. 21 again, a cart nearly becomes coming a Ryan Air flight up towards Christmas Corner, but luckily the 21 finds the ground again and Leeds continues. A. Yeah, Leeds A that was. It's been some bold moves from the Leeds cart uh, so far today. And uh, we're seeing more of that as we head into the afternoon. Don't want to show your cards too early on in endurance races. We've got a spin at spin corner there. Officially renamed yes. by Reeve today. Yes. Yeah. We've got 
Stagnant pond has been cornered. <laughs> Just because Wilton Mills corner names weren't already chaotic enough. Yes. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Already almost at the end of lap one of this enduro then. And it sort of stayed how it is. I mean, you would expect it to be a more relaxed start than the sprint. That's what you're aiming for But sometimes it isn't. It uh, is. Luckily in this one, only one spin, at least that we've seen on the cameras. So as they come through to finish lap number one, then we've got Lapra B in the lead, Brooks A in second place, Swansea A there right behind them in third. Then the rest of your top ten are Edinburgh A, Coventry E, Lapra D, Sheffield A, Lancaster B, Bath C and Southampton B. Of course, the weather looking good, but a little bit of rain here or there, and the car's have had a decent break to cool down as well. So the time's not going to be quite as electric as what we were seeing towards the end of the morning's running. But yeah, as we were saying, you don't want to go all out early on in these endurance races, as if you push it too hard, you're going to completely ruin your race early on. Oh, that's a change to the lead. Through goes up to Brooks A, then up at Wilkins. They take away first place from Loughborough B. Oh, someone's playing the tunes yeah, out there. Some, the tunes are some music. Uh, copyright free, of course. Yeah, hopefully copyright uh, free. <laughs> and is I just thought, interrupt, feel feel free. Just like quick, Ooh. another look at the spreadsheet of Doom. Although there's still plenty of action. There is indeed for the lead. Yeah, we've got to update you on how the championship is going, but already battles at the front happening. So maybe we've got an hour of running here. Maybe yep. we'll just we'll watch the action for a little bit and then we'll get to talking about the championship and how it's all working out as we head in to these final races of the season. Battles galore still going on up at the front. How many have we got here? Seven, the top seven, I think that is. All in a line. That was a very late move to the inside. There is that Manchester, no, that Sheffield. I think potentially re-overtaking is that. One of our red-plated cars, I think, possibly getting back past on Lancaster there. Maybe Ooh. siding through into the I, oh. I wonder what type of penalty they'll be receiving for that <laughs> one there. <laughs> oh, dear. The poor cone already getting annihilated. And we're not even three minutes into this, uh, this endurance race as of yet. Heading through Stagnant Pond now. Back on to the start, finish straight. Oh, so close at the front end of the field. Everyone in the 58 as well already. Of course, we'll be running a little bit, a little bit more fuel. We will be. There is a fuel stop, so it's not as if we've got 50 kilos of fuel on board these cars. Not that you can get through that anyway. But number nine, the, the Sheffield A car up the inside there. A bit of a favourite overtaking move of the day. That fairly textbook. It's always a good overtake, especially in carts like these, because not the fastest, uh, not the fastest cars, but of course quicker than most, if not all, drive and drive carts. But comparatively to owner driver, you do take a little bit longer to get from that final corner up to Christmas. You can use that slipstream really nicely and set yourself up for a good move up into Christmas. And as you say, we've seen that quite a lot today. I think they've just, I think they've turned down the audio on the final corner camera. They about have. The they've to make sure we don't get any of this music in. They've become electric carts now. <laughs> this is, <laughs> you can just hear the tires the air, Welcome to the ASMR part <laughs> of the stream. <laughs> there you go. The, the two-stroke uh, scream is back again as we head into the first couple of corners. Brooks are out in front, still flying along then. Love for me, putting that pressure on, we're seeing that number... 22 of Edinburgh 8 against Swansea. He didn't see too much from Swansea in round seven, the morning's round, but now as we move into the final round, this final round of the BUK season, the BUKC season, Sheffield and Swansea are, are, are putting in a good showing. I think the only time we spoke about them was when Sheffield B were battling for like third or fourth. Well, there we go. Well, clearly, Sheffield's a good omen. Oh, uh, yes, been pointed out by uh, peers in the comms box that the uh, two championship contenders are very close together on circuit. Bath A in 21st, Reading A in 22nd. And as I think the, the front runners start to uh, get into a bit of a rhythm of things as we continue on with this endur endurance race, Reeve, why don't you do the honours of talking us through what this all means to the championship? What's happened in round number seven? Who's taken the win and how has that impacted the championship? So a season's worth of number crunching comes down to this, ladies and gentlemen. It was Bathé who took the round win in the morning's running. And that means with Reading coming in P3, the fight is still on. Southampton A and Coventry are now out of the championship fight. It is between Bath and Reading. Now, in order to take the championship victory, all Reading needs to do is finish higher than third. To do that, that's it, they've got it in the bag. But Bath A is halfway to getting this championship victory. They've already got the first round win. They do need to get a double round win. 
Barthay have just dropped to last. Barthay have just dropped to last. They have. Something's gone wrong for Barthay. They've just done a 1 minute 24 second lap time and they now find themselves, what's that, 18 seconds behind Leicester A in 34th. Did the pit lane just open? Sure, surely, uh, surely, have they not pit, have they pitted already? That would be ridiculous. That would also, be I don't think there'll be enough time lost with it yeah. for, for, a, for a pit stop. 30 seconds. Uh, okay, I'll let you continue and I'll, I'll have a little look to see if, it, if it's open yet or not. So, maybe this is all for nothing because Bathay might not be in with a shout of this championship, but they've already got that first round win. They need another round win in order to have the championship and they need Reading to not get any better than third position. They are separated only by four points in the championship so far, and that is for the Preps. Okay, so the, the pit window is open, I will say. I've got a couple more people, I think, in the pits. I'm going to wait and see what they're... Okay, so you kind of come in. They've just done a 124 as well. So it yeah. does seem as though so it looks about... that's it then. Pit stops, about 30 seconds yeah. extra, that seems. So sorry to go crazy on you. Yeah. I forgot 27 the... to 30 the... seconds we're looking at for a pit Exactly, stop. yeah. And the pit windows, I forgot that they open. So the first pit window opens between 5 and 25 minutes into the race. The second pit window between 35 and 55 minutes. So sorry, to, sorry to alarm you, Apologies. Bath fans. Sorry. No, there's a few in the comments there. So yeah, so, so yeah, still possible for Bath to take this championship here in round eight. It will come down to this though. And in the Clubmans, we all thought it was all going to be over. Mm. But no, Warwick A with a fantastic showing have managed to uh, pull out a slight lead in the Clubmans actually. It's now Warwick A versus Lancaster A separated only by three points. So we're down to the wire edge for wow. both of our championships. Wow. Yeah, this is extremely close. Have you spoken about um, what Bath need to do and what Reading need to do for things to for things to occur here? So, yeah, so Bath Euros. needs two round wins. They've already got that first. They need to get another round victory here in round eight. Reading can't get any better than third or fourth, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, so like that's it. It's Reading no matter what. Now, I believe there is also a possibility of Bath coming second and Reading coming in sixth or seventh, if my memory serves me correctly. Oh, what I numbers. noted down from our chat at lunch yeah. was if Bath win, Reading must be third or higher in this yeah. round to take the title. If Bath comes second in this endurance round, Reading must be fourth or higher to take the title. If Bath come third or lower in this round, they cannot win. They cannot win the championship. So Bath have to either win this round or come second, and then it will depend on Reading's results as well. And then, of course, as you mentioned, uh, with the clubman as well, yeah, only three points. Now Warwick ahead of Lancaster, which I think I'm correct in saying is the first time this season that Lancaster A haven't been leading in the clubman standings, which is unbelievable. So that was all thanks to Warwick winning the sprint round this morning and Lancaster having a couple of results that just didn't quite go their way. That means that Warwick have got not only right back in with a shout, that they are leading the championship going into this round. So your four teams to watch in terms of the two championships are Bath and Reading for Prems and Warwick and Lancaster for Clubland. If you just looked at the numbers, you'd have to say Reading were still the favourites. But from what we've seen today, Bath have some great pace here. They've and been flying, haven't they? And they've managed to, to claw back what has been a fairly comfortable advantage in the form of, of Reading there. So it's, as we say, it's it's a it's an open it's an open field really. It's anyone's game. It is indeed. It is indeed. Yeah, it's been really close across the Prems uh, this entire season with a good number of teams being in with a shout. Slowly but surely, uh, each of them dropping by the wayside. And we're now left with two as we head into the final round of the season. Two that could potentially take away the title. Of course, the number one, Exeter A, the champions from last year. They're not in with a shout. They, hasn't quite, they haven't been able to do the repeat this year. And they're going to have to settle with a lower number on their car going into the 2024-2025 season. But which of Reading and Bath will have the number one plate on their car for next season? Now, I will have to check at some point during round eight. I think it's the first time we've mentioned it, actually. Maybe, maybe we've mentioned it once before, but it's Andrew Mather's favourite part of the UK. So it's ineligible drivers. Oh, uh, yes. And we're going to have a quick double check to see who's using ineligible drivers and see how that affects things in the points. Reading Gaming meanwhile, have just set a blistering lap time at 56.7. They're right back up to some of the best pace we've seen all day. Currently running in P13, so they are showing they mean business in this championship fight. We're currently on board with 
the Battle 4 P2, the effective Battle 4 P2. More of the action is happening between Swansea and Sheffield, though, as it has been for quite some time, heading through the final corner. Now getting back onto the start, finish straight. The first 10 minutes of this race have passed. We've had those very early pit stops completed. We might see a couple more in the kind of way. You kind of get an ebb and flow, really. You'll get some people going for the really aggressive strategy early on, and then you kind of get a trickle throughout the, the middle part of the first pit window, and then those people who are gambling and waiting until the very end of the uh, of the pit window will all rush in late on. Exactly, and that's where the excitement from these uh, Enduros comes, isn't it? There's often a little bit less action out there on circuit, just given the fact it's a longer race and, uh, and these things take a bit longer in time. People are doing a bit, a lot more tactics and things, but that is the excitement of these Enduros. It's, is not only can you overtake someone on circuit, you can overtake someone just by using your brain and picking Indeed. the right time to, to do a pit stop because, of course, there's only, I want to say, two fuel bowsers in the pit lane. So if more than two carts are in the pit lane, you're going to have to wait. And that's just time being lost for absolutely no reason. So it's all going to be on team strategy and everyone working together as one unit in the team. But also it's a bit of a challenge. So, oh, we've got one driver off on the start finish straight Ooh. has pulled over to the side. So that must be a car going no further. And there's lots of pieces of paper on the circuit Come as on. well. Uh, so someone's dropped something and that's all over the Maybe circuit. Maybe someone disagrees with the regulations. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, no, I can see yeah. the UK logo on the pieces of paper. So. so this is another interesting element here. Yellow flags. If you were debating a pit stop later on. It's, I mean, they don't, yellow flags, of course, apart from a safety effect, don't mean too much in the grand scheme of things in a sprint race. But here in the endurance race, where a mandatory, well, two mandatory pit stops are present. Are you now thinking, I'll tell you what, the sector here is a little bit slower. Do you dive into the pits? Yeah. Now that's uh, Birmingham B on the number 34, who have uh, pulled over to the side of the track there. So they're going to have to push a car, take them back round. Annoyingly for them, they're just past the pit lane, so they're going to have to get pushed ah, all the way round. That is painful. To go back, that's so painful. But uh, at least think, they'll be able to get back in the pits, get a new car, continue. Yeah, Fingers with the these two-stroke well. engines as well. They never. It's not you know like a more more advanced, more more complicated car. You can't. You don't get that many symptoms, really. You don't get quite as many. It's it's with an old with a two-stroke engine like this revving, revving to the to the high heels. It's all kind of there until it isn't really. So you yeah. might get a little bit of a stumble and a stutter, but suddenly it just goes. So usually we find when it's a car just totally conks out, nine out of ten times it's the chain. chain. Yeah, yeah. Nine chain out of ten times the chain yeah. goes. Uh, and yeah, you, and you, again, you, that is just immediate. <laughs> yeah, that's that totally yeah. immediate. Yeah, suddenly you come out of a corner, you press the accelerator, Ooh. you don't move at all, but the engine screams into life. Mm. And you're like, ah, something's, something's not right. We right do here. have a penalty Ooh. early on in the race for our race leader, Oxford Brooks A. Oh dear, ABC bump and pass. Now, that leads me that to believe be they've a got a nice marker. gap over... Yeah, exactly, they've got a nice gap over Luffer, so that must have been a back marker that they've come past, which is far from ideal. They're leading the race, and, I mean, now they've got no hope. They cannot win this race. Oh dear. Likewise, Southampton C overtaking from the yellows. It's a difficult one Naughty, as well, Naughty. because it'll be for this incident where the driver's getting pushed back to the pit lane, but obviously with that, the... the uh, Thing to be aware of it's constantly moving around the track so the yellow yes. flag is moving with it as well so at one point you might not be in the yellow and then suddenly you are and then you made a move and oops you've got a penalty so uh yeah frustrating never start out to see but an easy mistake to make in in these conditions that moving yellow flag as well is is, is really nasty on some cars compared to others some cars are going to completely avoid it and can carry on going at their normal speed but we're seeing a couple of cars coming in likewise L uh, Loughborough a cardiff c they haven't dip into kind of the one minute ranges as they're navigating their way around this moving hazard on track. Seen a couple more carts coming in now. Swansea B, Loughborough D diving in to the pit lane. Indeed. Yeah, all the pit stops uh, are happening now. Trying to keep an eye on who's pitted is the difficulty. I think we're going to be a little bit blind to who's actually in what position until we get into the last uh, sort of five or ten minutes of this race. Of course, the second pit window, I think, closes with, uh, yeah, closes with five minutes to go. So that's when everything will be uh, will be done and dusted in terms of pit stops. If you've not made your two pit stops by that point, well, you're getting a pretty big penalty, so we're going to count you out anyway. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're moving through in this race. Still just under 45 minutes left to go then. So we're 15 minutes into the first of three endurance races for this afternoon. And of course, to remind you, as I said earlier, um, with how it works with, with team members. So three endurance races, 
Uh, each team, of course, has four drivers, so they'll be split into two teams of two. So each team will compete in two of the three endurance races. Uh, and, of course, the teams will then pick who they decide out of their team, which two drivers pair up uh, for each race. So if, you, if you're supporting someone uh, and they're not in this race, or their team is not in this race, then their team will be in races two and races three of the Enduros. But look at that. Oxford Brooks A have had the fastest lap all race. That now goes the way of Reading A. They picked out uh, Oxford Brooks' best lap by 200 of a second. Mighty close there. Yeah, Reading A have been had some great one lap pace at certain points and fair play if they can keep that pace up for an entire stint it's very impressive i mean you don't have to worry we haven't got the full endurance worry of the tires going off or, or you know the end the engines getting a little bit worn out you know it's not we're not we're not pushing the carts quite that hard this isn't that long of an endurance in the grand scheme of things you know look for your 24 hour race coming up in a few months for a proper proper mm. endurance so tires things like that aren't too much of a concern so as long as you've got the stamina yourself as the driver, you can keep setting those those impressive lap times for the likes of Oxford Brooks A, the likes of Reading A. Yeah, exactly in there. All tactics comes into play as well. Uh, we've got the uh, the number two of Oxford Brooks A now coming up on the back of the number one of Exeter A to put a lap on them, but you know, we know the driver of that Exeter A car is is very, very fast. Ooh. Nerfs out Swansea onto that uh, exit curb of Osiers. About as close as you want to get to the cones there, really, wasn't it? It was pretty, really close there, wasn't it? And extra wave through Oxford Brooks A. Allow them through. And I think just, yeah, best thing to do. You know it's the leader. Let them go and just sit behind them. Keep pressing on forward and gaining that time because it's all about consistency uh, in these endurance races. And we've seen a lot of interesting tactics as well, particularly if a team has one really, really good driver. Uh, tactics where one driver will do 55 minutes of the 60-minute race. They'll, they'll race up until like 52, 53 minutes, dive in the pits to the final pit stop, hand it over to the last guy for the last five minutes slot, just to bring it to the flag, just bring it home. Uh, so we could see that today, defending, but uh, yeah, all the teams will have all their little tactics uh, all sorted out, at least you would hope so, going into the race. Probably some doing it on the fly as well. <laughs> yeah, some doing it on the fly, some doing it over over a pint in the pub maybe the night before. Yeah, probably more of that, yeah. Best environment, that's where your best ideas come from, isn't it? It's I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Leeds beat, cone penalty coming in there, currently running down the order in 28th and the cones just looking a little bit worse for wear after today's running and sadly they've all got to go back out for their uh, their second stint on track tomorrow with the inters as well oh boy those poor cones all poor cones yeah of course you're watching uh, all of the action here from the BUKC mains championship but there are two championships here in BUKC also the intermediate championship they'll be racing tomorrow as I mentioned earlier, no stream for the BUKC Inters, but you can keep up to date on Alpha Timing. Of course, I mentioned uh, the uh, links I mentioned earlier. As there's a couple of drivers coming out the pits. I think that was Sheffield, I want to say. That was potentially Adam Nather who was leaving the pits there. Because, yeah, 1 minute 26 across the line for Sheffield. Eh? That was Adam Nather hopping into the cart then. There it's we have great our two fuel yep. Yes. Yeah, two fuel Bowsers as thought. So you don't want to be coming in now. They're both taken. Uh, you want to time it just as these, uh, the driver on the left here, or as we're looking at it anyway, is leaving. You want to dive in and be immediately there and ready to go. Just but an FYI for teams watching along, trying to use this as, as a bit of a reference, as a sneaky reference. We've got about an eight-second delay, I think. So don't come into the pit. Say, <laughs> I say, oh, we, they said it was empty. Because <laughs> you never know. Exactly, yeah. Don't use us uh, for, for advice. That would be a terrible way to live your life. Um, but fantastic that we get that little camera down in the down in the dummy grid pit stop area. We can watch what's going on and see the drivers coming into the pits, and we can attempt to do a bit of a better job of keeping up to date of who has actually pitted uh, as of yet. It should all be starting to work itself out now as we come to nearer the end of the first pit window. Uh, the first one open uh, between five minutes and 25 minutes into the race. We're just closing into 20 minutes now, so five minutes left of this first pit window so once that closes everyone should have made one pit stop and we can have a look at what is the proper running order in this first endurance race around number eight here we see another pit stop here just a cast coming in as well you've got fuel to think about 
Yeah, yeah. So your leader, obviously yeah. Brooks A that is, he's just come to the, the fuel buzzer on the left as you look at your screen. So leader into the pits. Still but carrying see, that penalty. He is not uh, changing driver at this first pit stop. We've just seen that team on the right hand side. I can't later quite remember the what the number was there. But yes, yeah, uh, Oxford Brooks A going for that quick early pit stop to keep that track position once everyone has done the pit stops to hopefully still be out in the lead of the race and just keep pressing on in that clear air. I think that's a really good strategy uh, for Moxa Brooks A in this first race, but we'll wait and see how that all plays out. But look how busy it's getting now. We've got two carts in the fuel bay. Cart, who's just come in behind them, has made the wrong decision there, whether that's him or his team. He now is going to have to sit behind and wait for a whole fuel bowser to be done on a separate cart before he can be seen to. This is... This is what's almost like a perfect opportunity to now start thinking about how's your team going to be, you know, utilizing their comms as we have. Go to the other fuel bowser. Why is he, why is he still running that one? That makes no sense. The other fuel bowser was free and he's still staying in the queue. And there you go. That's what, that's Manchester, isn't it? Coming in on number six. Yeah, Manchester from fifth place. Coming in flying through the pit lane. They've got to be a little bit careful. They don't get the speeding in the pit yes. lane, but that was a committed entrance. Yep, teams, if you haven't already, you want to be thinking about getting some type of comm system set up, walkie-talkies, something like that, so you can relay to other people to signal your drivers in to get them in at a suitable time. You don't want to end up in a situation like that where you're effectively giving yourself a 20-second penalty or a 30-second penalty. Exactly. Some, some, very few drivers do have uh, microphones and stuff yes, in their Liverpool, headsets. Which Liverpool are running. Okay, yeah, see, Liverpool, yeah. there you go. So that, that's yeah. a massive advantage when it comes What's to racing like this. about this as well as it hooks up to Discord if you, if you, if you, if you I think there's some way of hooking up to Discord, nice. which means that I want to get into the start. <laughs> oh, that would be so if good oh, if we could be in it. would that be? That would be so yeah. good. We could just put him off the whole race. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we continue then. What's it? Two and a half minutes left to go uh, of this first pit window. And uh, it's Lafrabi who now lead on the road. Good eight and a bit seconds ahead of Reading A. There they are. There's Reading A going into Christmas Corner. There's Bristol A currently third. And we've got the 56 of Conchi E and Lancaster B. Was that them having a little battle as they came up towards Christmas Corner? Uh, I can tell you, no, it, it was not. That was uh, two carts further down the order having a battle. Here we go. We've got the 74, the 81 all involved in this, but drivers could be on very different laps here. So, yeah, 74 is Leeds B. They're in 24th. And the 81 hour. Ah, okay, so this is, a, this is a battle on track for 24th place. Leeds B, Coventry B, and Southampton C here. Uh, the 81 of Southampton C down the inside. So, I think Southampton have got both Leeds and Warwick on that last lap. So, Yes, I'd love to see with a good bit of pace there getting a few positions. Luffer B now enter the pit lane. So our cart which took the lead of the race thanks to Oxford Brooks pitting has now pitted themselves, leaving it very late in the window, I will say. Yeah, and there's so many aspects to the pit strategy. I mean, we were talking about then, you know, leaving the driver change until later on. You might be thinking, well, why would you do that? Well, the thing is, each driver's ever so slightly different. Every driver's got their particular skill set. You might have a driver who is absolutely blistering on one lap pace, but maybe over a stint, you know, it doesn't quite, yeah, it doesn't there, quite yeah. work out. Whereas in an endurance, what you really want is consistency. So it kind of makes sense. You don't, you're not going to, we don't qualify for the, in, the endurance, obviously, but, you know, it makes Reading sense. Reading are in, so hold on live. <laughs> well, there we go. We got a little update from Piers yep. there on the stream. Reading are in the pits, uh, the number 13. So I know we were hoping to get some updates like from Piers. We didn't ask him there, but it's like he a still less told polite us. Ted Kravitz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, shouting down the mic. I don't yeah. think it was ours. It was poor, poor Rob, <laughs> who's uh, who's manning the manning the stream and doing all the producing. Number ten, I think that was, uh, who's just left the pit lane. That was Nottingham Trent A. They rejoined in 22nd place. But yes, Reading A, current leaders, the number 13, I do believe, have now come into the pit lane. So we'll keep an eye on uh, how that's going. We've got a number. So we've got, I think, four in the pits. Reading A, Bristol A, Lancaster B and Loughborough A. Reading have already come out. 3.8 seconds behind Sheffield. Sheffield have jumped up to the lead here. And another has put in a solid stint. He had quite an early pit stop, actually. He was one of the first five or six cars to come out of the pits. But what a run through he's had. Now with a lead of almost four seconds. So Brooks A, who've been in the lead to start the race, dropping to third place. Talk about an undercut there. Is this going to get the other teams thinking now, right, we're going to wait until the next pit window opens. And as soon as it does, we're going to have a rush for the pits, are we? That then, could be... Then it's who can get in there first, because obviously once there's two in, it's full. We had a situation at PFI. If you think back to PFI, ladies and gentlemen, if you were watching along, 
one of the endurance races. There were red flag conditions. We stopped one of the endurance races. No one was allowed to do a proper pit stop with about, I think, 10 minutes to go at the end of the race, which meant that I thought we were going to have 34 cars trying to dive into the pits all at once. Luckily, they were incredibly well behaved, I must say, uh, and logical. Well, hopefully they're as well behaved today. Uh, but we do have Piers in the pit lane. He gave us a little update uh, unannounced uh, that time, but we can get an official update from Piers down in the pits. Over the top of you there, guys. Uh, I didn't quite realise my mic was live, but hey, we, 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 we roll with it. I was giving you an update on where every, our race leaders and championship fight was, because we know Bath and Reading were right close to each other on circuit. Bath chose the early pit stop. Reading came in right at the end, and there's a risk with coming in right at the end of the fuel uh, pit window, because actually, literally on the lap before they came in, someone spun and was blocking the pit entry, and about two or three cars had to duck out at the last moment um, to miss that. So Reading managed to get in just about. Tom Fleming jumped out, a new driver jumped in, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, unfolds. Generally, pretty good f stops all round. I would say that there's a few drivers that are having a bit of finger trouble with the, uh, the fuel caps, but other than that, pretty good. Looking forward to seeing how this race uh, unfolds. Thank you for the insight there, Piers. Yeah, very interesting. We hadn't seen that on the stream. Have we someone spinning at the pit entrance? And that does make it a little bit difficult to serve your pit stop if someone's uh, parked perpendicular to the entrance point. It does indeed, yeah, those fuel caps are, are not the easiest thing. It, it no, seems like really a simple difficult. task, but, well, well, the, I'm sure the Alpha Mito Owners Club who are here today apparently will confirm fuel caps can be a very complicated thing sometimes. Uh, but, yes, it's, I think if I was, if I was kind of running, running my team strategy here, I'd be wanting to get in the pits as soon as possible in both stints and just... Run get it out of the, the way. End. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of the way. Run it to the end here. Yeah. Because you are. The longer you leave it, the more you're risking something happening out of your control. And yeah, like someone spinning at the pit entrance, you don't want that to happen. But like Piers mentioned, when we were watching them earlier on the race, I think they were in around 21st, 22nd place. We had Reading A and Bath A right next to each other. I was just about to say there's a few positions between them, but Reading A have just lost two places. Oxford Brooks A and Edinburgh A have gone through. So once again, we've got Reading A and Bath A nose to tail here. This is so, so interesting. We've, of course, got a direct battle uh, between these two for the uh, for the championship. Not only for the championship, but direct battle in this race at the moment as well. Like Piers mentioned, Bath had the early stop, Reading had the later stop. It's all sort of uh, come back together, hasn't it? It's uh, equalised here out on track. And look at this, the number four of Bath A now all over the back of the 13 of Reading. Yeah, Reading with that dominating pace have just not got it in this middle phase of the race so it seems well I say they haven't got it it's just I think what's happened is everyone else to close up as well and they've started flying along of course they've changed driver as well Thomas yes. Fleming was in for that first stint um, I think Mr Booth it says on his back is in the seat now for them I can't remember his first name so sorry Mr Booth uh, but he's in the cart now maybe just not quite finding the same place that Thomas had in the first stint just in front of course of the championship rivals this every single overtake between the two now matters more than ever we do like it when a championship comes down to the wire, don't we? This is brilliant. I'm loving this. And not only are these two nose to tail, they've got very fast drivers all around them. Just ahead of them are Edinburgh, just behind UCLan. Two teams uh, that have been right up at the sharp end. I know UCLan have won a race this season. I'm not sure if Edinburgh have or not but very quick drivers. Look at this, thinking about the overtake down the inside, go Bath A. A little bit of contact made up and under, go Uclan. Uclan take both of them, and the number four Bath don't even get the position. It was a little bit too late dive there, sent them both wide, and Uclan said, well, oh, thank you very Seizing much. Seizing the opportunity yeah, I'll take that. perfectly there. I think it was an Oxford Brooks car briefly held the fastest lap before Loughborough D snatched it away there, 56.2. Couldn't you say 55s in the Enduros? Wow. That would be very impressive. Look at this, Loughborough D and now the ones pressuring Bath A. They're the ones that just took that Bath's lap, like you say. They've got some serious pace in that car, Loughborough D. Of course, we'll be seeing a lot more of this long form stuff in the coming months. We'll be streaming by Alpha Live Sunday for the 24 hour is the next BUKC event and the last until qualifiers later on into the year. What an I, event it is yeah, as well. Yeah, it's, it's a spectacular event. I'm going along, as I say, even if I'm not driving, just because it's hilarious fun. 
It's, well, it's hilarious fun, but also it's, it, 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 take a week off work. <laughs> take, or at least a few days after it. it yeah. You'll be up for 36 hours straight, but I promise it's fun. Oh, um, my goodness. It's those, when you're sat at the side of the circuit, the only thing you can hear is carts oh, running around. The you're noise. sat at like 3, 4 a.m. Those are the times where you just have the best chats. Yeah. Everyone's like sort of half dead, but really enjoying themselves. You have the best chatter. You're watching your mates out there on the cart circuit. You're out there yourself. Oh, it's brilliant fun. Couldn't recommend it enough. I love the uh, the 24-hour race. I'm really gutted. I can't do it this season. It's the first season since I started being involved with BUKC. So I haven't been able to do it, uh, which is very gutting because what an event it is. So if you haven't booked yourself a ticket, you're not part of a team just yet, make sure you get that sorted because you don't want to miss that event up at the Teesside Autodrome in Middlesbrough, that one. Indeed, a nice long circuit. Slightly different, again, not only is it longer form, we do also have twin engine carts there, but they're enjoying these Rotax-powered machines. That's a good point to make, yeah, the fact that they're not the same carts as these. Yes, not Club 100 carts, they are the carts used at Teesside. They're much heavier, more brutish machinery is the, uh, <laughs> the, yes. the twin engine 24 hour cart. Yes, they are. Make these Club 100 carts look incredibly nimble. And they are, but... Yeah, uh, these look nimble compared to those, and then these don't nimble at all, at all compared yes. to owner carts. So <laughs> it's all the spectrum, uh, but the... If lesser carts uh, uh, at Teesside, the circuit just destroys your body. Oh, yes. Absolutely uh, yeah, If you, you haven't bought your rim protectors and your yeah. memory foam cushions and, and, oh my and your chiropractors. And See, my problem is always my hips. Every time, my hips have been black and blue after the Teesside race. Mine's my lower back. It's just kind of... Because you get... The, the circuit's so bumpy and there's a couple of curbs that are, are a quick line. You end up being kind of jumped up and down exactly. in the cart and you end up I mean, with turn, what is it, I think turn four, turn three, four, whatever, whatever it is, uh, is literally called rib bend because it <laughs> destroys your ribs when you go through it. Um, so I think that sums it up. Uh, that sums it up for us. But we're still watching this race on screen. 17, Ukraine A thinking about a move. I think that's what a back marker that is. They're in fourth place at the moment, but Redding and Barb still nose to tail, but the main point is that they're still in that order. For one, one, uh, for a few minutes, it was looking as though Bath had some good pace, and the move was was coming pretty soon, but it hasn't happened. Reading staying ahead for now, anyway. And of course, you've got to remember, Bath had to win or come second, and then Reading need to come. I think it was third or fourth overall in this round. So to win the round, really, Bath have got to be up in the top three really haven't been yeah. thinking about it uh, across three races uh, in a round you've got to be up challenging a little bit higher so if Bath finish this race out where they are in sick could potentially even be saying after race one that maybe that championship charge from Bath A could be over but what a stint it's been for Adam Nather of Sheffield in the number nine 4.1 seconds now that lead over to Brooks A flat. wow nearly your 55s working for nearly. a 59 if possible so that is that's impressive stuff there from Adam Nather Really impressive with him. A very quick driver. We've seen him win a couple of races. Uh, I think he's at least won one this season. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me that he's been super quick uh, throughout his stint here in endurance race number one. And Oxford Brooks A is setting personal best as well, but still a couple of tenths slower. As here we go. Move around the outside. Attempted there. Not quite able to be pulled off. As uh, yeah, it's the 45. I didn't think I was going crazy and it was the four. I think the four, yeah. So the four of Bath have dropped off the back of Reading ever so slightly, actually. And Reading now pressuring the 45, which I can only assume uh, is a back marker. Yeah, that's Southampton B in 29th place at the moment, who's in the middle of uh, this little gaggle. And there you go. They allow the 13 of Reading A through. And that now puts a physical object between the two championship contenders. It does indeed. I'm liking this from Alex, who's commented live on YouTube, saying, last year we knew where our driver was on track without seeing them because we'd hear ow on the radio at certain points of each corner and they knew exactly what corner it was, which is brilliant. <laughs> That's so Echo funny. Echo location. <laughs> it's true, though. I get that. Yeah, just like the ow, 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 ow. ow. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. A good like hour, hour and a half stint in that car, and an hour and a half. half. Yeah, yeah, an hour and a half. An hour. Nice. I like that a lot. I will see myself out. <laughs> no, I actually really enjoyed that. More of that, please, for the rest of the No, 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 no. One thing I will say, and I know I'm going to be accused of tempting fate again, but the clouds are getting a lot darker. I was, 
a lot darker. It's still actually quite certainly, nice and sunny. It's certainly better than it was. Yeah, it overlooked. definitely is. It, it definitely was, is. It was threat well, it wasn't threatening rain. It was raining. It did rain, indeed. But it's definitely getting a little bit clouder, at least from one direction. So well, we'll keep an eye on that as to whether that causes uh, any change in the grip levels out there on circuit. But for now, anyway, it is still bone dry out there. The pit window has opened. You're right. I've just seen as well that the gap the gap between the two leaders was over four seconds, and it's now less than three. So Sheffield have either not had a, a couple of not so great laps or... Yeah, the last lap was seven tenths down on their previous best. Oh, dear. And seven tenths slower than Oxford Brooks were able to do on that last lap. This current lap was still competitive it's only Oxford Brooks A is on a charge at the moment 30, uh, 56 flat now as we see the number 12 car Reading are in Reading are in Reading coming in to the pits here got uh, Pierce's bike hot as, again which is great to hear I yes. really liked was it race 5 where we, we cut so we cut to pit walls my mouth's dry yeah, <laughs> yeah that was Fraser Brunton of Carlin <laughs> I, I, I messaged him asking is his mouth dry and he was like oops I didn't know that was live <laughs> yeah, oops. so Thomas Fleming back in the cart then uh, for Reading A gets a little push from, uh, from Mr. Booth there who's popped out after his stint in the middle of the race uh, here is uh, one of the Cardiff drivers uh, looking to hop in. However, that's not a Cardiff car, the 36, so potentially Will Abraham's paid for an extra seat uh, here. Yeah, that's Leicester A that he's jumping into, so definitely an ineligible driver there for Leicester A. But there is Thomas Fleming back out in the Reading A car. Now, we saw Reading just sitting pretty comfortably in around fourth or fifth place before they came into the pits then. Uh, but can Thomas press on a little bit further? And if he can secure a really good result in this first race, that's ahead of Bath A, there's going to need to be a monumental uh, bad situation is a good way to put it. Yeah. A monumentally bad situation for Reading in their next race to give a Bath even a chance of taking the round win. Just control Z in the spreadsheet of Doom. I, I, I tried to inform about one ineligible driver and it broke the entire thing. So don't worry, spreadsheet of Doom update, we're good. We're, we're back going again. As we say, yeah. Low 56s, 56 zeros, fastest laps out there. Still seeing a couple. Only got one car in the pits at the moment. On board at the moment with the number 13. That number 13 being the cart of cart of. I should remember that really. No, nope. the cart of Reading A, of course. We're in the midst for this championship battle after all. And your prediction of a slightly greyer day is starting to ring true yeah, at spin sorry. corner here. It's not looking good. We've just had Jacob coming into uh, into the comms box. I think he's looking to try and steal some of our stellars. But I've managed to fend him off. Was so, he actually? But no, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> he was just I, interested. He I, was I, like, wouldn't, I wouldn't be he surprised. Was, I think he was more confused as the fact that why do we have a box of Stella in the comms box. Uh, but yes, I explained and, and he understood. So thank it's, you again. It's, it's the only way Alpha Live can actually convince me to, convince me to be in the comms box. Bath, Bath A, a ahead of jumped Reading ahead. A. Oh, no, they've changed. They've changed already on the screen. Look, Thomas Fleming has already got past the Bath A driver, so they've made pit stops relatively close to each other. And look at that. The 22 of Edinburgh A comes out directly in the middle of Reading and Bath. This is huge. Look how much time Bath have already lost from that alone. I think they're going to try it late, very late down the inside there. They get the position. Force Edinburgh Ooh. nearly off track. So think about that. That's the first corner that Edinburgh have just taken on this stint. And already they're getting nearly forced off the track. Still elbows out even in the endurance format, but yes, this is the type of little advantage that Reading A need to secure this championship victory. It's not to say they, they could technically win it without really beating Bath on track. Technically, there's, there's ways it could work, but if they want to be safe and secure in, in the fact that they're going to take away the championship, they need to be. They need to be just getting these little advantages here with their hand. I think Thomas Fleming at this stage in the race is a bit of an advantage, shall we say. Oh, impressive stuff. I mean, there was a bit of luck there with the fact that the uh, 22 of Edinburgh A came out the pits just directly in between the two of them. But that would never have happened if Thomas Fleming hadn't have made the, uh, made the move on Bath Bay earlier on on that last lap. So a bit of luck, but also a bit of skill to cause that luck. So sort of Thomas Fleming creating his own luck there as we head into the final 20 minutes. But both those teams have done their stop now. Sheffield A, your leaders now come into the pit lane. The number nine serving their pit stop. So we'll see whether Adam Nather is, uh, is switching over drivers or whether he's continuing on for a second stint. I'm not sure who was in the car uh, for their first stint. There you go. So he is. So someone else with the first stint for, for Sheffield. Adam Nather continues on for his second stint of the day third stint of the race for the team. Decent pit stop there, obviously, without 
the driver change. The 122 sees it at about a 25, 26 second pit stop, which is nice. where you want to be. We found even at PFI, you wouldn't think, no, we're not a Formula One. We're not a Formula One outfit. We're not going to be after that fine of a margin in the pit lane. No, you absolutely are. Yeah. It can make or break the race still. It really can. It really can. And, and things like that help as well, because when you're changing driver, sometimes you one driver needs a seat and certain one doesn't. One yeah, needs lead, lead, one doesn't. Yeah. So, uh, with Adam getting out and getting back in, well, he's the same person. He doesn't need anything different. He just gets back in and goes again. You don't need to change the pedals. Don't need to, There's all different things uh, that could need adjusting. And there's those strategies where you continue and double stint like that can gain you those few precious seconds that, as you say, it's so close. It could be one and lost in the pit stop. And with those few seconds gained, that could give the race win here to Sheffield. And they are really far out front. It's a good, uh, I think they're about 10 or 15 seconds ahead of Reading and uh, Bath, who were in about fifth or sixth before this round of pit stops started. Ooh, okay, Brooks A in the pits as well. Brooks A in the pits from what was then the lead, and they've got out. Not still, an electric pit stop. Yeah, still behind by a good margin as well. Yeah, Nine that, seconds. that pit stop hasn't helped, I don't think. What was that? Oh, yeah, one yeah. minute 30. One yeah, minute 30. A few seconds off the mark there, unfortunately. Yeah, that unfortunately not quite where they want to be, and I believe we do have an update from the pit lane, actually. Yeah, I was down here watching all the pit stops, and it's so interesting to see Bath and Reading pit, well, pit at completely different times and then come out of the pits, you know, effectively nose to tail, because, you know, the pit stops, pit stops always look so different. But one person I was really impressed with was Adam Nather's pit stop, where he pitted, didn't have to change driver. He literally whipped out of the car, got the fuel in, jumped straight back in. He was even gone while he was doing the fuel cap. That's why he's extended his gap at the front of the field, showing his experience, but just so, so close at, out on circuit. I'll let you uh, continue to concentrate on what's going on on track. Thank yes. you, Piers. Seriously impressive stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, this is a very good showing from Sheffield A so far. In terms of round seven, we didn't see all that much from Sheffield A, really. It was, it was a P13, a P8, a P28, and a P22. So no man's land, effectively, it's in round great. seven. So, round eight, bit of redemption. Whoa, that P was L oh, really sorry. close. No, cart number 11 there, Birmingham. Yeah, another team Ooh. we didn't see too much of in round Whoa, seven. Someone else getting forced off onto the grass on the exit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I thought it was an endurance race. I love the hand up for the stewards. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sorry. that wasn't quite <laughs> on the track. <laughs> sorry, continue. Don't think there's too, too much more I need to say about that move involving Birmingham. <laughs> it, was, it was topped off with quite a flourish. Indeed. Indeed it was. Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, Birmingham and Edinburgh getting a little bit too close to comfort there, I think. And then, yeah, more drivers just sort of joining the fray and wanted to get involved themselves. And there not really being enough tarmac to go around there between uh, between four or five different carts. Reading a 55.976, wow. the wow. first cart into the 55 second region. Thomas Fleming, very fast, did he? Yeah, wow. The, he's, uh, I mean, this is what you've got to do. You've got to hook up both some phenomenal pit stops and some great on-track pace, and that's exactly what Reading are doing at the moment. They've now put two carts between themselves and Bath. Bath in eighth place, Reading now in fifth, and Reading now almost 10 seconds ahead of the Bath cart. Yep, it's looking good for Reading so far. It is, it is, isn't it? Um, you've got two carts ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if Brooks B have pitted, but I know Brooks A have definitely pitted. Um, and so have Sheffield. So there's at least two carts ahead. Manchester A now come into the pit lane. So they're going to complete their stop. Of course, the uh, pit window. Oh, is that again another bit of a late move from the number 11? Not taking any prisoners here. And they've now got Bath A right behind them. So Bath A need to try uh, and get a couple of cheeky moves and move themselves further up the order. And Reading have now got through on Oxford Brooks B. So I think potentially Oxford Brooks B have done their pit stop. Reading now up to third place. What I was going to say uh, was that, don't forget, the pit window is open until five minutes to go. But I think a lot of teams pitting earlier in that second round of pit stops because of what we saw in the first round yes. of a lot of teams who pitted earlier getting that bit of a jump on the rest of their competitors. Indeed. I should note in the upcoming race, it will be both Bathe and Redigate last race of the day. Oh, amazing. And it also goes to show the immense pace both teams have been demonstrating. I think, uh, respectively, it might be a little bit wrong, but Bath, I believe, was 30th on the grid for this race, and Reading was 33rd. Wow. Um, and in the next race, Bath is starting P3, Reading is starting P6. According to the spreadsheet to do, I understand it. Oh, no, sorry. Bath, P9, 
Bath P9, Reading P6. So they're a lot higher up the grid starting in this race coming in about 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, I can confirm for this one it was Bath in 27th on the grid okay, and yes, Reading so in 30th. Yeah, sorry. So numbers slightly off there, but they started further down. Yeah. So this is their effectively back start race, and the next one is They're going to be higher up. Start and that race. will be their last race, of course, of the day. Well, there you go. You can see on the left-hand side of your screen, Reading up 27, Bath up 21. And to be fair, you clown, we haven't mentioned them. They're up 18 in this one. Just so happens they're not a championship contender. So we've been a bit too focused on Reading and Bath. I think we're going to have to put even more of that focus on yes. in the next race. So that it so. will, it will come down. It will all come down to that. Indeed, what a race it's been for Thomas Fleming so far. And they're in third place, and as they come across the line, yeah, half a second between Thomas Fleming and the Reading A car and the Oxford Brooks A car just ahead of them. There they are as they head through the screen. But not only are these two battling, they've got battles all around them that are all in different areas of the circuit. Behind them, though, I've just seen on the timing screen, Bath A have finally got past Birmingham A. So as they come across the line, actually, Bath A, Birmingham A, and UCLAN A all line astern as now our uh, group of Oxford Brooks and Reading trying to get past these couple of back markers. The 77 involved, so that's Bath C. Just want to see... Oh, yeah, so Bath C a half second behind Swansea B. So it'll be those two uh, that these front runners just about siding past. The 77 putting themselves in between Oxford Brooks A and Reading A there as they head into the boots. Thomas Fleming trying to stick the nose in there up the inside, just about thought better of it. You do, you're in a good position now. You're, you're in third place in the race. You're on for some good points. You do not want to be getting a penalty this late on while you're coming past the back marker. That would just be chucking it away. Oh, it would just be... You, you'd struggle to get ready for race, don't I mean, you wouldn't... Not that you'd be back in the cast, but you'd be... I, w I will say, I've just looked on, Bath A have a track limit warning and a uh, contact warning. So any so more Bath little need incursions? To be very careful. Later, let's not have the championship decided by a penalty. I really hope not, that would not be good, but if it happens, it happens. 12 minutes to go, so Tom Ince keep the nose clean. Is it? two warnings and then a penalty or is it three and then a penalty because i've just found that bath have two contact warnings so i'm not sure i think it's two and then the third one is a penalty i want to say so i think they're definitely on their last warning for um uh for contact i think only one warning so far for track limits now looking down this little list as far as i can zoom out i can't see any uh for reading so Reading have been keeping it nice and clean uh, in this one, for now anyway. We'll keep an eye on it as best we can. How long's left? Nearly going into the final 10 minutes of this first endurance race of round number eight of the British, uh, British University's Karting Championship. As we bring the entire season to a close, there is your race leader, Adam Nather, still about nine seconds in the lead in this one, is Adam. He is ploughing on very, very nicely. And he just needs to be consistent. Like slowly pick his way through the traffic, and, and he's all good. Bring the cart home. That's all he needs to do now. Extra A. Yeah. Not quite just bringing the cart, the cart home. It's an advantage by contact bump and pass penalty, unfortunately, for Exeter A. Indeed, not ideal. Currently sitting in 11th place, our Exeter. That's going to drop them even further down when the running order is finalised at the end of the race and penalties are applied. Lancaster A having a good race. They've just overtaken UCLAN A for seventh overall. So we're focused on the battle between Reading A and Bath A for, uh, for the win in the Premier Championship here. But we've still got the clubmans going on. So uh, Lancaster A currently in seventh place overall. Just trying to see if Warwick A, Warwick B are in this race. I don't think Warwick A are in this race. No, they're not. So. Warwick B still very close, second of the club of runners on circuit, 10th overall at the moment, but Lancaster A are putting in a good benchmark here to say, all right, Warwick, let's see what you can yeah, do. I think we've scared them a little bit with our with our lunchtime. By the way, Warwick's ahead, and it, they've responded. They have responded. Yeah, fair play. They've, uh, they were a little, they were very off colour at Warden Law. They've been a little bit off colour compared to what we saw in the first few rounds, uh, even here today, but they've definitely picked it back up again here, here at Wilton. And when it oh, that's a big Ooh. hit, oh my goodness, between the 14, I think that was the 14 and the, I was going to say the, uh, the 11, but I think it was the 10. Um, 
has that changed? The 11 Birmingham A yeah. tumbling down. They've come in the pits potentially of Birmingham. Uh, or are they going to come through? They must have come in the pits, surely. I'm very confused with that. Anyway, the number 14 Lopper B went steam training into the back of someone there into the last corner. Uh, so far from ideal. It's not going to help either of you. Um, but Birmingham A still dropping down the order. Of course, the pit window still open for another four and a half minutes. So we'll wait and see uh, if they come through. Uh, and they do. There you go, 1 minute 33. So just a bit of a late pit stop there for Birmingham. They rejoin in 17th place. Glad to see the Birmingham squad carrying on. Wasn't the fastest pit stop in the world, but of course they did also have that little kind of skirmish into that final corner, which won't have helped that lap time. Reading it. Sorry, I was just going to say that was it. It was the 10 of Nottingham Trent A right. who were down yep. in 28th at the moment. So I think it was them that got uh, a little bit blindsided there by the Lucky B card. We are very much enjoying this race at the moment. And I think, to be honest, there's a lot going on throughout the field. We're enjoying the sort of scanning throughout, uh, throughout the field and enjoying the racing action overall. Uh, now, Oxford Brooks A and Reading A are quite close, so uh, a battle between the two and the 13 could be on relatively soon. Last time over the line, maybe about a second in between them, so that's looking to be our highest placed battle as they come across the line uh, once more. That Oxford gap Brooks A has just matched yeah. Reading A's fastest lap of the race to the thousandth. Wow! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's 55. amazing! 55.976 by Oxford Brooks A, Reading A set it before. I was about to say the fact that Oxford Brooks had actually extended that gap on that last lap, but I can see how they managed to do that there, <laughs> matching the fastest time of the race. Unbelievable stuff from the driver of the number two. Here's the number 13, the Thomas Fleming Reading A, the one trying to chase down Oxford Brooks A. But considering they've now done identical fastest lap times, it's, uh, it's probably going to be a bit of a challenge. But equally, Reading don't need to worry about where Oxford Brooks are coming. Their main focus is Bath, and Bath are still behind them. Slow pit stop there for Warwick B, actually. One minute 44 on that last Ooh. lap. They've basically added another lap to their to their, uh, to their their race there. That's not ideal at all. No, that is far from ideal. I mean, towards the end of the endurance race, you've, you've also got the element of... You've only got so many people with you on, on the day to, to help the team or help drive or whatever. People are trying to get prepped to get ready to jump in the cars for the next race. Yeah. So, you're trying to split your team between getting people ready to jump in a car in race two and also still deal with any late pit stops that might be left. And that's where you could be at a bit of an advantage if you're a team such as Oxford Brooks where you've got a D, an E, an F, even a G <laughs> team. You've got so many people there to come and help. And then another team, say Huddersfield, you've just got the one, you've just got the A team. Yeah. So way less people to help and that could put you at a bit of a disadvantage in a situation like this. As you say, just not having uh, those hands around to, to assist with, with everything that's going on in the pit stop and everyone's still getting ready for, for their races to come. I do remember a few years back, Liverpool, uh, the team member, Charles Maynard name, one of our fastest drivers eliminated himself from the 24-hour race on the first pit stop by helping out with a pit, with a pit stop, another driver coming in and he grabbed the engine grabbed the car Ow. by, I think, the exhaust. <laughs> and that was him out of yeah. the running there. Yeah, the hand was rather blistered. Like that. Yes, Reading A there with a 55.851. Now the time is wow. still coming down there. Wow, yeah, Reading A went, yeah, you think that's a fast lap? I'll do one even faster. Thank you, said Thomas Fleming. He's still not caught. Oxford Brooks A that gap's been no, Brooks pretty similar. similar. 56 0 0 yeah, on that last the lap. the second fastest car on circuit, aren't they? But again, Adam Nather in Sheffield A is just doing enough to keep this gap at a nice seven, eight seconds. He's just a couple of tenths a lap he's losing to them, but with a huge gap like that over these uh, drivers in second and third, he's doing exactly what he needs to. Mechanical flag for oh. Southampton B. That is, uh, yeah, far from ideal for Southampton B. Uh, where are they currently on the timing screen? They are... I can't, oh, they're 31st at the moment at Southampton B, so that's going to yeah. drop them likely to 35th at, at last uh, for them, sadly. Something wrong with the car. Uh, and it could also be, not only the car, it could be the driver as well. Uh, yeah, they could, could be get in, yeah. uh, their helmet could not be done up correctly, their visor could be broken in some way, or it could be something to do with the car, maybe the exhaust has come off, uh, all sorts of different things. So either way, the meatball flag comes out. Sheffield, A, overtake on the yellows penalty. Ah. Your leaders have just got a penalty with five minutes to go. Oh my goodness, that's close things in the wide open. For Sheffield. 
Yeah, Sheffield, what a race it's been for Adam Nather, but as we said earlier, one little mistake and that can ruin everything. Overtake on the yellows penalty for Sheffield A. Hey, unbelievable. Right, well, Oxford Brooks A look to now be in the lead of the race. Now I've got to try and remember how many positions lost is an overtake on the yellows. And do Oxford Brooks A have a penalty? It's a very good point as well. I it's a very seem good to remember a Brooks car getting a penalty early on. There are so many of them, though. Yeah, that's, 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 the, the that's the other problem. Uh, my memory could be failing me. That's very much not out of the question here. No, exactly. Well, I, um, I would definitely haven't seen uh, a penalty uh, for Reading or Bath in this race. No, they've been very well behaved. As they should be. And I mean, now Reading have now cleared the Bath cards by 17 seconds. That's unbelievable, the pace uh, that... Uh, that, that Reading A car is putting down. Thomas Fleming is getting some serious pace. You out are that being car at the asked moment. to power up oh. on the comms. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. That'll be uh, that'll be the the, pe the kind people I work with. I see. That car sim telling me to power up. Well, this race has got powered up now with the Sheffield A overtake on the yellows penalty. This has been uh, an exciting one. There is uh, the 13 of Reading A just putting another lap on the number 11 car. That's Birmingham A in 16th place at the moment, but. Of course, we're heading into the last three and a half minutes now. Um, interesting. And Edinburgh A have just been overtaken by Bath A and Lancaster A, and they've not come across the line. Oh, they've just come across the line now. A one one minute 12. 12. They, 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 we're not in the pit window. Pit That's what I was about to say. Yeah. We're not in the pit window. Yeah. The pit window closed with five minutes to go. That was not a pit stop. Edinburgh A have done a one minute 12. UConn A have done a one minute four. So no issues on track I think there. that they've come together in some capacity there, of Edinburgh and UConn, and they've dropped. Uh, down a couple of places each. So that's actually now given Bath uh, another opportunity. They're back up to fourth place. So this could potentially be a third uh, for Reading, a fourth for Bath. Of course, they've got to think as well. Sheffield have that penalty. Is that going to uh, come into play as well? Do Oxford Brooks have a penalty? All of this could be wide it open. UCLan A with a black flag. Oh. UCLan A unsafe release. So there you go. That's what it was. Yep. UCLan A unsafe release back on circuit. And we can think we can assume there got in the way of Edinburgh A. And of course, them to drop a few positions, and yeah, you can't. That eight. is their race finished Black pretty flag. much. Race basically done. And even say. if Brooks A doesn't have a penalty, they certainly got the pressure from Reading A now within a second behind, really pushing on, have been pushing on throughout this stint. Have Tom Fleming, and now we're going to have this battle in the final few minutes of the race. Indeed, well, the two of Oxford Brooks A actually using uh, the number five to sort of push through the air and, and using the slipstream. And that, of course, is the Oxford Brooks B cart. So the two Oxford Brooks carts working together well as the uh, A cart now starting to be under a bit of past, pressure. We've seen Oxford Brooks carts working together in the past at Wilton Mill. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Probably less said about that, the better. Yeah. Uh, let's hope that they're all fair and they're working together. Of course oh, they Christmas will Christmas corner they go. And yeah, just give us a thumbs up as Brooks B is, uh, allows Brooks A through. Now, this is where it's going to be interesting. How easily is Thomas Fleming able to get through here? Well done to the Oxford Brooks B car. Holds the line down the inside goes Thomas Fleming. We still have a battle on our hands here for second place. Uh, of course, this isn't a battle for second place because uh, Adam Nather in Sheffield A has a penalty for sure. We don't know how many positions he's going to lose, but it's definitely at least one, which will mean whoever's ahead in this battle is going to win the race. So after 59 minutes of racing, it comes down to this. I think we'll have two laps left to go, just two laps left to go in this race. And Oxford Brooks A lead us on to the penultimate lap of this first enduro of round number eight. So it comes down to this, ladies and gentlemen, 55 minutes of battling and the race has turned on its head in the final five now. Just a reminder, this championship fight in the Prems, it's between Reading and Bath. Reading currently ahead of Bath. The Clubmans, it's between Warwick and Lancaster. Warwick with that surprise turnaround in Fortune, it's currently Lancaster ahead by quite some margin as they try and claw it back and turn that around. Once again, black flag now for Bristol A. ABC bump and pass. Yeah, far from ideal in the die moments of the race. Black flag, as you said earlier, for the uh, black flag for you, Clan. That's pretty much race over, isn't it, really? You're going to lose so much time yeah. basically doing if an extra have, pit stop. If you have an issue early on, as we see, will the time just 
we just about make it onto the next lap. No, it's the last lap. Yeah. Last lap of the race then. Thomas Fleming has one more lap of this Wiltermill International Kart Circuit to try and grab the win here and set his team up for a fantastic afternoon and set his team up for a potential championship win. Bath are there and thereabouts, but not quite close enough to get involved with this battle. Will Reading sit back, take the points, and think, there we go, we're, we're, as, we're, as long as we're finishing ahead of Bath, it's no problem. Or will Thomas Fleming think, hey, a win's on the cards here, I might as well go for it. Will he know that there's a win on the cards? Of course, it only is on the cards because Sheffield, they had that penalty. It's difficult enough focusing on your own race, let alone watching out for penalties of the drivers around you. Oh, I thought that was going to be the move into the boot there. He just set up the car as if there was a potential move down the inside, but it wasn't going to happen. Adam Nathan's already come across the line to finish the race then, but it's going to be Oxford Brooks A who take the win after penalties. And the number 13 of Redigay there in third with Barthé in fourth. Well, they haven't come across the line yet because they're a good 30 seconds behind the leader. They've actually only got two tenths between themselves and Lancaster. So potentially Lancaster could cause a bit of an upset here on the last lap of the race. I think this is them coming around the final corner now. Who's going to finish ahead? Because this could matter towards the main championship. It's just going to be Bath A. Less than two tenths of a second uh, between Bath A and Lancaster across the line there. But again, what a race from Lancaster. That's really helping with their push yep, towards is. the clubman standings. Because, of course, don't forget, Warwick A weren't in that race at all. They'll be in race two and race three. So they're really laying down the court. That's, there, a, statement. They, Lancaster That's a statement from Lancaster A there, saying we need business. Let's fight until the end. Let's have a look. Lancaster A will be in race two as well as Warwick. That's when those two will cross paths. Nice. Of course, Warwick will be in race three, rounding out the day's running. And then it will be the lonely run in race three where you don't even have the other cart to, to work yourself against. You just know, right, we need to get in this position. We need to do this mm. uh, to press on towards that championship win. But I think that was a really, really good first endurance race of the afternoon. I thoroughly enjoyed that. It had, um, it had excitement all the way through, lots of batting throughout the field. But look at that gap, that's ridiculous. Sheffield A win the race, five seconds behind are Oxford Brooks A and Reading A, and then 25 seconds behind that is pretty much the rest of the field. Bath A in fourth, with Lancaster A in fifth, Edinburgh A in sixth, the Loughborough B seventh, then Exeter A eighth, Manchester A ninth, and Loughborough D rounded out the top ten. Then it was their sister team of Loughborough A in eleventh place, with Swansea A, good race from them in twelfth place, Brighton A in thirteenth, and that was the last of your runners on the leader's lap. Birmingham A were the first of the carts to be lapped there in 14th place. 15th with Oxford Brooks B, then Lancaster B behind, Comedy B, Leeds A, UCLAN A and Leeds B. Fair play to UCLAN, they got a black flag and still finished 19th. So it's not, bad. not a bad effort there, uh, but 19th place. Although it could have been, I think, around a top five, top six. So definitely a lot lost there for UCLAN. Sheffield B were in 21st with Warwick B behind them, then Coventry E, Nottingham Trent A, Swansea B, Southampton C and Sheffield C. And then finalising all the finishes then in that one were UWE A, Cardiff C, Bath C, Bristol A, Leicester A, UWE B, Birmingham B and Southampton B. Your 35 runners there in race number one of the Enduros for round eight of the British Universities Karting Championship for 2023 and 2024. I think that was a really exciting one and sets us up for a very exciting race number two. But before we get on to race number two, we're going to head back down to the dummy grid to see Piers Pryor. Here we are with our winner on the road, potentially get a penalty, but you don't think you got one? No, yeah, the guy had pointed me through and the yellow had literally just got in. We were side by side coming on the straight, the yellow had come in and we, he's just pointed me through, so I think they, yeah, I think they might, that might get changed. I yeah. think they're just finding him now. Very good, uh, very good result regardless, you drove very good and also I saw your second pit stop, which was you to you, slick as hell. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I started karting in the club under endurance, so because I, I started off endurance, I'm quite used to the pit stop, so for me it's quite just second nature now so it's quite quick adam congratulations another good result for yourself and a sheffield we'll see we'll see if that gets uh what gets uh, remaining uh why don't we grab uh, alfie alfie prince for oxford brooks a that was uh, second on the road potentially first because sheffield got a penalty but they might get it rescinded because apparently the dude who got the penalty against said that it didn't do it anyway second on the road good result all right fair enough i thought we had a penalty as well but unless that's been rescinded then oh maybe we missed that but i was about to say because for a while i was sitting there thinking sheffield have got a penalty Oxford Brooks are going to win an endurance race. What's going on? No, and I didn't make a pit stop, which is, I didn't make an extra pit stop. That helps. They didn't let me do an extra pit stop. <laughs> but 
Yeah, it was good. It was very good indeed. Anyway, I'll let you uh, go and celebrate with your team, get, get yourself weighed, and we'll bring in uh, our champions elect, I would say. I think it would take an absolute disaster in the final one. I don't want to jinx it for Reading to lose out, but third place on the road, potentially second, maybe even first. Well, the results, we don't know, but a good, a good race for yourselves. Well, I was told by the guys on the pit wall, you know, like, you're fighting Prince for a position. Don't know which position. And I came across the line, and I'm still behind him, and they're giving me the P1 finger, thinking, you know, am I actually first? I remember how Oxford Brooks A got a penalty early on. I don't know about uh, Sheffield, though, but pff, incredible, to be honest. It was an awesome race. We started P30. Um, I did, like, almost the equivalent of 50 minutes in the cart. Um, after a 10-minute turnover between race six, I'm absolutely finished. But, um, yeah, Dan did an awesome job, you know, kept the pace up really well and kept um, Bathe behind us. I don't know where they finished. Do you know where they finished? Uh, they weren't far behind in terms of positions. I think they, you dropped them a little bit. I'm not sure how many pieces uh, people were in between you, but it was basically a direct fight between you. Apparently, I'm hearing in my ear, it's fourth place they got. Um, so, uh, again, that's on the road. So, to be, to be confirmed uh, provisionally. So, um, yeah, you did very well, of course. Uh, that's about as good as it really could have gone. Yeah, yeah to be honest, you know, first place uh, is probably, I mean, I don't know about you, it's arguably the best place to be in. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm super happy with it, of course. Um, it, I'm so proud of, like, how far we've come, you know, uh, over the last couple of years. So if we can win the championship, that'll be awesome. But, you know, even if there is a disaster that's waiting for us in the next endurance, I, you know, I'm so proud of everyone. So. Well, I'm hearing in my ear that as far as we're concerned, the result is Reading A first and uh, Bath A second it's in that race. So there you go. Booyakasha. There we go. Anyway, Reading A winning that one as far as we're confirmed, concerned. Again, we'll say provisional. I think it's been confirmed, but we'll say provisional. Keep an eye on the results to alphatiming.co.uk forward slash BUKC website to see those results be updated throughout the day. But we're now turning our attention to the second race of the afternoon. Race two of three this afternoon for round eight of the BUKC. And it's another endurance, this time uh, with a new set of drivers. We've both got Bath and Reading out again in this one, I believe. So looking forward to seeing them do battle once again. Effectively, it's, it's Reading's to lose now. Uh, they need only not to have a terrible result and Bath re realistically need to win it and hope that Reading have uh, misfortune, which I'm sure they would never do. But let's look ahead and chat to some of the drivers who are on coming. Let's uh, grab a word with number 36. We chatted to you this morning. Remind us who you are, who you're racing for. Uh, Callum Howes, race for Leicester A. Callum, uh, were Leicester in that first endurance? They were, yeah, yeah. We did um, not great. We finished, I think, 33rd on the road. So, uh, yeah, we had some problems in the pit stop. So uh, that's, that's what brought us down. So, OK, uh, what was the problem in the pit stop? Well, we came in three times because uh, one of our drivers hurt his arm. So we wanted ah. to swap. However, the second driver wasn't ready yet. So he had to carry on going. Ah, uh, not ideal. Yeah, not ideal. <laughs> but you're going to do a slick two-stop strategy in this one, I assume? I'm hoping so. I'm meant to be doing it with George. However, he's sitting inside because he feels sick at the moment. So, um, <laughs> OK, he's going well I'm for Leicester. He's got to be feeling better by the time I come back in. You've got a, <laughs> a bit of a, a wounded team then. You've got one driver with a hurt arm and yeah, one driver's yeah, feeling I'm, not the best. I'm, I'm hoping I'm not going to have to do a 55-minute race because I don't know if I'll be able to endure it. Right. You can do that. You're you're a big strong man. I'll let you, I'll leave you to it so you can get yourself in your get your self in the mental frame of mind to potentially do an hour straight uh, why don't we work further down the grid I want to chat to some more people I haven't chatted to we grabbed a word with La uh, Lancaster 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 yeah Lancaster earlier on um, who else have we got here why don't we grab this driver with the Italiano flag on come on in let's grab a word number three remind us who you are and who you're racing for this must be Southampton yep Southampton hey Jonathan Dalton um, I got a win on track this morning but uh, a couple of penalties so not ideal and uh, it went all wrong for us so now we're just trying to salvage what we can with on it. the fight back yeah exactly well we got number three last year we don't really want number four or five so that's all we want and uh, as you mentioned you got a very quick race this morning a win on the road but a couple of penalties you've learned from your mistakes uh, well it's dry now so hopefully I won't uh, clip that curb a little bit but um, I don't I don't think I'll gain any advantage from it so uh, just try my best get through the field hopefully and uh, hand it over to Will who got a win earlier as well where is Will? Will, Will do you want to come on? Come on in, we'll have a quick uh, quick word with you before this one. We're uh, expecting you guys to be quick in this one. Uh, you're doing the second half of the race? Yeah, I think Jono's going to come in around 35 to 40. I don't know why I'm giving away tactics, but um, yeah, hopefully we can have a better afternoon than the morning went. I got a win this morning, so 
Yeah, that was all right, I suppose. You're just like, I got a win. The, guy, the other guys didn't. But no, it's good. Um, I suppose you guys are just trying to try, damage limitation at this point. Yeah, exactly. I think we'll just do the best we can and hopefully maybe we can get a top three in the championship. I think the... I think the top in the championship's gone now yeah. and that's too far away well it is it's un you, you can't win the championship yeah okay well done to Reading I guess or Bath or Bath technically still up for grabs but it's basically uh, unless Reading have an absolute stinker and Bath win I think I'm not sure the the ins and outs they'll uh, go through it in the commentary but you're going to still try and fight for that third position if you can yeah exactly we'll give it our best shot but uh, yeah well done to both teams Reading and Bath they've driven well all year they have done I'll leave you guys to your pre-race tactics and we'll work further down the grid and grab some grab some chats with some drivers that maybe won't be winning the championship hello there how are you who are you who are you racing for uh harris warburton imperial eight imperial eight. have we chatted this year on the stream yet um uh, not with me no not with you in which case uh, talk to us how's your year been what you've been up to uh, when you're not karting how's the karting been going all that good stuff uh it's my my last year of bukc oh um and it's not been great to be honest uh yeah today and and this today's been really bad for everyone so Every time we come to Wilton, something goes wrong. So, Well, you can turn it around now in your final race in the BUKC. Yes, I will try to. I'll try to. Uh, we, we always end up off on the exit of turn two. So well, why not set yourself you know, a short-term goal? Don't go off on the exit of turn two. And the rest... At least for lap one. I'll try. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'll see how you get on on that. We'll keep an eye on number 54. They'll see if they uh, end up in the uh, in the mud on the exit of turn two. And uh, who else have we got here? Let's uh, let's roll on. Let's roll in here with Tom Law. You know, I really find it helpful when people have their name on the side of their helmet. It's really really useful for me. Um, you're number 23. Who are you racing for? Uh, Surrey A. Surrey A. Um, how's Surrey Surrey's day been? So uh, morning was excellent. We were P10 overall, and um, that put us far enough of, um, ahead of uh, Coventry B and Leeds B. So uh, we should be third in Clubman's quite happily in the overall championship. Happy days, happy days. And what can you do this afternoon? Just going out for some fun? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the strategy was I start from the back and try and push through. Meanwhile, our next team gets third in the final race. So, um, but yeah, uh, we've pretty much got third in Clubman, so now we're just going to have a bit of fun to finish off the season. Excellent. And uh, sorry, pit stops good or not so good? We've uh, we talk about it all the time. We uh, uh, you talk, but is that much doing? Well, we're pretty sure we're the reason that we only allowed one other person because we used to have four pushers at the same time. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we're confident in the pit stops. Well, we'll see how sorry we get on. So, oh, I nearly fall over again. That would have been the third time this season. Uh, well, why don't we walk back up the grid for a, a quick chat with some final drivers before we head out for the second race of this afternoon. I'm going to jump in here with Mr. Patel for the M Sport Racing, M -Sport Racing Team. Hello, who are you and who are you racing for? Um, I'm Vishal Patel and I'm racing for Loughborough A. Loughborough A? Yeah. Loughborough, has had, Loughborough A's a good pace today. I think they've been right up with Loughborough B pretty much throughout the day. And um, yeah, talk to us. Yeah, this morning was quite good. Um, I came third on track, but was able to take the win because of penalties. Um, so yeah, we'll just try and replicate that this time. Who are you uh, partnering your cart with in this race? I am partnering my cart with, I, I don't even know, who's actually my partner for this race? I've got no clue, but someone's going to hop in. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll hope for the best. We'll hope for the best indeed. Right, I think it's about time we went racing for the penultimate time today. Another one hour endurance race, voiced by Reeve and John. Thank you very much, Piers. So here we are then, race two. The championship comes down to this. So let's have a look at the grid then for this all-important race. The first row, it's Trent A and Oxford Brooks B. Second row being Sheffield C and Exeter A. Row three, it's Leeds B and Reading A. It is UWB and Leicester A on row four. Bath A and Warwick B on row five. Uclan A and Southampton C on row six. Row seven is Coventry B and Sheffield B. Row eight is Lancaster A and Birmingham B. Row nine is Loughborough A and Portsmouth A. Moving on to the 10th row, it's Liverpool B and Cambridge A. Row 11 is Southampton A and Coventry F. Row 12 is Huddersfield A and Cardiff A. Moving on to row 13, Warwick A and Sheffield B, with row 14 being Imperial A and Liverpool C. Row 15, it's Imperial B, and then row 16, it's Liverpool A and Surrey A. Row 17, Coventry A and Brunel A, rounding out the field for this 34-car grid. So then, cart on the grid, ready to go. 
for another hour. It's the same again. Just look at the wind battering the uh, flags down by the side there. I can't imagine it is uh, particularly warm if you're sat in the pit lane waiting for your team to come in. It looks like the wind's gotten worse and worse throughout the day. It, it sounds like it's getting stronger and stronger Prefer, every I'm, time. I'm sure if you asked any team, would you rather trade the wind for rain, oh, they'd say yeah, no. Thousand so, percent, thousand yeah. percent. I will say as well, clearly the Sheep's not fans of endurance racing because they've all gone. They have, so, yes. Sadly, uh, yeah, Good clearly. Clearly, the, the, the Northampton's uh, sheep population, not a fan of endurance racing. I wouldn't recommend wet to them. Is that people waving at the camera to the left there? Or they I think probably at their driver. Yeah, probably at their <laughs> driver, yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably more, uh, more the case. But yes, of course, uh, in the, the running this morning uh, for our sprint races, for every race, the drivers are out for the first time of the day. So they get three laps of practice. But for these enduros in the afternoon, no practice, you're just straight out there, straight into a race start, which is so, so difficult to do. But as you can see here, the drivers are trying to get as much tyre um, temperature into those tyres as possible. And uh, doing a good job of it. There's Andrew Mather again down at the last corner telling everyone uh, to bunch up right into this final section of corners. So hopefully we're ready to go for a start. First time of asking, as you said, Reeve, front row, Trent A and Brooks B. But we look a little bit further back, that's where we're looking. Reading A in sixth, Bath A in ninth. This is the all important race to decide the championship for 2023 and 2024. Off we go then for race number two of the Enduros in the afternoon. And it is the number 10 who leads us through. And all drivers managing to make it through the first couple of corners. So Trent A take the lead early on for a good pole position start. Bath A down the inside of a couple of drivers there up at Christmas corner. Trying to make a few places up, but they can't do it. They get nerfed back out wide on the exit. Three, four wide as they head into that right hander down towards Ashby. This is already close. Crash at the front, someone has spun, someone has spun just off camera. Drivers trying to avoid and keep out of their... Oh my goodness, that was close. Right, anyway, we move on to the rest of the lap then. It's still Trent A who lead the race. I think, actually, the, the spinner near the front was probably turned back round yeah, by I someone think, else. I, I think they 360 and just about worked their way through it there. Bath as we saw, elbows out, they need to be there. A few places down on Reni A at the start of this race and a point down so far in round eight as we head back through the last corner again here. Ooh. It knows someone is off and it's off big time, planted in a tyre wall. Ooh, that is, uh, that's an odd one. I that's think that's at Ashby, involved. yeah, two drivers involved. I think down at Ashby, potentially, I'm trying to, think, trying to see where that is on the circuit. I think it is down at Ashby. We'll wait and see where they come around again because we'll have yellow flags throughout the section. But currently, Reading A in third, Bath A in fifth as we start this race. Now, yellow flags up into Christmas Corner. Potentially, it's before they even get to uh, to Ashby. Drivers thinking of moves at Ashby, so it's definitely not down there. So maybe even earlier. Ah, oh, there they are. Look. Oh, so it's on the exit of Christmas. That's such a weird place to go off. Also, how do we not even see that on that camera angle? Anyway, there's been a big off on the exit of Christmas uh, through Boxing Day. And yet yeah, two carts. Uh, I can tell you that that is Portsmouth A and Cambridge A that have come together there uh, on lap number one. Yeah, tumbling down the order. That was a blistering uh, opening lap for Nottingham Trent. I almost had 59 second opening lap. Very impressive. Yes. Also, Bath A have got past Sheffield C already. So already bringing the fight to we're Reading. back to where we were in the first endurance race with Reading leading Bath. So here we go. One point separates them after the first race. It can be turned around by Bath A. It will be close. It's, it's going to take Bath A doing incredibly well, taking the race victory, and it's going to take Reading to have a disaster here, which we got an hour of racing. Anything can happen. Yes. Yeah, basically, if Reading A finish ahead of Bath A in this race, no matter what position they're in, they're going to win the title. Yeah. They are going to win the title. It needs to be Bath A up in the sharp end of the positions and Reading A sort of outside of the top 10, down in the team positions for it all to still be on here. And then the spreadsheet do comes out and we try and work out what's going on because not only does it matter where they finish in this race, if it does, if it is opened up, something goes wrong for Reading, it's then going to be decided by where everyone else finishes yeah. in this round to determine where they finish at the end of this round, what championship points they get added on to their total. It's still all to play for, but you're watching number 13 and number four throughout this race. Again, that's the Prems we're looking at. Clubman's as well is still up for grabs. Both the Clubman's uh, title challengers are in this race. Warwick A are currently in 24th place. Lancaster A currently in 30th place. So it's not going too Back well for either of them at the moment. 
course, Warwick still has another race after this. But yes. This is Lancaster's last opportunity to show that they can still fight for the championship here. All of this courtesy of Andrew Spreading to do, which seems to have been reliable for me. But yeah. I, just, I just get the impression that it's, it's been good so far, and then towards the end of the day, it's going to declare Liverpool C the the <laughs> championship victors. <laughs> You're going to commentators curse the Spreading to boom. Uh. Wouldn't be shocked. About a minute until that pit window opens. Of course, what we saw off race one, in case you missed it, was it was the early pit stop is what you want to go for. You want to go for that little bit of the undercut. Yeah. That seemed to work that wonders. Did. Yeah, it did seem to work very well. I've just seen there that Fraser Brunton for Cardiff A in the number seven has now cleared this gaggle. Uh, he's made it up into sixth place now, but because yeah, it's taken a little while, the drivers ahead have been able to scamper away a little bit. He finds himself with about three, three and a half seconds between himself and Uclan A. They're in fifth place at the moment. Of course, Uclan getting that black flag right at the end of race number one. Put themselves down to, I think it was 19th. Uh, by the chequered flag. So they're looking for a good race here in their uh, second and final race of the day. And of course, second and final race of the championship. As there's a cone penalty for Exeter A and a mechanical flag for Warwick B. Ooh. That is Warwick B. Ah, is that a cone? Have they munched a cone? <laughs> is that why they've got a mechanical flag? Do you reckon they're going to hit them with a cone penalty as well? Just for, <laughs> yeah. for, just for insult to injury? I think so. If it is, uh, yeah, they're, they're crawling up into the pit entry there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it was what I was seeing under the cart there. Uh, was a uh, was a cone. I've just seen one driver definitely go wide out the final corner there. As we've been told uh, now, you're not allowed any tyres on the rumble strip on the exit of the final nope. corner. And then on the exit of turn number two, you can have two wheels over the white line on the exit, not four. So that's why we've been seeing uh, so many uh, so many penalties coming throughout the day. We're just hearing in our ear, Reading in the pits by the sounds of things. Wow. Oh, ah. Okay, right. okay. Reading up into the lead of the race. Uh, impressive Sorry. stuff. So, yeah, they were only just ahead of Bath, weren't they? But now they've cleared Trent A and Brooks B. They have, yeah. I heard the words Reading first in my ear <laughs> and then looked on the transponder and saw that there was a blip sat in the pit lane. I was like, ooh! Got too excited, yeah. too excited. I mean, the window is now open. We're 30, 45 yeah. seconds into the window, so it, it was a possibility. Uh, but no, Reading A charging to the front of the field in this one. As we said, the only way that Bath could be involved with a shout here was if Reading had a shocker. And this is, I think, what you could consider the absolute opposite of a shocker. Yeah, Exeter A not been a successful afternoon for them so far. This penalty they've had to serve as well. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Track limits warning Change of the lead well. down the inside goes the number 10 through, follows the number 5, so it changes again. Nottingham Trent A back to the lead, Brooks B back to second place, and again relegating Reading back into third. But they don't need to worry too much as long as they're up in this scrap for the lead. They have no, no worries at all. Uh, Bath there, you can see there, just close behind. Not quite close enough to get involved with this battle just yet, though. They need to start up in that pace ever so slightly. We can already see down in P29, Fraser Brunton put in a mega drive at the end of the morning's running, and he's looking to try and replicate that. Is that still Fraser Brunton in it the past? Yeah, it is, it is. One minute 17 pit. pit stop. That's a, if, he, he's definitely still in the car, I'll tell you yes, that much. I was going to say, yeah. I doubt they've done a driver change that quickly. Not a chance. No, Fraser, well, I don't want to give the tactics away, but uh, he'll be doing a long stint in this one. Yeah, you've got to put the quick driver in for as long yes. as possible, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. So I don't know who's the poor person on the Cardiff team who has to do the five-minute slot at the end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, poor lad. Has paid the same amount of money and gets barely any running in the afternoon. But it is what it is. You do it for the team because it matters uh, towards the championship push. And with how well Cardiff did this morning, second on the podium uh, across round number seven this morning, has bumped them up to, I think it was fourth overall in the championship. So they're looking really on for a good result here. Uh, so if they can secure a good result here this afternoon, they're, they're on for a yep. great you end to the championship. So fourth overall in the championships, only six point down on Coventry A, wow. ahead of Southampton A, when all is said and done. Fantastic, it's been a yeah. very strong day for them, of course, Southampton in that championship mix. Move for the lead, down the inside, Oxford Brooks B this time taking the lead of the race. So previously, the last race, we had a lot of working together, a lot of relaxed drivers uh, just pushing on, knowing it's an endurance race, but that's not happening in this one. There goes Bath, they passed a back marker as they continue to try and press on towards these top three, but these top three, not working together maybe as much as they could be. 
And Reading A still at the back of these three. We've got a couple more drivers into the pits then. 51 and the eight in the pits at the moment. That's Oxford Brooks D and Coventry A. I think Warwick B, uh, of course, Warwick B are in the pits with that mechanical flag. And they've been in there for, uh, I think they've only just come in. So it's taken them a little while to serve that mechanical flag of Warwick B. But uh, they're in nonetheless. It might um, hopefully being given a new cut. That might have been some clever tactics there, thinking, well, can we extend as long as possible with the flag being waved, dive into the pits, well, do our pit stop with the mechanical. If it was that one that had the cone, I thought was a cone stuck under it, they might have just gotten stuck on the entrance to the pits. That's what we saw them get to. Ah. That could have maybe caused some issues uh, in and of itself. Maybe uh, if Piers can hear us potentially getting an update on what happened there with the mechanical flag with Warwick B, and if we're what if we're right in our assumption that there was a cone under there or, or something, we'd love to know, Piers. Anyway, there's a black flag out on circuit. First time in this race for Coventry F. No reason given on the live timing. But either way, they're going to have to come back in the pits. Look at this battle for the lead, though. Oh, my goodness. Trent A thinking about it on the inside, down into the boots. It doesn't happen, though. I've just seen... It just said Loughborough A, black flag. Oh, they have had a, they have had they a black have, flag. Yes. Loughborough A. F that, was, Loughborough a. <laughs> that was Vishal Patel, I think, in the seat for Loughborough A. So he's a very well-known carter in the owner club scene. I know he does Wilton Mill Cart Club. So unusual for someone with that much knowledge of karting to be getting a black flag. Five minutes into the pit window. Now here we are seeing two cars leaving the pit. Bath A. Bath, yeah, Bath A are one of them. So Bath going for that earlier stop than the close rival. The only rival that matters to them in the race. This is a pivotal moment now. They've got, I'm not going to say they've got an undercut. It's not changing tire got rounds, things like that as such. It's not really an undercut, but they've got, they could have an advantage here. They've got a quick driver in now if they can settle into this race. So this is a crucial stage for them. This is very crucial, especially for the fact that Reading A are at the back of a three-car train. So they can only do the pace of the drivers ahead of them. I imagine that's a very good pace. These are three drivers right at the front of the order of this race. But equally, still potentially being held up just a little. Maybe they'll play into Barthay's hands. Maybe they can jump them. It was a good stop for Barthay. It was a 121. Yeah, that's a yeah that stop. is good. That is good. We didn't quite see if they changed drive or not. I wasn't sure. No, we cut it just at the very end as they were being pushed away. And potentially, I mean, what's that, four seconds slower than Fraser? Maybe it is still the same driver in the car. Maybe they're doing a similar strategy, going very long in this one. Yes. But we're basically now all eyes on Reading A, aren't we, for when they come into the pit. When do they decide yeah. to pull the trigger here? They've got, what, just under 14 minutes left to go at this pit window. It's Your still a while eye... to make that decision. Your eyes can be on, on what Reading A are doing. My eyes can be on what Bath A are doing. Move for the lead, down the inside, Nottingham Trent A retake the lead as they head into the final couple of corners. And it did look as though Reading A were trying to follow them through as they came through the boot section. They're going to be coming across the line uh, pretty soon. Here they are then. And it is still Brooks in the lead. Nothing changed. Trent A went for the move, but weren't able to make it stick. And there's Reading A. So there has been a bit of time loss there as well. They've dropped a bit off the back there. Number 10 down the inside. Nottingham Trent on the number 12. So this is a back marker that they're trying to get past. Uh, where is the number 12? That's Loughborough A in 25th, of course, because Loughborough got that black flag earlier. Lafayette coming across the line in just a moment. This should be the first proper representative lap time. It's a 56.9. That's a fairly strong showing, matching Reading A actually at this stage. Um, that's the minimum that they need to do, really, at this point. You need to be either catching or matching. It's a tall order to match a, a, a mid to high 56, but... Impressive. Impressive stuff. I think that driver was trying to come in the pits. They found themselves on the inside. Yeah, they did. So that was one of the drivers involved with the earlier incident. It was Cambridge A who were in that incident on lap number one. You could tell because their NASA panel was completely lopsided uh, there on the cart. But they found themselves on the inside into the boot, putting their hand out going, I want to go in the pits. <laughs> let me through, let me through. They had to back off there to allow the drivers to go around the outside and then dived into the pit lane. But at the end of the day, what's that? Three or four seconds the boss? They lost like two or three laps on that first lap crash. So it, it not really a big issue uh, yeah. for them. Here we look back to Bath A. Now I will say that was quite a lot of time that the top three, of course, Reading included, were trying to get past back markers there, losing time. Yes. So it's all gonna depend on how this plays out between the back markers really, how quickly are Reading versus Bath able to get through. Yeah, the back markers could be a thorn in the leader's side. However, Bate has been released into 
not going to say traffic as such, but released into, into the midst of a battle here. So it's it's not going to be it's not been as ideal for them as they were hoped. They did take that early stop. So what could happen is quite a lot of that midfield pack in front of them could just slowly trickle off and fall off, mm. leave them with clear air. That's what they'll be hoping. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Could be a smart play for Bathe here. We'll have to wait and see. Still a couple of penalties coming through. Just got a cone penalty uh, for Huddersfield A. A lot more warnings though than penalties, I will say. Trying to do a, a better job of keeping an eye on the penalties for the uh, for the top runners in this one so far. But we are 45 minutes left to go in the race. The pit window will close after 25 minutes. So within uh, 10 more minutes time, that first window is going to close. It's Cardiff A, eh? Fraser Brunton, new fastest lap of the race, 56.1 for Fraser Brunton. What a time. We did see uh, it get into the 55s last race, didn't we? Yeah, 55.8 um, towards the very end. Right, OK, so still a few tents to find for Fraser, but he's pressing on here. And I've got to say, when Brooks, Trent, Redding make their stop, I think Fraser could potentially be in the lead of the race here because Bath were in fourth place when they pitted. They're currently in 14th and Cardiff are in 10th. Yeah. And Bath were maybe a second or two behind the top three. So Fraser might have done a blinder here and we could see Cardiff leading the race here once this pit window closes. Look at that, 55s. There we go. There we go. He's responded to, to our You can hear me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting as well, looking at where Reading A is on track. If we're going for about a 30 second pit stop, they're going to be coming out around about Bath as well. It's, there's not going to be a nice comfortable. I think they're going to be, maybe not neck neck, but close. It's too, it's too early to call whether or not they're going to be in front or behind. Mm -hmm. It's all going to depend on uh, the running through the back markers, as we yeah. said. Although Reading, 58.2 on that last lap. That is not Ooh. ideal compared to Bath's 56.4. And they've just done a 57.9 on that last lap, so consistently a second or two slower. These are very crucial seconds at this stage as well. Very, very crucial. Here is the number 13. Uh, so he has just got past two back markers. So there we can see why at the loss of time over the last lap or two. Cardiff A making up positions on track as well. They've just gone past Imperial A and uh, I think the Liverpool cart. Southampton C diving into the pit bundle mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, we've still got some drivers going for that pit lane. Window's still open. Southampton C and Imperial B now in the pits. Oh, here we see the number 81. 87, 87 that is. Yeah, yeah Imperial, I, I isn't I that? Yeah. My eyesight's fine, honestly. <laughs> there shouldn't be a monster truck. There should be a Specsavers truck for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> In my defence, it is picture It true. is, it is, yeah, it I've is. Got it is. Time. I've got all of the numbers in front of me. I've got true, timing yeah. followed by spreadsheets. Your head is so full of numbers I've, right now. Oh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very kind of you to take up this spreadsheet of food because I think it would have killed me, to be honest. I'm trying to work all that out. So, yeah, big shout out to Reeve. He smashed it today. Not only commentating, but also sorting out all of the numbers. I think the main shout out goes to Andrew as ever for just True. being a fountain of information. He's just. Yes, very helpful. We couldn't do it without you, uh, Andrew. So if you can hear us, big shout He's out to you. Being angry, it's probably, yeah. He's just giving out penalties. He loves it. He loves giving out the penalties. Uh, but Cardiff A, again faster, another 55.9 from Fraser Brunton. Who's that we've got in the pits? 79 of Sheffield C coming in for their first pit stop of the day. I don't think anyone's fallen foul of uh, what we saw at PFI, where people were accidentally doing one too many pit stops. I think I think people have learned uh, from that for today, making sure you only come in twice, <laughs> which seem, seems easier than it actually may be. Some, sometimes it can get very confusing. The way and, I like to ooh, think. Oh, sorry, I do just want to say, now, we haven't had all the pit stops, so maybe they've not come in the pits yet, but Warwick A are in sixth place overall at the moment, setting personal best, 56.4 on that last lap. Of course, remember, Lancaster A were up in about the same position in the last race. Just going to head on to the results of there, hopefully now there on the uh, Alpha Live page, Alpha Timing page. Uh, the seemingly team not. Performing a pit stop there. Possible date track limits. Penalty coming in as well. 
Can you check on your computer whether you've got results yet for race number one? Because I can't seem to find we any. We do indeed have results for race number one. Okay. We've, we've spilt, we've filled oh, the wow. Through. So Lancaster really were benefited in that last race by the penalties then. So I think they were fifth or sixth on track, but they finished yep. in P3. That's going to be really difficult to match. And Warwick, I think, have now come in the pits. Yeah, there's the number 15. That is, that is Warwick, if I'm not mistaken. Um... Ah, I'm looking at the wrong race. That's why I'm like, where is number 15? I'm so confused. Cardiff A, hey, the lap time is 55.873. I believe that is ever so slightly behind the outright fastest lap we've seen all day. It was number 15 of Warwick A in the pit, so I was getting a bit excited over their P6. They're not quite that high up, so I think Lancaster getting that P3 has set them up to retake the lead in the final round here. It's going to be very close, so not only are we focusing on the Prem Championship in this race, next race we're going to be keeping our eye on Warwick to the side, the Clubman Championship, so all still very close. Right, who... Who has pitted from the top of the order? Reading still haven't pitted by yeah. the looks of Brooks things. Brooks haven't and Reading haven't. I'm struggling to recall who was the cart that was with them at the front of the order. Oh, Ooh. Trent A, fuel cap, black flag. That is one that the stewards are, of course, very keen on. It's obviously no one's not putting the fuel cap on a purpose. It's easy to... It, it was Trent A who were with them, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. It was them who right, was in the, okay. in the leading gaggle. Okay. So, yeah, they've just come in for their pit stop. Yep. Now I've got a black flag for not putting the fuel cap back on, or at least in a timely and, fashion. And Warwick, Warwick A, as a well. that's huge for Warwick A. That is it. That's massive. That is massive for Warwick A. They're going to have to do a serious fight back as Reading A now take the lead of the race. Brooks B are into the pit lane. So we've just got less than five minutes to go of the pit stops. But yeah, as you're saying, Reeve, massive for Warwick A there. With Lancaster A putting in a P3 last race, they've got their work cut out for them. Not only this race, but the next one as well. Yep, all Lancaster do need to do now is bring it home relatively well and that's kind of it although we have seen we saw late on in race one a black flag converted to an okay result p19 for uwea yeah. so, even then that was in like the last couple of laps yeah and with 40 minutes of race time to go it's certainly out of the question that you can kind of turn around the black flag mm -hmm. i mean it's equivalent to basically a very slow pit stop it is yeah, yeah. effectively yeah you're held you're told you've been a very naughty boy or girl and then you're sent back out on circuit again so it's not out of the question as you say still still can be done uh, and also, Lancaster don't want to be doing that. Contact warning for Lancaster A as well. So still all to play for. As this driver heads back out on circuit. Make sure he gets that fuel cap back on. We've seen a few drivers fall foul that recently. And they no head back out fuel on circuit. spilling across the circuit. Not Definitely not. I, I've heard it's not very grippy. No. no. <laughs> Cardiff A then into P2. Blistering lap times from the cart, of course. Reading A, still haven't seen them in the pit. Bath into third on the road. Well, this is going to be quite close, isn't it? Only down, by, only down off the lead by 21 seconds, might I add, and it's certainly longer what than What did we a think that they lose in the stop. pit stops here? Yeah, where do, what do we think that they lose? It's a minimum, I'd say, of 26, 27 seconds. Okay, okay. So, yeah, Bath could have, uh, could have jumped Reading here. We'll have to wait and see when they come into the pits. Yeah, that's not them. Reading are still coming through the last section of the circuit. Still three minutes left to go of the pit window. Um. <laughs> and we look back to uh, to the lovely shots of this Wilsonville International Kart Circuit. Great to see the flags as well that have sort of been the denotion of how horrific the wind is yes. for us today, which has actually been really, really useful. Still waiting to see what happens next, though. Reading 8 are still out on circuit. They are cutting it very fine here. Two and a half minutes left to go in this window. It basically needs to be this lap or the following lap, really, to come in and not get a penalty here. Now, Bath A set the fastest lap of the 55. race. 55.7. Wow. wow. This is setting up to be an incredible, not only race, but final round of the season, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. New fastest lap, 20 seconds off the leader, and Reading still need to pit here. If you looked at the numbers, you would have favoured Reading going into round eight, but we know from round seven, Bath have the momentum. Mm -hmm. This and has been fantastic. Oh, track limit warning for Reading oh, A as well. That is not ideal Ooh. with over half race distance to go. <laughs> They've not come in either. They'll go for another lap here. A Reading A. Oh brave. my goodness. Brave. This is very brave. Very brave. If they don't come in in time, they get themselves a penalty, a black flag. 
This could blow it wide open, the entire championship. The gap now down to 19.7 seconds. It is effective. That, but it's Bathay ahead of Reading A at this stage, effectively. Yes. yes, I think it will be. I think you're right. Coming out the pit stops, driver, driver two drivers ahead there. Smash the barrier out of the way on the exit of Wilkins there. So really, as commentary A, track limit penalty not ideal. They're going round again. Reading A are going round they again. They just about. They can just this is the last do this. time that they can do that. I think you're right. It this has is to be this really, last pit. really close. Yeah, I hope we're not mistaken and that they've already done their pit stop. They're just a blinding 15 seconds in the lead. I think we've been uh, good at trying to keep on top of things now. Penalty going for Southampton A as well. Track limits oh for Southampton in this championship fight. And I was Still looking... drivers falling foul of that. Yeah, and I was I was looking at it, it's crazy to see just how close this championship has become because it has been so different for so many teams. Southampton may have been actually pretty much nowhere apart from Buckmore and then the first round of yeah. Ward Law, which immediately brought them straight back into the fight. Um, exactly. You you did it. You did it. You called it Ward Law. It was Wilton Bill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We were waiting for that to happen. That was a little little joke. There you go. They're, are they coming in the pits? Yes, they are. So Reading A into the pit lane. This is so crucial. This pit stop. Let's watch it. How quickly can they do it? Already on the uh, on the fuel cap. This is going to be the most important pit stop of the day. Most important pit stop of the season. Yep. Let's see how this goes then. Up and out of the car. So same drivers getting back in. That's yep. going to matter. That's going to matter. It's going to be a lot less time lost. Okay, so there. apologies for the language yeah, there. But, got uh, assistance there to yeah, push them off. 13 of Reading A, let's just say, Jump not very in. happy with that car. Cardiff A and Bath A have already gone past. Yeah. That's oh. <laughs> Trying hey. with everything to get that car off. It's blood, sweat and tears that goes into a BUKC Championship win, and you see it right there. Driver diving on the floor, getting the Reading A car out as quickly as they can. They're not in third, they're in fourth place of Reading A. What's that? 14 seconds off oh. of Cardiff. Uh, about 10, 11 seconds a off of Cardiff. 24, so it's still. It, it, it's, it's a fairly middling, even on the slightly good side, pit stop. It, yeah. It was a decent pit stop, but they just. But the early pit stop is the one to go for. Clearly, yeah, that undercut works again. And you heard uh, Mr. Knight there from the Reading A squad. Um, an interesting choice of words, probably didn't know that he was quite live on the live stream there, but not a fan of the current car underneath him either. So maybe this race, a bit of damage control uh, for Reading. And they've just got to try and hold a good position here. This is going to be the challenge now. Bath are going to have difficulty closing down Fraser Brunton. To be fair, I say that, they were two tenths of a second they faster on fast. the last Whether lap. Whether or not they'll be able to continue keeping up with Cardiff into the second phase of the race. I yeah, am this not is going to so be interesting. Sure. Really what I am interesting. doing is I am hypothesizing and doing some championship permutations. <laughs> Let's see how it's looking at the moment. Yes, indeed. Let's have a look then as Reeve works out what's going on in terms of championship. If things don't change from where they are right now, so that is Bathe in second, and Lancaster, oh, sorry, Bathe in second, and Re Reading A in fourth. Hang on a moment. It looks like I'll get back to you on that. Actually. Okay, I okay. Want to make we'll sure let, that this is we'll hypothesis anyway. Also, because we've got a whole nother race coming. I know that these yeah. two carts aren't in it, but that yeah. will impact as to where they finish at the end of the round, which is the all important thing that we are uh, that we're looking to. So, yeah, lots to work out in this race. First pit stop window is closed. We are now over 25 minutes into the race. So the order that you're looking at now is the running order. Let's run you through the top 10. Cardiff A, Fraser, Brunton. What a race so far from Fraser. Up in the lead of the race. Where did he start in this one? He started in 24th, did Fraser Brunton. He's done this all on his own, up into the lead of the race. Bath A, your championship contender. There they are on your screen. They're in second place. They're in a lovely spot right now. Huge gap back to Southampton A in third. But can they chase down Cardiff? That's the all-important question. A second place and a win would be perfect for Bath. A second and a second, not too shabby either. But Reading will have a first and a fourth. It's going to be a challenge there of who actually wins the round. And obviously, 
if Reading A are able to get a first and a fourth, I think that would at least guarantee them second or third. They're still going to be in with a shot. This is going to be so close, ladies and gentlemen. As I say, Reading in fourth place on the road. Uclan in fifth. Surrey in A in sixth. Then Brooks B in seventh. Exeter A in eighth. They're having a much better race than this one there in eighth place. Loughborough A in ninth. And Liverpool C round out the top ten. At the moment, I will say, the battle for seventh is rather close out there on circuit. Brooksby, 37 seconds off the leader. I'm oh, sorry, it's just changed now. 38 off the leader for Brooksby, 39 for Exeter A, 39 for Liverpool C, 39 for Loughborough A. That looks like a great little battle over seventh place. Would love to see that if uh, if the disembodied voice in my head uh, fancies showing us that little battle for seventh. But we are still looking at Fraser Brunson for the moment. Now, he's trying to find his way through traffic. This could be a positive uh, for Bath A. That uh, the gap between Cardiff and Bath A is closing. Bath are having to find their own way past the back markers, though, as well. So we'll keep an eye on that gap as it continues to close. But thank you to our fantastic cameramen and women out there on circuit and uh, all the producers, everyone at Alpha Live, for getting us on to the battle for seventh place as we watch the carts fly through the screen. We're looking for the numbers 5, 1, 61 and 12. There is the number one, Exeter A, eighth place, right in the middle of this squabble. So we'll be looking for the end of race three to have a better idea of where the likes of Cardiff A and Coventry A will be finishing the running. But as it stands right now, finishing in these positions, so that will be Bath A in second and Reading A in fourth, it's going to be Reading A taking the championship by two points. Wow, OK. As so it stands, that is currently not taking into account race three, not taking out any change of position in the remaining half hour in this race. Of course, yeah. So if, say, Cardiff win this race, then they also get another decent result that puts them in between uh, Reading uh, and Bath. That all will obviously Reading... decrease points with the one below. This could all change. This is all going to depend on so many things. With a good result here, Bath A look to be on for taking the round win. Okay. For round eight. Yes. It's all dependent on Reading. Mm hmm comparatively to needing, everyone else around needing them. Needing to be less than P3 mm -hmm. or P4. Oh, my goodness. Right, we'll try it and is, keep you updated, ladies and gentlemen. very close to the wire. This is so, so close. And this is why you stick around for the whole BUKC season, because it's fantastic racing across the whole championship and in every single race as well. And here we continue to look at this battle, headed up by Oxford Brooks B on the number five. And these are the drivers just in behind them as well. Up through Christmas corner, there's the 10 of Nottingham Trent A. And they've been, they find themselves in 14th place. So those drivers are battling those to tail four position on circuit. Some of these drivers, that looks very close between those two in the background. The number five uh, going at it. So extra A has got through on Oxford Brooks B at the start of this lap. There's a back marker that they're all trying to clear. Then it's Oxford Brooks B leading Coventry A. So they've got through on the number 12 then of Loughborough A. Not sure where they've gone. They've dropped off of this battle ever so slightly i think that's them just trading by half a second to a second so they come around the final corner then to finish another lap less than 30 minutes left to go and i think we're around three minutes yeah three minutes from the oh no i'm wrong am i incorrect no okay yeah i am right I'm trying to do the math in my head three minutes from the second pit window in this race and that's when we'll start to see all of that playing out as well and we'll have to wait and see where everyone ends up afterwards. But that gap between Cardiff A and Bath A at the front has remained the same for the last like three or four laps. It has uh, within two tenths of each other. Coventry A with a track limit penalty there. That'll be a couple of positions added on at the end of the race. Bath A a little bit slower than where they than compared to how they've been in the past couple laps. 57 flat on the last lap. Reading A meanwhile 57.2. So both kind of a slightly slower phase of the race than where, where they've been otherwise. Also in terms of the Clubmans at the moment, it's Surrey A leading this race for the Clubmans in P6 on the road. What a job they've done. Yeah, they've been a really place. good race for them so far. And they've got 20 seconds on X to A and 7. That's a huge gap. Yeah, and they've got 27 seconds back to the next Clubman car, which is Southampton C in 14. Yeah. I will also say that the car park near the back of the circuit, so to the right of this camera angle, was totally empty at the start of the day and now seems to be quite full. So maybe we'll have seen the racing this morning and gone, that was amazing, I've got to go down to Wilton Mill and watch this in person. Yeah, maybe. 
So lots more people here to support the drivers and enjoy the fantastic racing. But if you can't make it to the Wilton Mill track, that's why we're here as there's a spin uh, down at Ashby. And I can tell you that was the driver involved in the first lap incident only one corner before. So uh, and enjoying some rotations in that first <laughs> sector of the track uh, is, uh, is that driver. versus number five here, Oxford Brooks B on Coventry A. They're both looking rather quick, but Oxford Brooks B even faster. Gonna have a look down the inside, potentially. No, thinks better of it, actually. That was a, I, I gave a little bit of a wince there because the number eight in front of Coventry left the gap open on the left, then checked over their right shoulder, yes. didn't see anyone, and then moved over. Luckily, I think the number five, Oxford Brooks B, lifted off so they didn't get taken out there or take out the, their fellow competitor. Down the inside they go, though, through Wilkins. Will they still be down the inside of Ocean's? Not quite enough. Who's going to get the good exit, though? There's Bishop Patel as well getting involved in Loughborough 8. This is a three-way scrap here for 8th place. Trying to go down the inside into the boot, then goes to number 5, Oxford Brooks B. Can't get it done, so through the inside goes Loughborough A. Bishop Patel, opportunistic move to the inside, takes ninth place. Great move there. Bath Amy, while 55.6 on that last lap. Wow. Time. Blistering time, by far away the fastest we've seen all day. And trying to keep up with that Cardiff A car, doing a good job of it as well. And perhaps more importantly for their race, 19 seconds clear of Reading A. Yeah, wow. Reading A now in sixth place. So they've been dropping like a stone in this second stint. Southampton A have got through, so have UCLan, and now so has Surrey. Luckily for Reading, there's still that 20 second gap back to X to A, but maybe what we heard in that pit stop that we probably shouldn't repeat on the commentary, maybe the Reading A driver was correct in that assumption. That car maybe just not quite having the pace of one that they've used earlier on in the day. So we'll see how that affects things, but could this be, as the, the phrase that you used earlier, the thorn in the side for X, uh, sorry, for X, for Reading A here? So of course, they've got to do the best they can, but if they've not got the car underneath them, a bit of a challenge. We are seeing them dropping back as Bruno they picks up the cone penalty there. And again, we're going to have to wait for race three to see how other teams perform. But if Redingate do drop back and lose a couple of positions... Yeah, because you said it was two points, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if they drop a couple of positions in this round, it looks to be, again, we have to wait completely for round three. It's all conjecture at the moment. They will be tying Bath A in terms of points mm -hmm. and it'll go to a tie break and especially if, if Bathay take a round win this time around the tie break goes to Bathay wow okay so it is uh, still completely wow open. so Reading we A do, we just do not know Reading A really need to uh, get a move on here because yeah as you say tie break goes the way of Bathay so they need to More beat victories them they can't... throughout the season wow okay yeah, very interesting very very interesting Surrey A have just made a spot up on U Clan A. We also saw Vishal Patel go for another move on that last lap. Got through on Coventry A for eighth place. Although I say that, I think now it's just come into the pit uh, as Vishal Patel. So they're in for their second pit stop, a left for A. But Surrey A continuing to motor on here. I'm not sure if it's the same driver who was in for the first stint or whether they've changed. But yeah, that 23 car has looked astonishingly fast out there uh, across this race. There is Vishal Patel in for the pit stop. Same with the uh, number 66 there, which is Huddersfield A as well. Yes, I suspect what we're going to see in race three is all of a sudden Bath A becoming the biggest supporters of Coventry A, Cardiff A and Southampton A. <laughs> yes. They will be doing everything to try and ensure that those three teams who are still taking part in the third race, because that's all they can do at this point, Bath A can't do anything else after this race. No, no, it's, well, neither of them can, yeah. can they? No, nope. it's all going to depend on other people's results, which is the worst Scoring thing. Scoring more points, that's, yeah. yeah. When you're stood at the side of the circuit, you have nothing you know, nothing to do with the race. You cannot affect the result at all. You're just willing people on. People that previously in the season you would have hoped did terribly. Now you want them to do so well. How about that asteroid you mentioned earlier on? <laughs> Maybe if they can somehow... Yeah, that would be a nice bit of luck. Oh. Still got more pit stops happening. This is one Liverpool of the Liverpool teams. teams. Looks to be Johnny Pinder getting in the car. So yes, it is. That is Bobby Christovich jumping out. Bobby Christovich, fairly competent endurance driver. Who was the driver that just got in? Johnny Pinder. Wasn't he racing for the B team in the morning? Yes, was that, that, that was cart number 18. That is the B team. That's the B? Is it? Yes. I thought I just saw it on the timing. I thought it was a That's different number. Yeah, Bobby Christovich. Oh, yeah, you're the B -team. right. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies. Yep, that is the B team. Yeah. I think it just confused me that the B team has a lower number than the A team. Ah. That's what confused me, that. We're not 
that's, that's a typical Liverpool tradition, yeah. actually. We don't tend to... We're like Loughborough, only worse. <laughs> like Loughborough, only worse. That's the on two your L's, motto, yeah. Is yeah. <laughs> that part of the official crest of that? Yeah. <laughs> Barbe continuing to close in that gap ever so slightly, but... Uh, and that last half, it was a good half a second closed in. 1.3 seconds now separating Cardiff A and Bath A. 55-9 for Bath A, 56-4 for Cardiff. So it's super close at the front of the field. How's this one going to play out? Bath A, a win of the rakes, would set them up for a great round and potentially a victory. Of course, they got second place in the first race. A win in the second race, that's going to be pretty tough to beat. So uh, we shall wait and see how that all happens, but it's been impressively consistent from the number four. They continue to put the laps in, but neither the front two have pitted just yet. That is in number three of Southampton A there. They do have a penalty for track limits that will be applied after the race has concluded. But that is one of those teams that, that uh, Bath A is going to want to do really quite well in this race. They need every point. Contact warning for Bath A. Be careful, Bath. They're closed yeah, into a second now, that gap. We had a track limit warning early from Reading as well, didn't we? Yes, yes, I think so, you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. So, yeah, still just got to keep that nose clean. Doing an unbelievable time to Bath A, but if you get yourself a silly penalty, it's all gone. That's the Warwick A cart into the pits. Get out of it. Had a black, uh, black flag to serve earlier, if I don't serve me correctly. No, it wasn't black flag. No, I think it was just a penalty. penalty I can't yeah. really remember now, to be honest. Yeah. So much to yeah. think about in this race. I think when they pitted there, though, they were at least two, if not three, positions behind Lancaster A on track as well. So it does Probably seem as though the momentum's them. going back the way of Lancaster. Again, it, I think it's going to come down to how other teams have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What a championship this has been for the British University Skyting Championship in 2023 and 2024. What a turnaround today has been. We approach today, kind of thinking. Yeah, it's all said and done, really. Yeah, like, is... there's no, other that... people have the chance, but that lack of consistency in the later part of the morning mm -hmm. has turned everything on its head for everyone. It that really has. Bath 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 a. 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 Let's see how this pit stop was. We've just caught the end of it there. They should come out. I think just in front of Reading A. Yeah. Wow, that's pit fast. Stop. Wow, that is quick with a 117. That was a new driver in as well, no? That was. Wow. Unbelievable scenes there from Bath A. They rejoin in third place. Only a couple of tenths of a second behind Surrey now, A. Now, they could be lucky. They could just be the case that the two drivers don't need pedal adjustments, don't need different Probably is the case. And it could just be as simple as no drive change. Because that's what I remember when I used to race, we'd always try and do. It was even if, like, I'm paired with someone who prefers the... Black pedal. flag! Black flag for Bath A. That is it. The championship hopes out of the window. That's gone. That's the championship done. Black flag for the fuel cap for Bath A. We said how quick their pit stop was. Clearly for a reason. They hadn't put the they hadn't put the full cap on. They're going to have to come in for effectively an extra pit stop now. It, we've said a black flag isn't the end of the race. People could still get back from it. And their the pace end has been the unbelievable. But... Wow, yeah, if they can't get back up into at least the position they're in now, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's right behind them, it is Reading A after that pit stop. And they've been black flagged, that's... Well, yeah, well, Reading A haven't pitted yet, have they? Reading A haven't pitted Not yet. Not in this window, no. no. so effectively, they both still was, got a was pit that stop a delay as well? Have, was, that pit, was that pit stop the black flag and we've only just seen it? 16-21 mm. black flag. I don't... I wouldn't have thought so, because they went into the fuel bay, which you wouldn't do on a black flag. You'd go straight yeah, past, yeah, I think, no, and then no, stop true. at the end of the pits. So I, I don't think that was. I think they've got that for that. to win this round and needed to win it well. Yes, yeah, so that's really going to blow things wide open here. Now Bath really have just got to do the best they can in getting back through the pack and hope that something goes wrong for Reading here. So it's not done and dusted just yet, ladies and gentlemen, but that is a big, a big uh, issue for Bath A. And yeah, you saw there, hand up as he came across the line. What have I done? It says Bath A, but either way, they're going to have to come back into the pits. And we'll see how this affects things. What a tragedy for the... Uh, either way, it's, that is devastating news for the basket. That is... Fairly disastrous. Uh, not what you need at this stage. The, we're now approaching the closing stages of... A long endurance event. The last race of the season, the last race of the championship that they can try and fight for the win. Yeah, wow. 
Wow, we weren't expecting that, were we? Pit window still open for another 12 minutes. Cardiff A still to serve that pit stop. Same with Reading A as well. So still teams at the sharp end of the field having to complete their final pit stops. Brooks B as well. Just when things couldn't get any more complicated, so I thought. Oh my goodness, yeah, Brooks B have just done their pit stops. 1 minute 43. Oh, that is not far from ideal. But they still haven't come in the pits. They are playing with fire a little bit there, I think. Um, I think the best thing to do is to just come in and serve it, uh, get it done, and then see how far you can press off. Because, yeah, I can understand if you feel you've got a bit of clear air here, let me just push on for a bit longer, then I'll come in and serve it when it fits right with me. Well, no, 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 it's a black flag. You've got to come in immediately. Let's see, Barthay. We hope that they come into the pits now, but if they don't He's, follow they're this black flag... They're trying, they're trying to... Okay, yeah, they are coming in the pits. I was going to yeah. say, if they don't follow this black flag, they could be disqualified, and that's it. And we do have an we do have an update from the pit lane here. Pierce wants to have a little chat. I wonder what this could be about. Pierce, down to you. Yeah, we've got the uh, the uh, Bath A pit man. Uh, is it? whoa, that's uh, unfortunately the Bath uh, have basically been let to go really quickly. Um, he doesn't feel like or Axel didn't feel like he had the fuel cap undone, maybe he was just checking. You can see the disappointment. We're about to have the Reading team in, I believe, any second now as well. But yeah, big drama in the championship. It was a very, very quick pit stop for Bath. Um, so you can see why, you know, potentially he was still doing it out, out of the pits because he got away from the fuel barrel so quickly. But anyway, I'll go back to you guys so you can talk through the, uh, the imminent Reading pit stop. Thank you, Piers. And what an important I'll try again. What an important pit stop it will be. Yes, yes. As he, as uh, Piers was saying, it was a ridiculously fast pit it was. stop. Maybe a little bit What's too everything? fast. And yeah, Axel, it is, he's going to disagree with it. He's going to say, no, no, I had it on. I had it on. It doesn't matter. You're a racing driver. You're going to say he doesn't have it on. Just but it's happened now. The black bag has been served. You can't turn time back. Focus forward and focus on the rest of the race. Bath 8 are still only six seconds behind Reading, and Reading haven't done their pit stop yet. So effectively, Bath haven't lost a position in all of this. OK. OK, so... So it hasn't changed up what's happening too much. It's made it much harder for them to get the race lead. Yeah. Uh, because what's Fraser going to lose? 20, although, 25 seconds, something like that? Although, in a weird roundabout way, it's going to be a really good result for Cardiff A as a result. Because if they're in a good position for race victory, if it comes down to just a couple of points between them, Exactly. And Cardiff A are splitting them at the end of the round. And we've got all those teams up near the sharp end now. Trent A, Southampton A, Coventry A, all looking to get good results in before they move into that last race of the day after this one. Wow. OK, still lots to talk about. 14 minutes left to go on the clock. Then here come Reading A into the pit lane. This will be interesting to see where they come out after this one, if they get themselves in a bit of traffic on exit or whether they could get back up into a battle with good points. In this one, the fuel bays are full. Fuel bays are full. Luckily oh, for Reading A, the number 10 about. just leaves. Wow, that well was close. Timed. Yeah, Very I was, well timed. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah that's, that's um, cutting it a bit fine, or as you say, perfectly timed. Yes. Mathe, two and a half seconds off the race lead now, I suspect. Yeah, the race lead has just hit it. Really slow there on that pit stop you'd rather, again. Especially given I, what your rivals have just done, you'd rather the slow pit stop. Exactly why they did that. I think exactly why they did that. Just give up the few seconds Sensible in here, play. get it done, and don't have to come in again for another pit stop. Or black flag, even, I, I should say. But yes, wow, OK, right, they've come across the line then, Reading A, 25 seconds off the leader. Cardiff A have pitted. Bath A are only two and a half seconds behind them. How has that happened? What was Cardiff A stopped there? A 1 minute 28. So a little on the slow side. What did we see? It was 117, I think, if I remember correctly, for Bath A. Then they've served that extra one, which was probably another 15 or so seconds. So they haven't lost that much in all of this. They actually haven't. No. If they had have not got that black flag, this they'd be in the lead easy. of the race right now. Yeah, they have taken the lead of the race. They just take the lead of the race with a stonking lap there at 56.4, while Cardiff A down in the 59s. So Fraser Brunton is out of the cart. So he's no longer putting in those insane lap times in the number seven. I'm not sure who has got in in their place, but not quite finding that pace initially. Bath A have got a second place in the first race and now looking to take a win here. Could Despite they have done the much black better flag. from this? No. Watch out, track limit warning for Barthé, oh, they're playing with fire the here in the number four. It, it, you don't need this, but the mental pressure they'll now be facing after <laughs> the black flag as well, messing things up. 
that's the thing they could obviously they haven't lost position as it turns out somehow but Renegade are going to be that little bit closer. They probably wanted that safety net because what if in this final stint, this final 11 minutes, Renegade surged their way through? It uh, doesn't look like that's going to be what happens. But it doesn't look like it. They wanted any safety margin they could get. I'm sure Bafo Exactly. Wanted. Yeah, for the moment, Bafo are looking to take a first and a second. Renegade a first and a fourth. So not too far away. I think people are going to struggle to get a better result than the first and the fourth. So if Reading A are able to secure that second place, they've still got it done and dusted. However, chasing them down, Surrey A have been looking really fast in this race. And they're only two and a half seconds behind the Reading cart. So we'll keep an eye on that. But Piers is down in the pit lane once more to give us some more information. Yeah, we we saw, of course, the uh, the Bath black flag, but basically didn't stop, so it didn't cost him too much time, which is why the Bath uh, axle out there can still soldier on, is going to get a good result if things stay as they are, but also very, very close with the Reading pit stop, as we saw, but I heard them discussing before and after, and they were just saying, you know what? just have a decent pit stop, doesn't need to be rapid. That's why they were extra careful getting that fuel cap on because they saw what happened to Bath just a couple of laps before. Yeah, yeah exactly as we thought. That. As we Piers. thought. Thank you, Piers. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, exactly as we thought there. They're just they're just making sure it was sorted. Even though it was a little bit slower, you just get it done within the rules and we would have gained a bit of time back on them. So I mentioned speaking of time, Bathe in the 55s absolutely flying along. Their pace has been so strong. Axel Slepcevich there doing the job he needs to do. Code penalty for Southampton A. Okay. That gives Another Reading an extra penalty. position. That does, in effect, yes, they're at all the moment, anyway, I should the add, hypothetically, as this race stands, even if Reading A got up into second position in this race, it would be both Bathe and Reading A scoring 119 points each. Wow. Wow. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. I will say, Reading A now under pressure from Surrey A. That gap is only un is under half a second now. They came across the line last time around, so hey, we could see Reading now not being able to benefit from that Southampton penalty because if they drop the position, it will then be Surrey that benefit uh, from that one place cone penalty that Southampton have got. And then Imperial aren't too far behind as well, and UCLAN on a charge as well from a difficult end to the first race, getting that black flag. So. All still wide open. We're in the last 10 minutes of the race. Four and a half minutes left to go of this last pit window. Yeah, already Bath A nearly putting four seconds between themselves and Cardiff A. Axel in that number four car is absolutely flying. Here is the number 13 of Reading A. I think having a, a couple of back markers in between themselves and Surrey A for the moment, which is going to help them out. But that gap is less than a second now when they came across the line last time. So it is indeed one of the Leeds carts, I think, in between them. Just trying to spot on the timing screen. So it'll be Leeds B, the number 74. It's Adam Kernis who's behind the wheel of that Leeds B cart at the moment. So uh, he is uh, currently just helping... Uh, Helping the Reading A car be a little bit safer. But Surrey A have been so quick in this race and they'll be wanting to come through as quickly as possible. There is a yellow flag going down into sector one. We'll just try and see as our camera pans through these first couple of uh, first couple of shops at the opening corners. Where and why there's a yellow flag heading through that section. I still couldn't see why, and there's now no flag out at all. Here comes Surrey, though, on uh, the Leeds B back marker. Leeds trying to hang it around the outside. Leeds actually playing quite a key role here. They've just gotten back through and have held up Surrey quite, quite considerably. That was probably about half a second to maybe even a second loss there from that failed overtake from Surrey. That just gives a little bit more breathing room once again to Reading A. Reminder, if Reading score better than fourth in this round, that's it. They that's win it. the championship. Yeah. Currently, again, we'll have to wait until race three potentially, but it's looking like it's going to be Reading's for the taking because they've delivered quite a good. Oh no, as if it couldn't get any more crazy. We've got reports of rain in the pit lane. Oh my goodness. Seven and a half minutes left to go here in race number two of round eight of the British University Karting Championship and reports of rain. There goes Surrey trying to make the move again, but not able to make it stick. Adam Kurlish just a little bit too fast for them to get through here. But wow, could this blow it wide open? If we get a sudden downpour here, the drivers suddenly have to deal with totally wet conditions. 
again, and this could cause some I don't think my heart upsets. can take another turnaround in a race today. Oh my today. goodness. Unbelievable stuff in this race for the moment. I think uh, continuing to follow this uh, this Reading and Surrey A battle is the closest battle near the top of the order. But, but Reading and Surrey still having Adam Curnis in between the two of them. Which is going to be very much to the uh, disapproval of, uh, of the 23. Actually, Adam getting a great run out of the last corner. Potentially, he could even start to challenge Reading A in fourth here and unwrap himself. We'll see how this plays out for the last couple of minutes. Uh, change the position for sick as well. Coventry A have got through on U Clan A for sixth place on that last lap. I want to go and find myself buried yes. in the spreadsheet of doom. Because sadly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having to put up with my voice uh, for a little bit because we've got uh, Reeve working out uh, what's going on in the championship. There's more penalties uh, coming through. We've got a code penalty for Southampton A in third place. Now, is that 29? What's well, it now? 34. So that's the same one we've read out uh, previously that's going to give Reading A an extra spot if they finish in this fourth position on the road. Liverpool B have got themselves a code penalty. So have UWE B. And UCLAN A now have a track limits penalty. They're in seventh at the moment, so that's going to drop them down a couple of spots as well. Once again, Adam Curtis in that Leeds B car flying through that first section of corners but just not quite getting a good enough run. Up here, it's never think about it though. Hey, this is this is really interesting. Leeds B down in, what are they? Uh, 20th place now at Leeds B are trying to get past our fourth place driver. Surrey A now trying to get down the inside of Ashby. Surrey A trying to get the move done and force Leeds out to the exit curve. They've done it, but Leeds are there. And Leeds have gotten a little bit screwed there by the yellow flag because they were alongside. They would have got back down the inside there at Wilkins, but had to back out of the move because they were behind. So now there's no carts in between Reading and Surrey. And don't forget, whoever gets out in front between Reading and Surrey here will get third place because they'll Southampton will drop a position at the end with that cone penalty. They've got a couple of penalties. Have Southampton got a track limit as well, so they'll drop. A oh couple wow! Of okay, positions. okay. So actually, that's not going to affect things too much because both these drivers are going to be gaining positions at the end if they've got multiple penalties across this race. We're into the last five minutes of race number two here. So that means pit stops all done and dusted. Look at this big defensive move from Reading A as, as uh, Surrey A trying to find their way through. But Leeds B still getting involved in this battle, sticking the nose in and getting through on Surrey A. Leeds B are changing potentially the course of the championship here, ladies and gentlemen, as they get involved in this battle. Just Back through about, go Surrey though. Just about making room for the cart. <laughs> Couldn't get any closer than that. Still Reading defending from two fronts here. Got an absolute attack from both the number 74. And then the number five, Oxenbrooks B, who's coming up on the back of this battle, is battling for position with Leeds B. Wow. Final five minutes then, the pit lane is of course closed. It's now just down to what happens on track, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, drivers keep clear of penalties, as they say that. Brooks D in for a track limits penalty. Yeah, we're keeping a watchful eye on those penalties, aren't we? It's the last few minutes here, the last few minutes of racing with Bath A and Reading A in it. Bath A still with quite the sizable lead over Cardiff A. Cardiff A just done a, a good time for themselves though in the mid 56, 56, 5, 6 and a bit seconds now that gap though between Bath A and Cardiff A at the front. So Bath A have realistically done everything they can here in the final round to try yeah. and steal away the championship. They thought they'd make it a little bit more difficult for themselves and, <laughs> and scare us a little bit, but they seem to have just about prevailed. Exactly, exactly. Less than three minutes left to go. And Surrey all oh, just getting a bit bored there on the exit. So it's all changed around in this group. Leeds are now at the back of this group. So the five of Oxford B has got through fourth position on the Leeds B cart. Now it's Surrey pressuring Reading. Reading trying and send them to the outside. Surrey trying to force the door open. Up to Christmas corner they go. The five might get involved here as well of Oxford Brooks B. Trying the up and under on the exit of Oxford Brooks B. But they're not going to get a good enough run. Down towards Ashby they go then. 
And again, Flashman for the Reading A, uh, Reading, A Reading A cut, sending Surrey to the exit. And they use, they're using this perfectly. They're trying to get the five of Oxford Brooks B involved in this battle to push Surrey further down this pack. And Surrey have a contact warning for a move earlier on. And they get forced out wide. They're not happy about that. But now Reading A have no challenges to a position. Surrey A drop a good four or five seconds off of this battle now. Wow, into the last two minutes we go. And to be fair, if that was meant by Reading A, which I do think it was, that was very impressive. Just forcing the driver out wide and being like, no, I'm just going to back them into these drivers, get them involved. Still defending though as Reading A. Reading don't need to defend here. Just let them go. Let them go. Doesn't matter if you've got people in between you or not now. You've got a good few seconds. I think maybe you can follow them. But anyway, Reading A are thinking better than me and probably a better driver anyway. Round the outside, drives Johnson there. for They're part of Class and Motorsport outside of BUKC. Gets a little bit bought there through the corner. Back through goes Kernis. Now Surrey are getting back involved. Down the inside, they go on the lead B car. This could all still change here for fourth place. My goodness, this is a brilliant race, ladies and gentlemen. We barely even talked about the two leaders. They're so far off in the lead. Southampton now in a bit of no man's land. This is the highest battle that we've got on circuit. And still, flash for the Reading A car doing a great job of defending. But Kernis forces his way through on the grass, down the inside. It's the last corner, makes contact with Reading. Nearly spins Reading out through the last one of the circuit. But they just about all get out of each other's way. There's lots of bumping and barging going on. Surrey A going to the back of the lead. They've got to be careful. They've already got a contact warning here. This is so close, Reed. This is possibly the most scary situation you can be in if you're Reading 8 right now. You're in the midst of battle. It is a tough battle as well. No room given. It could all be thrown away right now. As it stands, if we finish like this, it's Reading 8 champions. But it could still be thrown away. Hey, you never know with the last race as well. What happens? What drivers get what positions? This is so close, though. We're nearly going three wide. Kernis not happy about that move. Round the outside to try and opt to Brooks B. They're trying to send it around the outside of Reading A. Up and under a trying Surrey A. They're trying to go for the position. Down into Ojas. It's all so close. Out on the outside. Flashman is going to get forced out wide. They're going to be side by side. Down into the final section. Last lap has already been started by Bath A. Round the outside. Back through go Oxford Brooks A. That's really going to help Reading A. As Surrey get forced out wide. Now they're under pressure from the 32 of Liverpool A as well. And that is for position with Leeds. We've got two battles going on for position on track here. But they're both on different laps. Here we have Bath A then heading round. No way are they already at the end of the lap. You're right. Bath A are going to win the race here. They've, They've taken already the race crossed victory. the line. So that's Bathé across the line, that's all they can do. Cardiff A come home next, but we don't really care where Cardiff finish. It's all down to what Reading can do in this battle. They've had a good showing. To the inside they go again, down at Ashby, trying to fend off what is now again the Oxford Brooks B car. Oxford Brooks B trying to force their way through. They give them a little nudge as they go through the middle section of the circuit. Can they get down the inside? Just about, but no. Flashman chops them off, and there's been a crash in the background. Two drivers off, one onto the grass. I can't tell you which drivers that is, but Reading A still out the front of this gaggle. That's really, really helped them. Those drivers going off in the background. I think they're just going to fend off from Oxford Brooks hit B here. They've got no one near them for position so Reading A will take fourth place on the road then this is going to be very that's, interesting going into the last race is that's that all they need yep. they can't do any worse than that which means that Reading A are the champions for 2023 and 2024 British University's karting championship season what a race to finalize that championship result of Flashman was working overtime there to try and keep those drivers behind that was a very important defence there. Wow. Hats off. Unbelievable. Unbelievable for Reading A. What an end to the season as well between those two, those two teams. Bath A doing everything they can here, making it, as you said, even harder for themselves, two. getting a black flag in that one. But wow, I think I need to sit down. So that is the results then. Bath A, Cardiff A on the front two there. Southampton made penalties to serve, of course. That promotes Renegade up into third position. That's all they need to score 118 points in this round. That's one point down on Bath A. The only people who could possibly be a thorn in Bath A side are Cardiff A. The best that they can do in the next round is first, of course, and that's 119 points, which sees that it, it yeah. is, it's Reading. It's done. Yeah, yeah it's, it's done and Reading's dusted, you're championship right. championship after that. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Exhilarating race. Wow, what a race. Unbelievable. So much to think about as well. For Reading A, we do believe 
Of course, we're going off the spreadsheet of Doom. We're not the official uh, adjudicators here, so something could still happen, but at least to our calculations, or shall I say, Reeve and Andrew's calculations, Reading A have won the championship. In order to achieve victory, Bath A needed to achieve a double round win, which it looks like they've done. Yeah. Reading and Reading A need to achieve no better than a third and a fourth. Obviously, in round seven, they achieved a third. They've achieved better than a fourth. Yeah. As it stands here, with a first and a third. Yeah, so they round. could they could end up if Cardiff do have a really good next race, they, they could end up being third, third but which, which is what they what, yeah, which is what they needed to be. That's what they need. Yeah. It was close. It was very well, close. It could have been just closer. about done it. So when we were saying Cardiff, well, they'll be rooted for battle with rooted for Cardiff. No, as it turns out, Cardiff have been the ones that have nearly promoted. Well, have nearly well Blimey. basically secured. Blimey! Wow. Uh, what an end to the season. We've, of course, still got a race to go. We've still got one endurance race left to go after this. But I think that means the Premier Championship is done and dusted for 2023 and 2024, with Reading A being your number one plate holders for next season. Of course, this is all provisional from us here up in the commentary box. We were so distracted by this. We haven't run you through the race and finishing order there in that one, but you've seen it on your screens. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that one. And as I say, we've still got one race to go as well. We need to also work out what's going on in terms of clubman because in that race warwick a finished in 12th place they, did, they finished uh, higher than lancaster yeah where were lancaster 19th so place so there is a potential here in race three so warwick course, need course, to outscore yeah lancaster already have like both seven bears yep. haven't they and yep. warwick now have one more race so what do they need to do in the last race so they need to outscore in the round by seven points they need to outscore lancaster so they've got 49 points to their name already have right, warwick okay. after a p12 in this round and then Lancaster A have finished the round here with a total of 100 points. Wow. Of course, there okay. was a... So, still lots to play for in the Clubman Championship then as we go into race number three. But before we do that, Piers is down on the dummy grid to talk to the race winner of that race. Sadly, they're not the champions as well, though. That goes to Reading A, and hopefully we'll be hearing from them too. Wow, what a race. I mean, Axel, from out there, you won the race. Uh, probably one of the most dramatic wins I think I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen anyone win a race in the BUKC after receiving a black flag. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was so angry in the helmet when I saw the red, uh, the black flag. Um, I came in, luckily they didn't hold me for very long. Um, I explained that the fuel cap was on completely fine. It was on and they just let me go quickly, luckily. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It could have been a lot worse if yeah. it cost us a championship. So um, luckily it didn't. Oh, uh, well executed race. You, you and your teammate did uh, very well. You won the race. And uh, unfortunately, because Reading finished in fourth place, a really good drive from Oliver Flashman and, and his teammate as well. They, um, they are, are likely to be the champions. I think it's provisional at the moment, but still a valiant effort. You guys did pretty much all you could, a second and a first in the endurance races this afternoon. You couldn't really have hoped for much more, could you? I mean, yeah, we've won the morning round and we won the afternoon round. So <laughs> we came here and we did what we could. Obviously, the rest is out of our hands. Um, we were kind of chasing it from the start of the season with kind of bad luck and a few penalties. Um, but I mean, all the guys, they, they they put their heart and soul into it and we did all we could. So it is second is still a very good result. And I'm sure you'll be back next year to fight, fight on. We will, yeah. Um, Number one on the cart next uh, next year, hopefully. So we'll see. Anyway, Axel, congratulations on a great result. Um, as I said, I don't think I don't know Andrew uh, Andrew Mather will be the person to talk to, but I don't know if anyone's actually won a, uh, a BUKC race after receiving a black flag for. Let's grab a word with Oliver Flashman, who had a, a very stressful end to the race. There, mate. I was the last six or seven minutes. You were literally parking the bus, and you did it very well. Last thirteen minutes, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was um, yeah, really really difficult, but uh, yeah. Uh, over the moon, I think. Over the moon, and rightly so, because I think, you know... I think that's the best we could have done in that race, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, we came in fourth and we finished fourth, so yeah, I'm pleased with myself, and Peter did an incredible job. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's go and grab a word, Peter, as well, because yeah. uh, you guys, I mean, provisionally, I think you're champions. Of course, it's not confirmed at all, but that was, uh, that was a tough drive, but, you know, you did pretty well to get fourth and then do enough to seal the win. Yeah, it was a really tricky drive. Um, I just did have no performance out of any of the corners, and I think Ollie felt the same. Um, <laughs> yeah, mate. Um, but we knew what we had to do before coming into the last um, race and now we've just got to hope that the last race goes well for us. I think the last we can come is third.
third and that's all we need so yeah. we're just hoping I, I also quite enjoyed that I could I overheard a bit of chat and you you were very careful to get that fuel cap on <laughs> yeah, yeah very, very careful <laughs> they didn't care if we lost us 10 seconds yeah <laughs> it's uh, the most important that yeah yeah we, we, if we got a black flag then that would have been it so yeah. yeah brilliant anyway congratulations guys that's provisionally our champions for 2024 in the premier class let's uh, turn our attention to the final race of the BUKC 2024 it's going to be another exactly the same as the previous two one hour endurance race two pit stops as always before and um, we're just weighing the final few drivers from the previous race to make sure that everyone is uh, on the minimum weight uh, and then we shall get turn our attention to as i mentioned that final race of the season it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good one um still lots to play for i think the clubman battle is still ongoing and there's many many more positions to be decided you know up and down the order it's not just all about who comes first some drivers are and teams are trying to you know move up from where they finished last year some drivers are uh, you know potentially just damage limitation because also the way the points work in the BUKC sometimes finishing in a different position even if it doesn't actually gain you more points can change how other teams score points in the round which then affects of course the overall position so it's all to play for in the last race and here we are rolling onto the grid let's grab a word with our team Swansea driver funny Joker Cardiff I forgot um, I, I literally thought I would get it right do it on purpose I'm you? genuinely not I'm genuinely not um Cardiff, a uh, good race in that last one. Yeah, second. I don't know how we didn't win, to be honest, after Bath had a black flag, but... They just drove really fast. Apparently. I mean, it is what it is. Got to do my best now. Got to do your best. Who's your teammate in this one? Uh, Johnny Wilkinson. Not the rugby player, but... The, the, the cart driver. The cart driver. Yeah. And uh, w uh, what's, the, what's the plan? I assume you're starting, seeing as you're all geared up? Yeah, starting... I mean, we'll just pit whenever it's clear, to be honest, but go as fast as we can. I think we need a second or a first to win. So I want at least a podium this race. I th you need, I think, pretty sure you need a first because uh, I think Reading had a, no, 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 Bath had a first and a second. So to win the rounds, you'd need a first and a second. And then I don't know what the count back is. No, no chance. I don't even know either. So go as fast as I can. What's the plan? Head down. Good luck. Good luck, Jensen Davis, for the Cardiff team. Honestly, it sounds like I'm doing it deliberately. I promise I'm not. Uh, I just genuinely get confused. I think it's, he threw me off because he said he lives in Card, lives in Swansea and goes to Cardiff Uni. Anyway, let's have a word with our Birmingham driver here. What's, uh, right, we'll move out of the way so we can, drivers can get through. Um, who are you? Where are you uh, starting? I'm Ben Pepper and I think it's 23rd. Ben, we've chatted a couple of times this season. Did you just sum up, sum up the BUKC for yourself this season? One or two good rounds, the rest learning curve, let's say that. Yeah. So, yeah. And you've still got one more opportunity to prove what you've learnt. Oh, first win in the BUKC is going to come here easily. Oh, OK. Well, Confidence. On, well, on what lap are you going to get in the lead? From 23rd? It's a hard one. Maybe lap two or three? I don't even know. Confidence. Yeah, confidence is the key. You, you go and get yourself in the zone to be able to pass 22 carts in two laps. That'll be very entertaining. Oh! It's almost like you keep putting yourself on pole. I do indeed. Not really, you know, my favourite position to be in, but here we are again. Here we are again. You were on pole this morning. Just remind us how that went. Uh, I did all right for the first few corners, made a mistake in the first one of, I uh, know, the second one of International, the first left-hander. Uh, lost a couple of positions, but then had quite a bit of fun, um, to be honest, slowing everybody behind me down. Um, yeah, good fun. Anyway, um team racing now uh is this your teammate who's joining us for the race it is it come is. on in come on in uh, remind uh, us who you are and remind us your team he's a bit camera shy. i'm dan henderson da dan um when are you jumping in the cart about 13 14 minutes i think is our plan going for a half an hour stint and yeah you and all finish the job there you go and uh what would a good result in this race look like to you guys good result will be a win uh if i don't win it's just because i get overtaken not really anything i can do about that that's one way of looking at it. Good luck, guys. Cheers. Good luck. Always, uh, always good to hear from from Team uh, Brunel. I'm pretty sure that is. Yeah, it's Brunel. Um, we're getting some consolation going on here. There's a lot of uh, there's, there's a lot of consolation going on here. That was that was some words of wisdom from I assume a teammate. It is a teammate. Yeah, a teammate with a dis dislocated shoulder. Oh, oh, that's sore. Yeah. Did he do that today? No, 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 no. no. That was done before. And um, what are you? Oh, so who are you? Who are you racing for? Um, ben Lee Smith for Cardiff B. Cardiff B. Um, Cardiff A had a good one. 
and that last yeah. one. What about Cardiff? Oh, right behind you. Yeah. There you go. So it's uh, going to be formation flying. Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed. We'll both send it into Christmas. <laughs> or will he send you into Christmas? We'll find that out later on. Uh, anyway, moving on. Let's see if there's some friendly fire amongst the Cardiff camp. I'm going to jump in and grab a word with someone new. Uh, have we spoken this year? Uh, we haven't, no. Oh, amazing. I'm trying to get as many new people today as I can. Uh, what is your name and remind or tell us who you're racing for? Uh, I'm James. I'm from Portsmouth Egg. Portsmouth. I love Portsmouth. You know, new team, nearly won the free. Uh, you did win. Both teams won the free round of the club, uh, club 100 Enduro. Do you know when you're going to take those rounds? No, not at the moment. We're, we're thinking about it. We're well, you can get some good practice in this race. It's a very similar format. Um, how's, how's the uh, first race for Portsmouth gone? Uh, quite well for me. I think we've had middling results for the rest of us, but yeah, very good for me. So hopefully we can continue that into this one. And how was Portsmouth in the first endurance this afternoon? Um, There's a lot of laughter going on over there. <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting race, we'll put it that way. A nice adjective, nice adjective, keeping it vague, I like it. Um, what do you reckon you could do in this one? Um, I, don't know, I think top half, maybe even top ten would be good, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. We will see. Portsmouth, great to have you. Hopefully you'll be back in the mains again next year. Uh, it's good to have new teams joining us rather than like... E, D, F, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K teams. As much as we like multiple teams from universities, it's good to have a, you know, give many universities an opportunity to field a team. I'm going to roll on in here. This is another person I don't think I've spoken to this year. Have we spoken this year? Yeah, Butmore Park. Oh, Butmore's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Um, remind us who you are and who you're racing for. Uh, Fergus racing for UEA. UEA. Um, how's UEA's day gone uh, in the endurance? Uh, pretty bad, but can only get better from here, so we'll hope for the best. And you're going you're gonna to do that? You're going to be the one to, to make it better? Yeah, yeah, from here to first, because if you're not first, you're last, so... If you ain't first, you're last, isn't that the truth? Thank you very much for that pearl of wisdom. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, we'll jump in. With... Oh, I'm going to get in the photo as well. <laughs> here we go, one for the... Everyone will see this on Facebook. And, uh, and Will, Will Howells? That's right, yeah. Will, uh, remind us who you're racing for. Uh, Coventry E today. Coventry E today. Um, how's Coventry E's day gone? Uh, it's not been amazing, to be honest. Um, most of us have crashed, unfortunately. But Does most of us include yourself? No, it doesn't. I'm the only one with a clean result, so... Um, There's still time. Yeah, there's still time, but we can't really go backwards in this one, so yeah. just yeah. see where we can get to. I think your teammates are worried that I'm going to curse you, so... Curse me uh, yeah, I know, I've cursed you. I, curse I have been a bit of a curse this year. Um, but anyway, you're the one in control, not me, so therefore I'd suggest that, you know, just stay out of trouble, you'll be all right. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, that's, that is the last grid walk of the year. It's, well, it's kind of emotional, isn't it, really? Uh, it's, it's been a good year. I've enjoyed doing the grid walks. Uh, we'll be chatting after the race, but um, for the final time in 2024, John, Reeve, over to you. Thank you very much, Piers. It's been great to have you down on the grid all season, chatting to the drivers. And as Piers says, he's going to be back again straight after this race to talk to uh, talk to the top drivers and obviously the championship winners when it's finalised. We think it's relatively finalised in Premier. Still to play for in club, and though, Reeve, do you want to take us through the grid? Certainly. So the first row is Brunel A and Coventry A, row two, Surrey A and Liverpool A, row three, Oxford Brooks D and Imperial B. Moving on to the fourth row, it is... Liverpool C and Imperial A, row five, Cardiff B and Warwick A, row six, Cardiff A and Huddersfield A. Moving on to the seventh row, Coventry F and Southampton A, Cambridge A and Liverpool B on row eight, and then Portsmouth A and Brighton B on row nine. Moving on to row ten, Bristol A, Cardiff C, row 11, Swansea B and Birmingham A, row 12, it's Sheffield A and Manchester A. Moving on to row 13, Lancaster B and Southampton B, row 14, UWE A and Leeds A, row 15, Edinburgh A and Loughborough D. Moving on to 16th row, it's Coventry E and Bath C. Row 17, Oxford Brooks A and Swansea A. And then Loughborough B rounding out the field for one last time here in 2024. Here we are, see all the carts leaving the hit lane now for one last quick warm up before we get underway for a final hour of racing here at Wilton Mill. Indeed, yeah, last hour of the championship for 2023 and 2024, as we said before the grids there. We do think that, oh, sorry, Reeve, no matter what happens in this race, the Reading will take the title here in Prem. So we know that Cardiff can be on for a really good result in this one. If, 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 if Cardiff they do well, win, 
Cardiff win, they will finish the season with 402 points. Bath A, 408. Reading, 410. There you go then. So it cannot change. And we'll see because I know Cardiff A have already used their best driver in Fraser Brunton, but we'll see how they can do. There's still plenty of good drivers on that team. However, we're coming up to the gantry then to start the final race of the 2023-2024 season. And we're underway to the first couple of corners. Go the drivers. And it's Brune LA who lead us through it. One driver a little bit wide. Now that is Cardiff A going a little bit wide. And another driver forced off wide in the background as well. That was the 21 at there. Uh, Leeds going A. wide. Indeed, it was Leeds A. Cheeky move to the inside. There was one driver again. Nearly takes off, getting up and over the back of another cart. And what a Liverpool squad, and it gets spun, spun Ooh. round, goes to the Liverpool squad. It was uh, Car one of the Cardiff carts who was on the inside there. Not sure which one it was, but one of the Cardiff carts there just getting involved as there were two more drivers getting in and amongst it and getting caught together there, it seems, uh, on the exit of Boxing Day as they get themselves back sorted. But look how far that Liverpool have to drag that cart back onto the circuit. A disastrous start to the race. That'll be Liverpool B or Liverpool C there. Not quite sure who. Sorry, haven't been... Actually, I don't think they decided grids for the afternoon until quite late on. So, right, OK. Not entirely sure who. We'll, 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 we'll have, to, have to wait and see who that was. Good battle for the lead already, though. And let's just see as well. Good start for Warwick A. Up to P7 already in this one for Warwick A. This is a great start for them. And they're going to be loving this ahead of them as well. Battles already going on. Brunel trying to hold on to the lead with uh, Surrey A just behind Liverpool A. Round the outside of Coventry A. Very nice move to take third place. And now they go down the inside for second as well. Take second away from Surrey. Liverpool A on a charge here. Yeah, they got one of the quicker drivers in, that is Lewis Jackson in the cart. Trying for, a, imagine, a bit of a late-day redemption, really. Not been the best day in the world for Liverpool, A. Eh? Let's go for the lead. Ooh, not quite late yeah, enough. They'll, they'll want to make sure they avoid a penalty in this lead, in, in this yes. race lead this time round. Yeah, that's always uh, a good idea. Keep out of, uh, of the stewards' books. Think of penalties, Warwick, A, F, D, W. Forcing driver wide. That is, and Already. remember Warwick A in that fight. They've just set the bus up the race. There goes the cone. One of the two leaders smashed through the cone there at the first corner. So Warwick A are in this battle, now at the fastest step of the race, but have already got a penalty. That's not good. No, they need every little bit of help they can get to stay ahead of Lancaster. Lancaster A, no longer in this race. Nothing that they can do. They've just got to sit and watch Warwick A and see how they perform in this race. There was Warwick A trying to go down the inside of the number eight of Coventry A. Coventry A have held the then inside for this left-hander, tried the up and under of Warwick, but it's not going to work. Cardiff A go down the inside in the background, though. That was on Imperial A, and they forced their way through. So Cardiff A, hey, they could be up for a good result here in this last race. It's Jensen Davis, who's behind the wheel. As Brunel get forced wide, it goes to three wide round the boot. Cardiff A going to try and sneak, slip through here, but they get forced to the outside. So do Brunel, nearly forcing Warwick wide and off the track. But Warwick hold on to it, and Warwick move himself up now into fourth place. Impressive run through the order already. And so, yes, the, it was Imperial B that got forced out by Cardiff A. A fair move nonetheless for Cardiff A. And Jensen Davis making his way up through the field nicely, getting involved in this lead battle early on. When I say lead battle, Liverpool A have already cleared this battle by nearly one and a half seconds. An impressive place there into the 58 for number 32. So having a look at that battle in the club, and as it stands, it will be it, as in this current position of Warwick A will be taking victory in that Clubman's Championship. P4 is only getting better, still looking better by the lap. Down the inside, they're trying it on Coventry A, but Coventry A will then have the inside for the following few corners. Warwick A will have to sit back once more. So do you, so do you think with the fourth place that Warwick A take the... Uh, take the title they do they've already got a few points in the bag in terms of margin 57.6 at the start of the race for wow Liverpool A there let's see if we can get into the 55s like we were late on in the previous race but as it stands at the moment it wasn't a great it has been a great round eight for Lancaster A it must be said in terms of their round eight performance Lancaster A had a third place in race one and a 19th place in race two that race two is really hurting them yeah that's gonna be a tough one so even though 
Warwick 8 weren't blistering in race two, there was certainly a ways ahead. And if they come home even with a P4 or a P5, they're going to be scoring, outscoring Lancaster by about 10 points. So they're going to be expanding that lead in the Goldman's and bringing home the trophy. Right, OK, yeah, we thought from that first race from Lancaster that they had a bit of a fight back on, but, yeah, that race two has really not helped things. They're only a few places behind Warwick in that one, so they need Warwick to be a few places behind what was their um, race one score in this race, but currently Warwick doing a better job up near the sharp end and still sticking with uh, these two, Coventry A and Surrey A. It's Coventry A who now take the fastest lap of the race at 56.8. Right behind the Surrey A cart, they're going to move themselves out to the inside line up to Christmas Corner, but not late enough on the brakes. Stay behind in third place at the moment, does Mr Moreno. Such a hard braking zone to judge there. It can so easily go wrong. You're at very high speeds. But we've seen brave moves work there. Essentially, he should try around the outside next time. I don't think we've seen anything around the outside work. The no, I've not seen anything today, no. No, I've not seen anything at all. Uh, nothing at all. Right, Liverpool A, still about a second and a half in the lead then, but I think Coventry A are likely to be their closest challengers here to try and press on. But firstly, they need to get past Surrey. Surrey are no slouch at all. They've got some great pace underneath them. And this is keeping Warwick A with them as well. What's the gap now? Back to Cardiff A. It's closed up between themselves and the leaders. Imperial A are through on Cardiff. What's happened to Cardiff? Cardiff dropping down the order. Jensen Davis has had a problem here. He's, we are he's still pit. dropping down. Cardiff and Oxford Brooks A are both dropping down the order. Okay, pit window has opened, but as you say, you're yeah. right. Sorry, yeah, I keep yeah. getting too too excited early on in the race. Maybe it's an early pit stop, but it that is. is an it early is. Pit stop. Both drivers yeah. in for early pit stop. Apologies early. again, ladies and gentlemen. They've seen just how effective the early pit stop I can mean, be. It has worked, hasn't it? Yeah, it has worked. So why not try it? So it'll be interesting Ooh, to see. Ooh, the pace. Be super close. I think Ooh. I think Oxford Brooks A have jumped them in the pit stop have received the track limits warning as well, so clearly pushing the limits, Cardiff B, bump and pass penalty as well, they're in eighth. Liverpool B, track limits warning, also track limits penalty for Liverpool B there. Into the 56 is now 56.7 for a few drivers. Warwick A with the fastest lap of the race once again, stealing it back from the Liverpool cart out in the lead, doing everything they can to take the clubman's victory again another championship that we thought was effectively all over all said and done and it's been completely opened up today i think that was actually uwea that oxford brooks beat out of the pit lane with a 126 for brooks a 130 for uwe it was uh, more in the team times uh, in the pit stop for cardiff a and they've made it out in 28th place overall so impressive pit stop early on from uh, from Jensen Davis. I imagine it was likely him getting back in as well, but I'm not 100% sure. It's the battle near the front of the order continues to hot up, and Warwick A have now got past Coventry A on that last lap. So they're continuing to improve, uh, improve on that finishing position and continue to bring the championship, or the Clubman Championship, can I even talk now? The Clubman Championship back into their grasp even further with these increasing points for themselves. I think you finished your zesty caffeinated beverage too <laughs> early on in the day. I've, I've le left mine until late on. I haven't even drunk mine. I've <laughs> oh, not touched oh, it. Well, no, I didn't problem, need then. the energy. No, I got enough energy from the exciting racing out on circuit. It's been brilliant, to be fair. Absolutely fantastic racing. What a day it's been here at Wilton Mill to cap off the season. Completely opened the season up, really. It did. Of... It really did. Yeah, as you, as you said earlier, we thought it was pretty much done and dusted. We were like, yeah, there are these teams that, that know what they're doing, but um, is there really going to be an opportunity? Probably not. Now, we've just been told uh, in our ears that the number three of Southampton A has had a very slow pit stop. I do believe it was the number three that was being shouted uh, shouted in our ears. They're down in 30th place. Now, they've already gone through yeah, to set still. another lap time. So we can't see what time that pit stop have was. Have they gone through and set another lap time? Or have they yet to cross the actual... <laughs> no, no, surely not. How long is that pit stop going to be? No, they're, they're definitely circulating on circuit. Cool, fantastic. Okay. So, uh, Southampton A, so clearly a bit of a slow one. Came to second place on your screens then, ladies and gentlemen. Warwick A have now got through into second place overall. They're through on Surrey A, and yeah, as I said earlier, they're just bringing that championship further and further into their grasp in the Clubmans. Black flag for Huddersfield A. We have our first casualty of the fuel caps in this race. 
Huddersfield A will have to come round and do it again. That's the number 22 there, the number 22 of Edinburgh A, of course, riding us with the Jaffa Cakes today. Making sure they get that fuel cap sorted before the car is properly underway. And as we say, yeah, Warwick A extending that lead out even more. Three more points in the bag compared to the lap one position. If they come home in P2, it will be a further clear cut clubman's victory. Still all to play for in this race, of course. We saw the threat of a black flag, the threat of a penalty, nearly undoing, uh, nearly undoing Bath A's race. They were able to recover and recover well, of course, leaving their rivals questioning just how on earth did they still take the victory anyway. So it's not on the clear day, you know, it's a big issue. Can't completely eliminate you from the race, but you want to try and avoid it if possible. Two and a half seconds down off the lead of the race. It is a strong showing actually today for the Clubman's here in race three. The top ten dominated by Clubman's carts. We've saved some very fast drivers until last here. Loughborough B with the fastest lap of the race so far. A, 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 I think you said a 156, isn't it? A 56.5 matched by the Full A cart out in front, matched by a couple of others in the top 10 as well. We're on board at the moment with this battle between Warwick A and Surrey A as well. Penalty coming in for Imperial B. ABC take out penalty there. A few more track limit warnings as well. The track limit warnings have not stopped all day as we see the number 64 cars of Coventry F just having a look up the inside, seeing if there is an opportunity for an overtake. Tries the outside as well, nothing can do just yet. The track narrows ever so slightly at this second for opening up into the infamous spin corner. Hello, I'm back. We've just got uh, Jacob in, in the comms box at the moment, just having a little chat with us as we're going through the motions of this race. Just having a look at Driver of the Year. And I can tell you it's very close between a number of drivers as to who will take Driver of the Year for the 2023-2024 season. Some drivers have done some amazing standout performances, um, but it's super close as to uh, who we think has done the best job across the whole season. A couple of different drivers uh, are in are in the mix for it. We're just giving our opinions as to uh, as to what we think. But while are still out there on circuit, Warwick A fastest lap of the race, 56.456 for Warwick as they extend their gap away from Surrey to over a second now, and they're closing in that gap to the leaders. Still the 32 of Liverpool A, but that's a uh, drive of the season. All very interesting, isn't it, Reeve? Yes, it is indeed. We have, yeah, we, we said who would you think should be getting it, but it's not up to ours, it's a, it's a full group decision, but I'm sure that will all be uh, all be discussed and found out it. later on this evening. I hope they're not basing it on my I hope not, yeah, oh, I hope God. not. They definitely don't want to trust us with those kind of decisions. Uh, but yeah, of course, we've got the BUKC party this evening, that's where all the awards and everything will be given out, uh, so we'll find out uh, later on tonight as to who has got that driver of the season award. But back to the race going on, we're nearly 15 minutes down, 45 minutes left to go, and the main talking point of this race was, was Warwick A, and wow, what a race they've had so far, Eve. Indeed, closing that gap, as you say, to Liverpool A. Liverpool A still managing that pace, managing it well, but certainly not clearing off into the distance. We've got a black, uh, we've got a black track for fuel cap again. Just oh dear, Bristol A this time. Thought you would have learned, guys. Come on. Yeah, we've had two already in this race. Two already in this race. Wow. Okay. No, again. Piers lied to us last time, so I don't know if we should believe him, but there's reports of rain again it's in fair, the pit I don't lane. Think he lied. I don't think he lied. I mean, we can't see. We, we can't, can't see, yes. We're but, boxed okay, in. Well, let's say he lied. It didn't affect the race at all if there was any rain last time, but you can definitely see it is a bit darker it's on looking, your screens. Yeah, look, there's a bit of a wet line beginning to sort of form there. Letting... We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. A lot of time left to go in this race. So a lot of time for things to change and for things out of people's control to get involved as well. One of those being the weather up here in Northamptonshire. Going to have a quick look at the Met Office to see what they're saying. Uh, so they don't think there's going to be any. No, today, less than 5% chance of rain between now and 7 o'clock. So... Uh, Potentially a slight downpour, but I don't think anything that's going to be staying around for a consistent amount of time and will really affect this race. But you never know. 
as we said earlier, the uh, forecast of today was totally wrong. Leading up to today, I thought it was going to be very wet today, and it certainly has not been. Downpours every now and then, but mostly dry today, surprisingly, to cap off a BUKC season. And as we say, it's a winter series. We're used to a lot of rain. Uh, it makes it very interesting with all these drivers racing on those slick tyres. But today, they've been treated to a bit of dry running, which I'm, I'm sure some drivers will be happy today about. Today, we've had arguably the yeah. nicest conditions that we've had. <laughs> when it's been so rainy since the start of April, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be raining throughout April. So somehow we've locked out on a day with, with no rain. 40, not happy there. Were they coming into server Black Black? Yeah, Bristol A were for the yep. fuel cap. So again, they were a bit confused about that. Ben Healy Smith was there leaving the pit lane. I know he started the race uh, for Cardiff B, so he's back in the car once again. He rejoins the circuit in P20. That is just one of those cases, though, where you understand why the stewards are on the side of the course, really, don't you? And you don't want the possibility of open fuel tanks going up. So we have a bit of a slow getaway. Henderson was a little bit more chill there about getting the fuel cap on. He wasn't too bothered for the... Uh, uh, for the... Which car was that? 42. I know it off the top, I can think of it, but I can't Brunel. remember the name. Brunel, that's it, of course. I should have known they've got a massive B on the back of their suit. Uh, so I should have known that. But yeah, Brunel exiting the pit then. Uh, I think they've come out in around 26th place, they rejoined. But yeah, their pit stop, 1 minute 49 seconds there. Not not challenging the speediest pit stops there, Brunel. But still, on the front of the order, still only about two seconds, separating Liverpool and Warwick. It's all sort of... All sort of slowed down at the front of the field now between those two the gap hasn't really changed in the last few laps yeah we're in kind of race management mode yes really southampton a with a 56.4 it's i think overall it's been such an odd season for southampton and they've shown flashes of fantastic pace yeah and they oh wow warwick a at 56.3 wow laying down the pace. I don't think we're going to be seeing 55s if we are getting these reports of rain anytime And it's just soon. getting colder and darker as well, isn't yes. it? So unlikely that we'll see the 55s. UWA, there's still the odd cone murder taking place here at Wilton Mill. Warwick A really closing that gap now down to Liverpool A. 1.7 seconds, that is not a comfortable gap, all that is a few sloppy corners and then you're in the midst of battle. Indeed, yep, that gap getting a little bit closer to the top two. We still look at the 64 and the 14, so this is the battle for sixth place at the moment. Coventry F fending off Loughborough B. Of course, midway through the pit window at the moment, seems to be a little bit less action than what we actually had in the first few races, which surprises me. I thought we were going to have we were going to have more and more as the races went by, especially after how the first race the afternoon went. We were going to see everyone kind of diving in really early on. But yeah, yeah, be not as many people going for the undercut as maybe we would have thought. Yeah, maybe something we missed. There's a move down the inside though. It's Lafra B trying to get it done, but they've got a little bit too deep. And back through go Coventry F. Come with GF, so you're going to have to try a little bit harder there to get through. It's not happened this time, and Swansea B now find themselves right behind them as well. So again, the one time that we're seeing Swansea flying out there on circuit is their B team. And again, I do think it's the same driver who got a really good result in the sprint earlier in the B team for them. And Cardiff A are also flying. The other Welsh team out there, Cardiff A in 13th place, a 56.3. Now the fastest lap of the race. Very strong time there from Cardiff A. Of course, not quite, not quite the electric recovery that I'm happy we were expecting. We knew, it was a slightly scruffy lap on for everyone, really, wasn't it? And that maybe has hurt their chances in this race. We were basing our our kind of declaration of the championship on Cardiff A performing incredibly strongly, and it hasn't quite happened. No, no, it hasn't quite happened, has it? Still sitting down there in uh, just outside of the top ten of Cardiff. I do think, uh, of course, we saw Cardiff come in for a very early pit stop in they this did. one. So how will it play out? We still definitely owed quite a few pit stops here uh, from drivers ahead of them as this battle's getting very feisty. Swansea B forced out wide there as they try and find their way through. Has it changed in front of them though? Yes, it has. The 14 Loughborough B has got through or has stayed in front of, I should say, Coventry F. The battle's still going on. Just ahead of them, one of the Liverpool carts, the 61 there. 
just in front of them. But yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Five more minutes left to go in the first round of pit stops. It's Imperial A, and one of those, they come into the pit lane now. And it is Liverpool C there versus Loughborough B. That is lap traffic, and I suspect the fourth mark Liverpool C. No, no, yes, Liverpool C are in this race, they are lap traffic. That's the number 54 car. The number 54. Slow pit stop there, but back on the way. Obviously, wants to be careful of the fuel cap. We've seen that be yes. a bit of a thorn inside of many a driver, so Imperial Age taking their time. They're on board now with a battle involving UWEA. Cardiff do have that fastest lap from Jensen Davis. They now find themselves up in the top 10 as drivers start to come into pit. And the leader has come into the pits. Liverpool A are in. Are they already are they already out? Yeah, 1 minute 21 pit stop. So a good stop from Liverpool B. Sees them return to the track in sixth place. How far ahead are they from Cardiff? Because we know they've pitted seven seconds ahead. So they've still okay. got a good margin in the lead here, Liverpool. They do. Unsure as to whether or not they've done any driver swap. I suspect with a 21, probably not. And probably that may not. Be the right. Lewis Jackson is a fairly competent driver, so it would um, make sense for him to be yeah. in the longest stint of the race. Down the inside, then the number 56 textbook move there, Coventry E, gaining the position. Let's look on them. I'm liking how, as we're at spin corner here, you can just see all the track and all of the tyre tracks <laughs> heading through the grass. Change for the leader, that is Surya diving into the pits as well. A lap later than Liverpool, eh? How much does that cost? That has actually cost them a little bit. It's, uh, it's cost them quite a bit in terms of track position here. There are a few places down on Liverpool, eh? Interesting. 25. Slightly slower pit stop. Mm. Yeah, slightly slower, but not a amount but to be fair all the drivers around them are all very very close to yeah. each other right to beat co penalty coming in there got a couple of carts occupying the field by 41 and 61 oh interesting so yes yeah, sorry are now behind warwick and warwick are now behind cardiff so it's been a great run through so maybe more teams should have listened to the earlier races and coming in early because it's worked for cardiff it seems yeah, that appears to be the case. Maybe we do know what we're talking about. No, that would be no, insane. Yeah. <laughs> right, we've got more in the pits then. Coventry F and Lancaster B head their way into the pit lane. It's only got two and a half seconds. Uh, sorry, two and a half seconds. That would be a very short amount of pit window left. Two and a half minutes left on the pit window. As we see some drivers jumping out, more drivers hopping in. That looks like a slow pit stop there. Definitely slow for the 64, they've lost out there compared to uh, the 72 of Lancaster B. So Lancaster definitely will have jumped them in that pit stop. As always, it's very They're slow to get the, the fuel, fuel cap. cap on. That's commentary after there with a 134 in that pit stop. So about 10 seconds off where you'd ideally want to be. That is fairly major, especially as we say, with such a close mid-pack in this race. Those seconds are absolutely crucial, aren't they? So what we've got then, 1 minute 45 seconds left to go on the clock before the pit window closes. So Liverpool A have pitted there in third place. Cardiff and Sick definitely have, so Warwick and seventh. So sorry Nathan, look at this, Liverpool out of the pits on the charge 56.2. already. 56.2, setting the pace already. Maybe we will see drivers down on the 55s. Yeah, certainly not out of the question. Yes, that is. There is no driver change for the Liverpool A car there. See, that is the number eight. Coventry looking over the shoulder. Cardiff A right behind Cardiff. We has had some great pace. Not just flashes race, but fairly consistent pace actually throughout the day. Coventry A is Coventry. It's not been a great day for Coventry overall. They were, of course, in the mix for this championship fight heading into today. Maybe trying to make amends for it now. 
side by side heading through the final corner. It's Coventry Day ahead of Cardiff at the moment, getting on to that start finish straight. Yet yeah, the 55 is looking oh so close now. 56 flat for the fastest lap of the race. These two still flying along. A 56.2 for Warwick A, catching and catching substantially as we head down towards the Rianda, having a brief look up the inside. Cardiff A deciding nothing to be had there. Co-pens are coming in for Bristol A. Crack limits coming in for Imperial B as well. Still got the penalties absolutely flying in. I think if we did have JV's ride, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have had to worry. I don't think so. I don't think so. There's so many penalties and um, wallings and all things today, haven't there? So it's all played out. Well, there you go. 35 minutes left to go of the race then. First pit window is closed. Swansea B better come in this lap. Or... Uh, they're going to be getting a quite significant penalty. And there you go, they have come into the pit. So Liverpool A, back into the lead of the race then, but by how much? Six, six seconds. Yeah, 6.7 seconds. For Liverpool. Great stint for Liverpool, yeah. And now Coventry A and Cardiff A. Well, they're working together for the moment, but I don't think much out of choice. I think Jensen Davis wants to get past here. Can't do it this time around though. So second and third, sticking back. And they have got a driver just behind them. Is that the Warwick A cart there in fourth place? They're doing a great job. There goes Surrey A, down the inside go Cardiff A then, takes second place away from Coventry. And this is pushing them towards a really good round as well. So they now find themselves in second place. If the result stays like this, they will have a first and a second from uh, the, the results today. So do, um, so do Bath A as well. So it's going to be a, a tie break for the win of the round if Jensen Davis can, can take this home in second place. Of course, there's no bias in the commentary box here, but I have just received news that they've got an equally fast, if not sometimes occasionally quicker driver coming in after. Wow. OK, well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, we've got <laughs> Liverpool in the comms box and Cardiff in the comms box, and they're the top is, two in the race at the moment. This, we've had this before, haven't we? I think so, we had yeah. this at, well, it was last year's finals at uh, Clay. I think you might be right, yeah. yeah. Wow, your memory's yeah. good. <laughs> I would not have recalled that one. The Cardiff A have got through on commentary then. They don't seem to be under too much pressure on the re-overtake, but commentary definitely Coke sticking with Cardiff them. A. Oh dear. Oh Thank dear. you, commentary gods. <laughs> I mean, sorry, Je oh, no. no. Jensen oh, Davis. No, that is a great shape. Yeah. Cardiff A have been having a really good drive up until now. And I mean, they got second in round number two, and with that, potentially looking like another second in, uh, in sorry, in round number seven, I mean, and then in round number eight, potentially another uh, second place coming. So just that, that, that win being very elusive to Cardiff, very elusive. They still follow each other through the last couple of corners. And pushing on ahead, but Warwick, to be fair, I feel like they're slowly but surely closing in. Half a second between Coventry in third and Warwick in fourth now. Could they get involved and spice up this battle for second as well? Of course, Coventry A will effectively gain a place because of that cone penalty from Cardiff at the end of the race, but Warwick A will want to take that away, and if they can get to third, they effectively get to second with that penalty at the moment. Yeah, it's Shane Cardiff A, arguably the most consistent, if not one of the most consistent teams in the morning in round seven. Coke Fence is coming in for Swansea A as well now. Where are Swansea A? Swansea a little bit further down the order. Looks like a double penalty actually as well. I mean, of all the penalties, home penalty is probably the one you want the most. It's yes. It is only a position. Not ideal, of course. You'd rather have none, but... Yeah, if you were going to pick between penalties, it would be the code that you go for, for sure. For sure. Just over 30 minutes left to go on the clock then. We're still looking at this battle for second place. And I don't think it's the right place to be focused on, to be honest. Closest battle in the top 10 for certain. But Warwick A finding some good pace now. They've closed and closed and closed that gap. Yellow flag down into sector number three, though. Try and spot as we go through this section. Well, there's Why? Been a take out penalty for Southampton B, so I suspect. Ah, maybe something to do with that then. It looks like the yellow flag has now gone in. So whoever it was who was affected by that 
uh, continues on for another round. And as you say, yes, Southampton B, ABC take up. They've also just lost six places. So, whatever happened there, 106 lap time. Something's gone very wrong on that last lap yes. for Southampton B. Manchester A looks like they've had an issue as well, potentially involving Manchester A, then that incident, of course, we didn't see it on camera, so we cannot confirm with concrete evidence, but Manchester might be slow lap there. And as we say, as we've already said, what a shame today. Manchester started off incredibly well, in fact, race 3-4, strongest team. Yeah, they were so strong this yeah. morning, weren't they? But they just dropped off a bit throughout the day. It's not really come back to them. Such is the way, even with drop scores, you've still got to have strong consistency. Yeah, that's the key, isn't it? Consistency and fair play. Warwick are batting back very nicely in this race. They've now taken third place away from Coventry. Oh, but it was getting home there for the 41. That was up for D there, just almost getting forced out on the grass. And that move has given a little bit of breathing room to Jensen Davis there in second place. And of course, remember that code penalty once it's applied, that makes it a gift in second place to Warwick A. So they have got one and a half hands on the trophy here right now, haven't they? I don't want to get ahead of myself. There's still 30 minutes yeah. of racing to go. It could still all go wrong yeah, but at the moment. Yeah, it would take a fairly catastrophic issue, yes. but it could still happen. Indeed, that indeed. Never say, possible. never say never in the BUKC, that's for sure. Hand up. Uh, again, I think, is there still the shallow final sector? I don't know what's going on there, but drivers are... Uh, Penalty for Liverpool, eight. Bump and pass. Advantage by contact. Liverpool's hopes of a race victory today at Wilton Mill once again dashed. You know what that means as well. That puts Warwick A in the lead of the race. They couldn't, and the cone penalty to boot as well for the Liverpool A. <laughs> hey, well, I'm just going to get one. I think I'll get a couple of penalties I'm here. I said thank you, commentary gods. That might have been a little bit premature. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, thank you. The, the gods have just given it all back to yeah, you. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is karma. That is karma. And I don't think anyone on the Liverpool team is going to want to talk to me for the no, entire you're going to be hated this evening. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh Cardiff, well. Cardiff continuing to, to slide them. through. Yeah, lucky, mate. Well, hopefully you get a lift home this evening. Oh, uh, it's fine. Johnny will be my lift okay, home. Okay, cool. Fine then. Fine then. That's no problem. Just the rest of the team you have to uh, apologise to. Yeah. Uh, Southampton B, uh, after those issues and going off and getting an ABC takeout, they've now got a code penalty uh, to boot as well. So, uh, yes, as we say, it's definitely not all done and dusted in this race number three here for round eight. The British University Karting Championship 2023 and 2024, your final 30 minutes of running are ahead of us for this championship season. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you stuck with us throughout the championship. What a championship we've been. Of course, we started it out here at Wilton Mill back in November last year for the qualifiers. Sadly, qualifiers weren't live streamed, but I did hear it was a great day of racing to sort out who was in the Prems, the Clubmans and the Inters uh, for 2024. Then uh, Reeve uh, and Andrew went to PFI uh, for the first couple of rounds of the season. Uh, then myself finally joined, uh, finally joined the championship uh, for the next rounds of Butmore Park, where I was alongside Andrew for Butmore yes, Park. Indeed. Then I was with Reeve again uh, for Warden Law, where we had more great racing, but some very horrific conditions uh, at Warden Law. And then we've come here for the finals at Wilton Mill. What a season it's been. I hope you guys have all enjoyed it as much as we have. Yes, indeed. And the Liverpool team hate me even more now because the Liverpool B penalty has just come in. <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. And I'm the cone this. penalty as well. I am loving this. This, this is fantastic. Liverpool firing. can't seem to get one penalty. They have to get two in the space of one lap. Both of them, Liverpool A and B. Well, you've got to do something to do it well. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That, uh, the conditions out there now looking rather ominous. Mm, it does look like rain could be coming down at any point here. But maybe the drivers will get lucky and it will just hold out for the next 20, 25 minutes. And uh, we'll see it through to the end of the racing season for BUKC. And we'll go rainless at least for most of today. A little bit of showers here and there, but nothing affecting racing action too much. Of course, it was rather moist for the earlier races uh, in the morning, the first couple of races. They were far more wet. But it's been nice and dry throughout the day. We're looking at Carter C here under a little bit of pressure. I do think this is for position. So Brunel have just gone through for position. They've taken away 25th place. There is your effective leader now coming through, the 15 of Warwick A. So they haven't been able to keep up 
uh, with the seven of Cardiff A, but at the moment that doesn't really matter because of the penalties that will be applied at the end of the race. No, nope, they've just got to keep the nose clean, make sure the pit stop is good, and they'll be going home with Clubland's victory. Exactly, yeah. Not only are they dropping a little bit off of Cardiff, they are gaining a bit on Coventry. Like They are putting more time between themselves and Coventry, so race is going very nicely for Warwick A. Still a few more warnings coming in for a couple more drivers. Cardiff C with a cone penalty there. Contact warning, Liverpool B. Track limits for Manchester A. The good old track limits. Still coming into play, aren't they? Race four. We can't top race four with 14 track <laughs> that limits was in the unbelievable. morning. Unbelievable. For one driver, right? Yes, I think. I'm, don't, don't be offended if I'm wrong. I think it was Birmingham. It was Birmingham, yeah, I yeah, remember. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm going to go with this thing. He's being yeah, it was equivocal. Birmingham. It was Birmingham A. So Blame whoever was driving over Birmingham job. A, you absolute bandit. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it now. It's the end of the season. I can't annoy the uh, adjudicators out there on circuit. They've only got 25 minutes more of adjudication yeah, to got... be done. Well, I say that, 25 minutes of adjudication to be done in the mains. They've still got the Inter, Inter Championship tomorrow, which again, not streamed by Alpha Live tomorrow. As oh, all the drivers reacting again, this yellow flag still out into the final section. Um, yeah, still a lot to come. Can't follow it on Alpha Live, sadly, as into the pits come Cardiff and Swansea. They follow each other in the two Welsh teams. Uh, but as I say, no live streaming of Inters tomorrow. Uh, you'll be able to catch all the action on Alpha Timing. That'll be the best place to keep up to date with that live dot Alpha Timing at UK forward slash BUKC. But Cardiff pitting from second place then. And of course, Jensen Davis stayed in the car for the first pit stop and they, no, they're not stuck. It's Cardiff C who are behind them that are stuck. It's going to be a bit of a slow month. So Johnny Wilkinson is jumping in for the Cardiff A squad. There is Jensen Davis strutting his stuff across the front of the camera. And Nathan Fletcher was a little bit slow there. Max Watson was uh, ushering him forward to come and grab the car. He gets that uh, fuel cap off. But look at this, it's so busy down in the pit lane. If you're Two more cars are coming in as well. There's oh, going to be wow. a huge queue. That's Cardiff B. Ben Healy-Smith of Cardiff B is going to get stuck. So is the 22 the as well of Edinburgh A. Edinburgh A are losing so much time here. And now the teams have listened, listened to us too much and have all tried to barrel in right at the start of the pit window. And this is what could potentially happen sometime. Eliminating the advantage by pitting early when you're stuck in a queue waiting for fuel. I imagine there'll be a scramble now of all the other of all the other kind of team managers think... who've turned around and said come in this lap who are now going, please yes. don't come in. Yes, yeah, they'll always say don't come in, don't come in, don't come in. Waving at them uh, furiously to make sure that they don't. We saw Ben Healy Smith there jump up and out of the car. Cardiff B. Will Abraham now jumps in. We've got a new driver as well in the Edinburgh A car as well there, as they now pop their fuel cap on. There's the 56. They've chosen a much better time to come in at the yep, 56. No one's at the fuel bay. Coventry E are going to get a nice fast pit stop here. Same with the 62 of Portsmouth A, who now come into the pits as well. A little bit of confusion. Yeah. A bit of confusion there for the 56. Slightly slow oh, stop really for both cars. Well. And this could cause a bit of a backlog, a bit of a traffic jam for other carts thinking about pitting cone penalties. Ah, the so they dropped the fuel cap, that was the ah. problem there, and it had fallen through, through, the, the, chassis. through the chassis. Yeah, so they were struggling to get it back out. Bit of a nightmare there uh, for that driver. Now really. he's struggling to get it back on, so what a slow pit stop that's going to be. That is going to sting, that one. That was, one. was that was commentary E, wasn't it? It was, I think. Yeah. So we'll 22, see. 158, that's not a fast stop. Yeah, 149 for commentary E, oh. so a couple of very slow pit stops there. A couple of drivers just uh, uh, collapsing under the pressure a little bit there. But mistakes like that can so easily be made. You, you just have a bit of butterfingers, that off goes the cap, and suddenly you're trying to force your arm through the chassis to try and get it back. <laughs> Manchester A, track limits warning. One of the few teams actually to only one of the three universities also to only have one team in the uh, yeah in, in the uh, men's you don't see it so much anymore there's the 64 in as well not commentary f into the pits so the commentary making some good decisions of the when to come in but sadly at least for one of their teams is not quite mastering the pit stop itself You do have to wonder what happened in Coventry's qualifiers when they've got the F team in the pits. <laughs> a couple more 
<laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, I don't know what they were doing there uh, between their teams because, yeah, they've got uh, Coventry A, obviously, in the mains. Uh, and then which other Coventry do you have in this? E and F uh, are up in the mains, of course, in the clubman, in the clubman category. And I think that might be it, you know, for the Coventry teams. <laughs> Uh, so Maybe it's the element of surprise. A, know, E, and F, yeah. You think, oh, how, how, how good can an F team be? Yeah. Yeah. B, C, and D, just what happened to them? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to them at qualifiers? So that's the fun of qualifiers, because it always happens as well, like we saw with Loughborough for this season, the B team doing better than the A team and getting through. And I think that was actually the second year in a row that Loughborough managed to do that, so impressive. Yes. Very impressive. Ah, Warwick are in the pits. Warwick into the pits then. The all-important clubman battle into the pits they come and they just need a relaxed pit stop they're changing their uh, pedals though that's going to lose a few seconds but i don't think they've got too much to worry about can be a little bit fiddly sometimes but yeah you can also as well the driver getting out was having trouble there with the accelerator and you can often have that just from where your hands are tired from holding the steering wheel yeah. to then use them in a different way to push on that on that uh, on that pedal can be a bit of a challenge so the new driver jumps in and assists a lot look at that, yeah, 54 has come into the wrong fuel bay. The fuel bay ah. on the other side is free, and they've parked up in the one that's full. Yeah, especially in these one-hour endurance events, if I'm not the drivers on the grid today, will be like me. If you're like me and you have quite literally no fitness or stamina at all, you find yourself, with, if you've got no core strength, you prop yourself up on the steering wheel, especially in the 24-hour. And you don't realise just how sore and kind of how tired your hands are until you try and move them. Yes. It's when you try and move them, you go, when you oh. try and open them. Yeah. yeah like, oh, ah. no, they, yeah. Yeah. But it was a 137.9 in the pits of Warwick. Not very fast. And Cardiff have re-jumped them again. Cardiff now find themselves, what's that, 12, 13 seconds ahead now of Warwick. Yeah, that's quite a substantial margin there. Not an amazing pit stop from Warwick, that, that hurt them a little bit. Still looking good for them, though, in, the, in their fight for Clubbins. It is, of course, because Cardiff still have that penalty to serve as well, so that's not going to help them. And, of course, so do Liverpool now. I was so going to say, another penalty for Liverpool B, track limits. I have decided to stop accepting responsibility for any of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let it slide. I, we'll, we'll definitely put it on just to just you for the amount of celebrations just, uh, earlier. Just but don't hit codes. <laughs> that's not my fault if you hit a code. <laughs> yeah, you tell them, you tell them to the pits then, two more drivers, the 40 and the 72 are now in, 72 of Lancaster B, the 40 of Bristol A, and we've got a spinner out there, the 33 rejoining the circuit, that's Cambridge A having a little spin. Now I know of course Cambridge A had that last cra uh, large crash on the first lap, but I want to say that was race two, not race three, so yeah, Dave not going fantastically for Cambridge A, and they find themselves facing the wrong direction here with 18 minutes to go, luckily rejoining the circuit. All safe and sound, no penalties uh, for them for any unsafe rejoins. So well done to Cambridge, rejoining the circuit, but still finding themselves uh, a little bit further down the order than maybe they would have hoped. More cone penalties coming in there. Another penalty track limits for Liverpool B. Have they forgotten how to track? Are they doing Zulu? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe they'll start off. There is the other play. So that is Lewis Jackson out of the cart. Tom Eichen into the cart. Maybe. Time to recover what they can, of course. Race victory was on the cards. Not anymore, but still. A good result to be had. Can they get out ahead of Cardiff? That's the question. I mean, they had a good little lead. Close. It was Cardiff a decent had a good pit stop, stop given it was a drive. Given it was a drive train. Yeah, fair play. Not bad at all. Fair play. They have got through Cardiff, not even at the start finish line yet. So yeah, Liverpool have smashed that pit stop. Uh, but I will say, Surrey A have jumped Warwick A in the pit stops. Surrey A are still just ahead ah, of them out so on they circuit. Have. So yeah. So now effectively, Surrey A now have the lead of this race. Surrey A have had a sneaky couple of good results here today, haven't oh, they? Oh, I think they've got them. I think they've got them around the last part of the lap. Yeah, 15 is ahead. So Warwick A retake the lead of the race. Yeah, you were saying about Surrey, they've been impressive, haven't they? Yeah. Impressive stuff from a lot of club and teams. Oh, that's a bit of a wide moment there uh, for the 51. Getting a little bit uh, slidey for Oxford Brooks D. There's all Warwick now trying to uh, gain another couple of, uh, well, track position anyway on the 27. Of course, 27 not involved in the battle. They are down in 24 for Swansea A. And oh, it's uh, it's Mr. Palmer who's in for, for uh, Warwick, who has the lovely googly eyes on the back of his helmet. Of course, yes. Of course, how could we forget? They were very distracting at Warden 
weren't they? They were. I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, suppose, I think it was supposed to work on the drivers, though, not on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, unintended consequences. <laughs> These things happen. But yeah, they're both trying to get through on, the, on Swansea A, then, aren't they? We're closing in towards 15 minutes to go. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, effectively your battle for the race win. Can Surrey hold on to the back of Warwick here? Like nearly tried to follow them through the back marker there, not able to do so. And that's going to give the advantage to Warwick A here. They could take the club and championship win and a race win. Overall what a way race to, win. What a way to convert. Wow. What a way to convert what looked like a clear Lancaster A victory in Clubman's. I mean, at like round three and four, we were like, oh, it's done and dusted. Lancaster yep. were just steamrolling this championship. They are so good. But then Warwick just had that extra push in the last part of the season. Lancaster just dropped off. They wouldn't carry on that consistency that they had early on in the season. And yeah, I think it's going to cost them. And I think that Warwick A are going to steal away the championship on the last day. Yeah, the second half of the season, Warwick A have been slowly chipping away at that advantage that Lancaster built. And it hasn't been noticeable until until round seven and round eight, where round seven, they were eighth overall. A mighty impressive job in the clubman's category mm. and looking to be particularly good here in round eight as well. The um, I feel like, if I remember correctly, was it one of the Warden Law rounds where Lancaster really dropped off? They had a real stinker, I feel like, in one of the Warden Law rounds. It was indeed. Round five at the morning of Warden Law, they came 30th on the road. Yeah, that yeah, really hurt it. them. And with a potential race victory of the cards for Warwick A here, they'll be one of the top scorers in not just the clubman's overall yeah. in, wow. in today's round eight. Wow, yeah, fair play to them. Yeah, if you get a win on a win overall in the race, you're setting yourself up for a pretty good round result. Um, and yeah, of course, benefiting a little bit from drivers ahead having penalties, but you've got to be in it to win it. And they put themselves there with no penalties. They're very deserving of it. I will say as well, I've just seen Manchester A get two code penalties on the same lap. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> fair play to the drivers. Uh, from Manchester, 87 to 48, going side by side. That's Imperial B in ninth place, putting another lap on the number 48. It's Brighton B in 23rd at the moment. 13 and a half minutes left to go then for race number three of round eight of the BUKC season. And it was all looking very close. It is still very close. Surrey A have got back past Warwick A while we were looking away there. So what's happened? So the back markers now back ahead of both of them. But look at the gap that's formed between Surrey and Warwick. So something's happened between these two that's created this gap to form because, of course, Palmer was ahead of both of these two drivers. So not sure what's happened there. But Surrey, I believe, now take the effective lead of the race once more. Of course, you can't really say, will we carry this momentum forward into the next season? Because it's a whole six or seven months until yeah. qualifiers. The team rosters will be changing, unfortunately saying goodbye to some people, but we will be saying hello to some new faces as well. You get that nice sort of revolving door with the UKC as older faces leave, newer faces uh, come Sometimes into the mix. Older faces leave. Sometimes older faces manage to stay around for about <laughs> 10 years. How do they years. do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's all these courses in golf course management that they definitely take. It's, that must be it. Yes, yeah, 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 I think and, so. And other, other degrees that are easy to get onto, shall we say? Yes, yes, indeed. We, we know a few drivers that have done that over the years, don't we? Uh, no, but, but legitimately, there are, there are also cases of drivers one decided, yes, I'll stick around at uni because of the BU cases. Yes. Yeah, genuinely, genuinely. I mean, it's great racing, so much fun, and it's not just about the racing, it's about the whole thing, isn't it, with BUK? So you're hanging out with your mates, you're having a good time, uh, and yeah, being involved with your motorsports club at university, and yeah, the, the best thing I ever did at university was join the motorsports club, so great to still be involved in some capacity here, commentating for the BUKC. Surrey A being a little bit held up now by the Swansea A cart, both similar in pace, but Surrey A really want to be released here. They don't want to allow for Warwick to get back involved, but now they have put two carts in between themselves and Warwick. The number two of Oxford Brooks A, uh, and also the 42, that is, who's in between them. Oxford Brooks are trying to fight back. That's the 42 of Brunel A in 20th. Okay, so 
Bruno, wait, hold on a second. How are Bruno A behind the 27? They must have made that overtake on this last lap. So Swansea A have got past Bruno A for 20th place on this last lap. There you go. Confirmed on the timing tower on the left of the screen. But that battle in and amongst it still going on. So Swansea having a lovely push in the second half of this race. But battles galore still going on. Co penalty coming in for Southampton B and Lancaster B as well. Of course, don't forget Liverpool A first on the road, still carrying that penalty. I didn't notice. Oxford Brooks A have got past Surrey and Warwick in that battle, so they Oxford have. Brooks A yes. now take the effective lead of the race. Yep. I can't remember Believe if they've this. got any penalties in this one as of yet. Not that I've noticed specifically. We nearly missed an Oxford Brooks A penalty before. Hopefully, for their sake and for ours, we haven't done so. Yes, once again, penalties very much the name of the game here, proving it to be a race of attrition. If you kept the nose clean, you'll be rewarded with a decent result. Think back to race two, Bath A didn't quite keep clean in terms of penalties. They fully believed their fuel cap was on, but it was decided it wasn't. It didn't matter in the long run anyway. They just about clawed victory. Yeah, it was impressive, wasn't it? Did everything they needed to do across the final round. Um, but still, it wasn't enough. Not it wasn't quite, no. enough across the whole season. So well done to Reading. I'm sure they'll be partying hard uh, tonight at the uh, at the awards evening in the Wilton Mill Bistro Clubhouse. We've still got just less than 10 minutes to go this race, though. Four look minutes at this. of pit window. This is the battle for the lead, effectively, here. Surrey A trying to force their way through. They're going to side by side to the last couple of corners. Back Ooh. through goes Oxford Brooks A, but they're very slightly the switch up and back under. worked well there. What a switchback. They're going to be side by side heading into the first couple of corners. Will Oxford Brooks A give up the position? Yes, Surrey A back through into the lead of the race then. These two are battling at it. Is this, this isn't for position though. So this is Coventry A who are just ahead of Surrey and Oxford Brooks. I don't think Coventry have pitted. I don't think so, but maybe I'm misremembering that. Maybe Coventry are ahead in this battle. I've got no idea what's going on anymore, Reeve. No, at this stage we are two and I'm two so hours confused. and fifty minutes into some into some endurance I'm racing. So confused. Uh, well, we'll wait until the pit window closes so we can save for definite. We've only got what's that? Three and a half minutes left to go uh, before the pit window closes, and then we'll know for sure who's in the lead of this race because we know Liverpool and Cardiff have penalties, um, but only plus one, one for, for Cardiff. Cardiff, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's a plus. Five for Liverpool. I think they've got an ABC something and a ABC bump and pass yeah. and a cone penalty. Okay, maybe that's four there. The bump pass might be three. I can't really remember. There's, a, there's some penalties at the front. It anyway, wasn't a take. It was a take out. I think. Yeah, that's been confirmed as well. Oh, Surrey and Oxford Brooks have both got through on Coventry. So Surrey back to fourth, then Brooks back to fifth, Coventry down to sixth. You may have just caught it in the picture in picture. The fuel bay is now closed. No refueling for the carts. Seven minutes oh, to the, go. That must mean everyone's pitted then, because obviously you still got two, two and a bit minutes. So yeah. they wouldn't close it before if everyone wasn't in. So unless they're feeling particularly deep. Yeah, that would be <laughs> a very, very mean. Uh, very, very mean. Um, you've got an ABC bump and pass of Swansea A. They're involved in this sort of front battle. And there's a move. Through goes Warwick A. I think on Coventry A. Yeah, Benjamin Southgate for Coventry A. There getting overtaken. So through go Warwick into sixth place overall. And once again, what a race it's been uh, for Warwick A. They can continue to press on towards that club and victory. And uh, yeah, now just trying to work out what's going on uh, in terms of the race win here. It's going to be a little bit difficult to work out, to be honest. Now we sort of need to know whether Southampton uh, have any penalties from this race. Not that I can recall, but there have been a few in this one to try and remember. Of course, the windswept Mr. Mather would probably be disappointed to me if I didn't mention in the dying minutes, we haven't mentioned it for a good few hours, the round five of the BUKC iRacing Championship coming up this Wednesday on the Double Dash YouTube channel, you'll find that streamed there. Another avenue to get involved in some BUKC action, of course, on the iRacing Simulator. Indeed, yeah, and to be fair, I've watched a few of the rounds this season, and oh, the racing it's is brilliant fantastic. Racing. So good. I always think back to the Alton Park clip uh, where there's three BUKC drivers going at it on the last lap in, uh, in Formula Fords. Unbelievable. 
Yeah, as Reeves says, definitely recommend watching that. You say it was next Wednesday? Yes, Wednesday. Lovely, lovely. We'll definitely tune in on that over on the Double Dash Motorsport Media YouTube channel. Six minutes still to go of BUKC action, though, in 2024. It's all just coming to a close here. It's definitely been the most relaxed of the three Enduros, I think it's safe it to say. It has. I think that the stakes in the championship certainly made things just a little bit more exciting in race two, especially with Bathe deciding to make it more difficult. For <laughs> well, maybe not deciding to make themselves more difficult, deciding to make it more difficult for themselves, but, you know, things were made more difficult. Indeed. Indeed they were. They did make them a bit more difficult for themselves, didn't they? But anyway, it wasn't meant to be for Bathe. Reading have taken Despite the championship. Their best efforts, I mean. Oh my goodness! Wow. They, could, they literally efforts. couldn't have done better. No, they could have done better. Two wins across the two rounds. Penalty for Liverpool A coming in Ooh, track limits. Another one. Another one for Liverpool A. That's going to drop them seriously down. Maybe even out of the top ten now with all those penalties. But uh, yeah, still unsure about Southampton. So we think Southampton then are in the lead of this race effectively, with Surrey in second. Brooks in third and Warwick. Uh, no, it will be it will be Southampton who win the race with Cardiff in second because Cardiff only have plus one penalties. That's right. With Surrey in third, Brooks fourth, and Warwick fifth. Then effectively, we think at the moment. But um, oh no, we've lost the oh spreadsheet no. of doom laptop as, after oh ten no. hours. She's she's given up the ghost. Spreadsheet of doom has died. But I think luckily she served us well throughout today because I think we know relatively what's going on in terms of uh, the championship. And we're just looking at how this race comes to a close. Still looking here, the 23 and the 2. So this is the battle for fourth place on the road at the moment. It will be third place at the chequered flag once penalties applied to Liverpool A. Surrey, another really impressive performance here. Not quite stringing it together with the season, not quite able to charge Warwick, or challenge Warwick, I should say. Warwick in Lancaster for... Uh, the win in second place in the championship, but super impressive through the season for Surrey A, and they've been very impressive, particularly this afternoon in the Enduros, because if my uh, mind serves me correctly, they had a pretty good result in the previous race, did Surrey, and they're going to be there, they're certainly on for another one in this one. Still in that 56 second range, of course, earlier on in this race, rain was threatened. In fact, rain wasn't just threatened, it was, it was a fairly decent. A little smattering of it, but we seem to have avoided that once again. The weather gods, at least, have been on our side today. That's true, yeah. I'd sell I didn't believe Piers, and I'm glad I didn't, because he was not. <laughs> <laughs> I know he can hear me. Yeah, like, I was going to say, Piers. Piers can hear you. Piers, poor, poor Piers. <laughs> Piers would do a great pick, job. He just, just goes to the second come of just a sad, sad <laughs> Piers. Sad just, Piers. Yeah, can we get sad Piers in small in the small screen, that, please? That will get me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will meme it myself. These uh, drivers continue on, though, for the last three minutes of the race. There are Warwick A in sixth place overall at the moment. We do think that will be fifth overall by the time they get to the chequered flag, but Mr Palmer doing a great job there to bring it home for Warwick A and for them to take the championship in club. And there is Sad <laughs> Piers. I'm so sorry, Piers. I do apologise. I'll give you a big hug after this race. How about that? Oh, I feel really bad, though. <laughs> That South Place definitely wasn't being put on. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. More uh, penalties still coming through. Better commentator and presenter than actor. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Not an acting career ahead for, for Piers Pryor, but definitely a commentary and presenting career. He's been fantastic all season uh, for the BUKC, chatting to all the drivers and getting all of the uh, inside gossip and banter for our BUKC grid for 23 and 24. As I was saying, still lots of penalties coming through. Swansea B now with the track limits and ABC takeout uh, for Portsmouth A. They're on for a good race as well up in ninth place for Portsmouth, so that's going to drop them down a few positions is that penalty late on in this one. To be fair, we haven't mentioned in a while the gap that Liverpool have in the lead of the race. 14 I don't seconds want to think about nearly. It. That's just rubbing salt into the wound. Unbelievable. If they just had to kept the nose clean, what a result it would have been in this race. At least, at least we didn't have the same situation in the morning or anything like that. No, 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 no. no. They would never no. do it twice. Yep, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Enough repeat, contact penalty there. See, other people get penalties. It's fine. <laughs> you don't get blamed for those, though, certainly. I think you probably do. Yeah, probably. That's yeah. Fair. yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah more penalties. Love for B contact. Edinburgh A track limits now as well. Now, 
I will say, if there's anything that proves that bribing the commentators works, it's this Warwick A Championship oh, yes. win. They came into the round in second place behind Lancaster. They gave us a box of Stella, and wouldn't you know it, they've won the championship. Yeah, so for anyone, my favourite champagne is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my favourite sports car is... We just keep upping it every yeah. round, but we want more, please, this time. Uh, but to be fair, I say that, I'm calling it. There's still 45 seconds left to go uh, on the timing screen. Your lead is about halfway through uh, this lap. So next time they come around, uh, Liverpool B, uh, sorry, Liverpool A, will see the last lap board. There's Warwick. There is the 27 of Swansea A. They had a good run through the second half of this race, gaining a good couple of positions up into 19. Uh, they go. But we're almost at the end of the season. Yeah, I don't want to get ahead of myself with Warwick. It could still go wrong in the last couple of rounds. 15 seconds but... left of the time we'll of see. the season. I know, I know. What a fantastic season it's been. I hope you've all enjoyed sticking around with us for the full season. And thank you through the pit lane. Yes, it is indeed the Ratters Media on, on the comps. Thank you for that, Lucy. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed the stream, as always, bringing you all of the action throughout the season here for BUKC. And there is the 32 of Liverpool A. They've seen the last lap board already, and now they head around this last lap to finish what, what's going to be... Well, what's happened there? They're only 11 seconds now in the lead. I think it was a little bit more than that, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, it's still going to be a huge race win on the road by nearly 12 seconds as they come home. They're just coming around the last corner behind Benjamin Southgate. But sadly, I think there's three, if not four, penalties to be served after the race here for Liverpool. A. So although they win it on the road, it's not going to be a win uh, on the final uh, finishing order sheet for Liverpool A. It isn't either going to be for Cardiff A because they've at least got a cone penalty. I do think that Johnny Wilkinson has kept his nose clean since he got in that cart, but still at least one position lost then uh, for Cardiff A by the time that all the, uh, all the results are said and done. But Southampton A, we think, are going to be your race winners here. They come across the line in third place, but take the win, we believe, once penalties have been applied. But here come number 15 across the line. They take the Clubman Championship for 2023 and 2024. Well done to Warwick A. As we were mentioning earlier, it, it seemed like it was around. said and done. It seemed yeah. like it was said and done. Lancaster A did such a ridiculously good job in the opening part of the season. We thought, that's it, it's done and dusted. But Warwick A come back to the second half of the season and snatch it in the last round. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant effort there as well. Other stars of the round, Bath A. We, as we've already said, physically physically couldn't have done more. So let's have a look at our provisional results. We know, of course, Liverpool A and Cardiff A are going to be penalised, leaving Southampton A, we believe, Brooks A, and then Surrey A, Warwick A, Loughborough B, Portsmouth A, Sheffield A, and Coventry F. Coventry A, Imperial B, Leeds A, and Coventry E. And then rounding out the top 15, it is... It is <laughs> Liverpool B, and then we have Lancaster B, Cardiff A, Birmingham A, Swansea A, Imperial A, Top 20, Brunel A, Edinburgh A, Manchester A, Liverpool B, Brighton B, followed by Oxford Brooks D, Liverpool C, and then rounding out the field, it is Southampton B, UWE A, Huddersfield A, Bath C, Cardiff C, Bristol A, Swansea B, and Cambridge A for the last time this season. Lovely. Well, what a season it's been. Great race to cap it off. What a brilliant day of racing it's been. But, uh, of course, end of the season for, for BUKC. We've got lots to look forward to, though, with all lots of different Club 100 action. Uh, we've got uh, Club 100 sprints at GYG in a fortnight's time. So make sure you subscribe to Alpha Live so you don't miss that action from deep in the Welsh countryside. And, of course, as Reeve mentioned, the BUKC iRacing final round on Wednesday night next week. Make sure you tune in on Double Dash Motorsport Media for that one. But what a fantastic season it's been. Of course, Andrew Mather's been in the comms box for a bit of it. So has myself, John Ratcliffe, and so has Reeve Taylor. I hope you enjoyed our commentary. Reeve, any final words? Yeah, what a great season it has been. It's been my first sort of properly fully fledged BUK season. And yeah, it's been great fun to commentate. Every race has pretty much been a nail biter. Your heart rate, your heart rate rise because there's just been so many odd little permutations and 
little moment. Everything turns on its head towards the end of the race, usually, when you think it's all kind of calm and settles and it all kicks off again. Congratulations to Reading A and Warwick A for the championships, as well as other teams like Bath A, Coventry A, Southampton A, Lancaster A, all brilliant drives this season. I think the standards have been overall fairly good. Maybe JV's bribe helped earlier <laughs> on in the season because we had quite a few penalties today, but still good season all round. Yeah, great. It's fantastic. We've thoroughly enjoyed it up here. A uh, yeah, big well done to all of the teams involved. We, all, we hope you've all had a fantastic season. A big thank you to everyone that's made it possible. Of course, all of the Alpha Live crew bringing you the live stream, everyone at Club 100 that gets it sorted, all the marshals out there on circuit today, all the medical staff, everyone involved with making BUKC happen. A big thank you to you. And now another person that we've missed off of the commentary team for 2023 and 2024. What a fantastic job Piers Pryor Absolutely. has done all season. And we're going to go down to him for the final time this season. Piers, over to you. Reeve, John, thank you so much for your commentary services over this whole BUKC season. It's been great to have you calling all the action on circuit. And now we're down getting some reaction from the final race of the year. We've got Oxford Brooks B A. Oxford Brooks A driver came, uh, I think it was actually a fourth on the road, but second after the penalties. Oh, okay. So pretty happy with I'll that. Take that. I'll take that. Yeah, no, we had a good race. Um, well, we had Marlow out first, who uh, had a good good stint. He got us up to seventh, I think, after his stint. Uh, I went out, warmed the car up a little bit, and got settled into a good race with number 23. I can't remember who that would be, but no, it's great. It's great fun, actually, to be good, good to end the season. So Good to end the season. Not quite as high as you did last year. Number two going into this year. You're yeah. not going to be second this year. Bit of recovery year this year. So, uh, Say that again, sorry. Bit of recovery year this year. So um, we, we lost quite a few drivers last year. I think you probably mentioned in the past, but no, it's... it's got a great new set of guys here and looking forward to next year now so looking forward to next year. you can build on that i'm gonna let you go and celebrate with your team with your second place after penalties and we've got our our southampton driver southampton yes yeah uh, it's third on the road yes but win after penalties oh brilliant um my team had already signaled to me p1 from the side but i didn't believe it but i guess now is the confirmation so yeah yeah we got, we got penalties i think liverpool got about seven places worth of penalties oh, really? and okay. cardiff got some penalties as well so yeah a pretty good way to end the year even though uh, of course, he didn't quite get the, the championship year after. Yeah, this morning, a few things went wrong, but these things happen, penalties here and there, so just struggling to get used to the new layout, I think. I don't particularly like it, but... <laughs> um, it's only one extra corner. You're right, well, yeah, I suppose, but it's one worse corner, so... <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it, happy overall. Obviously a shame, as you say, to not overall win the championship, but I think... I'm hoping we did enough to get on to the podium overall. So Well, we'll find out very, very shortly. And uh, you'll be joining us for that podium uh, because we're going to wander around, have a chat to some of the drivers, get some of the reaction from the year. And we're going to be bringing you the, the uh, podium for the round and also the overall podium live because hopefully they'll be happening in the next, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes or so. We can mingle around. You can see all the drivers and team members and friends and family all standing there having a, having a chat and getting themselves mentally prepared for the BUKC party, which happens this evening. Am I right to screw, squeeze through here, please, gents? Thank you so much. Why don't we just wander through the crowd and just pick on some random people? Hello there, team. We're just coming in for some uh, post-race uh, analysis. How was that? How was that for you guys? Uh, hard work. Who are you and who are you driving for? Uh, Cardiff B. Will Abraham. How, um, you say hard work. How, why was it hard work? Um, the layout was more physical than I'd say any other circuit we go to at the moment. Um, Physically hard work then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the boots grippy at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you're going to be getting in the gym between now and November, getting getting big for next season, make sure that you're physically prepared. Uh, I don't think I want to get any more weight, to be honest. <laughs> um, it hinders me enough as it is. <laughs> you'll have to get out in the car and be a bit cart fit then. Right, that's uh, thank, great to hear from, uh, from the drivers hearing that it's a pretty physical out there all right there team how are you getting on uh, yeah. tired right. tired after a long day's race and remind us which team you guys are uh uea and b uea and b um sum up uea and b season it's been in a it's been a, a roller coaster ride uh, more of a downwards roller coaster i'd say sadly um I'd, I'd say a train crash <laughs> oh my god <laughs> better than last year though uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. two teams disqualified in their qualifiers last year so yeah, at least not, we're here. Not, not just, not just uh, two teams disqualified, one in Inters. We actually got some in Mains this year, which was good. So. And, and here you are. And, and you're going to be coming back again next year, all of you? Definitely will, definitely will. Hopefully we'll get a few more in qualifiers as well. Uh, get a few more in Inters, get some rookies in, and then have another, have another crack at Mains and see how we do. Are you going to be back as well? 
Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? UEA, I'm glad to have glad to hear from you. Um, what about you guys? How's uh, how's your season gone? Remind us who you are and who you're racing for. Uh, so I'm Seb. I'm racing for Sheffield B. It's been a up and down season. So I think at Buckmore I had my best race. I went from 26th to fourth. So it's probably the highlight. Um, but just now in the in the uh, in race two, I binned into the pit wall. Oh dear! We still finished 29th. Oh, you were the one that was in the pit wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There were some people that weren't very happy with you. A couple of people tried to go in the pits and had to bail. <laughs> I mean. I think it affected me the more than it affected them, so... Yeah, you know what, I've actually been in that pit wall in exactly the same situation. The only difference was, um, I ended up nearly losing my team in the championship, so at least, you didn't, at least you didn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, that would, be, that would make it worse. So, at, at least with this, we weren't really fighting for very much. Um, so, it's a, it's a lesson. You live and you learn. So. You do live and you learn. Are you physically okay? Because when I went in the wall, I dislocated my thumb, so... Um, I managed to break quite a lot of things on the cart when I went into the wall, so... Um, but physically, you're okay? Yeah, I think so. Rib's a bit sore, but that's about it. All right, and uh, how would you sum up your team's uh, season in the BUKT this year? I mean, fairly up and down as well. I'm also in Sheffield B, so uh, had some good races towards the start of the season. Declined a bit towards the end, um, but, yeah, overall, not too bad for our first... Uh, good. Well, we'll be seeing you back next year. And what are you guys doing the uh, 24 hour coming up soon? Should be, should be. Should be? Yeah, so if I don't take a tyre off the rim like I did last year. Oh yeah, okay. And are you guys looking forward to that? It's a good event every year, isn't it? Um, honestly, I enjoyed it so much when I went last year. Brilliant. I think best, best car race I've been to, so looking forward to do it again. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's good to hear. Well, well, hopefully you'll be able to join us for that. A little uh, grow up walking and see if we can grab some more words with... Who's this? Is a big big team over here. Hello, guys. How are you, how are you getting on? Um, which team have we got congregating over here? Imperial B and Imperial A. Imperial B. So, Imperial, um, that's it. BUKC24 done. Uh, sum it up for us. Is, have you had a good year? Have you had a bad year? Have you had an indifferent year? Have you had fun? Ups and down. <laughs> Ups, Ups and down. A shocker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think... I think that last race is quite good. The good way to end. <laughs> yeah. Was the start of the year stronger or the end of the year? None of it. The B, we had a really good. Quality. It was just all a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mess. Yeah. We had two. We were second place this morning and then uh, crashed. We were first place race after that and got taken out. We've just uh, looked at the uh, timing sheet and found out we got a sixth place advantage by contact takeout, which isn't optimal. Um, Suboptimal, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Not optimal. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. Are you guys joining us for the BUKC 24 hour uh, at Teesside? Hopefully. Yes, Hopefully. Are. Yeah. 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 It should be. Yeah, should be great. We'll come in full force. Two teams. Yeah. Two, teams. Yeah. Two full. How many people in each team? Uh, eight and twelve. Eight and twelve. Seems like eight and twelve. Wow, twenty people. Yeah, full force. As I said, you know, bringing the uh, the qualifiers team, which we uh, we wish we had the whole season. We, we I think we, we did we come last in. How we scammed Prems. We had our full strength team and then Prems, and then we got we get beaten by most of the teams in Clubmans, but. It's fine. <laughs> hey, you know what? We move. Um, good, good to have you, and I'm glad to see that you're joining us for the 24. Uh, let, let's go with a bit of chat to Liverpool. Liverpool, um, how's it going? How's it, how's it gone? Uh, it was all right, but well, we just won. We got, well, you didn't. Well, we did on the road. You did on the road, yeah. And um, we got plus seven on penalties. So not the best, but a uh, nice way to end the year. Naughty, naughty boys, naughty boys. What were the penalties for? Uh, ABC, um, bumper pass, and then a few cones and track limits. But, you just know, casual. Just, just casual, yeah. Can't go wrong. The pace was good. The pace was very strong. Good way to end the season. And uh, are you guys joining the BUKC party uh, that is happening this evening upstairs? Um, don't think so, no. It's a long way back to Liverpool. It's a, it's a long way back to Liverpool, yeah. So, uh, no. And then looking ahead, the next BUKC event is, uh, we've got the qualifiers in November, but before then, the 24 hour. Any of you joining us for the 24 hour? Probably, yeah. All of us. Sweet. So that means a full-fledged team. How many people in the team? Uh, we'll probably run two. We ran two teams last year, so we'll probably run two again. Um, five or six in each team. Too. Lovely, sounds great. And any of you joining us for the uh, for that? Not talking. I don't want to say anything. Nothing at all. No. 
No, at all. How many did you get? Uh, plus five. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! Okay then, that's uh, that's a lot of penalties in one go. Um, Liverpool. You got them over two laps. Liverpool. You know what I really enjoy about Liverpool? If you watch a Liverpool race, it's never boring. It's either excellent or horrific. <laughs> Nothing in between, and I love that. Brilliant. Uh, moving on. Let's uh, let's go and talk to the, potentially the best moustache I have ever seen. Please, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm just I, I saw the moustache in the distance and I had to come and say hello. Wow. You may recognise these. Oh, it's you! <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of an idiot, as you can see. Quite. Well, no, I, I'd say a very stylish man with great fashion sense. In my, I appreciate it very much. Um, how long is it? Do you have to take much, you know, grooming with that? Does it take long to set in the morning, or is it natural? No, it's natural. Oh, no, natural out. Yes, very much. <laughs> and this must be. This got to be the most expensive uh, helmet uh, paint in the in the paddock, surely. Yeah, it's a good good couple quid, and a lot of time sticking it down. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm surprised it stays so well, to be honest. And you know what? You cannot miss you on circuit. <laughs> I'm glad to see it. I saw you were distracted by it at Warden. I was. I was like, wow. Um, remind us who you are and which team in Warwick you're racing for. Warwick A, we think we might have just won the club and championship. Ooh. But I'm not saying anything until it happens. I don't want to yeah, check. Yeah, we've got the podium ceremony coming up, hopefully very shortly, because otherwise I'm gonna, you're going to have to listen to me and other people quite a lot. But um, I mean, what even made you think of getting that? That's a brilliant idea. I like googly eyes, but I also wave at people and do silly stuff on track. So if they see that, they'll think It kind of goes with the vibe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, along with the moustache. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of going, yeah, brilliant. Anyway, what about the rest of the team? Are you guys, you must be pretty happy with uh, what going from what was second or third this morning to then potentially winning? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was such a roller coaster. Like in the last race, we had a pen. We didn't know if we were winning or P2. But I think Jake brought it home. So fingers crossed. Where is he? Where's Jake? Oh, of course, he was in that last one. Our boy Jake, of course. Uh, anyone else that deserves a particular shout out from Warwick? Oh, Absolutely. definitely. <laughs> Johnson, over here. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely beautiful driver the first few stints. So thank yeah. you. Thank Without you. him, we wouldn't have come in uh, oh, P6 on the road. Yeah. Nicely done. It was a smooth operation. Some yeah. may say. Smooth operation. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. And you know what's funny? I did have my appendix taken out. So did you actually? Oh. Just putting it out there. Just putting it out. Uh, that's, that's illegal. That's doping. <laughs> um, are you guys going to be joining us for the BUKC 24 hour at Teesside? I believe so. Most of us, yeah. Most of us. Most. So are you going to have a one, two teams? Hopefully two. Hopefully two. Yeah. That would be excellent. It's a good event, right? Have any of you done it before? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been so tiring, though. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to do it again. It'll be fun. Teesside really beats you up there, doesn't it? Oh, it's like nothing else. Bumpy. Track. It's um, it's like UK roads on a circuit. <laughs> it's just pothole after pothole, and I think that's that sums it up well. And go-karts do not have suspension. <laughs> no, they don't. You feel it. Oh, you feel suspension. it. Yeah. You know, I, I did the 24, not the BUKC 24, but I did the 24 hour there probably about eight or nine years ago now. And in the last in the, the steering wheel broke. My <laughs> I, I literally went through the, the, the bumpy corner, and the pro went like that and I was like guys I've got a pit the wheels broke and they're like there's still four wheels on I was like no 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 the one in the front of me <laughs> anyway we'll see um, have you had success there before uh, I think uh, we had good pace didn't we ago. we had good yeah. pace but in terms of mechanical failures we were right up there so <laughs> hope savage on the cart yeah exactly robbery. exactly robbery Warwick <laughs> robbed <laughs> <laughs> anyway we'll see how that goes uh, guys thank you very much for joining us once again at BUKC and we'll see you at the BUKC 24 hour um, always it's good to chat to Warwick. They're a, a fun, fun team. Um, I want to see if I can grab a word with some other people, but I can't go much further, otherwise we might lose you. Um, let's just, just duck in here, and uh, I'll hear in my ear if we start breaking up. Sorry, guys. Uh, which which uh, team Southampton Motorsport? Southampton. How's it going, guys? Uh, well, we, I think we came fourth. We've done the maths. So we've gone from second to fourth, I think. Not ideal. Not ideal, but still pretty good. Still pretty good. Well, in the morning, we're fifth in a four-horse race. So at least we're fourth in a four-horse race. Um, came third last year. So, yeah. Not ideal. Consistent. Yeah you, could, yeah, you could say that. Not good consistent, but yeah. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, I think you finished ahead of about 70 or 80 teams, so. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I suppose you look at it that way, it's good, but. Where we you guys, are, you're in for the win, aren't you? That's what you want. Yeah, it's just the issue. We either won the round or came, like, 15th. There's an in-between, which doesn't really help when you have to drop scores and stuff. Yeah, let's talk about that, because you were untouchable at times. So I think it was Butmore, and then the first in the morning at, at Warden as well. Just, you know, literally one by mile. And then literally at Warden, the, the race after was like, nah, no, nowhere. What, what do you reckon that was down to? I think 
Uh, well, we're better in the rain, um, I think we've established. Um, I just, I think it's harder to make up lots of places in the dry, but obviously I know everyone's in the same boat, but it's, you know, with penalties and that, you, you want to be a bit more conservative and... As I say, everyone's in the same boat, so it's no excuse, but I think it's like a, a combination of factors, uh, bad luck and bad skill at times from some of us. Um, but um, yeah, I think, I don't know. It, it's, it, I think we can, if there was an award for biggest bottle jobs, we'd have it for winning four rounds and not winning overall or even on the podium. So yeah, uh, that is, it's quite impressive when you put it like that, but you've still had a good season. Um, are you guys coming back next year? Who, actually, uh, for that, 24 hour coming up in May, due time. Are any of you planning doing it? There was a... Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, Go on. I'm tempted. I'm doing the British 24 with, uh, in, my, in the pro cast as well. Late. Get a bit of practice. Yeah, true, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. So you're going to do 24 hours on your own or is anyone going to join you? <laughs> Need a few. We, yeah. we can get a team. Uh, try get less track limit warnings. This. <laughs> right. I think... It, Southampton, congratulations on a good success. I'm going to go and hand my microphone over to, to big man Jacob because Jacob is going to be taking us through the podiums. Uh, Jacob, um, please take us through it. Thank you, Piers. I do like going to air time. We'll start with round eight and the race winners. Winning the first race this afternoon, endurance number one was won by Reading A's Tom Fleming and Dan Booth. <laughs> Bring it in. All right. Can I hug you as well? Hug me. You right? Oh, look at this. It's lovely. Now to the main event. Come here. The main event. Oh, shake your hand as well. Oh. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> Come in, Lovely stuff. Uh, quick photo at the front. Big smiles. Love that. Winners of race number two from Bath A, Paul Simard and Axel Sliepcevic. I wrote it on my hand this time. Phonetically. Where's Paul? No? Quick photo with the photographer. And then I've only got one name for race number three, because you're only allowed to put one name in the system. Uh, winning race number three for Southampton A was Josh Adams and one of his friends. <laughs> Could be Sam Heathcut. <laughs> They might not like each other. TBC. Are you friends? I like being with friends. Yeah. Well done, yeah. Probably friends. Yeah, your, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, so nice to have hugs. Okay. Photos at the front. Congratulations to our six race winners from this afternoon. Willie is just preparing the Clubman podium behind me. We are going to start from. 20th, because we've got a lot to get through. Finishing in 20th overall in round eight was Birmingham A. Edinburgh A were 19th. Nottingham Trent A were 18th. 17th were Leeds A. Coventry F was 16th. Loughborough D, 15th. Loughborough A, 14th. 13th were Imperial A. And Coventry A, our championship contenders, finishing only 12th. Now we come to the first of our clubman podiums, finishing 11th overall, but third in clubman's, cart number 15, Warwick A. Just beating Warwick into the top 10. Cart number one, Exeter A, a Prem's team. And finishing ninth overall, second in Clubman's class. Cart number 30, Lancaster A. Do we have Lancaster? I can see Lancaster at the back. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
can do it back, don't worry. It's all silver, don't worry. Small boys, you bet I will. You bet I will. <laughs> And then we have a few teams gap. That was ninth overall. I'm going to skip straight to it, finishing in very impressive third place overall, winning Clubman Class today. Cart number 23, Surrey A. Big smiles, face the front, please. <clears throat> Make sure you look nice for the cameras. Beautiful. Big round of applause, please, for our top three club and teams from this afternoon. Picking up uh, from ninth and uh, finishing in eighth overall with card number 14, left for B. Cardiff A, card number seven, finished seventh. Oxford Brooks A, card number two, finished sixth. Being them to the top five were card number three, Southampton A. And narrowly Lumis out on the podium. Card number nine, Sheffield A, finishing in fourth. Uh, however, Sheffield still get themselves on the podium because, as mentioned, Surrey A finished third overall. So, big round of applause, please. Card number nine, Sheffield A, third in Premiers. <laughs> You've not been through enough today, Adam. You've not been through enough grief. Just in case anyone didn't get that reference, Adam overtook under yellows in his race. That one by there, Adam Nather. <laughs> Uh, so obviously Surrey were in third place overall, but finishing second place overall in round number eight. Car number 13, Reading A. And just edging out Reading. Reading had a first and a third. These guys had a first and a second. The winners of round number eight. Card number four, Bath A. Round of applause, threes for our top three teams from this afternoon, or rather, top two and the fourth best one. <clears throat> okay, now it's time to the down to the serious ones. Piers is just grabbing the clubman's trophies. Um, overall championship standings will go from the back. Worst team in Mains this year, card number 97, Sheffield D. Wooden Spoon is on his way to Sheffield. Uh, we're going to skip ahead because I don't want to read out 52 different team names. Um, we'll start in the top 30 since that's a respectable place to finish. Anyone who I don't read out now, I do not have respect for you. Uh, Portsmouth A made it into the Respect Leagues in 30th overall. Warwick B finished in 29th. Big round of applause for Warwick. Coventry F finished in 28th. Sheffield B a lot better than their C team, finished in 27th. Imperial A were 26th overall. Liverpool B were 25th. 24th goes to Leeds B. And Coventry B in 23rd. Just missing out on one of these lovely trophies behind me and the Clubman podium altogether. Finishing fourth in Clubman overall. Cart number 56, Coventry E. which means finishing 21st overall is third in Clubman class. That podium from earlier has really done them favors. Third overall, Clubman class 2024, cart number 23, Surrey A. And then we have three Prem's teams wedged in the middle here. Finishing 20th overall were car number 12, Loughborough A. Finishing 19th overall, car number 27, Swansea A. And Oxford Brooks B were 18th. 
Finishing in second place overall this year with <coughs> The no, sorry, I thought they had the same amount of points. Uh, it was close. It was four points in it in the end, uh, but narrowly missing out on the top step of the podium. Finishing second place in Clemens 2024, car number 30, Lancaster A. There's it, excellent. And finally, finishing in 16th place overall, but winning Clemens for 2024. Card number 15, Warwick A. Okay, big smiles, please face the front. Love those poses, love them. Fantastic. Let's have a big round of applause, please. Top three Clubman teams overall for 2024. Okay, we are down to the top 15. William Piers are getting the trophies, and Ross is helping as well with the champagne. It's the countdown to the spray, finishing 15th overall with Nottingham Trent A. 14th place goes to UCLan A. Edinburgh A were 13th. Liverpool A finished in 12th, just pipped by na nearby neighbours Manchester finished in 11th. Birmingham A made it one place better than last year. They finished 10th overall. Ninth place goes to the highest scoring Loughborough team, Loughborough B. Oxford Brooks A, last year's runners-up, finished in ninth. One place behind last year's champions, Exeter A, who finished in seventh. Sixth place goes to cart number nine, Sheffield A. Fifth place, a two-place impro two improvement from last year, goes to Cardiff A. And whilst they were challenging for the championship to the very end, they miss out on the podium today. Cart number three, Southampton A, finished in fourth. So a big round of applause for all those teams, please. We've had some fantastic racing from the lot of them over the year. But the points do not lie. With a grand total of 502 championship points, 399 of those counting. I know. Finishing in third place overall, cart number eight, Coventry A. With a grand total of 519 points, 17 more points accumulated and 409 of them to count, so still 10 points ahead after drop scores. Another two-place improvement, finishing second for BUKC 2024. Cart number four, Bath A. <laughs> Last but not least, finally, with only one round win this year, but an incredible level of consistency that saw them pick up so many second and third places, they amassed 521 championship points, 411 after count, beating Bath by two championship points. First time winners of the BUKC 
champions of 2020, 20, 2024. Card number 13, Reading A. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hide behind Fraser for this? Okay, let's have big smiles, please, and face the front. <laughs> Wave to your families on the live stream. Okay, one more photo. <laughs> Let's have a big round of applause, please, for our top three teams of 2024. And then when you're ready, gentlemen, the spray. mentioned awards new driver of the year male and female driver of the year crash of the year overtake of the year bandit of the year will all be announced in the bistro upstairs at seven o'clock tonight uh, we've got about half an hour until the doors open on that one free food and drink for absolutely everyone involved uh, all are welcome please do make your way upstairs at seven o'clock for a fantastic half hour or so of powerpoint that i put together in my sleep last night Thank you to everyone who's competed this year in BUKC 2024. It's been a fantastic year of racing. Um, we will be back with a 24-hour race in the middle of June, the 15th and 16th at Teesside Autodrome. Some of you may be around tomorrow as well for the final, final of the intermediates. But if we don't see you over the summer, have a good one. We'll hopefully see you at the test days in October and November. Thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob, for taking us through the podium presentations there. Yeah, you saw the podium presentations. It was in the Premier class, of course, Reading taking the win narrowly from Bath. And uh, we saw the celebrations. Great to see the emotion. They're getting back on top step now just for some more photos. And uh, everyone covered in, I would say, champagne. It's not champagne. It's some sort of bubbly. But anyway, thank you so much, everyone at home, for joining us for the BUKT 2024. I've had a blast presenting it. John John and Reeve and Andrew have had a blast commentating on it. Everyone at home, thank you so much for dropping comments, likes, whatever. Make sure you like this video. Oh, thank you so much. Who's this? Peter Knight's mum. Peter Knight's mum. Well, he had a good day, didn't he? Oh, so relieved. So relieved. Well, thank you, you. No worries. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you to all the mums and dads, of course, for, to, for doing that. Yeah, Peter's mum's very happy. Um, we will be back again next year. But before then, we have uh, in a, just a week's time, when get in from the, get in from Reading. So anyway, um, what was I? I lost my train of thought. That's it. Next week, Wednesday evening, Double Dash Motorsport Media will be uh, broadcasting the BUKC and Club 100 uh, Esports I Racing League. So if you want to tune into that, do that on Wednesday evening next week. And then the week after, so two weeks from now at the weekend is the first round of the Club 100. Oh! Oh! It's the first round of Club 100 um, at GYG. That will be live streamed on Alpha Live as well. Make sure you join us then. Thank you so much. Signing off for 2024.